Chapter 337, Fallen Immortal Town. City God Temple. The crowd nodded with realization. Indeed, he's harvesting the chives. It's a good idea. Bring us along, bring us. Nanan and Dragon's eyes were sparkling. They realized there was such a fun thing and instantly they wanted to take part. Daji said, there's no hurry. Since the chives are right there, in order to harvest it perfectly, we will take part, too. Payne nodded hurriedly. He wanted to say yes for 10,000 times, yes. We will listen to Immortal Daji. He was extremely pleased. His speculation earned the approval of Immortal Daji, this was equivalent to pleasing the expert. Meanwhile, Li Nai and Fan already harvested a pile of chives and walked over. He even had a small basket in his hands filled with all green chives. He smiled, since Brother Payne likes to eat chives, I harvested more for you to bring home. Pong was so touched that he had tears in his eyes, he said hastily, Thank you, Mr. Li. I'm so touched. Li Nai and Fan smiled it off, it's a small matter. I tell you, you need to cut the chives off wildly. The harsher the better, so that they grow faster. Payne said instantly, I see, thank you for your knowledge. The others took note of it, too. In conclusion, they had to be harsh when it came to chives. The hotpot meal was taken in a lively atmosphere. This was also Lee Nye and Fan's first hotpot meal this winter, it was quite remarkable. After all, this hotpot was eaten with the immortals, a phoenix and some demons. It was so lively like a multicultural meal. Payne wiped his lips and said sincerely, this is too delicious. Thank you so much for hosting us, Mr. Lee. Guzairu had fallen deeply in love with the hot pot. She said, I've lived for so long and never had thought about this way of eating. Mr. Lee, can I eat like this after going back? Ha ha ha, immortal goo, this is a redundant question. Hot pot is just a way of eating, of course you may dine in this way. Lee Nianfan could not help saying, he continued, oh right, if you like hot pot, you may bring back some hot pot soup base it'd be more convenient when you eat. Mr. Lee, this is, too kind. Payne and the two were embarrassed. Of course these were all treasures, and they were too embarrassed to keep. In here, every flower and plant was a treasure. Especially now that they had eaten the hot pot, this meal was more precious than the cultivation they had. After all, many of the understandings did not come easily through cultivation. Don't be shy, it's not a treasure anyway. Hold it. Lee Nai and Fan waved it off. He looked at Gu Chang Ching and asked curiously, Oh right, Brother Gu. Do you know how the battle is going? I've been away and did not follow up with it for some time. It's more calm now. After blocking the last attack from the southern barbarians, Xia Kingdom had been having the upper hand with many victories. Now that it's in the stage of counterattacking, I heard that somehow, Tu Ju's body is suddenly going downhill, as if he got really ill. Their combat power has been lowering since then. Gu Chang Ching paused. He continued, the demons are tamed by Buddhism, they have less actions lately. Li Nianfen let out a look of shock, Buddhism is doing so well? He was shocked. Buddhism was spread out by Yucha, while Yucha learned about Buddhism from him. He even gave her a diamond sutra. It was established so soon? The Buddhism so well accepted in this realm? Suddenly, Li Nianfen thought of another point. This realm was meant to be the legendary world, so of course there must be Buddhism, as well as Buddha. How did they all disappear? After the journey to the west, unless Buddhism vanished? That was scary. Gu Chang Ching smiled, Mr. Li, the spreading of Buddhism has some surprising elements. Recently, there are rumors about the appearance of the underworld. Many ghosts and demons went to the ordinary realm, causing some disasters. Since the Buddhists have the Buddhist light, they could resist against the ghosts. With the Buddhist monks walking around the world, it is much easier to recruit. I see. Li Nianfan nodded, he was curious. How did Yucha cultivate the Buddhist light? Was it the Diamond Sutra that he gave her? Perhaps it had some power in it? That seemed impossible. After all, Yucha was an immortal, she had a high starting power. Thus creating some effects out of the Diamond Sutra did make sense. No matter what, this Diamond Sutra was a sutra, giving it to her was considered as returning to the rightful owner. Payne continued, Mr. Li, since Buddhism was started by the immortal, the basic has surpassed the ordinary sex. Now that it is growing bigger, I heard that they're preparing to host a ceremony. He left out one sentence, Buddhism is supported by the expert, with the luck treasure, even if they had to obey some of the rules. Being able to fly within a short period of time was something ordinary. Li Nianfan could not help saying, 
perhaps it will be quite powerful. Payne nodded, yeah, perhaps quite a number of immortals would be invited. Another big event. The crowd chatted for a while before Payne and the two stood up to bid him farewell. With Lee Nai and Fan insisting, they finally accepted the chives and base soup. The weight of those ingredients felt so heavy, how were these chives and base soup? These were sincerity given to us by the expert. Payne and the two tried so hard to hold back their tears, they said politely, Mr. Lee, sorry to have disturbed you today. Goodbye. All right, goodbye. Upon walking out from the four-part architecture, the three of them finally could not hold it any longer. Tears fell like a waterfall, with waves formed as the water rushed down their cheeks. They were so emotional that their shoulders were trembling. Payne said with a touched and hoarse voice, Wah, the expert is too kind to us. He's looking at small figures like us. Guzairu said, I heard that many legendary big shots are all high above. They don't have friends and live a lonely life. The reason being their standards being too high. However, the expert's realm is way higher than those other big shots, he's willing to become an ordinary man. To treat everything with an ordinary heart. He treats us like a friend. However, our status is too low. How did we deserve this? Gu Changqing said, although the expert treats us well, we have to be clear about where we stand. We're just a chess piece, our value of existence is to help the expert clear some troubles. Payne agreed right away, you're right, you're my disciple after all. This is what we must get out of this. Gu Changqing suddenly looked at his sect master, and then at the chives, he let out a strange look, sect master, you're eating this chives, could it be that you, hmm? You try to strengthen your physique? Payne's face dropped, he coughed gently, you don't understand my pain. He continued unnaturally, cultivators like myself have a heart of asking. The longer we live, the higher cultivation we get, the heart of asking will thicken. Gradually, we will reach the realm of having no feeling, with no emotion toward many things. These tribes happen to be able to help me regain the feelings I once had. Gu Chang Ching said, Sect Master, you don't have to explain, I understand. Payne scoffed, understand your ours. I've lived for more than 10,000 years, I've a white hair and beard all over, do you know, my pain? Shut up, you too. Guzairu scoffed at them and eyed Payne with a disgusted look, she said, we'll go back to the immortal land and harvest some, let's see how our chives are growing. Payne remained a very calm look, he said, you two go on, I have some conflicts with bamboo, I need to please her. After sending out Payne and the two, the peace resumed. Of course he was not washing the dishes, he did not give the task to Xiao Bei either. He asked Dragon and Nanan to wash them all. He had to be more strict to the children, to tame them down. All right, didn't you two know spells? It's just washing some dishes, how hard can it be? Li Nai and Fan looked at their wrongful faces, he could not help smiling, hurry, after washing I'll bring you all to the fallen town. They had gone on a trip for so long, he wondered if the fallen town had any change. Nanan and Dragon were instantly energized, they were excited, really? Yeah. We'll wash them right away. Half an hour later, they simply cleaned up and went in the direction of the fallen town. Since now that Li Nai and Fan could drive the wind, the journey took way less time. However, he kept a low profile and landed outside the fallen town before walking toward it. Upon entering the town, Li Nai and Fan could not help frowning and letting out a strange look. Compared to the usual liveliness, the town was apparently more empty today. On the street, only a few people were walking. It was an empty town. Nanan could not help saying, What is it? Where is my mother? She likes to hang around here most of the time. Li Nian Fan's small red bird on his shoulder went up and flew around in the air. After spinning around, it went back on him. Fire Phoenix said calmly, Most people are gathered in the town center. Li Nian Fan was instantly interested. So all of them had gone to the town center. Let's go, we'll check it out. Instantly, the group of them fastened their pace. As they were approaching the center, more and more people appeared, along with some noise. It was very lively. Mr. Lee, you came. As they approached the outside of the circle, a familiar voice was heard. It was the fishmonger. Little fish sat on the fishmonger's shoulder, she was looking ahead with curiosity. Seeing that it was Lee Nianfan, she said in a small voice, Hello, brother, hello sisters. Li Nai and Fan smiled and nodded. He handed an orange over. Hello, little fish, have an orange? Little fish said instantly, Thank you, brother. The fishmonger said, Mr. Li, you really went out? I was worried about you, glad that you made it back safe. 
Li Nian Fan smiled and shook his head, ha ha ha, what danger could I possibly encounter? Thank you. The fishmonger could not help saying, Mr. Li, there are many ghosts and demons around these days, it's good that you made it back. In the immortal realm, the ordinary people had to be extremely cautious when traveling. Fishmonger, what is happening? Li Nian Fan asked with curiosity. Speaking of which, it's quite mysterious. The fishmonger built up the suspense before continuing, recently, some literary big shots, as well as some well-renowned people have been having dreams sent by the ghosts in the underworld. Some even receive dreams sent to them by their ancestors. They ask the people to build a city god temple and worship god. This is so that the rain and wind can be stabilized, and the people can live safely. Dreams? City god temple? Li Nianfen let out a thoughtful look. The underworld was working so quickly, they had started on it. The fishmonger nodded, yeah, even the emperor of the Ganlong immortal dynasty came in person. He wants to build the city god temple here. However, they seem to be discussing something, therefore everyone rushed over here to worship the city god, to pray together. I see. Li Nianfen nodded. He looked at the packed crowd in front, he naturally wanted to go over. As he was hesitating whether or not to drive his cloud over, he was worried that this might shock the crowd and made him stand out. Mr. Li. Among the crowd, a surprised voice rang in the air. It was the owner of the breakfast stall. He squeezed out of the crowd with difficulty, he called out loudly, Everyone, please make way, make way for Mr. Li. Don't we need someone to write? Who else in the fallen town is more capable and suitable than Mr. Li? As he spoke, he and the fishmonger helped Li Nianfan to open up a space, Mr. Li, hurry up. I heard that you're not around recently, if not someone would have come up for you. When the crowd heard that it was Mr. Li, they instantly made way for him. If Mr. Li is back, of course he's the most suitable candidate. Ha ha ha, what a coincidence that Mr. Li is back. We don't have to keep thinking. I tell you all, Mr. Li's writing is the best. With his words, the city god will be pleased. Hurry, what are you standing there for, make way. Although Li Nianfan did not live in the fallen town, his reputation was well known. With his capability, even though he had only shown a little in public, it was already very impressive in the eyes of the ordinary. Walking ahead, Li Nianfan gradually saw the temple in front. By the look of it, it seemed to have been remodeled. It was simple and majestic, with 19 stairs below, it looked solemn. On the top of the temple, there was a board. The base was black in color, with three golden words engraved on it, City God Temple. Below the temple, Li Nianfan saw many familiar faces. The Holy Emperor, Luo Shiyu, Zhou Yunwu, and Meng Jun Liang. One could say that the most reputable people that the fallen town had seen were all here. When they saw Li Nianfan, they were instantly nervous with their faces straightened. Quickly, they made way for him and personally went down to welcome him. They walked in a hurry. Chapter 338, 100,000 Fireworks Returned Here The Holy Emperor was uneasy. He explained right away, Mr. Li, we didn't know you're back, that's why we did not invite you over. Li Nianfan smiled, I came back not long ago, I happened to make it on time. Don't feel bad, Holy Emperor. The Holy Emperor was less concerned after that, but his face was still flushing red. How he wished to slap himself on the face. Even though he knew the expert was not home, he should have checked again the night before building the city god temple. Who would know if the expert came home? He was so insincere. Sigh. Greetings to Mr. Li. Zhou Yunwu and Meng Jun Yang bowed at Li Nianfan. The two of them were extremely excited. Their bodies straightened as they bowed a 90 degree bow at him. One was the human sovereign, the other a well reputable scholar. They sincerely respected Li Nianfan, it was not fake, it came from the heart. Zhou Yunwu said with excitement, Mr. Li, I'd like to thank you on behalf of all my people. Meng Junliang added, Mr. Li, I'd like to thank you on behalf of all the scholars. With the status of them both in the ordinary realm, they naturally received the dreams sent out by the underworld. And the dreams were personally sent out by big shots like black and white impermanence. They were told that the city god temple was established by an expert. Mentioning expert, Mr. Li was the first person that came to mind. Therefore, they asked around and found out that it was indeed Mr. Li. Immediately, their admiration for Li Nianfan reached the peak. Most importantly, the establishing of a city god temple was very beneficial to both Zhou Yunwu and Meng Jun Liang. One was to help the people live in peace, the other was to give hope to the current scholars. 
if the scholars were able to manage the people, and then loved and respected by them, the scholars could then be recognized by the underworld after death and become the local city god. This was something to anticipate about. Anyhow, the city god temple was a bridge between the ordinary realm and the underworld, a win-win solution. Li Nianfan waved his hand, all right, don't thank me, I merely provided an idea. The holy emperor said, Mr. Li, you came at the right time. You are the most rightful candidate to inscribe for this fallen town. They were discussing who should be the one inscribing. This was a big matter, not only the ordinary men, these words had to be used to communicate with the underworld. This was a big matter. The truth was that no matter who was the one inscribing, they were unhappy about it. It seemed as if they were discussing, the truth was that they were arguing. Menju Liang handed the brush to Li Nianfan, he said, Mr. Li, here's your pen. I'll prepare the ink for you. Li Nianfan did not deny. With his current status, he did have the rights to inscribe. With that, he received the brush and stood by his side. The board was made, the city god temple only lacked an inscription. However, the inscription was very important, it was the front of the city god temple, it had to be meaningful not only to the ordinary but also the underworld. The words had to be powerful and meaningful. Li Nianfan looked at the city god temple behind him, and then down at the crowd before him. There were too many people around, rows after rows. However, they all fell silent all at once, staring at Li Nianfan. Li Nianfan met the sincere gaze of the people and took in a deep breath. He looked up at the sky far away. He saw that the sky and the ground was joined by the white snow from afar. Further down, he wondered how the mirror-like clear moon lake was doing. He was standing high enough to look at the lake and the mountain behind. Since this was the city god temple, it would be lit up by the lights even at night, taking on the responsibility of helping the city people. He shall write about it. The paper was prepared and placed on the table. Li Nianfan gradually landed the brush on the table. Since this was formal, he did not write fast. His font was lightly casual but very neat. However, there was a strange insight coming from within, catching one's attention with it. The crowd below did not see the words, but they saw Li Nianfan. They could feel that he was being refreshing and elegant, every stroke and movement made him seem more carefree as if a light layer was surrounding him, very sacred. The city god temple had somehow turned into his backdrop, one had to resist from worshipping him. On the stage, Meng Jun Liang and the rest stared at the paper deadly. They could feel as if every word was alive and filled with intention. Especially Meng Jun Liang. This was not the first time he saw Li Nianfan write, he had decided to learn from Li Nianfan forever. However, every time he saw him write, he would have new realizations, always feeling more ignorant and guilty as he watched. Would he ever achieve such a miracle? Even one word of such level would be sufficient. 800 miles of lake and mountains made the sight, 100,000 fireworks returned here. The last word, done. Vroom. Ripples were sent out between the sky and ground, as if some laws were being forced to change. A strong and powerful pressure crashed down from above, almost solidifying the space around them. The ordinary men only felt suffocated, while the cultivators felt their hair standing up, they were terrified. They looked at the sky in unison while trembling with their eyes opening wide. They saw that a bright golden light fell down from the sky. Unknown of its source, it was traveling at a rapid speed, directly crashing into the city god temple. Instantly, the city god temple which looked ordinary was covered in this layer of golden light, very eye-catching and so bright that it hurt the eyes to look at. Luck. Luck from above. Similar to when the human sovereign and scholar was appointed, similar to when Buddhism was established. The wash of luck reappeared, this time, the city god temple was established. The overwhelming luck flooded all around them, covering the entire fallen town with a layer of golden glow. Of course the ordinary men did not see this strange sight, but all the cultivators suffocated at the same time, they almost fainted. They actually witnessed this one in a million year worth of majestic sight. Meanwhile, in the underworld. Meng Po stood in the main hall, with black and white impermanence by her sides. Many Onis were caught up with work, sending out dreams to many people. Meng Po held the death note, she placed it on a platform and said, the death note has the power to determine life and death, it's like a guide. Now that it returns to the underworld, it will bring us more convenience in the future. Black and white impermanence said, unfortunately we still don't have enough Onis in here, even when it's from time to time, we don't have enough Onis to send out. Meng Po sighed, she asked, how are the dreams sending out? Popo, 
Many places in the ordinary realm have started establishing city god temple. However, this was never done before. White impermanence halted, he said bitterly, now that we don't seem to, have the rights to officiate them. In the past, the underworld could officiate the temples, they could appoint the officials and their duties, as well as managing the temples. However, now that the underworld was destroyed, many responsibilities were restricted, even if they wanted to officiate the city god temple, they would not get the approval. Therefore, it would make the city god temple rather useless. For example, the underworld used to be an approved organization by heaven. It had authority. However, now they apparently did not. They were now functioning like an ordinary sect in the ordinary realm. This had to do with the system and the lack of system involved. After all, once the city god temples were established, they needed Onis to guard in the ordinary realm. However, if they did not gain approval, the Onis could not guard the temples, as they could not stay in the ordinary realm for long. Meanwhile, the entire underworld jolted vigorously. A golden glow crashed onto the underworld without prior warning. This golden glow was so thick and strong, covering each and every corner of the underworld. The covered surface looked like the lotus blooming, with huge changes made in the underworld. The death note placed on the platform was shown by the golden light. The originally black surface was gradually turning into gold. By its side, the brush gradually floated, the point of the brush had turned from black to golden. The golden light continued to shine, spreading from the main hall to the other halls in the underworld. Voila! Other than the sticks, there was another sound of water coming from the underworld. The stream sounded quick, as if the splashing of a waterfall. The sound of water splashing was heard by the crowd one time after another. This familiar sound made many of the Onis jolted, as if their souls would leave their bodies. They had a surprised and delighted look on, they became transfixed. White impermanent stuttered and trembled, Po, Popo, that, is that, the sound of Acheron? It's Sakharan, definitely the sound of Acheron. Meng Po was more excited than anyone. She had tears in her eyes. I've heard the sound of Acheron for countless years, it won't be wrong. The Acheron is starting to flow again. She flew over rapidly, traveling toward the outskirts of the underworld. In here, the rippling stream of Acheron was flowing. The originally dead Acheron was now gradually coming back alive, letting out a golden glow like the sun. It poured down while lightening up the entire Acheron. Acheron was the so-called Ninth River. The home of the dead. After death. The soul would be sent to the Acheron and stay there for a while. The soul would then be referred to reincarnate. Ever since the catastrophe, the Acheron dried out and thus the souls had to be sent to the angry sticks. Many Oni stood by the Acheron, they looked at the Acheron with a perplexed look. Suddenly, they felt as if this was a dream, as if, everything was coming back. Meanwhile, by the side of the Acheron, rows of dried out flowers with only their rhizomes left suddenly came back alive. They were blooming one after another. Hygen flowers. The Hygen flowers were bright red like fire, as if tainted by fresh blood. They bloomed batch after batch, as if rolling out a carpet on the ground. Hygen flowers, Hygen flower. Flowers without leaves, leaves grew without flowers. The flowers and leaves depend on one another, forever and ever. Mangpo mumbled in a low voice, beautiful, so beautiful. Vroom. Above the Acheron. The broken bridge from not far away started letting out a growl, as if a rainbow was hanging above, the broken stones were starting to rejoin bit by bit, as if time was going backward. Chapter 339, You've Changed. You've All Changed. Nihe Bridge. It's the Nihe Bridge. Mangpo looked at the bridge, her lips trembling as her body was involuntarily drawn to it. Nihe Bridge was a very simple bridge, it was built in the shape of a bridge with no handle by the sides. Since there was no handle by the sides, the person walking on it had to be even more cautious. They dared not to push around, once they fell, they would have to bath in the Acheron again. Mangpo gradually walked over, she saw that by the front of the Nihe bridge, the stone board that was originally covered in soil was gradually rising up. On the board, two words were printed in an ancient blood ink, Nihe bridge. She squinted her eyes, her body bent as she gradually walked toward the bridge. Standing on the highest point on the bridge, she could take in the entire view of the Acheron. One would walk on the Ne Bridge, gaze over the Acheron, recall one's past before drinking a bowl of Menpo soup and then depart. The golden sun was like the warming sun during the winter, the broken underworld where the glow shone on was able to be brought back to life gradually. When the Onis saw this sight, they could not help tearing up, they were all wailing painfully. 
Black impermanence stuttered, Popo, this golden glow is, is luck. Yeah, it's luck. Luck actually came back to my underworld. Mengpo said in awe. Popo, I found it. These merits came from the city god temple of the fallen town. It's, it's. White impermanence called out with so much excitement in his eyes, it's the expert inscribing for the city god temple. The expert is officiating the city god temple, thus even heaven verified it. I guessed it, I guessed it. Mengpo smiled with tears rolling down, she was extremely happy, at the final moment of my underworld's corruption, luck came back. We received genuine help from the expert. At the moment that the golden glow was just about to vanish, it illuminated the two stone sculptures on the door of the underworld. Voila! The stone sculptures started to crack, pieces of crushed stones fell off gradually. The face of a horse and the head of a cow appeared. It did not take long before their eyes started to move. They looked perplexed. Black and white impermanence flew over instantly, they called out with excitement, cow head, horse face. Old black, old white? The cow horse jolted, their pupils dilated as if they had a wild dream. They rubbed their eyes in unison, what's the matter? What happened? I remember, I remember, that we were forever sealed. Am I dreaming? The cow horse had tears in their eyes, they were surprised. They thought that they would be sealed forever, it would be a lie if they said they were not scared. However, they held on to their fear and faced the fact that they would be sealed. Now that they came back alive, they were still scared by the thought of being sealed for so long. White impermanence hugged on the cow horse and said with excitement, Ha ha ha, it's good that you're back, as long as you're back. Welcome back, however now that the underworld is pretty wasted, we're all so worried. Now that you're back, you all have lots to do, ha ha ha. Black impermanence smiled. The cow horse grinned, pretty wasted? We like it. In front of the city god temple, Li Nai and Fan retrieved the brush and stood upright. The winter chill was very cold, a gust of wind blew by, blowing on the hair of the crowd. The paper rested on the table, similarly blown by the wind. The paper was light but very stable, as if this wind would never dare to blow it away. Li Nai and Fan looked it up and down before nodding with satisfaction. He asked, I'm quite nervous to inscribe for the city god temple. What do you all think about this? The holy emperor did not hesitate as he blurted out, Good words, so good. Mr. Li is indeed a genius. Mr. Li is the only person in the world who could write out such words. These words would be able to be passed on for a thousand years. Mr. Li is a genius the blessing of the people and the entire civilization. The crowd understood the seriousness of this matter, they did not bootlick too far out. However, they praised sincerely, and this made Li Nai and Fan laugh out loud. Ha ha ha, never mind about passing this on for a thousand years. I don't have this ability. This realm of Mr. Li is so admirable. I'm guilty of myself, I'm so guilty. The crowd used this chance to bootlick once again. The Holy Emperor and Zhou Yun Wu each cautiously held on one side of the paper. They politely presented it to the crowd. 800 miles of lake and mountains made the site, 100,000 fireworks returned here. Many people read it out loud, instantly bursting into a loud applause. What was so impressive about this was that it gave off a realm. Even with no cultural background, one could still feel its power by listening to it. These words instantly earned the applause of everyone, they were all in awe of Li Nai and Fan's ability. Mr. Lee is still alive. I think the city god should be Mr. Lee. He's the pride of our fallen town. Yeah, that's right. Who could be as capable and perfect as Mr. Lee? I've no concern if Mr. Lee acts as the city god. I beg Mr. Lee to be the city god. Stop. Luo Shiyu instantly stood out, shut up. Zhou Yunwu and the holy emperor were shocked, too. They scoffed, nonsense. Don't be rude. How daring of these people. How could they compare the expert to a mere city god? These bunch of people were so shockingly ignorant and daring. Li Nai and Fan looked awkward. These bunch of people did it out of kindness, but only a dead man could become the city god. If they begged him to become one, were they not begging him to die? Even though he was touched, he was not quite pleased. He coughed gently, cough, cough. Let it go. They don't mean it the bad way. Menjun Liang said, Mr. Li. I'll ask them to put up the paper, it will be placed on the pillar of the city god temple. The holy emperor nodded, yeah, be careful. It has to be carefully done, I'll ask some cultivators to work on it. Li Nai and Fan smiled, you all decided, I just happened to be here, I should go now. The crowd instantly said, we'll walk you. 
Inside the city god temple, black and white impermanence as phantoms gradually appeared. They both looked at the back of Li Nian Fan and bowed politely. Li Nian Fan did not leave the fallen town, instead he went to the east side to look at the old tree. After not seeing it for long, the old tree's speed of growth had gone beyond Li Nian Fan's expectation. It grew over the height of one man. Furthermore, the half-dead stems below the tree had been gradually replaced by the new ones. The branches grew upright, looking different from the ordinary trees. Even though it was now during winter, there were some jade green leaves on top, covered by a thin layer of white snow on the branches. Li Nianfan was not surprised, he smiled, old tree, long time no see. You've indeed changed, you even grew leaves in the winter. Voila! The branches shook, the layer of white snow on them flew in the air as if a fairy was splashing down the snow. The snow swirled down from above, making it seem so romantic and beautiful. Of course, this was not by coincidence. Old tree, you're quite naughty. Li Nianfan smiled as he patted the old tree. If he brought a girl here, it would be a perfect chance to impress her. After chatting a few words with the old tree, Li Nianfan bid it farewell. After coming back from the trip, catching up with the old tree was a must-do. Dragon lowered her head sadly, she pouted and said in a low voice, Brother, are we going back so soon? She felt that she had just come out, she did not get to play around. It was simply walking around for one round, how meaningless. Nanan could not help nodding, she said, yeah, the city god temple is so lively, how fun. Let's go back there. Of course we can't go back to the city god temple. Li Nianfan raised both of his hands and each ruffled Nanan and Dragon's tiny heads, I caught their attention back there, if I stayed there, both parties would get awkward. In fact, leaving right away was the best option. This is so that I can maintain my impression. Nanan and Dragon half understood him, he seemed upset. Li Nianfan had a thought. He instantly said, it's still early, why don't we make a trip to the clear moon lake? We could admire the lake in winter. Now that he had a cloud, he could fly quickly. It was much quicker to get there compared to when he had to walk there by foot. Sure, great. Nanan and Dragon nodded instantly. Dragon's eyes looked around, she asked, brother, would you like to visit my house? Your house? Li Nianfan could not help his eyes from lighting up. He felt that this was not a bad idea, where's your house? My house is not far from the clear moon lake. It's at the bottom of the sea. Nanan promoted quickly, she pleaded, my house is very beautiful and fun, come, come. Li Nianfan was getting more interested, he said, bottom of the sea? That's not bad, but I'm afraid that the merit doesn't shield me from the water. Brother, shielding water is simple, water shielding pearl doesn't cost any. Dragon was very happy, she was extremely excited as she pestered, waste no more time, hurry up. Be my guest. Li Nian Fan looked at Daji and asked, Daji, what do you say? I'll listen to Mr. Li. Daji hooked her arm around Li Nian Fan's arm, she leaned onto him, looking like a husband and wife. Ha ha ha, let's go and admire the world underwater. Li Nian Fan laughed. A golden cloud appeared below his feet and they raced toward the clear moon lake with speed. It merely took a few minutes before they arrived at the lakeside. Other than the accumulated snow by the side of the lake, the entire clear moon lake did not have any change. The large surface of the lake was calm like usual. It was not frozen, when the wind blew, the surface would form a layer of wrinkle. Dragon took out an almost transparent blue pearl and casted a spell on it. Instantly, a glow came out from the pearl and made it turn gradually in the air before slowly sinking into the water. As the pearl went in, the originally calm lake water opened up to each side, forming an empty path in the middle. The area was not small. It was a sphere with a radius of 5 meters. Brother, let's go. Dragon waved at him, she then drove the light and jumped into the water. Li Nianfan smiled and followed behind her in the clouds. Upon entering the water, Li Nianfan looked at the undersea world. Suddenly, he recalled the feeling of visiting an aquarium in his previous realm. Of course, this felt way better than that. The water of the clear moon lake was very clear, especially the water at the bottom of the lake, which was very clear and clean. Other than some occasional waves, it looked like back on the ground. Looking ahead, the entire underwater world was lit up. This beauty was different from the land. It even touched on Li Nian Fan's feelings. As they went deeper, more fishes started to appear. They were in all different colors and sizes, surrounding the crowd with curiosity for one around before escaping rapidly. They could see the mud and rocks at the bottom. 
the green sea weeds on the mud, swaying in waves. Li Nianfan could not help walking to the end of the emptied path, he reached out his hand. Instantly, a wash of chilling feeling was sent all over his body through his hand. The wave swirled around his hand as if it was alive. Li Nianfan quickly retrieved back his hand and put it inside his clothes to keep warm. So cold. Meanwhile, something caught his eyes. He looked at the mud and cried out with delight, Hairy crabs? Daji made a wave accordingly. The hairy crab that curled up in the mud was surrounded by the water. It was then pulled toward the crowd. It raised up its two big pliers and looked at the crowd uneasily. Wow, what a big hairy crab! Li Nian Fan's eyes sparkled, he could not help licking his lips, the hairy crab in this season is the most delicious. Dragon frowned, is this edible? It's too far from the seafood I eat. You don't know. Hairy crabs have nice meat, their taste is very unique. You all will be the first to eat hairy crab in this immortal realm. Li Nian Fan said with excitement, he continued, how could I forget about the hairy crab? Now that I remember, I'm craving for one. Mr. Lee, there's another, Daji said as she raised her hand and easily captured another one. Nicely done. Lee Nian Fan smiled, don't hurry, let's capture more. If we're visiting Dragon's house, we can't show up empty handed. If we bring over some hairy crabs, I think Brother Urchin won't say no. Meanwhile, at the East Sea Dragon Palace. Inside the main hall, an elderly with messy hair was standing. The elderly had a pair of dragon horns on his hair, but one of the two was broken. He seemed pale, mad and anxious. Urchin marched over quickly. When he saw this old man, his face changed, Brother Oryu, why do you look like this? Brother Urchin, the dragon king of the southern sea, Urvu has betrayed the dragon family. I used up my last breath to come here to warn you. Oryu grabbed on Urchin and said with a painful voice, he instantly coughed out blood. He took a deep breath and said, My dragons of the northern sea vanished during the catastrophe. The dragons of the southern sea colluded with the demons, resulting in the entire dragon family to be badly harmed during the catastrophe. Now that I'm not doing well, the dragon family relies on you. Urchin's face sank down, Urvu betrayed the dragon family? Cough, cough, cough. Urjun almost had a seizure, he held on Urchin and said with a hoarse voice, I won't make it, you have to be careful. Meanwhile, a big carp wiggled in rapidly. Urgent. Urgent. What is it? Princess said that the expert is coming, she asked me to rush over to let you prepare. Uryun waved it off, asked them to leave, leave right away. Didn't you see that us two brothers are catching up? This is the last moment of my life, how could anyone disturb? Nobody can disturb us. The expert is coming? Urchin jumped up abruptly. His eyes widened as his face was filled with excitement and uneasiness. Make the arrangement. We must prepare well. He started to pace around the main hall. Suddenly, he looked up at the dumbfounded Oryun and said, Brother Oryun, how unfortunate. A special guest is coming, please accept my apologies for not being able to host you. Why don't you leave first? Spit. Oryun spat out another mouthful of blood, he pointed at Urchin with his trembling finger. He was unable to believe what he heard with his own ears, he was deeply offended. He sobbed, you've changed. You've all changed. Chapter 340, Demons of Great Vitality Urchin said, all right, stop spitting out loud. Somehow, hurry and clean up the blood stain in here. Don't dirty the eyes of the expert. You must be a fake Urchin. Uryun was so agitated and painful, or else you're betraying the dragon family just like the southern sea dragon king. My dragon family is, dead. Dead you're ours. Urchin scoffed, he said, I don't have time to explain to you now. The expert is likely to arrive soon. We don't have time. He wasted no time, he threw down order after order to make arrangements. Meanwhile, he suddenly thought of something. In a hurry, he ran to the gate of the Dragon Palace. The board had, Eastern Sea Dragon Palace, printed on. Instantly, he had an idea. No way, the expert gave him the role of a carp demon. This board, had to be changed. Someone, hurry. Urchin was so anxious. He asked his staff to come over, bring down this board, change it to the Eastern Sea Carp Palace. Hurry! Uryun was watching them all by the side. Instantly, he understood, crazy. You have gone crazy. Urchin continued to make other arrangements, right, these prawns and crabs are dismissed. Hurry! Bring in the carp demons. Ask more carps to come over. Seafoods. Prepare more seafood. 
These preparations had beads of sweat rolling down Urchin's forehead. He then let out a long relief and looked at Uryun. By then, Uryun already half laid on the stone by the corner in silence. He was sighing from time to time, while coughing out blood. His vision was blurry with tears in his aged eyes. My dragon family is dying. Some betrayed, some had gone crazy. There's no more help, no more hope. Let me die in peace. Brother Uryun, you can't lay there. If the expert sees you, how inelegant. Urchin walked over gradually. Uryun did not even want to look at Urchin, he mumbled, don't come over. If you're still my brother, let me enjoy the last moment of silence. Urchin smiled, he said, I won't play with you. Now that there's a big matter. Come, let's talk. Who knows, you might not have to die. Might not have to die? Uryun smiled painfully, he shook his head, brother Urchin, I don't know who this expert you mentioned are, I also don't know if you've actually gone crazy or not. What I know is that I won't live for long. As a dragon, we have a strong vitality, of course we're unafraid of ordinary illness. However, I've got the dragon killer poison, there's no antidote in the world. Dragon killer poison? Urchin's face went wild. His originally relaxed mood had instantly fallen to the pit. He gazed at Uryun deeply and finally sighed, who knows, perhaps, there's a chance. Meanwhile, Li Nian Fan arrived at the Eastern Sea with a big basket of crabs. Li Nian Fan had not been to the actual underwater in his previous realm. However, he felt that this underwater in the immortal realm was more interesting than his precious realms. There were so many demons with no lack of huge beasts. The variety of sea lives was an eye opener to Li Nian Fan. Furthermore, there were so many colorful corals as well as countless seaweeds and shellfish. They all gave Li Nian Fan a different experience. There were all kinds of glowing living things underwater. Throughout the journey, there were some palm-sized pearls by the side of the path, contributing to the overall sight and experience. Let alone the bunch of mermaids swimming toward Li Nian Fan. Dragon was leading the way in front with enthusiasm, Brother, we're arriving soon. It did not take long before a palace appeared in front. With just a look, the outlook of the palace made one feel shocked. How luxurious, how grand! It made Li Nian Fan feel as if he was visiting a wealthy family. He knew the dragon's family was a big carp family, they supplied seafood. However, he did not expect them to be doing so well. They even built their own palace underwater. He was expecting to be hosted in some cave underwater. It was just that his poor conditions had restricted his imagination. The entire palace seemed to have been carved out with crystal. There were a few crystal pillars supporting it, reflecting the majestic light. On the outer layer of the crystal, there was a layer of gold, along with some glowing pearls equally placed outside the palace. On the outside of the palace, groups of carps were swimming happily, almost covering up the entire palace. There were red carps, green carps and all kinds of carps. They were letting out bubbles in their mouths, very lively. Li Nianfan cried out in his head, the crap demon family was indeed a massive family. He looked up and saw that at the top of the palace there was a gigantic board, Eastern Sea Carp Fish Palace. Urchin was already waiting for them by the gate, Uryun was behind him. Urchin walked toward them, Mr. Lee, sorry to have made you come all the way. Please forgive me. Li Nianfan smiled, Brother Urchin, you're doing so well, I didn't expect your palace to be so luxurious. Ha, it was passed down by my ancestor, Urchin said so with his mouth but his eyes were fixed on the merit cloud below Li Nianfan's feet. How could he call him luxurious? The cloud under his feet was so many times more luxurious than the palace. Urchin introduced, Mr. Li, this is my elder brother, his name is Uryu. Li Nianfan instantly said, nice to meet you, nice to meet you. Uryun's face was still considered calm. He had heard a lot of information from Urchin. Although he was shocked, he was dying and thus his heart was calm like water. He was not too shocked. However, when he saw Li Nianfan coming over with that eye-burning golden cloud below his feet, he still could not help feeling excited. Greetings to Mr. Li, cough, cough, cough. Li Nianfan frowned, Brother Urchin, your brother. Urchin said instantly, he had a fight and was wounded. But he's coughing out blood. It's nothing, I'm fine. Perhaps the lungs are cracked, it's okay. Uryun waved it off calmly, he smiled as he licked away the blood by the corner of his lips. I wasn't able to hold it, sorry to have embarrassed myself in front of you. Li Nianfan was shocked, the demon's vitality were quite strong. He smiled politely as he took out the crabs, he said, Brother Urchin, I didn't bring over anything, 
I happened to see these on the way here, so I picked them up for you. These are, crabs? Li Nianfei nodded, yeah, they taste delicious. I wonder if Brother Urchin had tried this before? No, I haven't. Is this delicious? Urchin halted slightly, he quickly continued, if Mr. Li said it's delicious, then it's delicious. Li Nianfei smiled, of course I won't lie to you. To be honest, I'm craving for it. Why don't we try it later? Of course. If Mr. Lee wants to eat them, I'll ask them to prepare right away. Urchin was delighted, he nodded diligently. He made way and invited, Mr. Lee, please come in. Dragon was already hopping around the palace, she chirped happily, Brother, come on in. Lee Nianfen stepped inside the palace. He was instantly shocked by how luxurious it was. This time he was not shocked by the decoration, it was the people. By two sides of the palace, there were clam demons, they were all female with a thick clam shell behind them. The shell was opened with the shape of a human in the middle. Their bodies were very skinny, their long legs showing out from the shell. Standing on the ground, their bellies were showing. Their faces delicate, their cheeks and necks were decorated with small pearls, a very lovely sight. Their thick shells and the delicate clam demons did not look alike. One could foresee that once they were in danger, the clam demons would hide inside their shells and close them up. Other than the clam demons, there were other kinds of fish demons, they were bringing up all kinds of alcohol and fruits. Urchin made a gesture, instantly a clam demon walked over. He handed her the crabs, hurry up, ask them to make some dishes to welcome Mr. Lee. The clam demon received the crabs, her delicate face looked perplexed as she said in a soft voice, do we have to cut open these crabs? Or to boil them? Lee Nianfen said, no need. Just steam the entire crab. You don't need any seasoning as well, it's simple. Do as Mr. Lee said, hurry. Chapter 341, Follow the Expert Will Truly Benefit a Lifetime. Ao Cheng hurriedly brought Lee Nianfen to the palace and said, Mr. Lee, please, have a seat. The material of the furniture in the palace was extraordinary. They were all made from special ocean wood or carved from rocks. They were glistening and sparkly. Li Nianfan truly understood the saying, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. There were not a lot of things in the ocean but they had a lot of sparkly items and a lot of seafood. Everyone sat down. Li Nianfan casually picked up a crystal glass at a table and examined it. The crystal glass was small, dainty, and smooth to the touch. There was some translucent alcohol in it. There were ripples in the alcohol as it emitted a nice aroma. Li Nianfan sniffed it gently, then drank it in one go. He smacked his lips. He realized the alcohol was not strong and it had hints of sweetness. It was considered decent alcohol. Ao Chang said, Mr. Li, my wine's far off from yours, I hope you don't mind. You're too courteous, brother Ao Chang. This wine's a rare and beautiful brew, said Li Nianfan. They both knew Ao Chang was not wrong, but he could not say it as it was. It would also be inappropriate for him to take out his wine. Clap. Ao Chang clapped gently. A lot of clam demons and sirens immediately rushed in. They gathered at an empty spot of the palace and started to perform hard. The sirens were as skinny as water snakes. They looked nimble as they were swaying and dancing in the water, their bodies as light as the rippling water. The instruments were minimalistic. A few clam demons were blowing on snail shells by the side. It was quite enjoyable. Li Nianfan watched the performance and felt sentimental. Previously, he had watched the performance by the female ghosts. It was interesting that he was now watching a performance by the sirens. Female ghosts were humans in the past, so their performance was humane. However, the sirens were different. Li Nianfan thought it was exotic. The performances of the oceanic kind were splendid. The clam demons danced, the dolphins and the sharks performed tricks as an interlude, which was followed by an interactive performance from a whale. Li Nianfan cheered internally. It was worth the trip. Li Nianfan asked curiously, Brother Ao Cheng, is the carp family so powerful across the ocean? Um. Ao Cheng was stumped for a moment. He quickly formed his sentence and said, Mr. Li. It's mainly because of our ancestors. As the popular saying goes, the carp has leapt through the dragon's gate. Our ancestors were real dragons. I see. Li Nianfan could understand that. It was like a cultivator who had an immortal ancestor. Cultivators without an immortal ancestor were not on the same level as a cultivator with an immortal ancestor. Carp demons were related to dragons. No wonder they were living lavishly. Li Nianfan raised his glass and said, 
Let me pre-celebrate your future as a dragon then, brother Ao Cheng. In Ao Cheng's ears, that sentence hit differently. He was emotional hearing that. The expert's willing to change our status. He's about to define us as dragons. He was already a dragon. However, he needed the expert to feel that way, too. The expert was willing to see him as a dragon. He felt an odd sense of accomplishment. It was as if he was a child receiving approval from his parents. Anyone could tell a child that he was brilliant, but he would not think much about it. If a parent told the child that he was brilliant, then he was truly brilliant. My recent behavior must have pleased the expert. Ao Cheng felt touched, he even wanted to cry. He said in a serious tone, Don't worry, Mr. Li. I'll work hard to become a dragon soon. Suddenly, a clam demon walked in. King, the crabs are ready. Ao Cheng hurriedly said, Quickly serve it. Serve Mr. Li first. Soon, a bunch of sirens dressed in pastel chiffon clothes and had their hair up walked in. They had scales of different colors on their bodies. Apparently, they were a different siren species. They had small plates in their hands with red crabs on them. The crabs died with their pincers pointing upward. Li Nianfan said, I forgot to tell you. When steaming crabs, you need to tie the crab up for firmer meat. It would taste better. Ao Cheng instantly frowned. He hurriedly said, Mr. Li, I'm so sorry about that. The servants didn't know that. I'll have them redo it. No need for such trouble, it's just a small technique. Be mindful next time. Li Nianfan simply shrugged it off. Then, he focused on the crab. His first thought was, what a nice fat crab. Look at that big strong claw. Look at that wide back. Look at those thick and pointy hairs. In my past realm, this would be considered a hairy crab of the best quality. He picked it up. It was bigger than his bomb. However, it was not tied up as Li Nianfan said. Because of that, the shell of the crab was slightly raised and the texture of the meat was affected. For a perfectionist like Li Nianfan, it was slightly imperfect. It was not a big deal. Li Nianfan took out the seasoning that he carried with him. It was not a complicated blend, just vinegar and some ginger. He smiled at everyone and said, the crab's better with vinegar. Ao Cheng replied, I, I see. Everyone looked at their crabs and did not know where to start. They could only watch Li Nianfan at the side and follow what he was doing. Thankfully, they were a smart bunch. They were fast learners. Crack, crack. They all started to crack their crab shells. Everyone soon realized that underneath the hard crab shell was snow white meat. They were shocked at how much tender meat was hidden underneath the strong shell. Moreover, it was steamed without any seasoning but it had a nice aroma. They did not expect that at all. Ao Cheng copied Li Nianfan. He dipped the crab meat in vinegar and ate it slowly. First, his taste palate was instigated by the sour vinegar. Then, the tender crab meat was bouncing in his mouth. The wonderful flavor of the crab meat exploded and overpowered everything else. There was not a lot of crab meat but the strong aroma was there. It almost took over his senses. Soft yet bouncy. Fresh yet delicate. The aroma was long lasting and it was delicious. How could Yum even begin to describe it? Delicious. Ao Cheng widened his eyes and looked at the crab leg in his hand. He was in disbelief. Who would have thought that such a delicacy was right here this whole time? He took a deep breath. He suddenly felt like his years of living were a waste. He was such a failure. Li Nian Fan smiled and said, that's not it. If you crack open the shell, the crab butter of the male crabs and the crab roe of the female crabs are the best. How can it be so delicious? Ah Yun was also astounded. He felt his worldview turn upside down. He suddenly felt miserable. He started to tear up. Why? Why let me taste such delicacies before I die? It was happiness and torture at the same time. He had missed out on multiple delicacies before his death. He realized now that it was not just one missed opportunity. That was the worst pain in his life. He had only one thought in his mind, eat. I have to eat as much as I can to repay myself before I die. Daji peeled open a crab leg and fed it to Li Nianfan. She said softly, I peeled this for you. Li Nianfan opened his mouth and ate it. He said, pleased, yum, delicious. That's so nice of you, Daji. Daji smiled and said, he he, thanks. Let me peel a crab claw for you. Brother, check this out. Dragon cast a spell. Water ripples were formed out of thin air. Then, the crab shell was easily separated from the crab meat. Li Nianfan looked at the white crab meat and felt envious. Legendary skill. 
That's a legendary skill for eating crabs. He was in awe. A lot of people wish they could eat mouthfuls of crab meat in one go. However, Dragon was not going to share. She opened her little mouth and instantly devoured the crab meat. Her small cheeks were puffed up. She looked at Lee Nyan Fan, waiting to be complimented. Lee Nyan Fan looked at his crab. He instantly felt like it was not as delicious anymore. However, he still said, crab meat's delicious because of the deshelling process. If you don't remove the shell bit by bit with your hands, the crab meat won't taste as good. Then, he continued to focus on deshelling his crab. Ao Chang and the others who were about to shell their crabs with their powers instantly stopped in silence. They followed Li Nian Fan. They calmly deshelled their crabs bit by bit with their hands. Deshelling was a boring process. However, everyone soon realized they were more focused when they were deshelling. They even grew calmer gradually. There were only two simple thoughts in their minds. One of them was to shell it, the other was to eat it. They subconsciously became arrogant as their powers grew because they could achieve things easily. It caused them to lose focus. They also lacked discipline in their minds because they could do a lot of things with ease. However, they suddenly reclaimed themselves. They felt as if they had safely returned to the shore. This isn't just deshelling, this is clearly training our mentality. The expert's truly the expert. His state of mind makes us sweat. No wonder he can do anything. He's talented and can blend in as an ordinary man. If it were us, we would have been arrogant and endlessly snobby. How can we be ordinary people? A lesson learned from the experts enough to benefit us for a lifetime. Everyone cheered internally. The oceanic performance continued. Li Nianfan was surprised that a bunch of seafood was on the stage. The Australian lobster, king crab, squid, salmon, and more. There were a lot of performers, but they did not dance. They joyfully swam around instead. They seemed to be displaying themselves. Mr. Lee, this is the seafood get-together show. It's a performance we personally prepared for you. Ao Chang smiled and continued, they're the elites of seafood. Their meat is top-notch. Mr. Lee, if you have your eyes on any of them, you can just tell me. You can bring it home to make a nice meal. That'd be nice, right? If you want, you can bring it all back with you. Thanks for everything, Brother Ao Chang. Oh yeah, the hairy crab's such a delicacy. We can't let it go to waste. Ao Chang suddenly recalled something. He ordered his minions, minions, hurry up and get the hairy crab demon king. Tell him to pick a few fat and juicy hairy crabs as soon as he can. Also, list the hairy crab as a delicacy of the carp palace. Raise them well from now on. Then, everyone changed the topic. They started to comment on the seafood performers. They were discussing which part of their bodies would taste better. Cough. Suddenly, Ayun coughed again. He could not stop coughing, and he ended up coughing up a lot of blood. He forced himself to say, Excuse me. My bad, my bad. Li Nianfan noticed that Ayun's blood was slightly dark. The damage to his organs must be extreme. He could not help but say, Brother Ao Cheng, I'm afraid your brother's injury isn't looking good. Ao Cheng sighed and shook his head. Mr. Li, to be honest, my brother's been poisoned. I'm afraid this might be his last moments. It can't be helped? Ao Cheng and his brother are going to let it be? Li Nianfan stared at Ayun for a while. He did not see any signs of poisoning. He asked in a weird tone, Do you mind if I check your pulse? Ao Cheng immediately said, No, we don't mind at all. Feel free to do so, Mr. Li. He was naturally excited. He looked at him with devotion. Soon, Li Nianfan put his hand away and frowned. As expected, he could not detect anything except for a weak pulse. Li Nianfan asked curiously, What poison was it? Ao Cheng replied, Poison from a demonic bug that likes to suck on blood, flesh, and powers. Once it's in the body, it'll be like a bone parasite. It'll never be full until it completely devours a person from the inside. A bug like that exists? Li Nianfan was shocked. That was beyond his medical expertise. He could not help him. It's normal. After all, even immortals can't do anything about it. Li Nianfan asked, Is there no way to force the bug out? Impossible. The bug sucks on flesh and blood. The blood and the powers between the heart and the abdomen are the tastiest. So, it'll always stay there. If we remove it by force or attack it, Ayun will be injured. Ao Cheng paused, then said, As the parasite feeds, the host will gradually become weaker. The immune system will no longer be as strong as before. His wounds won't heal and it'll only become worse until he reaches a painful death. 
It was like a virus in the past realm, feeding on the host until the host died weekly. Ayun had a huge injury, but he would recover in no time if only he was not poisoned. However, the poison prevented him from healing and the bug was feeding on his blood and powers. A situation like that was truly hopeless. Ao Cheng noticed that Li Nianfan was silent. He felt miserable. He never doubted the abilities of the expert. He knew that the expert was not willing to help. It isn't unusual. It's not something to complain about or blame him. All hope disappeared from Ao Yun's eyes. He smiled and said in a carefree tone, Ha, I've been ready for my death ever since I was poisoned. I can still live for a while. To be able to eat such a delicacy like the hairy crab before my death makes it all worth it. So what if I die? I'm content. Parasite bug, likes to devour blood and powers. Li Nianfan suddenly had an idea. He groaned for a moment and suddenly said, Actually, there is a way, but I don't know if it'll work or not. Chapter 342, I am sorry, I did not know my meat is so tasty. There is a way. Ao Cheng and Ao Yun felt their hearts racing. They looked overjoyed. They automatically ignored whatever Li Nianfan had to say next. The expert says there's a way, which means it's going to be good. How could he be unsure if it'd work or not? He's being too humble. Ao Cheng gulped. He nervously asked, May I know what you had in mind, Mr. Li? The method, is a bit, um, weird. Li Nianfan hesitated. He had thought of the idea all of a sudden. It had nothing to do with medical methods and it was very weird. He already regretted speaking about it. Mr. Li, just say it, it's all right. I'll go along with it as best as I can. Ayun immediately had the desire to live again. He saw hope, even his eyes were beaming. Li Nianfan was silent for a moment. He could only say, actually, my method is, to grill it. Grill? Everyone was taken aback. They had weird expressions on their faces. Ayun was baffled. Perhaps the expert thinks I'll die for sure. Is he going to roast and eat me after I die? Mr. Li, this, grilling seems inappropriate. Ao Cheng fell into deep thought. He quickly formed his sentence and then ripped Ao Yun's clothes open. With his chest exposed, they saw a bump between his heart and the abdomen. The bump was slightly pulsating as if it was breathing. Ao Cheng analyzed and said, the demonic bug's leeching around here. It's controlling the heart and the abdomen area. Plus, it's violent in nature. It's currently stuck here, but if it senses any movement, it'll attack like crazy and swallow the heart whole along with his powers. The body of an immortal was strong and powerful. They could survive even if half of their bodies were disabled. Usually, they could easily slice their bodies open to retrieve a bug. However, the method was not useful on the dragon killer poison bug. The bug would allow an immortal to live for a while if they did not do anything about it. However, if one tried to attack it, it would easily kill the host in an instant. Even a dragon was not an exception. Of course, I know it's not that simple. I'm not too knowledgeable about this situation either, but I'm just offering a hypothesis. Li Nianfan shook his head and continued, this bug's a pain to deal with because of its leeching area. It leeches at the most delicious part of the body. If we can create a more delicious area, will it be lured over to that area? This. Everyone fell into deep thought. Why does it sound like, it could actually work? Ayun said, then, Mr. Li, the grill you speak of is. Li Nianfan replied, what I meant was. Choose a body part and I'll grill it into something delicious. Thus, the demonic bug will probably be attracted to the smell and hopefully, it'll swim over to eat the meat. Da Ji finished his sentence, then, we'll cut it off cleanly along with the bug. This, this. Ao Cheng and Ao Yun's eyes were wide. They were shocked by the odd idea. You can do that? It was slightly ridiculous but it also seemed to be a sensible method. The expert's truly an expert. He can even think of such weird ideas. Ao Cheng licked his lips and said, Mr. Li, I'm afraid only you can execute a method like that. The dragon killer poison bug was too difficult to deal with. Once it leached onto a host, it would be restless until the host died. Nothing could make it move an inch. Absolute temptation was required to attract the dragon killer poison bug. They had tried the delicacies made by Li Nianfan and knew that his cooking was one of a kind. If it could make them lose control, it might be able to tempt the dragon killer a poison bug. Probably. Li Nianfan looked at Ayun and said, This is just a theory. As for execution, it's all up to your will. Ayun bit down and said, I'll die either way. I trust you, Mr. Li. Sizzle. At the side, 
The fire phoenix quickly cast a spell as soon as he said it. Red hot flames appeared out of thin air. The fire phoenix said in an indifferent yet slightly merry voice, Pick a body part. Grill it nicely. Ayun looked at the fire phoenix with anger and sadness on his face. This vigilante. This is an act of public revenge for a private grudge. The fire phoenix smirked, What are you looking at? Remember to pick a good part. If the meat isn't good enough, the demonic bug might not be tempted. If you can't tempt it, you might have to choose another body part to grill. The dragons and the phoenixes had a grudge-filled history since the beginning of time. Although it was washed away by the passage of time, it was still a very enjoyable experience to taunt each other. By the side, Ao Cheng suggested, Brother Ao Yun, how about the tail? I think tail meets the most tender part of the body. It must be delicious. Ao Yun was pissed. Shut up. We'll have to chop it off in the end. If my tail's cut off, would I still be a carp? He hesitated for a while then put out his arm. He rolled up his sleeve and said, Come on. It's just an arm. I can grow it back after a few thousand years. Nice and tough. Li Nai and Fan complimented. Guan Yu once scraped his bones to remove the toxins. Now, we have Ao Yun grilling his arm to remove a bug. What a legendary story. Please, put your arm over the fire. Ao Yun looked at the phoenix fire that was burning in front of him. He flinched. Never in my dreams have I once thought that one day I'd willingly grill my arm with phoenix fire. What a shame, I'm ashamed to the dragon kind. He teared up and put his arm over the fire. He jumped. Li Nai and Fan had already taken out his barbecue seasoning. He looked serious. He had a small brush in his hand. He dipped it in oil and brushed it on his arm. Quick, turn your arm. Make sure the meat's evenly grilled. Don't use force. Relax. Yes, loosen your grip. Ensure the texture of the meat's good. Your powers. Transfer your powers to your arm and into the meat. The demonic bug might be more tempted. Li Nai and Fan focused on grilling while teaching Ao Yun the techniques of how to cook himself more deliciously. Gradually, Ao Yun had a red arm. Sizzle. Oil started to seep out, covering his arm. It was glistening. Meanwhile, oil started to drip into the fire, causing a nice sizzle. Gulp. Brother Ao Cheng, you seem to be gulping. Nonsense, it's not me. I'd never. Ao Cheng protested loudly with a straight face but the saliva at the corner of his mouth kept dripping out. Gulp. 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 There were a lot of gulps. Everyone looked calm and innocent but their gulps exposed them. Aside from everyone in the room, the clam demons outside of the room were also acting weird. They started to peek inside with saliva dripping from their mouths. You. You all. Ayun was flushed from anger and embarrassment. He hid his head inside his shirt as if he were an ostrich. He was too shameful. Then, he started to gulp like crazy, too. He had too much saliva in his mouth so the gulping sounds were pretty obvious. Ao Cheng had to say, Brother Ao Yun, stop hiding. We heard it. It's your arm anyway. You can eat it if you want to. Ao Yun was still hiding like an ostrich. He said weakly, Excuse me, I didn't expect my meat to smell so good. Boo hoo, I'm too embarrassed to live. The meat's almost done. His meat did smell good. Even Li Nai and Fan did not expect that. Carp demon meat smells this good? Add some cumin. Perfect, he said while sprinkling a layer of cumin on the meat like a pro. Fume. Instantly, the aroma of the meat was heightened like a tsunami, covering everyone and everything. The entire palace was an ocean of aroma. Endless sea creatures came over because of the delicious smell. They surrounded and crowded the place. Ao Cheng was trying his best to stop Dragon. He yelled, Dragon. Calm down, calm down. That is your uncle Ao Yun, you can't eat him. Daji was also pulling on Dragon who had stars in her eyes. Boohoo, Sister Daji, just one bite, just let me have one bite. Nanan had waterfall like saliva dripping from her mouth. She was hungry. Brother Nian Fan, we can't keep it since it's cooked. How about we cut it and share it? Ao Cheng noticed that a lot of sea creatures were appearing. He did not look happy at all. He scolded. What are you all doing? Hurry up and scram. Are you all trying to commit treason just for food? The dragon killer poison bug moved slightly. It jolted and started to breathe heavily. Then, it squiggled and started to move toward the arm. It was careful at first, but then it was lured away by the delicious smell. It had one word in its mind, eat. It started to sprint toward the arm at high speed. Chapter 343, What a Bunch of Hard-Working People 
The demonic bug was fast. Clearly, it could not wait anymore. They could not see it but they could feel its excitement. It was lured to the arm and was ready to eat up. The fire phoenix focused and turned the fire into a sharp knife. A red light flashed. Slash. Ayun's arm was chopped off cleanly. It flew out. They could see the long black bug in the delicious smelling arm. It was like a giant leech. It was engulfed in delicacy. It felt as if its bug life was worth it. Blood and powers were lousy compared to this meat. This is what a bug life's supposed to be. Dodgy calmly glanced at it. Then, she used her powers. White crystal-like ice attacked the arm, freezing it into an ice sculpture. Splat! It fell to the ground. The ice sculpture was very hard. It was not even damaged when it fell to the ground, it even glistened. However, the splat sound sounded cruel to everyone. Delicious food, my delicious food. Nanan and Dragon stared at that arm and instantly burst into tears. The others felt like their hearts were empty. It was as if someone had wasted a rare treasure. My arm, my delicious arm. Ayun was also out of it. He felt extremely emotional. He went over to hug his detached limb, examining it. Too tragic. First, it was grilled over a fire. It smelled so delicious. Then, it was immediately turned into ice. My arm has been through too much. The air still smelled like delicious grilled meat. It was unreal. Li Nianfan could not refrain from comforting Nanan and Dragon. He laughed and said, Why are you crying? That's Brother Ayun's arm, you can't eat it. Moreover, the arm has a demonic bug in it. You still want to eat that? Nanan sobbed and wiped her saliva away. But, it smells too good. Ayun stood up and genuinely thanked him, Mr. Li, thank you so much. My life is saved. Thank you for your generosity, if you need anything in the future, feel free to let me know. It's not a big deal. Li Nianfan smiled and asked curiously, Brother Ao Yun, aren't you hurting? Ao Yun smiled and replied, I was distracted by the smell just now so I didn't realize it. It hurts a little now, but I was mentally prepared. I can handle it. He cast a spell on his wound as he spoke. Ripples formed on the tips of his fingers. Then, they attached themselves to the wound and formed a water shield. Li Nianfan did not understand the purpose of the water shield, but he knew that it was the right thing for him to do. He saluted and said, Brother Rao Chang, it's getting late. We should go. Mr. Li, why don't you stay the night? Let me treat you well as the host. Ao Chang naturally tried his best to make him stay. He said with sincerity, we have a lot of sea creatures, and there are a lot of performances and entertainment for you, Mr. Li. The beautiful views of the ocean are countless. Fish and prawns are everywhere. Why don't you stay and stroll around? Li Nianfan groaned for a moment. He smiled and replied, No thanks. Thank you for everything, Brother Ao Chang. Fine, said Ao Chang. Mr. Li, I prepared some seafood for you, as well as the hairy crabs. Please, don't reject it. If you want to eat seafood in the future, just inform Dragon. We have a lot of seafood here. Ha, all right. Li Nianfan accepted it. They chatted for a while. Then, Li Nianfan and the others left the Carp Palace. Ao Chang and Ao Yun stood at the door to see them off. The expert, is truly an absolute expert. Ao Yun sounded sentimental. That was the dragon killer poison bug. For millions of years, no one could cure a poison like that. He removed it in such a mysterious way. He simply made a miracle. I'm afraid no one would believe us if this gets out. Ao Chang brushed his beard and laughed. Ha, why the fuss? Did that scare you? The expert's unimaginable. It's the blessing of the dragon kind to be able to befriend him. My arm, was worth chopping. Ayun suddenly caressed his rock-solid arm. This is the arm that was personally grilled by the expert. The dragon killer poison bug's so lucky. It was frozen with my delicious arm, what a breakthrough. I have to frame this and display it at my place. Who would dare to disrespect me now? Ha! Ao Cheng looked at that arm and said with envy, Your West Ocean Dragon Palace is gone. How can you laugh? Speaking of that topic, Ayun suddenly sounded like he was in pain. He said in a low voice, the dragon door reappeared this time. I was thrilled at first. Who would have thought the South Ocean Dragon King would be a traitor to the dragons? I was poisoned. However, I have even worse news. Ao Cheng arched his eyebrow. What news? Ayun replied, the South Ocean Old Dragon King didn't die after the big tribulation. That old scum with a dark heart. Ao Cheng had a change in his facial expression. He kind of smirked as he said, Brother Ao Yun, 
Speaking of that, I have to tell you a huge secret. Secret? Ao Cheng looked at Ayun mysteriously. Then, he said smugly, not to flex but the old dragon king of my East Ocean, is also alive. Ha ha, envious, right? Li Nai and Fan strolled around in the ocean. He suddenly felt like his worldview was expanded. His life was interesting and colorful. Now, this is a proper journey. Such a leisurely life. This is the life of an immortal. It was dark out when he got back to the four-part architecture. The sky was covered with flickering stars. There was a thin veil of mist beneath the starlight. At the above immortal realm. The ice palace was no longer there. The ice had melted in a day and grass grew on the land. Everything smelled like flowers. Zay looked at the familiar yet unknown sight. She felt conflicted. She looked up at the sky with excitement and nervousness. She sighed and said, now that the underworld has reappeared, I wonder when the heavenly palace can return. Taoist Singh was standing behind her as he said respectfully, Seventh Princess, the expert's moves are starting to show. The realm's changing. The heavenly palace will return sooner or later. Hopefully, said Zay softly. She floated along the sky pillar and was back at the southern sky gate again. The two Daluo golden immortals were nowhere to be seen. No one stopped her either. She stepped into the southern sky gate. She was quick paced because she was familiar with the place. She easily found her way to the palace of the seven princesses. Z took a deep breath and calmed down. She pushed the door open and walked in. The room was very tidy. So tidy that it surprised Z. She stood outside for a long while. It was as if she was brought back to a time where nothing had changed. She walked in and made a turn at the end of the living room, passing through a circular door carved out of wood. The five figures that suddenly appeared made her jolt. The five figures were sitting at different places in the room. Some were playing the zither, some were drinking tea, and some were smiling. If they were not stone statues, it would have been a beautiful sight to behold. Big sister, third sister, fourth sister, fifth sister, sixth sister, Zay exclaimed. She hurriedly jogged over and hugged the stone statues. She burst into tears. Taoist Singh sighed at the sight. He was also tearing up. He did not interrupt Zay. Instead, he silently backed away, walking alone in the heavenly palace. In the Uelao pavilion, an elder had red strings in one hand and clay in the other. He, too, was turned to stone. The love and fate abacus were also turned into stone. Two stone statues of children sat next to Dan Furness at the Tasia temple. They were holding fans and seemed to be chatting with each other. In the Linksau palace, the throne of the Jade Emperor was also turned to stone. No one was on it. Beneath it were some stone statues. They seemed to be attending a gathering. The entire heavenly palace was deserted and creepy. Taoist Singh passed by the Linksau palace and went to the edge of the observatory. He looked upon the dark sky and searched for the star that he used to be in charge of. He could not hold it in anymore. Tears streamed down his face. Time passed, days went by. Li Nianfen was living a peaceful and leisurely life. Nothing much changed apart from his mindset. He was unrestricted. He could fly, and he had the protection of his deluxe merit flesh. His connections were wide and were still expanding. He felt like he could go anywhere in the immortal realm. His life was far more entertaining than before. The Holy Emperor came on the fifth day after the city god temple was built. He came along with an elder and a general. However, they came as souls so they could naturally be chummy. The elder was quite famous around the area. The general was a fearless leader that died on the battlefield. They were the first civil servant and war general of the fallen town city castle. They were chosen. They came here instantly to report to Li Nianfan. They told Li Nianfan everything including their life achievements. They were clearly there for his approval. The underworld respected Li Nianfan, so naturally, he would not be picky. He would go along with it and give a nice speech as long as the candidates were decent. At the same time, Li Nianfan got information about the outside world from the Holy Emperor. Zhou Yunwu was busy ruling the humans. Men Junlian was working hard at creating schools. Yucha was successful in preaching Buddhism while Gu Zairo seemed to be scheming. Ao Cheng seemed to be busy, too. Li Nianfan guessed he was probably working hard on becoming a dragon. Oh yeah, Zhe and the others said they were going to rebuild the Heavenly Palace. He wondered how their progress was. In conclusion, Everyone seemed to be busy working hard on achieving their goals. He was a bit of a useless bum in comparison. What a bunch of hard-working people. Li Nianfan laid in his rocking chair. He was lying on top of a silky green wolf king's hide. 
He also had a gray bear fur blanket on top of him. He was enjoying the warmth even in the winter. Dodgy was feeding him fruits at his side. His life was endlessly joyful. Lee Nye and Fan smirked and said, Good. Wait until they become super big shots, I won't have to do the work anymore. On the same day in a familiar place at the above immortal realm. A masked fox slowly appeared. She leapt into the city and kept walking. The little fox looked around, wagging its nine tails. She would look back from time to time. She seemed anxious. Soon, she was at a store in the depths of the black market. The store was still the same. It was dark inside. A black curtain draped over it creepily. I can't act like I'm too used to this. I have to act like I'm troubled and anxious. The little fox recalled the instructions her sister gave her. She stopped in her tracks when she reached the door. Then, she turned around and ran away. Then, she ran back again and stood at the door, seemingly hesitant. She repeated that three times before leaping in. The figure hidden in the dark grew impatient from that. He instantly said with a hoarse voice, Are you here to trade? The little fox nodded. Been here before? The little fox shook her head. You're the nine-tailed fox, can't you speak? The hoarse voice paused for a moment. Then, it continued, who would have thought that I would be able to see a nine-tailed fox? All right, show me your items. A weak light started to shine in the room. The elder fell to deja vu. The little fox waved her paw and a small bucket immediately appeared in front of her. The bucket was filled with milk. There was also a bundle of chives. Milk and chives? The elder was stumped for a moment. Then, he exclaimed, milk from the five-colored sacred cow. Nice, it's a wonderful item. Then, he picked up the bundle of chives out of curiosity. He observed it for a while and sniffed it. He instantly realized, spiritual plant? The chives are spiritual plants? He was beyond shocked. The orange I received previously was a spiritual fruit, too. How do we have a spiritual plant version of chives now? The realm has changed. Something's off. All spiritual plants had extraordinary properties. He could not help but nibble on the chives. He carefully nibbled it and closed his eyes to enjoy it. Soon, the old man blushed. He suddenly opened his eyes and said in a pleasantly surprised tone, This is good stuff. These chives are rare and precious. He looked at the little fox, These two items are rare. What do you want in exchange? The little fox replied meekly, I'm looking for a spiritual item from the Eldritch Eras. Spiritual items from the elder Chiras again? The elder felt his heart thumping. He was sensitive about that phrase. That was the third time he encountered a situation like that in such a short time. Most importantly, something would happen every time. He clapped and a brocade box instantly appeared in front of the little fox. A decent yet uneven gold ball was in the box. It seemed ancient and mysterious. You can feel the aura in this. It's an item from the elder Chiras and it's extremely valuable. The elder smiled and said, where did you get the chives from? Tell me and I'll give you another spiritual item from the Eldritch Eras. I won't tell you. The little fox panicked and ran away. She leapt away quickly. The elder looked at the little fox and fell into deep thought. Clearly, the fox knows where the chives came from. The chives are far too extraordinary, I have to get some. The elder sounded determined but he felt like something was off. He thought about it and said, I feel like something's going against me. Could this be related to my previous two encounters? Third time's the charm, I won't let tragedy reoccur. I'll do it myself this time just to be safe. Chapter 344, Cultivator, Do You Want Chives? The little fox leapt and hopped away quickly. Her nine tails seemed to be rubbing against the clouds. She was feeling quite merry. Soon, she blended in with the faraway mountains. Her eyes flickered. She seemed to be talking to herself, here comes the chives. Here comes the chives. She was about to leap into another hill when three figures suddenly swooped in and surrounded the little fox. Cultivator, please, wait. The three figures were three real immortals. They were cool and powerful. They had friendly smiles on their faces. One of them said, We're very interested in the chives you brought us, Cultivator. As long as you tell us the source, we'll ensure your safety and we'll give you lots of benefits. The little fox stood on her hind legs. She looked up at three cultivators riding on clouds. Her black eyes sparkled. Stop joking, cultivators. We've been waiting for you for a long time. Along with a soft chuckle, Gu Yuan, Gu Zairu, Pian, Ding Xiaohu, and the others quickly surrounded the three cultivators. The six powerful cultivators ambushed them. Those three cultivators were calm. 
They did not appear to be frantic. They looked up at the cultivators that had appeared out of nowhere. Ha, I guessed it. Someone's indeed against us. They heard a burst of loud laughter. The elder from the black market store rode in on some clouds along with two golden immortals behind him. He felt like an emperor walking in, dismissively looking at everyone with a cold smirk. He carefully examined Gu Ziru and Gu Yuan and he instantly realized something. He yelled, it's you guys. I knew it, I knew it. You guys are scheming on me, Ma Yunming. This time, I'll capture you all. Ha ha. Gu Ziru and the others looked at the elder calmly, too. They were cool. Some were even smirking. Huh? Ma Yunming felt his heart thumping. He had a bad feeling. Capture us all? Have you asked for permission from the sword in my hand? Xiao Chengfeng stepped on a sword. His demeanor was cool, his robes were flowing behind him, and his gaze was sharp. He stared at the elder. Then, Ao Cheng, Zi, the Fire Phoenix, and Aji revealed themselves. The aura in the air changed. The place was filled with the power of law. Too many powerful cultivators had appeared at the same time. It was wicked. Ma Yunming froze in place. He jolted and went blank. He could not believe what was happening. Tai Yi. Golden Immortals. So, so many Tai Yi Golden Immortals. I've never seen so many Tai Yi Golden Immortals in my life. Did I just trespass a nest of Tai Yi Golden Immortals? Is this necessary? I'm just an owner of a small black market store. Do they have to bully me to this extent? He was dumbfounded. He looked up and felt his skin crawl. Scary, it's too scary. Not even nightmares can compare to this. After a while of feeling dizzy, he plopped to the ground, head first. Cold sweat formed on his forehead. He forced a friendly smile and said while trembling, This is a misunderstanding, this is all a misunderstanding. I, I, I'm just a store owner, everyone. This isn't necessary, it's really not necessary. The little fox sneered and scolded, it's a black market store. I was wrong, I was wrong. Please, don't kill me, big shots. The elder knelt on the ground and bowed down. He begged on all fours, my business is legit. The trades are fair. I was just curious about the odd items. I shouldn't have thought twice about it. Big shots, please, spear me. Ao Chang asked, what else do you have on you? It better be a spiritual item from the elder Chiras. Nothing. I don't have anything else. The shop owner cried, spiritual items from the Eldritch Eras are already rare. It all depends on luck, too. My only three items were traded away to you guys. My most valuable possession as of now is an intermediate heavenly spiritual treasure. Feel free to take it. He took out a gold shield as he spoke. It was most probably a defense spiritual treasure. Xiao Chengfeng was pleasantly surprised. Woohoo, an intermediate heavenly spiritual treasure. How luxurious of you! The corners of Ma Yunming's mouth twitched. He hurriedly said, I've been at the above immortal realm for a long time. Treasures are rare but I did get some nice items over the years. Daji asked, where did you get the items from the Eldra Chiras? Ma Yunming replied, I have someone who works for me that can seek treasure, often at immortal relics. That's how I got some treasures. He hurriedly added, if you want spiritual treasures from the Eldra Chiras, we'll do our best to help you search for it. Daji nodded, I don't see why not. Actually. Ma Yunming saw hope for survival. He was immediately thrilled. He hurriedly continued, everyone, if you have more chives like that, I can help you out secretly. I can trade for the spiritual items with the chives. Most immortals would be willing to trade because the chives, are useful to immortals. Guzairu was surprised. Oh? They'd be willing to trade? Yes, a lot of spiritual treasures ancient. Most of them got it by luck but have no idea how to use them. They're also unaware of its value. Ma Yunming groaned for a moment and said indirectly, the chives, are attractive. Immortals lived for too long. Hence, they were also bored. Otherwise, there would not be so many immortals who would dress themselves up to look like cool elders. They had lost their passion. The chives could help them regain their passion for cultivation. The chives would be popular once it was out. Zi said, if that's the case, it's a great plan. She was hoping to gather a lot of spiritual items and spiritual treasures from the Eldritch Eras. The Eldritch Eras were far away but the items were related to the Heavenly Palace. Daji said coldly, we don't want your heavenly spiritual treasures. We hope you won't let us down. If you offer us a good trade, we'll reward you. Ma Yunming was exhilarated. He hurriedly thanked them, thank you, 
superior immortals. Thank you for having mercy on me, wise immortals. I'll do my best in your honor. I won't disappoint you all. Guzairu looked at Payan and said, Cultivator Pei, you have a lot of chives. Give some up. This. Payan looked troubled and in pain. Then, he turned to look at Ding Xiaohu. He quietly said, Bamboo, look. This. Ding Xiaohu sighed softly. Hesitantly, she picked out two bundles of chives. She thought about it and tossed a bundle at Ma Yunming. We don't have many chives left. Take this. Xiao Cheng Feng was confused. Huh? Cultivator Pei, why did you let Cultivator Ding keep your chives? Pei and coughed softly. He replied, You've been single for all eternity. You wouldn't get it. Ma Yunming excitedly rushed back to the store with the chives. He opened the door and was back in business. Soon, a cool white robed elder with a horsetail whisk in hand slowly walked in. The elder looked around carefully at first. Then, he hesitated before walking into the shop nervously. Ma Yunming followed his usual routine. He slowly walked out with chives. Cultivator, do you want some chives? Cultivation is fleeting. Joy could be right in front of you. Why not seize it? These chives can bring you absolute joy. Soon, the elder walked out of the store as a satisfied customer. He quickly left. A while later, a beautiful lady in a palace costume walked in. She had her hair up and was incredibly well-dressed. Her ribbons flowed in the wind. She looked cool and gorgeous. He followed his usual routine again. Ma Yunming slowly appeared. He smiled and asked, I wonder if you have a companion, goddess? The beautiful lady in the palace costume frowned. She asked in an unfriendly tone, why is that any of your business? Are you trying to hit on me or something? Ma Yunming took out the chives. I wanted to ask your companion if he wanted some chives? Soon, the beautiful lady merrily walked out of the store. She looked excited as she left in a hurry. Chapter 345 Nice Management, A Different City At the four-part architecture, Li Nianfan was holding a Chinese ceramic cup with tea in it. He used the cup's lid to push away the tea leaves that were floating on the surface of the tea. Then, he gently blew on it before taking a sip. He said sentimentally, it's best to drink hot tea during the cold winter. Goodbye ice popsicles and soda. Of course, that did not apply to the two brats, Nanan and Dragon. They were happily sucking on their ice pops. Suddenly, Dragon seemed to recall something. She said, Brother, the gourd vine in the backyard sprouted another gourd. Oh, really? Li Nian Fan put down his teacup and walked to the backyard. It really grew. He smirked. He approached it and saw a gold gourd hanging on a gourd vine. The golden gleam reflected under the sunlight. Its size was about the same as the purple golden gourd that was hanging on his waist. However, their appearances were different. The golden gourd looked fantastic. It looked like an accessory made from pure gold. Li Nian Fan picked it up and held it in his hands. He felt like it was weightless. This gourd vine's awesome at growing gourds. I wonder if it's some kind of amazing spiritual plant. Li Nian Fan suddenly had a thought. This was a seed given to me by God Esku. It makes sense if the gourds are extraordinary. It looks cool, but it's probably not that powerful. Li Nian Fan went back to the four-part architecture. He wondered what he could do with the golden gourd. Creak. The door of the four-part architecture swung open. Dodgy and the Fire Phoenix walked in quietly. Li Nian Fan had to laugh. You two. Snuck out to play outside this early in the morning? Hee hee, we brought you something. Dodgy smiled beautifully. Then, she lifted her hand and out came a gold rock. She passed it to Li Nian Fan. Gold? Li Nianfan was slightly taken aback. He took the rock and examined it in his hand. It's quite heavy. More dense than gold. Li Nianfan arched his eyebrow and turned the rock over in his hand. He looked at it closely under the sunlight. The surface of the rock was very smooth. There were no sharp edges but it was not even either. The edges were a little crooked and uneven. However, it was not disorderly. It was quite nice to look at. Li Nianfan asked curiously, where did you get this from? Daji replied, it looked interesting so we traded it with someone. It's indeed interesting. I don't know if this rock's natural or man-made. Li Nian Fan smiled and nodded. It's very intriguing. He put the rock aside and said, Daji, I noticed that ever since you started to cultivate, you can't stay put anymore. Daji blushed slightly. She replied coyly, I just wanted to do more things that would entertain. You. Ha, it's natural. I myself can't stay put either. Li Nian Fan laughed. 
no one likes staying at the same spot once they're capable. It'd be awful if we just remained here in the four-part architecture. Transportation in the immortal realm was poorly developed and dangerous. Previously, he was an ordinary man so he could only stay in one spot. He only moved around the four-part architecture, the clear moon lake, and the fallen town. However, he was one of those people with a cloud vehicle now, so he obviously could not stay put. Speaking of that, Li Nianfan felt blessed to have Deluxe Merit Flesh. Otherwise, Daji would be forced to stay with him in his tiny four-part architecture. He felt like it would be wrong. Daji hurriedly said, the four-part architecture is the best place in the entire realm. I'm willing to stay here until I die. I'd be happy to. She sounded very sincere and honest. Dragon and Nanan jumped. They thought Li Nianfan was going to chase her out. They teared up and ran to hug his legs. Us too. Brothers four-part architecture is a hundred times better than anywhere else in the realm. We won't go out so recklessly anymore. What silly nonsense. Li Nianfan was entertained. He was also touched. He scratched their noses and said while smiling, How can our tiny four-part architecture compare to the vast realm? Even a canary will be depressed when trapped inside a cage, right? He stood up and continued, Actually, I can't be tamed either. How about we all go on a trip together? He felt like an ordinary person with a car. If an ordinary person did not have a car, they would only stick to one place. However, once they did, it would be convenient to go around visiting different places. How could he stay put? Go out? Really? Nanan and Dragon were instantly energetic again. They smiled widely. Lee Nian Fan smiled and said, Let me think of where we should go. He always waited for guests to visit him in the past. Now, he could go visit them. At that moment, he realized the importance of connection. He could go to a lot of places if he had the right connections. He could also go visit an old friend. He did not want to go to the Car Palace because he had already visited it recently. The Ganlong Immortal Dynasty was too close by. He still had, the Linxian Palace, Azureville, or the Xia Kingdom. Oh yeah, let's go to the Xia Kingdom. Let's have a spontaneous trip. Li Nianfan had a spark in his eyes. Let's see how Zhou Yun was handling the country. And Menjun Luoyang, too. Didn't he open up a school? I have to check it out. Moreover, the Xia Kingdom was the kingdom of humans. Li Nianfan was more familiar with the locals. Dragon and Nanan did not care where they were going. They nodded without a second thought. All right, all right. Daji also smiled and said, It's all up to you. Let's go then. Li Nianfan started to form a cloud with his deluxe merit light. Come on up. Get on my cloud, let's fly. The golden cloud floated away from the four part architecture and beamed towards the horizon. Li Nianfan naturally could not mistreat his close friends. His golden cloud was as huge as a house. Everyone could lay down on it and there would still be enough space. He could do whatever he wanted because he had deluxe merit. Li Nianfan had an idea on the cloud. He smiled and asked, Daji, you gave me a gold rock. I have a golden gourd here. It must be fate. Do you like this gourd? Daji looked at the golden gourd. She was in awe. She could feel how important the gourd was. She replied, I do. Li Nianfan smiled. As long as you like it, it's yours. This. Daji was surprised. She took the gourd and said in a touched tone, Thank thank you. She had pretty eyes. They were squinted from smiling. She suddenly looked a lot softer and feminine. Li Nianfan instantly felt his heart race. Li Nianfan smiled and said, Why so courteous? He paused for a moment before he continued, All right. Since we're aboard, how about we play a game I just invented? Li Nianfan took out a deck of wooden cards. The wooden cards were thin and refined. It was not made from hardwood. Instead, it was soft and bendable. It felt nice to the touch. Everyone knew Li Nianfan was working on that over the last few days. However, they could not tell what he was making. They guessed it was extraordinary. Nanan asked curiously, Brother Nianfan, what game is that? She looked at the wooden cards and noticed the strange patterns carved on them. She did not understand it at all. Li Nianfan smiled and replied, Poker, an easy game. You'll learn it after one go. He felt helpless. Li Nianfan never had a worthy opponent when he played chess. Daji could accompany him but she was not good enough for him to take her seriously. It was a pain for him so he had to invent a new game. Hence, the birth of poker. Due to limited materials, making poker cards was much more complex than making chess pieces. However, he finally finished it. 
Soon, the golden cloud was filled with playful laughter. The cloud was not fast nor slow. Half an hour had passed by when they arrived at the Xia Kingdom. Li Nianfan parked his cloud outside the city to avoid attention. Then, he walked into the city. The Xia Kingdom was completely different from when he last visited. It was busier than ever. The last time Li Nianfan was at the Xia Kingdom, the entire city was dead silent because it was affected by the plague and the war. People were fleeing from the city, and no one else entered the city at that time. Everyone looked hopeless then. Whoa! The weather was cold but the crowd was still bustling. Moreover, you could tell from their gazes that they loved their country very much. You could tell they were excited about the future from their conversations. Soldiers stood along the city wall. However, there were just a few of them. They stood guard on simple order. Cultivators flew by from time to time in the sky. They were quite familiar with the Xia Kingdom. Even the city door had been renovated. It looked opulent with its doors wide open, guarded by a guard on each side. People could easily go into the city after some basic questioning. They entered the city. The streets were bustling, and the sides of the road were filled with stalls. It was crowded. The crowdedness was different from Fallen Town. The stalls were not random. Most of them were stores. It was much more organized and tidy. The streets were clean and easy to pass through, probably because they had a city manager type of person in charge of the streets. Li Nianfan nodded continuously on the way. He had to compliment that Zhou Yun was ruling over this place quite nicely. The Xia Kingdom made Li Nianfan feel like it was a big city in the immortal realm. It was bustling and successful. Li Nianfan paused. He looked interested as he said, Xia Kingdom Bookstore? A bookstore in the immortal realm? I wonder what it's like. He smiled and walked into the bookstore. The bookstore was not huge. The owner of the bookstore was an elder with half white hair. He was brushing his beard with his hand while reading a book. He was living a leisurely life. He noticed Li Nian Fan and the others. He smiled and greeted them, Welcome, everyone. May I know if you're interested in purchasing some books or reading them? Li Nian Fan replied, just looking around. He noticed that a lot of people were reading books while sitting on the floor. They were obsessed. The bookstore made Li Nian Fan feel like it was a public library. He wondered if the owner could profit from this store. Li Nian Fan asked curiously, Elder, you let others read books for free. Aren't you worried that people will just read them without buying? Ha, I'm not worried. The elder smiled and said, Only the locals can stay here long enough to read. Now that the Xia Kingdom's bustling, there's a continuous crowd. They don't have the time to spend all day reading here. Therefore, most can only buy my books. And I promise, whoever reads my books will most probably be willing to pay for it. Who would have thought that this was the elder's business strategy? Free at first, pay later. Awesome. Li Nian Fan arched his eyebrow. So confident? Of course. My books are good quality. The elder smiled. You guys must be outsiders, right? Let me show you around. The elder looked old but was very energetic. He showed Li Nian Fan over to a bookshelf. There were a lot of repetitive books on the bookshelf. There was not much variety. Sir, look at this one. Journey to the West, written by Wu Chang'an, a cultured immortal. How else was he able to write such a magnificent story of gods and monsters? And this, Divine Farmer's Herbal Classics. This Divine Farmer's a living saint. He's rescued countless lives. If it wasn't for him, the Xia Kingdom wouldn't be this successful. It'd be a dead city by now. Buy this book. It's beneficial and super worth it. I don't need to introduce this one, The Jiang's Six Secret Teachings. Written by a legendary anonymous person. This was the key to our victory in war. Buy this for kids to study and they'll become a general in the future. And this, West Journey record written by the army advisor of the Xia Kingdom. All his revelations and knowledge are here. It's a good read. The elder was extra proud of the books. He excitedly introduced them. Perhaps he always introduced them to everyone who visited the store. He had an admiring glint in his eyes. Li Nianfan sighed in relief. He noticed that the books on the bookshelf were mostly related to himself. He retold the stories, and Meng Jun Liang probably shared a more refined version based on his stories. Either way, Meng Jun Liang did as he was told to. He did not mention his name and used an anonymous pen name. It was a nice move. The elder finally sighed and said, These books saved the Xia Kingdom. They saved the people. They are the basis of our knowledge. Li Nianfan nodded understandingly. He exclaimed, Elder, what a nice speech. The elder added, Do you want to buy a few books, sir? 
I can give you a discount. Ha, no thanks. Lin Ianfan shook his head. The elder was instantly baffled. He did not expect Li Nianfan to reject his offer. He was dumbfounded as he said, Sir, it's good morale to respect your elders. I'm already so old, and my mouth has gone dry from the speech. That's hard work on my side. You're troubling me if you don't buy some. Elder, I'm just joking, laughed Li Nianfan. He then said, Give me a set of these books. I like supporting original publications. That's very generous and wise of you, sir. I knew you were extraordinary at first sight. The elder was instantly energetic. He excitedly started to pack up the books. Li Nianfan accepted the books as souvenirs. He was about to leave. Suddenly, another elder walked in. He said to the bookstore elder, Old man Lin, school's almost over. Let's go to pick up our grandchildren. The bookstore owner smiled happily and said, Let's go, let's go together. Yo, someone purchased a lot of books from you, teased the elder. Then, he looked at Li Nianfan and jumped. He looked at Li Nianfan and the others who were leaving the store, completely baffled. The bookstore owner frowned. Old man's son, what's wrong with you? It's him. That's him. I'm sure that's him. Old man's son hurriedly rushed out. He looked and searched amongst the crowd. Who is he? That's the divine farmer. I'm sure of it. At that time, right here, my son was about to be captured for quarantine but I wouldn't allow it. He was the one who appeared. Old man son teared up from being emotional. He mumbled, he told me he wasn't an immortal. He's an ordinary man. But he cured, the plague. Are you sure you recognize the right person? Old man Lin widened his eyes. He had goosebumps all over. He looked in the direction where Li Nianfan disappeared as if he was a frozen statue. He felt regretful and emotional. I talked to the divine farmer. I accepted money from the savior. I, yikes. Chapter 346 Smells Like a Boot Licker Li Nianfan continued to head to the city center once he left the bookstore. It was busier than the fallen town. Li Nianfan noticed a very important factor as to why it was so. It was because of the school. A lot of people came here to send their kids to school. Some of them were even kids of cultivators. Apart from that, Li Nianfan also saw a lot of monks. He continued forward. There was a city god temple with many people inside it. They were almost at the city center. They would arrive at the school in the Xia Kingdom Palace soon. They stood outside the school and listened to the teachings and readings that were going on inside the classrooms. Through the window, they saw a bunch of kids looking up at Meng Junliang as he was teaching. Li Nianfan had to smile at such a sight. Meng Junliang sensed something while he was teaching. He turned and looked. He was instantly overjoyed. He subtly bowed at Li Nianfan and continued with his lecture. The class ended earlier than usual because the teacher did not delay the class any further. The kids were excited, acting like birds flying out of their cage. They cheered joyfully. Meng Junliang walked over and said respectfully, Greetings from Junliang to Mr. Li. Li Nianfan had to compliment him, the Xia Kingdom truly changed a lot. It's absolutely successful now. Seems like you and King Zhou made a lot of effort. Meng Junliang hurriedly said, It's all because of your good teachings, sir. He was not being humble. He was speaking from the heart. Nah, executing the ideas is harder than coming up with them, Li Nianfan shrugged it off. He smiled and said, We've been bored recently so we decided to go out and about. Pardon the disturbance. Not at all, not at all. Men Junliang shook his head continuously. Your visit is a blessing for the Xia Kingdom, sir. Please, follow me. Men Junliang felt like he was a student presenting his work to the teacher. It was much more convenient with Meng Junliang as a tour guide. Mr. Li, this is the general training class. Meng Junliang introduced class after class. He brought everyone to a yard and said, the students here are older in comparison, and they study war strategies daily. At the same time, we train them to fight and grow stronger. The students with good performances are promising future generals. Li Nianfan nodded. Nice job. They could hear the sounds of people yelling before they even reached the class. They sounded legit. The students are probably going through battlefield training at this time. Men Junliang smiled while he waved. A soldier immediately made way for them. The soldier was quiet. He had dark skin and a knife scar on his face. He was respectful towards Meng Junliang. The training field was huge. The kids were about the same age as Nanan, which was why Nanan was so intrigued. She observed thrillingly. However, she had to chuckle and laugh after a while. Li Nianfan slapped the back of her head. 
Slap. What are you laughing at? So disrespectful. I can't help it. Nanan rubbed her head and pouted. Their training's too basic. I thought it was ridiculous. It's simple but effective. We soldiers naturally don't go for glamorous spells like cultivators do, said the soldier with the scar. He sounded pissed. He did not like what Nanan said. Nanan scrunched her nose. She immediately debated, I'm not talking about spells. If I was an ordinary girl, none of you could defeat me either. The soldier with the scar did not look happy at all. He sneered, this set of moves come from the cumulative experiences of our countless soldiers that fought in the bloody battlefield. Cultivators without spells are like tigers without teeth. How would you match up with us? He was mindful of Meng Junliang so he was already being polite about it. Otherwise, he would have blown his top off. In other words, he was not convinced at all. He was mad. How could the army advisor bring someone like that in here? This is one of the most important places in the Xia kingdom. The big shots of the kingdom can come in any time but outsiders are forbidden. Suddenly, Meng Junliang said, Lin Hu, apologize. His voice was not loud but it sounded like he meant it without hesitation. His voice was low. Anyone who knew Meng Junliang knew that he was truly angry. I, Lin Hu looked like he was wrong. However, he still saluted and bowed. I'm sorry. Li Nian Fan also said, Nanan, you should quickly apologize to General Lin, too. Nanan also did not want to apologize. Still, she said, sorry. Then, she quietly told Li Nian Fan, but brother, they're indeed poorly trained. It's far from what you've taught me. Li Nian Fan shook his head. This is the basic respect between people. Remember to be kind, don't be that rude ever again. Nanan had special training. She learned more about fighting strategies than spell strategies. Li Nian Fan taught her some martial arts skills. It was not comparable with learning spells but it was suitable for Nanan. It should be useful for her to learn it. Oh! Nana drooped her head and batted her eyes. They could not stay at the general training class after that small dispute. Men Jun Liang brought them to the palace. Men Jun Liang felt guilty and said in a regretful tone, Mr. Li, soldiers are usually straightforward and reckless. I truly am sorry for offending you. Li Nian Fan shook his head. You don't have to apologize. It's Nanan's fault. Men Jun Liang continued, Mr. Li, I've already ordered someone to inform King Zhou. He should be here soon. Li Nian Fan said, King Zhou must be busy right now. It's not necessary. Men Jun Liang said without hesitation, No, your arrival's of the utmost importance, Mr. Li. Meanwhile, at the palace, Zhou Yun Wu was standing in front of a sandbox. By the side were the generals and advisors. They were discussing the opposing strategy against the southern brutes. Next to the sandbox was a map of the Xia Kingdom. They had separated the city areas and marked down the general situation. They analyzed the war as if they were attending a morning meeting to discuss politics. They were busy. It was of national importance. Normally, no one could simply disturb them. Zhou Yun Wu was frowning hard. He looked very tired. He yelled in a low and frustrated voice, half a month. It's been half a month. This is what you all can give me? An elder looked troubled. He slightly pursed his lips and said softly, King, the situation of the city's too vague and broad. Population, food, money, family. Even the traffic of visitors is incalculable in such a short amount of time. Zhou Yunwu stopped him with a wave. What about the situation on the front lines? It's also been half a month, there are no more reports. Not only that, it seems that our attacks have turned into defense. What's going on with that? A general said in a helpless tone, King, the more we go on, the longer the war will be delayed. It's truly to our disadvantage. Also, we have to attack and send troops for defense. It's a bit hard to focus on both sides. Zhou Yunwu glared at everyone. He rubbed his temples and asked, These problems are the same old problems. Does anyone here know how to solve it? Everyone went silent. Huff. Zhou Yunwu sighed. He plopped on the bench and said, Exhausted. As the saying goes, it's easy to attack a city, it's hard to defend a city, it's even harder to manage a city, and it's the hardest to rule a country. It's indeed so, it's indeed so. It was naturally harder to rule as his country expanded. There were too many issues at hand. They could not solve the issues without more issues coming up. Zhou Yunwu felt his mind was in disorder. He did not know how to deal with it at all. Think. Think about it. No one will step out of this room until we reach a solution today. Suddenly, a soldier ran in. 
he broke the tension in the air. Report. King, the army advisor sent me to deliver a message. He says that Mr. Lee's here. Everyone frowned. They felt like they had been disturbed. Only Zhou Yunwu stood up suddenly. He exclaimed, Mr. Lee's here? I have to go greet him. Then, he was ready to go out. He ignored everyone in the room. This. Everyone was stumped. Mainly because of the way Zhou Yunwu was acting. They felt as if he smelled like a bootlicker. That was not a good sign. An elder had to go and stop him. King, it's a crucial time for our country right now. I think we should place importance on the big picture. Now that we're all here to discuss something serious, any guests, even the important ones, should be held off until later. Agreed, Your Highness, someone immediately agreed. Now that the Xia Kingdom's considered a successful country, we are like the sun in the sky. Even immortals have to impress you, Your Highness. There's no need to personally greet whoever that visits, no matter how important they are. Your Highness, you represent the humans. Please, be mindful of your image. Uck, what do you all know? Zhou Yunwu glared at everyone and scoffed. He left. Chapter 347 The Sir is going to bless the people again. The last time Li Nianfan came by, he did not take his time to properly stroll around. He could do it much more leisurely now. Moreover, the Xia Kingdom Palace had obviously been renovated. It was much more luxurious. Suddenly, he heard footsteps. Then, he saw Zhou Yunwu rushing over. He instantly smiled when he saw Li Nianfan. He saluted and said, Greetings from Yunwu to Mr. Li. Li Nianfan also saluted, King Zhou. Zhou Yunwu genuinely said, Previously, the Xia Kingdom was a disaster and I couldn't properly show you around, Mr. Li. I always felt guilty about that. Now that you're here, I have to show you proper hospitality. Then, Zhou Yunwu showed Li Nianfan around the palace. He had a friendly attitude. The workers and maids of the palace all glanced at them weirdly. They wondered who they were. They knew that King Zhou would never bow down to anyone. He had the aura of a king. He came up with the theory of being an elite even as an ordinary person. He had never acted like that before. Humble. That was the word. He had never acted humble before. They went to the back of the palace, then went for a stroll around the jail to gain knowledge. Then, they went to the back garden. They leisurely strolled around the entire Xia Kingdom Palace. Zhou Yunwu introduced various things as they walked while he explained all the happenings of the Xia Kingdom. He mainly talked about the happy citizens and the positive state of the country. He was a king but he felt as if he was a reporter. Li Nianfan said, nice job. Zhou Yunwu was instantly overjoyed by that. Everyone went to the back garden. The garden was filled with flowers. There were pavilions and terraces there. There was also a small bridge with a flowy river underneath. A few huge koi fishes leapt and swam around. Li Nianfan was enjoying the view. He smiled at Dragon and said, Dragon, look. It's your kind. Dragon rolled her eyes in response. Nanan was chuckling at the side. Menjun Liang looked at Zhou Yunwu behind him. He had to step forward and ask quietly, King, aren't you facing a lot of issues recently? Why are you only reporting the positive things but not the worries? Mr. Li has already helped us enough. How can I ask him to help us with everything? Zhou Yunwu shook his head and continued. Since the expert gave me the important task, I have to be responsible for it. I have to do as the expert wishes. I can't talk about issues every time I speak. Men Jun Liang went silent. He understood what he meant. Zhou Yunwu said, Mr. Li, we've been walking a lot. Let's sit down and rest. I'll have someone make some tea. All right, nodded Li Nianfan. Nanan was impatient at the side. She said, Brother Nianfan, I want to go out and look around. Nanan and Dragon were not a tad bit interested in what Zhou Yunwu and Li Nianfan were talking about. They were already bored. Li Nianfan could tell. He smiled and said, Go. Stay out of trouble. Zhou Yunwu hurriedly called for a maid. He said with seriousness, Take the two ladies out for a good spin. Remember, don't mistreat them in any way. Everyone sat down. Zhou Yunwu gulped. He asked excitedly, Sir, what do you think of the Xia Kingdom now? The citizens are peaceful and happy. The country's successful and bustling. It's very good. Li Nianfan smiled but he paused to say, However, something's lacking. Zhou Yunwu and Meng Jun Liang were both dumbfounded. They looked confused. The Xia Kingdom was indeed facing an issue but they were still considered the best city in the immortal realm. How could something be lacking? Zhou Yunwu said with a serious face, Please, 
Teach me, Mr. Lee. Ha, it's not something serious. It's just that it lacks entertainment. Lee Nye and Fan smiled. When superficial things have been perfected in life, only entertainment could make it a more satisfying life. He was half joking but it was also a fact. Entertainment could rule the world sometimes. Entertainment? Men Jun Liang and Zhou Yun Wu fell into deep thought. They were both smart, so they noticed the meaning behind his statement. Men Jun Liang had to ask, but, how should we improve on entertainment? With this, poker cards. Li Nai and Fan once again took out the poker cards. The cards were freshly made so Li Nai and Fan loved taking them out. It was one of his rare entertainment projects. Li Nai and Fan smirked harder when he saw how confused Zhou Yun Wu and Meng Jun Liang looked. Say less. Let me teach you both how to play. Fancy a round? I dare not request it but it has to at each moment been my own wish. Instantly, a human sovereign, an army advisor, and a deluxe merit saint gathered around to play poker. Outside of the back garden. A bunch of chancellors waited there. They were mostly old men. They looked inside bafflingly. Suddenly, a palace maid walked out from the back garden. They immediately surrounded her. They were anxious from curiosity. How is it? What's the king doing in there with the army advisor? That palace maid flinched. She said in a trembling voice, They are, killing it at poker in there. Killing poker? Everyone was stunned. They looked at each other with confusion and shock. Who's poker? I want to kill him too just by hearing his name. How can the king do such a tedious task himself? Who's this poker? We should be the ones to kill him. I know. An old chancellor suddenly looked like he realized something. He started to deduce, wasn't the king going to greet an important guest? That's most probably it. Poker must be the name of that important. Guest. DSA. That makes a lot of sense now. Makes sense, most probably the case. Good job, kill that disturber. The chancellors brushed their beards and smiled proudly. The king had gone off the bootlicker route. That was worth celebrating. You're all mistaken. That palace maid shivered at the side. She almost teared up. She said meekly, poker's a type of game. The king and the guest are killing it at the game. Game? They're playing a game? What a lousy choice. The Xia kingdom's going through such a crucial time that will affect the future of our country, and he chooses to play poker? He lost his mind to games. The chancellors looked miserable. They were in pain and they wanted to risk their lives by going in to stop the king. Sigh, the king's important guest is truly going to affect the future of the Xia kingdom. An old chancellor suddenly sighed. He could not stop shaking his head. He sighed and said, I did some questioning on the way. Do you guys know that the king wasn't acting like a king at all? He was mindful of whatever that important guest had to say, and was extremely humble. Most workers even thought he was the fake king, an imposter. Really? He must be cursed or under a spell. The king isn't behaving like a king. That would be the doom of the Xia kingdom. What about the army advisor? What's the army advisor doing? Is he under a spell, too? The army advisor? Don't even mention him. A general walked over with grief on his face. He said with a teary face, not long ago, the army advisor brought that important guest to the general training class. They, they. Boohoo. Everyone was out of it. They what? Spit it out. They mocked the training of our general training class. General Lin spoke out of defense. Guess what? The army advisor ordered him to apologize. What? Really? Mistake. That's a mistake. That person will be the downfall of our Xia kingdom. The chancellors teared up. Some of them were weeping from being emotional, they felt miserable. This can't go on any longer. Everyone, please, follow me to talk some sense into them. That's right. This can't go on. Let's go together. So what if we die? Everyone agreed and walked towards the back garden. Clang. A row of soldiers pulled out their swords at the same time. Their swords were shiny and sharp. The king's greeting a guest. Trespassers will be killed. This. Well, we can wait. It appears that this can go on, we don't have to rush. True, so true. Pair of threes. Nope. Pass. Lee Nye and Fan placed his final card. A four. Sorry, I win again. Again, again. Zhou Yunwu felt extremely aggrieved. He could not accept that he always lost in such a lousy way. He had to look at Meng Jun Liang. Army advisor, why do I feel like your mind's somewhere else? Oh, sorry. I'm thinking of something. 
I've lost focus. Meng Liang had a frown the whole time he was staring at the cards. He felt like he missed out on an important factor but he did not know what it was. What is it exactly? He was dumbfounded. He watched Li Nian Fan shuffle the cards and distribute them. Then, he picked up the cards and stared at the numbers on the cards in a daze. Zhou Yunwu teased, Army advisor, you're the starter of this round. What are you going blank for? Don't tell me you haven't memorized all the numbers on the cards? Numbers? Oh yeah, numbers. Meng Liang jolted as if he was woken up from a dream. He stared at the numbers on the poker cards with wide eyes. He recalled Li Nian Fan's teaching of the tutorial of the game. This is one, this is two, this is three. This, this is. He started to tremble to his core. He had goosebumps all over. He almost scratched his scalp off. Bam! He stood up all of a sudden. The chair that he sat on flew away and fell over. Simplified numbers. Of course, to calculate our population, food, and everything else. Why don't we calculate them with simplified numbers? It's clear and easy to understand. Even elders and children can easily identify them. It was as if he was introduced to a whole new world. His lips were trembling and he was flushed. He said in a trembling voice, Why didn't I think of it? Why didn't I think of that before? A legendary idea, this is a legendary touch. His voice was hoarse and high-pitched. Zhou Yunwu was also astounded at that idea. He felt his heart thump. Bam! The chair that Zhou Yunwu sat on also flew away. He stuttered, Army, Army Advisor, you. What did you say? Come again? Meng Junliang said in an excited tone, King, these are simplified numbers. If we apply this method to our calculations, it'll be much more simple and easier. Yeah, simplified numbers. This is a blessing for the Xia Kingdom. Zhou Yunwu could not help being emotional. He felt as if a huge opportunity was waving at him. He hurriedly took a deep breath and faced Li Nian Fan. He bowed with the utmost respect, he was extremely devoted and genuine. He thanked him, Thank you so much, Mr. Li. You have blessed the people again. Meng Jun Liang also placed his hand on his waist and bowed deeply. Sir, I see that we aren't just playing games. You're clearly trying to give us advice. Pardon me for being slow minded. I just realized it now. I truly am embarrassed about that. Thanks for everything you've taught me, Mr. Li. What are you embarrassed about? I'm the one that's embarrassed. I just wanted to play poker in peace. Li Nian Fan bafflingly looked at the two trouble minded humans. He moved his lips but no words came out. In the end, he could only say, Nicely done, my beloved students. As long as you get it. Fine. Since he already bowed and thanked me, I can only pretend to be cool in this awkward situation. Zhou Yunwu said with respect, Mr. Li, you're truly talented. You can think of such an idea. You invented a new numbering system. We have to pass it on for generations. Meng Jun Liang also suggested, Mr. Li, the number should have a name. Why don't we name it after you? No. Li Nian Fan immediately raised his hand to stop him. Call it Arabian numbers. It's nice and catchy. Arabian, numbers? Meng Jun Liang and Zhao Yun Wu were stunned. Then, they nodded at the same time. Good name. It sounds deep and mysterious but also catchy. So good, Mr. Li. Even the names you come up with are unique. All right, settle down. Li Nian Fan waved it off. He felt like the two humans were jokers. He had to laugh, you think that's all for Arabian numbers? There's more? Zhou Yunwu was intrigued. He said with respect, please, teach me, Mr. Li. Sit. Sit down, let's learn it slowly. Li Nian Fan gestured for them to sit. Then, he said, Doji, take out our pen and paper. He started writing. Let me teach you basic addition and subtraction. Look carefully at this. 1 plus 1 equals 2. 1 plus 1 equals 2? Meng Jun Liang frowned and fell deep into thought. He was confused. Why so? I don't get it. This is a symbol, it's for calculation conveniences. I see. 1 plus 1 equals 2. I finally learned it. Next, let me teach you the 9 9 multiplication table. Memorize it with me. After an hour, the cheeks of Meng Jun and Zhou Yun Wu were numb because their jaws were on the floor for the entire hour. As Li Nian Fan ended his lecture, their minds were blown. They felt as if a magical door opened for them. Eureka, revelation. Mr. Li, your explanations are the words of a saint. Zhou Yunwu was extremely emotional. His entire body was shivering. 
The method taught by Li Nianfan was enough to change the Xia kingdom entirely. It was a blessing for the people. Indescribable. That's indescribable. Men Yong did not know what to do. In the end, his legs gave in. He knelt to the ground and said, Only being on all fours can express my admiration towards you, Mr. Li. He can't be blamed for acting like that. As the saying goes, having heard the way in the morning, one may die content in the evening. Meng Junliang was an educated man. He always looked for knowledge. Li Nianfan showed him a whole new field of knowledge. If it was not for Li Nianfan, he would have never heard of such a thing. He owed Li Nianfan for the blessing. He was behaving like that because he got too emotional. He was worshipping the knowledge that Li Nianfan showed him. Li Nianfan helped Meng Junliang up. He smiled and said, All right, settle down. This is just a new field of study. Call it mathematics from now on. It's important. Let the kids learn it. Focus on practicing. Meng Jun Liang and Zhou Yun Wu nodded with seriousness at the same time. For sure. For sure. Chapter 348 Shallow, We Were Too Shallow. Meanwhile, at the general training class, Nanan and Dragon reappeared with cheekiness in their eyes. The general with the scar, Lin Hu, did not want to see them at all. However, he had orders to not offend them. So, he could only ignore them and pretend that they were not there. They're just two immature brats. I don't have to be mad at them. I don't want to be so angry that I hurt myself. Lin Hu comforted himself. He instantly felt much better. He was in a better mood. However, before he could smile about it, the two brats smugly walked over to the training field. Nanan had her head up as she looked down on everyone. She slowly stepped forwards while everyone was staring at her. Her voice was like a child's as she said, I can back up my statement. I don't want people to underestimate me. I also don't want my brother Nianfan to be looked down on. I said I could take on all of you, I meant it. Fight me. The training field went silent. The kids looked at that girl with ever-changing facial expressions. They heard about what happened earlier so they were naturally pissed. Lin Hu frowned. Little girl, what are you trying to do? I'm not up to anything. I just want to show you that I'm not bluffing. No spells? No need for that. You're the guest of the king. I can't be responsible for hurting you. Hurt me? I think you're still dreaming. Stop delaying, come on and finish it. Okay. I have to change my impression of you just because you dared to come back here. Complimented Lin Hu. Then, he yelled at everyone. You've been underestimated by a little girl, what do you do? Fight, yelled everyone. Lin Hu nodded with satisfaction. Good, use that energy. On my mark, fight. Go. The bunch of kids sprinted at Nanan with seriousness. Nanan took it more seriously, too. She stepped forward and bent down slightly. She lifted her arms and was ready to attack. Her attacks were fast and clean. Her opponents won in numbers but they were useless. Their moves were also clumsy and weak in comparison. Bam! She knocked them all out in one go. Soon, everyone in the training field was unconscious. The kids who previously looked enraged were groaning on the ground. This. 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 Lin Hu was stunned. He felt thunderstruck. He could not believe his eyes. He was watching from the side. Everything became very real to him. That was why he was so shocked. He was petrified. Nana did not have complex moves. However, the combination of her moves made her agile. She looked good while fighting. She was clearly different from the kids who only knew how to yell and punch. He hated to admit it but he had to. The kids, were not on her level. He recalled what Nanan previously said. He initially thought that she was mocking them. It appeared that she was merely telling the truth. Is. You really didn't use any spells. Then, what was that? Lin Hu stood there, bewildered as he mumbled, I'm too shallow. I'm too shallow. That was. Kung Fu. Nanan stood up straight while she answered his question. Kung Fu? Lin Hu remembered that word in his heart. His eyes were slightly red. He asked, his voice trembling from excitement, Can. Ordinary people learn it? Nanan wheezed and thought about it. Brother Nianfan said this was something to learn for a healthy and strong body. Even ordinary people can learn it. Plop. Lin Hu plopped to the floor without a second thought. He looked hopeful and begged in a sincere voice, Please, teach me, lady. Meng Jun Liang and Zhou Yun Wu quickly walked out from the back garden. They looked emotional and excited. Arabian numbers. Plus, minus, multiply, and divide. What incredible inventions. 
they could not wait to tell everyone about that so they had to momentarily excuse themselves from Li Nianfan. The chancellors were crying and discussing what to do next. They suddenly saw their king and the army advisor walking out from the back garden. They instantly jolted and walked up to them. Your Highness, you finally came out. If this goes on any longer, I'll have to commit suicide to prove a point. Your Highness, please, wake up. Don't be fooled by others. Army advisor, how can you mess around along with the king? The Xia kingdom's at risk. Zhou Yunwu and Meng Junliang could tell what they were up to. They looked at each other and sneered internally. They glanced at them quietly. Zhou Yunwu scolded them in a low voice, guards, who said they died to prove a point. Pass him a sword. Instant silence. What did I say before I left? I said none of you knew anything. Got it? Zhou Yunwu scolded them with a cruel voice, do you know who visited us today? If Mr. Li had a bad tolerance, what you all did today would be considered treason. Sinning with death penalties. I'm not going to lie to you, if Mr. Li slightly displeased because of you, you'll all be killed. Everyone flinched and went cold. They could tell he was being serious. He was not joking. An elder had to ask, Your Highness, who's that person that could make you act like this? That person. Zhou Yunwu took a deep breath and said, Is the savior of the entire Xia kingdom. The Xia kingdom's the way it is now because he gave it a new life, and it also became successful because of him. To me, he's the masterful savior. Everyone was stunned by that comment. It was beyond them. Their ears were ringing from that. I'm not going to keep talking about this. Mr. Li must have come here because he knew about the problems of the Xia kingdom. He came here to give us advice. Men Junliang stepped out and said, The Xia kingdom's successful but not perfect in any way. We're like a huge blank canvas. We don't know where to start. However, one of our biggest issues can be solved. Please, have a look, everyone. He took out the paper Li Nianfan scribbled on and carefully laid it out in front of everyone. Stop, don't reach for it. Don't touch it. Don't touch that cursed thing, kill it. Everyone quickly retracted and looked at the paper out of curiosity. They saw a bunch of symbols that they did not understand. They all frowned and looked miserable. They sighed. This is it? It's over. They're indeed under a spell, they're cursed. Listen up, this is a brand new technique. It's also a brand new era. Men Junliang sounded serious. Listen to me carefully. Half an hour later, the Chancellor started to fall deep into thought. Someone started to gasp after half an hour. After another hour, half of the Chancellors had wide eyes. They gasped. Another half an hour later. Gasp. Only a few of them still looked confused. The others were amazed as they gasped at the same time. I can't believe it. Awesome, truly awesome. 1 plus 1 equals 2. Nice, nice. If we use this system, everything related to the city can be easily understood on site. Moreover, it's closely related to the lives of the people. It's widely beneficial for future developments. The success of our Xia kingdoms upon us. That important guest, thought of this idea? Legend. He's a true legend. Everyone was instantly convinced. They were in awe and could not calm down. But, Your Highness. A general stepped forward. He felt hurt by not being intelligent so he said angrily, even if this guy's a genius, he still mocked us at the general training class. I truly can't tolerate that. Report. A soldier ran over quickly. His face was flushed from running and he had tears in the corners of his eyes. Report for the king. Good news, great news. The soldier was stuttering. He said in a trembling voice, that little girl has a legendary skill known as Kung Fu. Ordinary people can learn it. It makes our soldiers fight better. They'll be able to take on 10 opponents at a time. General Lin who's currently begging the little girl to teach him. He sent me to pass on the message for his apology. He said that he was uneducated and too shallow. Yikes. Kung Fu? Fight 10 opponents? She wasn't bluffing. If we learn Kung Fu, we'll be able to attack and defend. Our big issue has once again been solved. This person, is magnificent. Magnificent. It's the Xia Kingdom's blessing to befriend that person. I previously spoke out of disrespect. I was wrong. Your Highness, we can't mistreat such a person. What do you think about me? I'm absolutely humble and polite. I can be quiet at the side, too. I'm the right person to accompany you. Your Highness, why are you still standing here? Hurry up and accompany him. Don't act boastfully. Chapter 349 The Talented Buddha Li Nian Fan wanted to stay at the Xia Kingdom. For him, 
The Xia kingdom was like a big city of humans. Their lives were convenient and happening. Moreover, the people were all friendly and nice. Zhou Yunwu, Meng Junluoyang, and even the chancellors were all humble. They would stop and salute him. It was very suitable for him to stay. He did not stay at the Carp Palace because first of all, that was the bottom of the ocean. He was not used to it. Second of all, it felt awkward and uncomfortable. Thirdly, no one could accompany him. Humans were creatures of the community after all. Li Nianfan could not deny that he was a simple man. He was far from that isolated lifestyle. He very much enjoyed crowded places. Zhou Yunwu realized that the expert was interested in staying. He gave him a huge house in the city center without hesitation. He did not send palace maids and servants over because he knew that would be a bad idea. However, he did send a lot of silver to him. Li Nianfan was just going to stay for a few days but it was the honor of the Xia kingdom. Li Nianfan accepted the house. It was nice. He stayed for 10 days. Li Nianfan stayed in the mountains for 5 years. That was his first stay in a successful city. He instantly felt different. The Xia kingdom was successful. There were cultivators that slew demons and there were Buddhists who helped lost souls by preaching. The guards also warded off thieves. The city management was much safer than the previous years. It reminded Li Nianfan of the Tang dynasty and journey to the west. The humans had been living lavishly by then. However, since the realm was a legendary fantasy realm, how did it end up like that? Li Nianfan had to think about it. Buddhism was gone, the heavenly palace was gone. The underworld recently reappeared. It seemed like most people, including the cultivators, had no knowledge of their history when he was reciting his stories. He could see that the realm was too far into the future of his familiar fantasy realm. Most people forgot about that part of history. Most likely a million years after journey to the west. Li Nianfan analyzed in his mind, Buddhism was most likely destroyed by demons. As for the heavenly palace and the underworld. Weirdly, they faced problems. Also, do saints exist in this realm? What about goddess Nuwa, primates, or gods? Li Nianfan had to piece it together. After all, he had to be familiar with his surroundings. A familiar worldview was an important factor to not end up like Xiao Bei. He would have missed out on a lot of opportunities. There was no harm in knowing more. A loud bell could be heard early in the morning. Clang. 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 The bell rang three times. The echoes were clear. The source of the sounds was from the Buddhist temple of the Xia kingdom. Li Nianfan was not sure if he was thinking too much but he felt like the whole city was livelier. The lively crowd started to go in two directions. One went to the temple, the other went to the city door. What are the Buddhists up to? Li Nianfan did not pay attention to the outside world so he did not know what was going on. However, he wanted to join the crowd. Let's go, Doji. Let's check it out. The bells were probably a reminder for an official event. Everyone was waiting for it. Brother Nianfan. Nanan and Dragon were both wearing armor. They walked over smugly. Clanging sounds could be heard. They were too small so their armors were too big for them. They looked kind of funny in the big armors. They had two rows of soldiers behind them. Li Nianfan had to laugh. The armors were given to them by the general training class. Ever since Nanan promised to teach them Kung Fu, the soldiers of the Xia kingdom were overjoyed. They worshipped her and appointed her the title of a general. Nanan was having the time of her life with her new title. Lin Hu hurriedly saluted Li Nianfan. He said with respect, Greetings to Mr. Li, Lady Daji. Morning, General Lin. Li Nianfan nodded. Then, he asked Nanan, Why are you out today? Aren't you supposed to teach Kung Fu at the general training class? It's so crowded outside so I snuck out to check it out, Nanan pouted and said. Also, I just taught them the lightning fast five stroke combo. It's not easy to learn. Let them practice for a while. Then, she curiously followed the crowd with Dragon. She had a spark in her eyes. Candied haws. Nanan and Dragon immediately ran over to buy some candied haws. They were adorable but they were wearing armor. The old man that sold candied haws was baffled. He almost turned around and ran. The two armored kids happily licked their candied haws. It was an odd sight. Li Nianfan shook his head and laughed awkwardly. After a while, more people came, but nothing seemed to be happening. Someone familiar walked in. Greetings from Jun Liang to Mr. Li. Morning, Brother Meng, saluted Li Nianfan. He asked curiously, Do you know what's happening? Why is it so crowded? Meng Jun Liang replied, Mr. Li, if my information's accurate, 
A Buddha has arrived. Buddha? Li Nianfan was taken aback. He was slightly weirded out. Awesome, they have a living Buddha. Yeah, I heard that the person's kind and can influence others to be kind. Even mountain tigers were affected by that Buddha. They stopped hurting others. Cultivators once thought he was talented. They took him as a student, taught him cultivation, but realized he was average. There was nothing special about him. Menjun Liang paused before he continued, then, he was discovered by Buddhists. This person converted to Buddhism and became an elite. He became a Buddha afterward. Seems like a talented genius, nodded Li Nian Fan. He was shocked but not surprised. Talented people could be found anywhere, especially in the immortal realm. Nanan's small mouth was open. Wow, so many people waiting for the Buddha. What a grand event. Buddhism can be influential. A lot of people resonate with it. They're willing to believe in Buddhism. Menjun Liang studied Buddhism before. Li Nian Fan asked curiously, is the Xia kingdom going to accept Buddhism? We aren't against it, but we won't convert to Buddhism. Menjun Liang shook his head. The Buddha must be here to invite the king for a Buddhism event or something. But the king will surely reject their offer. At most, he'll just send someone over. Wow, he even set up the plot. Li Nianfan was intrigued. He could believe that was going to happen. Zhou Yunwu had his Xia kingdom, Meng Junliang had his Tao, Yuzhu had Buddhism. They were three different concepts. They seemed related but they were not. The three concepts existed because of him. They were starting to turn on each other. It was going to be interesting. Li Nian Fan smiled and said, that's because the Xia kingdom isn't opposed to the concept of Buddhism. However, it'd be a different case to openly support it. Therefore, the Xia kingdom's going for the neutral route. In reality, Buddhism was beneficial for the Xia kingdom. Right on, Mr. Li. Menjun Liang nodded. Now we have demons and Buddhists. One of them is vengeful, evil, greedy, and competitive. The other one's all about peace no distractions or desires, and to kill them with kindness. These two religions are naturally opposed to each other. When people have different mentalities, they would debate. However, if their ideologies were complete opposites, they did not need to debate. They would just fight. Suddenly, Buddhist hymns could be heard from afar. They looked over at the horizon. They saw a shiny bald head at first. It was very bright. Then, they saw a monk with a shawl on. He was very young. He did the namaste gesture with his eyes closed. He was wearing a pair of shoes made from bamboo. He slowly walked over. That's so anticlimactic, boo. Creak. The temple door suddenly opened. A row of monks walked out, looking serious and strict. They stood at the city door to welcome him. They waited for the Buddha to walk over. Then, they said at the same time, Amitabha. A chancellor hidden amongst the crowd stepped out with two servants. He smiled, welcome. Buddha. Pardon us for the simple greeting. Amitabha, said the Buddha. He did not say anything else. The Chancellor smiled and led the way, Ha, the king's already waiting for you at the palace. Please, follow me. Nanan and Dragon had been waiting for a long time. They instantly felt disappointed. Huh? That's it? How boring. Li Nian Fan smiled and said, It's boring for you but not for his fans. Let's go, it's more fun to train those soldiers. Menjun Liang watched as the Buddha left. He did not look like he wanted to go greet him. He invited Li Nianfan, Mr. Li, do you want to go to the palace? Li Nianfan nodded and smiled. I was just about to. Please. Zhou Yunwu was sitting on the throne when they arrived at the palace. He was greeting the Buddha. They looked like they were getting along Mr. Li, army advisor, you guys have arrived. Please, have a seat. Zhou Yunwu hurriedly greeted them. He stood up from his throne and walked over. The Buddha looked at Li Nian Fan and Daji with shock in his eyes. They looked ordinary but their auras were immaculate. He knew they were extraordinary. That red sparrow, too. Although it's a sparrow, it is giving off a regal vibe. He had to ask, I wonder, your. Li Nian Fan smiled and said, My name's Li Nian Fan. Greetings to the Buddha. You're Mr. Li. The Buddha stood up and did the namaste gesture. He said with respect and caution, Mr. Li, you can just call me Jeez. Jeez? Li Nian Fan, Zhou Yunwu, and Meng Jun Liang were all stunned. Very few people knew the Buddha's name. He most probably kept it a secret because it differed too much from his image. After all, it caught them off guard that a living Buddha had a name like that. Thankfully, everyone knew to be polite. 
they did not burst out laughing and create an awkward situation. Li Nian Fan placed his hands together to do the namaste gesture and said, Nice to meet you, Jis. Chapter 350 Temptation Training, Red Clothes Jis looked calm on the surface. However, he felt very awkward deep down. He possessed the law of gaze. Li Nian Fan and the others looked normal on the surface but he could feel that they were secretly making fun of him. Whatever. Fine. Thankfully, I don't care much for my image. Jis explained, Buddhism requires resistance to desires and temptations. At first, there will be a lot of temptations that will test you along the way. Therefore, I gave myself the name. Zhou Yunwu nodded with seriousness, understandable. Jis, you're quite handsome. Although you shaved your head, your handsome face still stands out. Understandably, you gave yourself a silly name to avoid temptations. Amitabha. A handsome flesh only brings me trouble. Ji shut his eyes and chanted Buddhist scriptures. He invited, I came here today to invite King Jo to our religious ceremony. It's located at the Wanshan Ridge in the west. It's now known as the Spiritual Mountain. He looked at Li Nian Fan and also invited him, Mr. Li, we Buddhists are indebted to you. We hope you could visit us. Li Nian Fan smiled and said, I have nothing to do anyway, I'll go check it out. Jis was overjoyed. He hurriedly said, We'll be ready to welcome you then. Zhou Yun Wu said, Jis, Buddhism's in the far west. Please, forgive me for being unable to show up. However, I'll be sending a representative to pay our respects. Jis tried to convince him, We've invited all sorts of cultivation sects for the ceremony, and a lot of immortals from the above immortal realm will be there. Even immortals of the underworld will be showing up. It's a rare ceremony and it'll be such a shame that you can't show up, King Zhou. If you think the location's too far, we'll send someone over to escort you there. Zhou Yunwu shook his head and said, No need for that. I'm too busy managing the Xia Kingdom. I'm afraid I'll have to miss out on it. Too bad. Jis did the namaste gesture. If that's the case, I shall stay here for a few days. Sorry for the disturbance. Maybe you should reconsider, King Zhou. Li Nian Fan felt a deja vu when he heard that sentence. In translation, he meant, if you don't say yes, I'll be staying here and I'm not going to leave. Who knew the Buddha was the scoundrel type? Zhou Yunwu gestured to him to leave. Please, Jis. Jis left. After a short while, a soldier frantically ran in. Something was off. King, the Buddha went to the red brothel. Red brothel? That's a brothel. Li Nian Fan sneakily said, Doji, you should go back with the Fire Phoenix first. I have something to discuss with King Zhou and Jun Liang. Daji nodded obediently. Okay. Daji left. The three guys did not need to say anything, they looked at each other and headed towards the red brothel. At the red brothel? The brothel was full of beautiful and seductive ladies. Li Nai and Fan and the others arrived. As expected, Jis the monk was already surrounded by a bunch of prostitutes. What a handsome monk! Why are you just standing by the door? We sisters want to preach your sermon. Our lives are hard. How about we have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation? We won't charge you. Yeah, we don't have to talk about expense, let's just talk about dispense. Jis was not affected by such vulgar statements. He was surrounded but he did not care. He still chanted Buddhist scriptures. It had to be said. Jis was indeed a handsome monk. The ladies for the red brothel fancied his shiny bald head. Classic Jis. He was not tempted by the prostitutes that offered to service him for free. Zhou Yunwu gave some orders, and a row of soldiers immediately chimed in to arrest the ladies. Jis was saved. He stepped out with colorful lipstick stains on his face. He looked serious. Your Highness, you don't need to do that next time. I'm trying to help you. You don't understand. I'm undergoing temptation training. I don't need to be saved. Jis placed his hands together to do the namaste gesture and said, My name's Jis. The meaning of my name implies trouble in my life. I have to train myself to be free of temptation before trouble arrives. He sounded sincere but no one could tell if he was telling the truth. Jis warned, don't do that next time. Zhou Yunwu replied, excuse me, sorry for disturbing you. Li Nian Fan curiously observed Jis. Won't he hurt his body if this goes on? For the next few days, Jis would head towards the red brothel. He would not go in. Instead, he just stood by the door. Every time he went, he would be swarmed by ladies. Those seductive ladies would go and tease that emotionless monk. They would not get bored of it. Li Nian Fan always watched from afar. 
not because he was jealous, but because he was surprised by how well he could control himself. Geez, are you free from temptation once you're impotent? Truly a Buddha! What a legend! On the sixth day, Jeez did not show up at the brothel. He opened the temple door and sat on a high tower. He announced to the public that he was going to preach Buddhism. Moreover, he was willing to accept constructive criticism. He was going to convince the public with Buddhism. The Xia kingdom was once again lively. A lot of people went to visit the temple. The temple was crowded and they were busier than ever. Cultivators, chancellors, and students were driven by their curiosity. They also visited the temple and were all convinced by Jeez. Li Nai and Fan smiled and asked, Aren't you going to, Jun Liang? Men Jun Liang replied, Sir, people like us are stubborn with our ideologies. I won't be easily swayed by words. I know my place in the realm. There's no reason to go and debate. But that monk's converting your people. You're not going to do anything about it? Men Jun Liang replied, He's staying here like a scoundrel just for King Zhou to accept his invitation to the ceremony at the spiritual mountain. If I show up, I'll only make it worse. I don't want to go along with his wishes. They stood on a high tower and observed everything from above. They did not get bored of observing daily. Three days passed in the blink of an eye. Jis had not started the debate on that day. He was preaching Buddhism at the tower. A red figure flashed by in the air and landed in the temple. It was a lady in red clothes. Her eyes were pretty and her teeth were white. She had snow white skin and flaming red clothes. She looked like a white rose engulfed in flames. She wore golden bells on her wrist, and with a flick of her wrist, chimes could be heard. The chiming of the bells was not loud. However, it caught the attention of Jeez the monk. He suddenly stopped in his tracks. That young lady looked at the Buddha with her beautiful eyes. She smirked, Jeez monk, I finally found you. Chapter 351 Unique Lotus Leaf The Doctrine Jeez the monk's face that had remained unchanged for 10,000 years jolted. Looking unruffled, he clasped his hands together and said, Um Tabha, may I know what brought you here? The beautiful eyes of the woman in red stared at Jeez. She was half smiling when she said, as you said. Jeez let out an apparent sigh of relief. He made a gesture and said, If so, please, take a seat. Above the high tower, Meng Jun Liang smiled. The time has arrived for the monk. Jun Liang, you don't seem surprised. Li Nai and Fan looked at him strangely. There was a glint in his eyes as he asked, Did you find this woman? Ha ha ha, Mr. Li, you're so observant. Indeed, I attracted her to come here. However, this is the monk's own fate. Meng Jun Liang laughed. He seemed very pleased. It was strange for Zhou Yun Wu and Meng Jun Liang to not react to being locked in the Xia kingdom by the Jis for so long. It seemed that they started making preparations earlier on. Before Li Nian Fan asked, Meng Jun Liang said, since Jis always spoke about Jis, we decided to get to him this way. Starting from the west, they went to the places he passed by. He was a handsome monk who liked to go to the brothels. This feature of his helped him stand out from the rest. Quite a lot of information about him was circulating. Li Nai and Fan asked curiously, tell me. The woman's the daughter of the Yun family in Kuangzhou City. Her name is Yun Yi Yi. When she was deeply wounded, Jis helped her. Jis saw her naked body, and yet, he calmed down and prayed wholeheartedly. So what if he had seen her body? He said such things to comfort Yun Yi Yi. Men Jun Liang halted. Then, he shook his head and smiled, she's an understanding lady, she didn't hold it against him. However, on the second day after the two parted, Yun Yi Yi bumped into Ji's who claimed to be cultivating outside the brothel. Mr. Li, do you think this was a coincidence? Li Nai and Fan shook his head and smiled. Obviously not. Yun Yi Yi was straightforward. She does things passionately, and she's daring enough to love and hate openly. On the spot, she spilled everything that Jis did. Following that, she had asked people around her to capture Jis right away. Men Jun Liang spoke as the grin on his face widened. Unfortunately, the monk escaped. If not, he might have slept with the lady. I see. Li Nai and Fan nodded. He looked at Jis. One had to admit that his look was very handsome. If he had an ugly appearance, one would ask him to leave. However, with his good look, things became easier for him. Li Nai and Fan mocked, it seems that his name's quite apt. J stands for an unavoidable sexual crime. Guess it's true. Seems like he won't be able to get away this time. He looked at the temple to continue watching the exciting drama. Yun Yi stared at Jis. She asked, will you marry a wife? No. Why? 
Lust will make one's face sink and dry out. It's detrimental to my practice. I'm a Buddhist and I mustn't have anything to do with it. Yun Yi Yi continued asking, What's the benefit of becoming a Buddhist? There are eight sufferings in life suffering from birth, old age, illness, death, parting, resentment, hatred, and unpleasantness. Becoming a Buddhist can help one transcend sufferings and bring about beneficial results, Jis halted. Then, he advised, Madam's caught up with these eight sufferings. Do pray from time to time to learn to let go. Ha, monk, you're wrong. Yun Yi smiled slightly. I'm not suffering at all. In fact, I'm living in bliss. In life, sweetness comes after bitterness. Wealth follows poverty. You advise others to let go, but you have no idea that these are the excitements in life. Everyone lives by these eight sufferings, and everyone feels these sufferings. It's only when we understand these eight sufferings that we're able to hold it up and let it go, following the natural cycle. Li Nianfen let out an impressed look. He could not help saying in awe, wonderful. This lady knows it. What she said is the true nature of the practice. Menjun Liang was stunned, too. He intentionally attracted Yun Yi Yi to come over so she could confront Jis and make him leave sooner. Who would have thought that this woman was so sharp that she could debate with the monk? The monk raised his eyebrows as he mumbled, strange. He clasped his palms together and said, Madam, you're too obsessed. If you don't let go, you'll get too caught up by the eight sufferings and never detach from them again. Obsession's an excuse. You're obviously running away. Yun Yi stood up, her red clothes flowing in the air. The eight sufferings in life are a must. Instead of finding ways to let go, why not face them and learn from them? You must know it yourself, if not you wouldn't try to cultivate in front of a brothel. If you want to learn it this way, I volunteer to be your partner. No matter how it ends up, I won't regret it. However, the truth is you don't dare to. Jis clasped his palms. Amitabha. Yun Yi Yi walked toward Jis. She said in a gentle tone, a monk doesn't lie. Tell me, am I pretty? After a long moment of silence, Jis said in a low voice, I lost. Many monks in the temple went forward right away. They surrounded Jis. They were not attacking him. They were protecting him. In fact, they stared at Yun Yi Yi with unsettled feelings. This woman was like a monster, how scary. A monk said, today's debate has ended, please, go home. Our temple's closing their doors. Humph! Yun Yi Yi scoffed. She glanced at Jis and turned into a ball of light to leave. An audience who were waiting for the drama wore looks of dissatisfaction. They started gossiping about the drama. They did not even care about who won or lost the debate. With no doubt, from tomorrow onward, countless versions of this rumor would have spread around the town. The number of books in the bookstore would increase as well. Menjun Liang let out a satisfied smile. Jis should be leaving tomorrow. Li Nian Fan watched this drama. He felt pleased as he said, I should leave tomorrow as well. Menjun Liang asked, Mr. Li's going to the mountain with Jis? Probably. I like drama. Menjun Liang admired Li Nianfan for being able to live a life and play around in this mortal realm. He could enjoy himself watching the clouds rising and falling, how admirable. This was probably the joy of being capable and free. The next day, Li Nianfan and the rest gathered at the main hall of the Xia Kingdom. It was no surprise when Ji showed up early in the morning. Although he seemed calm on the surface, one could notice that his footsteps were anxious and out of control. He arrived and did not even chant his signature Amitabha. Instead, he said right away, Greetings to the king, Mr. Li. I've stayed here and troubled you all for long enough. I'm here to bid you all farewell. Zhou Yunwu was shocked. He tried to keep him there, feeling reluctant to let him leave. You're in a hurry? Why don't you stay for a few days longer? I was going to watch your talk in person. No, no. The time's up. The time to part has come. Jis clasped his palms and said calmly, Goodbye everyone. No need to send me off. With that said, he lifted his feet and was ready to leave. He was running away. However, a red ball of light rushed over in a hurry. A voice scoffed from afar, Jis, stay where you are. Jis had a bitter face. He sighed in a low voice, what a disaster. In the next moment, Yun Yi Yi's figure gradually appeared in front of the crowd. She looked at Jis with satisfaction. This time, you can't get away. Be good, go back with me and get married. Jis took a deep breath. He finally dared to speak. Miss Yun, we can't get married. Why? I need to remain rigorous in my beliefs. Yun Yi Yi's eyes sparkled. All right, 
You can keep your beliefs, and I'll keep mine. There's no conflict. Jesus' face turned blank. Don't you come over, don't force me to make a move on you. Cough, cough, Miss Yun, Meng Julian said. He asked, I watched Miss Yun's debate yesterday. It was shocking. I wonder, where do you cultivate? Yun Yi Yi had to stop her attack. Jis let out a long sigh of relief. He put on his robes and clasped his hands. He remained formal as he spoke, I'm curious, too. When did Miss Yun's understanding become so high? Nonsense. My understanding has always been high. Yun Yi smiled pleasantly. After a moment of hesitation, a lotus leaf appeared in her hand. I won't keep this from you all any longer. It's probably because of this lotus leaf. If I didn't try to get hold of it, I wouldn't have wounded myself and let this monk have the benefits. Jis clasped his palms together. Amitabha. These four syllables contained his extremely complicated feelings. He was almost trembling. He did not explode on the spot. It was apparent that he was still able to withstand it. Meng Junliang watched for a very long time. Finally, he concluded, a unique lotus leaf. Jesus' voice turned serious, this lotus leaf's probably some kind of precious treasure. It contains a deep insight that can help one to break through within a short time. However, it has some bad elements in it. Yun Yi Yi glared at him. Are you saying it's fated to be with your Buddha? Jis fell silent for a while. It's best if I pray for it. Ew. Yun Yi Yi scoffed and instantly kept the lotus carefully. After all, Jis was no longer in a hurry to leave. He looked at Li Nai and Fan and bowed politely, asking the question that most concerned him, Mr. Li, I'd like to ask about your current views on the establishment of doctrines. He viewed it as a drama. Li Nai and Fan scoffed at him in his heart as he started thinking of an answer. He could feel the crowd resting their attention on him as they wore their humble expressions. Zhou Yunwu, Meng Jun Yang, and Jis could all be considered as pupils at some point in their lives. It made sense for them to seek his advice. By the side, Da Ji, Nanan, and Dragon were looking at him in admiration. As for Yun Yi Yi, she looked at him suspiciously. He had to put on an act with all seriousness. After all, this would affect his image in the heart of the crowd. If he answered wrongly, it would be an embarrassment. At this moment, Li Nian Fan had to sigh in awe. Luckily, he had just revised another mythology not long ago. Now was the time to refer to it. Since he had told them about journey to the West and investiture of the gods, it did not matter if he told them another one. The so-called doctrines have their own strengths. We can't tell who's right or who's wrong. What matters is the meaning of existence, Li Nian Fan said. Even though it was his first sentence, the crowd looked like they were deep in thought as they all nodded. Swiftly after, Li Nianfan continued asking, Let me ask you this. There are so many cultivators in the world. Where does the first cultivating sect come from? This question was met with silence. Everyone jolted. They felt a lightning bolt strike their brains. The sudden flash of light dumbfounded them. Right. Where did the first cultivating sect come from? The ancient times. This was most likely related to the ancient times. Meng Junliang quickly reacted. He said sincerely, I beg Mr. Li to teach me. This is related to a story from a very long time ago. Li Nianfan smiled. He said, actually, in the very beginning, the world had three religious groups. One of them taught the people through passing on the way to cultivate. The second one explained the laws of the world. The third served to falsify the existing teachings and was meant to find a purpose for all living beings. These three religious groups didn't get along well, but each of them had their own unique values. That was it. Everyone had looks of realization. Who would have thought that there were already different religions since the ancient times? The start of cultivation was passed on by that person. The expert was indeed an expert. This story should be from the most ancient of times. Terrifying. How long had he lived? Jeez was stunned. He asked, sounding concerned, why wasn't Buddhism around? Buddhism appeared much later on. The goal of the religion was to ask the people to let go and direct them to kindness. There are other goals as well, such as the existence of hell or sacrificing oneself for reincarnation. Li Nianfan halted. Then, he said with a serious tone, however, do keep in mind that the person establishing these religions could have their own intentions. However, the establishment of religious groups is fair. The goal is to make the world a better place and help the world to develop. Everyone was caught up by what he said. They did not expect to be able to learn something so fascinating. They were very excited as they said, thank you for your teaching. The more they thought about it, the more excited they were. 
Apparently, these religious groups had been washed out by the passing of time. As the development of the world was going downhill, the expert appeared. He merely used a very gentle way along with a smile to wake up everything. He did not even have to establish the religion himself. What realm was this existence? Seeing that the crowd did not speak for a long time, it was evident they were all caught up in his story. Li Nian Fan knew that he earned their admiration once again. Now, he could use his charmer with ease. First, it was his deluxe merit. Then, his stories, along with his knowledge of the world before coming to this realm. With these three things, he had no problem living at ease in this realm. Li Nian Fan smiled and said, All right, the story has ended. This story was very roughly ended. He had left many details out. However, since Li Nian Fan said it had ended, the crowd did not ask anymore. They earned a lot by listening. Li Nian Fan looked at Jis and asked, Jis, you're going back to the spiritual mountain? Mind if I travel with you? Jis hastily clapped his palms together. He lowered his head and said, Um Tabha, being able to travel with Mr. Li's my pleasure. By the side, Yun Yi Yi pouted. She was upset. She had planned to force Jis to marry her. With that, her plan seemed to be ruined. Chapter 352 Test, Plan, and Big Matter After parting with Zhou Yun Wu and Meng Jun Luoyang, Li Nian Fan and the rest embarked on their journey. The destination was the spiritual land mountain. Since they were not in a hurry, they did not travel on clouds. Li Nian Fan walked with Jis. They walked and killed monsters on the way there. The view on the way was slightly different from the last time. Back then, Li Nian Fan was new to this place and he was either rushing or traveling by cloud to the destination. Now that he had Jesus as his tour guide, it was much better. Even the smoke on the way had increased. The bald head of the monk was not only a good light bulb, it was also very useful. When they passed by some small villages, the villagers treated the monk friendlier than usual. However, since Yun Yi Yi was there, Li Nianfan was unable to see how Jesus would actually behave. What a pity! Meanwhile, the crowd was having a good time on the mountain. Other than Jis, each of them had a skewer with some rabbit meat in hand. They roasted the meat above a campfire. After spending some time together, Yun Yi Yi soon realized what kind of expert Li Nian Fan was. For example, the skewer in his hand was an immortal item. It might as well be one of the coolest immortal items. Yet, he used it as a skewer. She was not aware of those in the past. After getting a hold of his fruits and wine, she felt embarrassed. Luckily, Li Nian Fan was very friendly so she did not embarrass herself too badly. She was no longer talking about capturing Jis back with her to get married in front of Li Nian Fan. Says. The white rabbit had been skinned. It was now red and thoroughly burned. Its fats were oozing out as the meat's aroma wafted in the air. Li Nian Fan smiled, just add some cumin and it'll be ready. Everyone stared at the roasted rabbit in hand. They were all wearing looks of anticipation. All except Jis. He was facing the crowd with his back, his palms clasped together. He seemed to be praying. However, his trembling body made it apparent that he was not happy about it. When the meat's aroma reached its peak, he stood up and everyone heard a loud gulp. He said with a hoarse voice, I'll go get some greens. With that said, he turned into light and went away. In the air, some saliva was dripping silently. It did not take long before he came back. He had a round bowl in hand. There was some food inside the bowl. Jay smiled and said, I'm quite lucky. I found some meat this time around. Nanan could not help asking, Monk, I thought you don't eat meat? She pouted. She did not seem happy. The meat prepared by Li Nianfen was so delicious and yet, the monk did not eat it. In fact, he went away to find his own food? How rude. Li Nianfen smiled, Nanan, there are three types of meat that the monk doesn't eat. They don't eat animals that are killed. They cannot smell food that had been killed and those that were killed with intentions. The fact that Jis was able to resist the temptation of such delicious food is quite admirable. Jis nodded and sighed. Mr. Lee's right. This meal smells too delicious. It's such a pity that I don't have the blessing to taste it. Dragon widened her eyes. She instantly looked up to Jis. She spoke in awe, you're able to resist the food prepared by Brother Nian Fan. You're inhuman. Munch. Munch. She spoke while chewing the rabbit meat. Her mouth opened and closed as oil coated her lips. One could tell how delicious the food was just by watching her eat. A test. This was obviously a test of his practice. He had to withstand it. He had to be a desireless monk. Jis gulped. 
He walked to the side in silence and lowered his head. He started to eat his own food. The taste of his food was ordinary. Even with the aroma of their food, Jesus was able to use his imagination to help with his food. What good is there in becoming a monk? Yun Yi Yi leaned toward him. She hesitated before handing an orange to him. Here, I'm full. Jis halted for a second. I can still eat the orange for Mr. Lee. Yun Yi Yi scoffed, I know, but how's this enough for you? On the way, when we ate meat, you refused. When we drank, you refused. Do you know how many opportunities you've missed? My cultivation's exceeding yours soon. Thank you, benefactress. Jis accepted the orange. C.A. Yun Yi Yi frowned. Benefactress? It sounds so bad. Ji said, Miss Yun, although the lotus leaf can speed up one's understanding, it's very eerie. I think you shouldn't use it too often. Yun Yi Yi looked around. Then, she said, you want it? Sure, once you marry me, I can give you anything you want. Amitabha. Ji's had a serious look. Miss Yun only likes me because I'm handsome. If it wasn't for my looks, would you still like me? Yes. Whatever you like about me, I will change. I admire your dedication. Jeez was speechless. After filling up, the crowd continued their journey. They had seen many places and people. If there was a temple, they would even spend a night there because of Jeez. That day, the crowd was rushing. By a dark corner, a few dark figures appeared. One of the figures was extremely huge. It was lying in the valley. Its body was able to fill up the entire valley. As it gradually opened its gigantic eyes, it said, they're here. Voila! On its body, a layer of dark green flame started burning. Then, it gradually stood up. It had a lion's head, antler horns, tiger eyes, dragon scales, and an ox tail all in one. However, the color of its body was as dark as ink. Phoenix, nine-tailed fox, and the dragon. Ha! It's been so many years, who'd have thought that we, the four beasts, could gather together. Its tone was quite harsh and mocking by the side, a dark figure gradually spoke, as Lord Demon said, you'll take charge of the rest of them, but the Buddhist must die. This black figure was as skinny as a stick. Its eyes were sunken. It had some severe malnutrition. Undoubtedly, he was the Big Lord Demon. Ha! Black Kieran glared at Big Lord Demon. He could not help scoffing. Obviously, this was not his first time seeing him, but whenever he saw the Big Lord Demon looking this way, he could not help but laugh. He remembered how powerful the Big Lord Demon used to be. Its body was better than any demon. Black Kieran suggested, I think you should change your name to the scrawny Lord Demon. The Big Lord Demon looked troubled. He was angry but did not dare to complain. They have a purple golden gourd. My essence was sucked away by them. I'm unlikely to get fat again. You should be careful. I've been rewarded with the shadow of the river map chart. They're nothing in comparison to that, Black Kieran said with pride. The dark green flame was boiling around him, ready to attack any time. He sighed and said helplessly, things were going according to plan. Why did so many changes happen all of a sudden? The big Lord Demon shook his head. He analyzed and said, I'm not sure, Lord Demon told me about the arrangement. The humans should be getting weaker while the demons like us would rule them. The smaller demons were supposed to vanish while you guys become the demon lords. The immortals would decrease, leaving only the stronger ones. They will become the rulers of the entire world. Unless one of us changed. Black Kieran Stone was unfriendly. He shut his mouth and used mind control to pass this on. Could it be Dao Tzu? His shrewdness is too deep. He's always been calculative, everyone has been trapped by him. Probably not, the big demon king replied using mind control. Lord Demon said that after the Absolute Era, it would be the Age of Decadence. This was the general trend, even Dao Ju was pushing for it. He even trapped the other saints and disciples. It's unlikely that he betrayed us at this time. Then, what's the reason? Black Kieran looked at Big Lord Demon. You're doubting us? Are you crazy? It's even unlikely that it's us. This matter's beneficial for us, so unless we've gone crazy, would we make a human sovereign, Buddhism, and Confucianism appear? All of these are beneficial for the human race. The big lord demon's eyes glinted. He continued, Unfortunately, the demon race is being restricted. We can only use the demon men to move around in the ordinary realm. If not, we could have gotten hold of more information. Humph, perhaps someone wanted to get everything for himself? Or some lucky survivor counterattacked before death? Black Kieran's brows furrowed. 
he could not help saying, as I've suggested back then, we should vanquish all of the humans and destroy the bridge to immortalization completely. This is the safest way. The absolute era is too gentle. Big Lord Demon said, it's too late to say anything now. We need to get things back on track. This isn't too difficult. How many survivors are there in the world left to fight with us? We just have to obliterate all the variables. Black Kieran scoffed coldly, its eyes filled with violence and arrogance. Its four hoofs rose to the air with black auspicious clouds. Sit back and watch how I'm going to make you all proud. Humph. Wait up. The big lord demon suddenly said. Hmm? Black Kieran was disturbed. It seemed displeased. I think I've left something out. Wait up, let me think. The big lord demon panicked. He frowned, the gourd's really bad. Perhaps it sucked out my wisdom? I can't think all of a sudden. Never mind, take your time to think. You can tell me when I get back, I'll go first. Chapter 353 You Must Be Burned The big lord demon watched as the black Kieran left. His mouth moved. He wanted to cry out, but he could not think of the reason. He hesitated. He looked at black Kieran leaving arrogantly. Sigh. What was it? Why did he feel that what he had to say was related to Black Kieran's life? Li Nian Fan and the rest were walking casually as if nothing had changed. Everything was very calm. Suddenly, the sky that was still clear darkened. The dark night had fallen as if the sky was weighing down on them. Not only that, many twinkling stars appeared in the sky. Li Nian Fan halted. He looked up at the sky. The stars were extremely bright. They were brighter than the ordinary stars. Surrounded by the stars, it no longer felt like nighttime. Instead, it felt as if he was standing under the galaxy, blending in with the blinking stars around him. There were blinking lights that were glowing between the stars, acting as a bridge between the stars that joined the twinkling dots together. Along with himself, the world around him seemed to have expanded a few times. They seemed to have entered another spacious world. It was beautiful, but apparently dangerous. This, we're trapped? Li Nian Fan raised his brows. He found it hard to believe. If they were being robbed, it should not look like this. On the way, someone had tried to rob them. Some demons had also tried to block them. They had come across many things, but they had not seen such a big scene. He had been a good citizen and did not leave his house often. He had not done anything to offend anyone. Why would someone trap him? Perhaps they found the wrong person? Ha ha ha, ha ha ha. In the next moment, a burst of wild laughter was heard coming from the starry night. Following that, the stars in the sky started to connect with one another. It did not take long before a starry image of a gigantic Kirin was formed. Ha ha ha, ha ha ha. The laughter did not stop. Nobody knew how long it was trying to hold its laughter. It was so loud, it seemed as if the Kirin was losing control. Dragon frowned and covered her ears. She almost cried. What a disgusting laughter. The laughter stopped abruptly. It's been too long. Black Kirin's voice was hoarse and low. It's been so many years. Nobody has ever dared to call my laughter disgusting. You're a dragon indeed, annoying as usual. Since you don't like it, I'll have to laugh more. Small ones, join me. Ha ha ha. Instantly, other than the laughter of the Black Kirin, there was laughter coming from everywhere in the sky. They were all demons. By Li Nian Fan's shoulder, the fire phoenix spread out her wings and her body enlarged. She turned into a flaming phoenix and rushed into the sky. Along with a huge flame, she was ready to engulf the entire starry night. Shut up! Her red eyes seemed like they were burning. She was surprised. Kirin? You're still alive? Of course, we're alive. Are you surprised? Black Kirin scoffed coldly. The reason we stayed hidden was to wait for the arrival of a new era. Unfortunately, there's an obstacle. I came here today to clear it. The Fire Phoenix was sharp enough to understand what the Black Kirin meant. She asked, so, the Kirins were involved in the previous worldly catastrophe? Ha ha, it seems you've forgotten too many things. Black Kirin smiled. He was covered by the stars, his body emitting an eye-catching brilliance. He exuded a powerful air. Right, during the last catastrophe, the Phoenixes were slaughtered. You should have all vanished. It seems that you're the only Phoenix left having been reborn with the real spirit. You only have some fragments of memories left. Black Kirin continued to explain, in the last catastrophe, we were indeed involved. The Kirins have always been the most powerful beings in the world. After the catastrophe, the dragons and phoenixes vanished, ending up badly while the Kirins got back on our feet. 
The fire phoenix's brows furrowed. Her wings were spread out showing no traces of flames. The body of Black Kieran was covered in a bright red flame. The flame was fierce and wildly boiling. Don't bother. In here, you can't even touch me. The stars in the sky connected with one another. Instantly, they formed other Kirins that looked exactly the same. They were all over the sky. The group of Kirins had the same movements. They stood in the air, looking at the crowd. Their mocking voice resonated in the air, You're all lucky to have survived. Today, I'll wipe you all out on behalf of the Lord Demon. Says. A flash of light shot out from the sky, forming a lightning pillar between the sky and the ground. The fire phoenix's wings spread out again. The same flame rushed upward and fell from above. It crashed into the lightning pillar. The two did not make any sound as if they were not fighting one another. However, in the next moment, the stars started to circulate. The pillar was suddenly expanding. Its speed and power were very strong, and it easily disappeared, only to charge at the fire phoenix. The fire phoenix stretched out her wings and tried to shield herself from them. However, swiftly after, another lightning pillar shot toward fire phoenix from the sky. There were many stars there. There was no safe spot at all. Black Kieran seemed to be enjoying the feeling of winning. The lightning pillar was like a gun, shooting at the fire phoenix. Even though the flame of the fire phoenix was strong, it could not withstand the sky full of stars. Jeez, drag in, and the rest could only watch. They wanted to help but could not. This level of fighting was beyond them. Dodgy stayed by Lee Nyanfan's side without moving as her eyes stared at the starry sky. Lee Nyanfan looked up at the sky. This was no longer his first time witnessing a fight. What he cared about was the news he heard. It seemed that the world became this way due to the catastrophe they mentioned. Furthermore, it seemed that this catastrophe's goal was to return the world into nothingness. Other than the dragons and phoenixes, the victims included countless immortals and demons. Even the underworld and heavenly temple were damaged by this catastrophe. One could tell how scary it was. According to the stories he was familiar with along with his innovative thinking, Li Nianfen easily concluded. Behind each catastrophe was the calculation of the saints. The saints' calculations were closely related to the world. The dragons and phoenixes were in trouble and the witches had been defeated. Knew what created human beings as the main characters of the world. The journey to the west promoted Buddhism, while the investiture of the gods established the heavenly temple but weakened the disciples of the saints. This catastrophe's destructiveness was extremely scary. It was a big wipeout that degenerated the entire world. Li Nian Fan had a thought. Exactly, it degenerated. According to what the Kirin said, many beings vanished except the Kirin family. They were powerful like the king. If so, the main goal of the catastrophe was to degenerate the world. With that, the stronger ones could survive, and the powerful survivors would easily take charge of the world. How ambitious! However, nobody knew who was behind all of these. Meanwhile, Doji's eyes focused slightly. With a spell, the Zwan Yun immortal water of the Xuan water bracelet gathered into a water dragon. The water dragon gradually condensed and formed into an ice dragon, exuding an extreme chill. With a flick of its tail, it rose to the sky toward one of the stars. Says. Instantly, a lighting pillar lashed out from the surrounding stars, stabbing the ice dragon from all directions. Black Kirin's voice was heard, this is a formation formed using the Lord Emperor's river map chart. How dare you think of breaking it down? What a joke? Li Nian Fan's heart sank. He said, river map chart? Could this be the legendary ultimate formation of the Zhou Heavenly Stars? The river map chart was a record of all the mountains, rivers, and land of the world. It also contained the Zhou Heavenly Stars formation. The power of the stars could be used by the people. Thus, the more people there were, the more they could borrow the power of the stars and become more powerful. Wow! Black Kieran seemed to have just noticed the ant below its feet. It looked at Li Nianfen in shock. Ordinary man? Who'd have thought that an ordinary man would know about the Zhou Heavenly Stars formation? An ordinary man. Li Nianfen was trying to get more information out. The Zhou Heavenly Stars formation is the ultimate treasure of the Lord Emperor Jun. Were you referring to the Lord Emperor Jun? You even knew about Emperor Jun? Black Kirin was shocked. It stared at Li Nianfen with disbelief from left to right, up to down. Finally, he came up with the conclusion that he was a mysterious ordinary man. However mysterious he was, he was still an ordinary man. Black Kirin did not care. Ha, Emperor Jun's dead. Now, the Lord Emperor is the leader of all Kirins. Right, why am I speaking to you? Black Kirin realized and said with anger. 
Ants don't have the right to speak to someone like me. Arg. Formation. Go. Vroom. Among the starry sky, all the stars suddenly became even brighter. Their dazzling brilliance formed a gigantic screen lashing downward. Each ray of light was solid like a pillar, connecting the sky with the ground. The entire world had turned into an ocean of light. Meanwhile, the temperature started to rise during the day. Black Kieran laughed wildly. Ha ha ha, watch me melt you all. Are you hot now? Brother Kieran. Meanwhile, a panicked voice came from behind. It was the big lord demon rushing over rapidly. Black Kieran halted. What is it? That very important matter, I finally recalled. Black Kieran was impatient. That's it? Wait until I kill them first. Please, stop. Listen to me, that ordinary man's a deluxe merit saint. Black Kieran's head buzzed. That ordinary man's a what? Deluxe merit saint. What saint? Deluxe merit saint. Who's the deluxe merit saint? Vroom. He was answered by a thick pillar in blue and black lightning. This lightning was too terrifying. The moment the strike landed, the entire world almost halted. Looking from afar, that was not lightning at all. It seemed like a crack in the sky. It was too terrifying. It contained a shocking destructiveness that was spreading out. The flowers and grass within the radius instantly died out all at once. Joe Heavenly Star's formation was like a piece of paper. It instantly cracked up. Black Kieran did not even manage to make a sound before falling from the air. The other demons were instantly vaporized without even a fur left behind. Big Lord Demon was still rushing in this direction. Meanwhile, he abruptly turned around, all his hair standing up. Without a doubt, he turned and ran away at a way quicker speed. Too terrifying, too cruel. Although he had become scrawny, compared to how Black Kieran ended up, he was too lucky. With that, he ran 10,000 miles away in one breath to calm down slightly. Meanwhile, by his chest, a black stone gradually floated in the air. It had black smoke circulating around it, condensing into a black skeleton. Big Lord Demon quickly greeted, Greetings to Lord Demon. The black skeleton asked, How's it going? Big Lord Demon stuttered, There are some challenges. Black Kieran's probably dead. What? The black skeleton was so shocked that its jaw dropped to the floor. It hasn't even been that long but Black Kieran's already dead? Big Lord Demon bit his tongue. He offended a deluxe merit saint. So stupid. Why can't he be more careful? The black skeleton shook its head. Whatever, I didn't think he's that smart anyway. The Kirans are in fact unreliable. After a moment, the skeleton said in a low voice, Luckily we have a backup plan. Now that the Lord Demon God's getting involved, the setup's complete. You only have to do as I tell you. The formation vanished, the brightness resumed. Lee Nye and Fan and the rest looked over. Not far away from them, a dark green Kirin was laying on the ground. It was not moving as green smoke was coming out of its body. Walking closer, they saw that by the corner of its eyes, there were some stubborn tears. It seemed so sad. How can he forget such an important matter about the deluxe merit saint? I don't believe him. He's framing me intentionally. I'm not giving in. I died an unjustified death. Lean I and Fan merely sighed. I do feel a little hot, but you're probably burned. Chapter 354 If you don't live, how would you know? Dragon's eyes sparkled. She sniffed through her nose. Brother, I can smell it. It's meat. Lean I and Fan smiled and said, Ha, I can smell it, too. This is the meat of a Kirin, the texture must be quite good. His tone was very emotional. This Kirin seemed to have dried itself out. Li Nian Fan had not done anything and he had already died. Who would have thought that he would have the pleasure of eating Kirin meat? He wondered what it tasted like. In this cultivating realm, he had tasted some immortal beasts. Now, he was about to taste Kirin meat. This trip was worth it. Don't touch it first. I need to do some planning. This Kirin isn't small, and we must make use of all of its meat. Li Nian Fan warned them. Then, he started planning. It's a pity that I don't have experience eating Kirin meat. I'll need some time to work things out. However, looking at its flesh, the thigh can be roasted. As for the back, I can braise it with some sauce. Wow, it's tail's delicate. It can be made into a soup, too. Black Kirin laid by the side, as tears rolled out of its blank eyes continuously. How cruel! How cruel! He actually wants to cook me in parts. The Kirin guessed its destiny. It would not take long before it was turned into a dish. No, a few dishes, and a soup. 
It was an elder of the Kirans. A well-respected elder. It had lived countless years, born to be the lord of the world. My flesh isn't delicious. Please, let me go. Li Nianfan was still planning, while Da Ji stood by the side of the Black Kirin. A glow gradually engulfed the Black Kirin. Black Kirin's pupils dilated. Its eyes were filled with a deep shock and surprise. It wanted to struggle but realized that it was unable to do so. This. This is, the sucking gourd? He was thoroughly shocked and in extreme despair. It noticed the golden gourd in Daji's hand. The sucking gourd's made from a gourd by Saint Asnua. However, why is it with her? Unacceptable, unacceptable. Not only is my flesh about to be eaten, they're not even letting my divine consciousness go. In the next moment, a flash of light flew out from between its brows and went into the golden gourd. Although the gourd's different, in the end, I still can't escape my destiny of being sucked into the gourd. This was its final thought before entering the gourd. Li Nian Fan gradually stood up and smiled. All right, we don't have to worry about food for the rest of the journey. We don't have to. Yun Yi Yi looked at Jis. She continued, Jis, this is Kirin meat. Aren't you going to taste it? Perhaps it'll be good for your cultivation? Why are you so obsessed with becoming a monk? Jis clapped his palms together. I chose this path. Nanan could not help mumbling, Aren't you a Buddha? Why has it become a path now? Ha ha ha. Li Nianfan could not help smiling by the side. He said, A path is an abstract concept. The path to heaven is impermanent and ruthless. Many changes can be affected by many things and yet, still free from external factors. There's no good and evil, no right and wrong, no gratitude and resentment. The immortal path's a path, the demonic path's a path, the evil path's a path. Therefore, Buddhism's naturally a path, too. The faces of the crowd moved. They felt their heads go blank and clear up. There seemed to be a humming sound and they had goosebumps all over. Swiftly after, their pores opened up as if they were in a hot spring. They felt warmth all over with an unspeakable comfort. At this moment, their understanding of the path was like a skyrocketing rocket, rising vigorously. They were able to look at the path with wisdom. In the past, the path had been a blurry concept to them and they were unable to fathom it. However, they could see it more clearly now. The expert was pointing it out to them. Mr. Lee, your words are like drums in the early morning. You've widened your understanding and I've learned many things from you. You're a man with wisdom, Jay said with his palms together. He said politely, please, allow me to kneel in front of you. Lee Nian Fan waved it off nonchalantly, Jeez, you're too polite. I was just casually speaking. Lee Nian Fan did feel good about it. The things he said were perfect for him to act cool. Perhaps this was the benefit of reading. Yun Yi Yi bit her lip. She could not help asking, Mr. Li, do you think a Buddhist could get married? Of course, she knew the importance of his words. She wanted Jis to get rid of this idea. However hard she tried to talk him out of it, Jis would not change his mind. If Li Nian Fan could convince him, however strong-willed Jis was, he would surely listen. Li Nian Fan did not give a direct answer. He was thinking. He knew what Yun Yi Yi's intention was, and he did want to see the two of them get together. Yun Yi Yi loved and hated with a passion. Although she seemed as if she did not care, she had been keeping a close eye on Jis. While Jis did have the same thinking, he did not dare to use Yun Yi Yi as a target to cultivate his lack of desire. He tried to avoid talking to her. They had true love. For a Buddhist, although Li Nian Fan did not have first-hand experience, he did know quite a lot. Jis did this to prevent his heart from being tainted. A Buddhist was most afraid of being tainted by the seven feelings and six desires. They could destroy one's chastity and lead to severe outcomes. Li Nian Fan had to consider both sides. On one hand, was the feelings between the two of them, and on the other was Jis's cultivation. This was quite complicated. Yun Yi Yi looked at Li Nian Fan with anticipation. Jis clapped his palms together and closed his eyes gently. Li Nian Fan smiled and said, Jis, the so-called eight sufferings in Buddhism, have you experienced them? Jis answered, I've avoided them all. I've never experienced them. Li Nian Fan asked, Do you know where Buddha comes from? I don't. Jis's face changed. He looked at Li Nian Fan, waiting for an answer. Li Nian Fan continued, Buddhism didn't come from nothing. Even Buddha didn't start off being a Buddha. He went through nine reincarnations. It was because he had experienced all sorts of pain in life that he was able to understand the pain and live past it. If you haven't even experienced the eight pains and avoided them whenever you can, 
you haven't actually cultivated properly. If you don't live, how would you know what pain is? Jeez was stunned. His eyes widened. In his head, he kept repeating the words lean I infant said. If you don't live, how would you know what pain is? Right. He only knew about the eight pains in life but had not been through them. Everything was merely words. Lee Nyan Fan merely reminded him with one sentence, but he started to think more about it. For example, why would ordinary people believe in Buddhism? This was because they had been through the eight sufferings in life. They wanted relief, but what about himself? As a Buddhist, he had not even been through the eight sufferings. He probably did not feel as deeply as the ordinary men. Amitabha. Jesus' face could not help but change. Ever since he became a monk, he had been repressing his emotions. Yet, he was now incredibly emotional. Gradually, his usual calm state of mind started to change in big waves. I, I've been enlightened. He knelt on both knees and started bowing at Lee Nyan Fan. As long as you understand. Lee Nyan Fan let out a sigh of relief. He did not speak clearly, and he merely used another way to remind him. It was still Ji's deciding for himself and it had nothing to do with Lee Nyan Fan. Yun Yi Yi was thoroughly impressed by Lee Nyan Fan. Look at him. What was an expert? He was an expert. The way he spoke was so respectable. Yun Yi Yi said with excitement, Jeez, you're going to marry me. Now that Buddhism has just started, the demons are acting wildly. It isn't the time to live with suffering yet. Jeez did not reject her. He then said, Once everything has stabilized, I'll marry you if you're willing to wait. Yun Yi Yi was delighted. She raised her hand to touch Jesus' bald head. Monk, of course, I'll wait for you. Congratulations to Miss Yun. It's finally a happy ending. Daji's eyes were filled with admiration. She looked at Li Nian Fan with her beautiful eyes while weighing her thoughts. Did she have to be braver like Yun Yi Yi? However, the gap between her and Li Nian Fan was way too big. He was so unreachable, like a star in the sky. Sigh, if only she could get closer to him. After going through this, the atmosphere between them became more joyful. The meat of the Kirin naturally became the ideal reward for celebration. The crowd was having a Kirin feast. From the braised Kirin to the deep-fried scales, then to the stewed Kirin tail. It was a big feast. Of course, it was very delicious. For the rest of the journey, there were no accidents. Out of boredom, Li Nian Fan decided to take out the golden rock and rub it in his bomb. Chapter 355 A Gift Shock this golden rock was brought back by Daji not long ago as a souvenir. In return, Li Nian Fan gave her the golden gourd. The surface of it was not bad. It was quite moist. Unfortunately, it was not a regular shape. There was no point keeping it. Li Nian Fan was prepared to use his palms to mold it into something rounder. The golden rock was quite eye catching. Jeez was attracted by it as it caught his eye. Instantly, he halted. His eyes widened in shock. This is, the relic? Li Nian Fan looked at Jis strangely. The relic of Buddhism? This is it? He handed it to Jis. Jis received the rock. He sized it up in his bomb. He was frowning deeply. Doesn't seem like it. He was suspicious. I've never seen a relic before. I've read about it in scriptures. If it's a relic, it shouldn't be this ordinary. It should be harder. Li Nian Fan nodded. He thought the same as well. This was a magical world so a relic must at least glow. However bad it was, it should at least have some glow circulating it. The relic should not be easily destroyed, but this stone did not seem very hard. Unless it was intentionally hiding its features. In fact, it might be making itself look less hard. However, this was somewhat impossible. Li Nian Fan took the relic back from Jis. Seeing that Jis was staring at the golden rock in his hand with some longing, Li Nian Fan could not help smiling. Mentioning a relic, he recalled that he could use this golden rock to carve out a golden Buddha. Now that he was friends with Jis and Yun Yi Yi, he could be considered as their matchmaker. Hence, he should give them a gift. A golden Buddha would be quite suitable. Li Nian Fan weighed the golden rock in hand. Under the sunlight, its size was suitable and it had some patterns on the surface. Although the size was not regular, one could carve out a Buddha statue from it. He felt that it was suitable. He got into action. He took out a carving knife and tried to make a dent on the rock. It did not take a lot of effort. Ha, it's not so hard indeed. Li Nian Fan smiled. Jay smiled, too. However, his smile was forced. It was more of a painful smile as he had to watch the rock go under the knife. 
he could vaguely feel that the element in the stone was somehow in sync with his elements. Was this a relic? He felt that this stone was pretending. Amitabha. Jeez felt complicated. Finally, his lips twitched as he prayed to calm his unsettled heart. The journey with the expert had always been a test for him. He thought he was able to repress his seven emotions and six desires, but with just one dish of the expert or two sentences from him, or even an item from him, his heart was moved. Was this the expert? It did not take long before the relic was dented and stabbed by Li Nian Fan. It had marks all over. Jiz looked away from the relic. He could not take it any longer. For the rest of the journey, Li Nian Fan finally found something to do. Whenever he felt like it, he would take out the rock and carve it. Gradually, it started to reveal a shape. In the beginning, Jis would not look at it. However, at one point, he accidentally saw Li Nian Fan carving and he was very shocked. He could feel that with every carve executed on the stone, there was a Buddha glow along with a true Buddha surrounding the relic. The thickening Buddha glow was stabbing his eyes. Furthermore, as the relic in Li Nian Fan's hand was formed into a shape, the glow became more significant. There was even an urge to worship the statue. It seemed that it was no longer a statue but an actual Buddha. Just by watching from the side, the gust of true Buddha was able to enter his body, rapidly improving his understanding of Buddhism. After his meal, Li Nian Fan took out the carving knife as usual and started carving. Jay sat up accordingly on his knees. His palms were clasped together as he faced the statue. He was looking serious and formal. It's almost done, this is probably the last session. Li Nian Fan smiled. He had the statue in hand. Although it was not complete yet, the face of a meditating Buddha had appeared with a golden glow around it. Although it was not big, it exuded a memorable chi that was hard to miss. You watch me carve every day. What do you think about this statue? Ji said sincerely, Mr. Li's very skilled. You've done wonders on this. It seems as if Buddha actually resurfaced, how stunning. Ha ha ha, you're a good boot licker, but you're quite right, it's not easy. Li Nian Fan smiled happily. Then, he said in a playful tone, Are you about to say that this item is destined to be with you? Jis looked down and said, Indeed. Li Nian Fan said effortlessly, Have it, then. Jis jumped. He looked up at Li Nian Fan with a look of disbelief and anticipation. Are you serious? Of course, Li Nian Fan said calmly. If not, why would I carve out a Buddha? I was a half matchmaker for you and Miss Yun. Of course, I have to give you something. Ji sculpted. His determined Buddha heart was moved. In his eyes, there were tears. He was emotional and mostly touched. He put his palms together and closed his eyes. Thank you, Mr. Li. Yun Yi Yi was very happy. She bowed and said, Thank you, Mr. Li. It's a small matter, don't be too polite. Li Nian Fan waved it off. After a moment, he asked curiously, Jeez, have you heard anything about why Buddhism was destroyed in the past? Li Nian Fan really wanted to find out what happened after the journey to the West. The catastrophe was quite powerful. Most importantly, he was quite scared. He wanted to know what was behind all these. From the previous attack, he could tell that the people behind this were not letting it go yet. It was likely for them to suddenly appear and wipe out these troublemakers. It was apparent that he was surrounded by a bunch of troublemakers. He had close relations to the dragon, phoenix, and Buddhism. He even gave away the scripture. However, he did not expect Yucha to be able to attract a bunch of people who would shave their heads based on the Diamond Sutra. Thinking closely, he did have good relations with the underworld. There were also a bunch of immortals who were ready to rebuild the heavenly temple. Gasp! Were these bunch not troublemakers? He thought he was ensuring his safety by becoming friends with these people. Somehow, he got himself in danger. Now that he looked back, he realized how terrifying it was. If it was not for his deluxe merit and being surrounded by powerful people, if it was not for them being friendly and on good terms with him, Li Nianfan would cut all contact with them and hide away with Daji. He was a small and insignificant ordinary man, it was not good to attract attention. I did hear something, Ji said in an unhurried tone. The concept of Buddhism contrasted the demons. In the previous catastrophe, the demons prospered and became so unbelievably powerful. They destroyed Buddhism right away and intended to rule the world. However, they were repressed. That's it? Anything else? I don't gossip. Isn't the lawless of demons dead? Why are the demons so powerful still? Li Nian Fan frowned. He looked at the fire phoenix and asked, Immortal Phoenix, have you really forgotten things regarding the catastrophe? 
The fire phoenix shook her head. After a moment of thought, she said, however, I can deduce that the demons and Kirins were involved in pushing the catastrophe. Their goal was to restrict the spiritual cultivation in the world and reduce power so that they could become the most powerful and thus rule the world. As I thought. Li Nian Fan halted for a moment, then asked the question he was most concerned about, what's the upper limit of my deluxe merit? Upper limit? The fire phoenix halted. She understood what Li Nian Fan meant. Her lips twitched slightly and she said, according to what I see, it should be the, limit. Li Nian Fan grinned. Be precise. The fire phoenix quickly composed her thoughts and concluded weakly, according to what I do know, nobody should be able to touch you at all. So, I'm safe? Yeah, very, safe. Then, I'm less worried. Li Nian Fan let out a relaxing smile. Once he could verify his safety, he was unafraid of things getting out of hand. He could even get his popcorn ready as he watched. As. In. The fire phoenix was on the verge of collapsing. Big shot, stop messing around. What's the point of asking me these questions? You are not only safe, it'd be a blessing to all if you let others be safe. The rest of them tried not to make a sound and pretended as if they did not see anything. The better the expert's temper, the more tiring it was for them to act along with him. Right, if he was so powerful and could only treat life as a game, perhaps this was the minimal joy he could get from living. It was painful to be an expert. Meanwhile, Li Nianfan made the last stroke. He smiled, here, it's ready. Everyone looked over. In the next moment, everyone jolted. They felt their souls jolting and getting sucked in. In Li Nian Fan's palm, a golden Buddha was looking formal with no emotion on his face. His eyes were half opened and there was an unlimited Buddha glow lashing out at them. The Buddha was concealed within the golden rock. The pattern of the rock had become the best backdrop, perfectly portraying the solemnity of the Buddha. In the eyes of the crowd, there was a golden glow lashing out in the air, completely engulfing the entire statue. The originally small statue was gradually becoming bigger and more glorious. Soon, it was as tall as the sky as if it was bigger than everything in the world. Swiftly after, the crowd felt their scalp itching. They watched the Buddha actually moving. His half-opened eyes gradually looked up. The eyes were opened. At that moment, winds and clouds were moving. A golden glow was all over the place, covering the ground, clouds, and skies with a layer of gold. They could even hear chanting in their ears along with a boundless and powerful chi, strongly pressing onto the crowd. They had cold sweat all over and did not dare to move at all. What, stunned? This statue's acceptable I hope. Li Nian Fan's voice pulled the crowd back to reality. All the illusions vanished. There was only a statue in golden light. It seemed as if everything from before was merely hallucinations. However, the crowd was unable to calm down for a long time. They were unable to hold it. Their hearts were beating rapidly. The Fire Phoenix and Doji exchanged a look. They were more shocked than anyone because they had seen a Daluo Golden Immortal before. They knew. The Chi of this Buddha was definitely beyond a Daluo Golden Immortals, far beyond that. What was the realm above Daluo Golden Immortal? Li Nian Fan, actually carved out a Buddha? Yun Yi Yi covered her mouth. She stuttered, This is, too, too majestic. Li Nian Fan smiled and said, Of course. After all, it's a gift for you too. Of course, I have to put in some effort. Only some effort? The expert was always so humble and caught them off guard. Jeez put his palms together and said sincerely, Amitabha. Jeez, I can't give this to you yet. Li Nian Fan smiled. He handed the Buddha to Yun Yi Yi and said playfully, I'll let Miss Yun keep it. She'll give it to you when she pleases. Yun Yi Yi quickly accepted the statue. She was delighted. Thank you, Mr. Li. Jesus' eyes moved with the statue. He quickly said to Yun Yi Yi politely, Amitabha, I shall be polite to you. Yun Yi Yi wrinkled her nose, and she said happily, I don't want you to be polite. I want you to be rude. Jesus halted. He did not understand. Does Miss Yun mean you want me to snatch it from you? No need to snatch it, force me. Yun Yi Yi saw that Jesus was confused. She could not help saying, Whatever, say some sweet words to me. I'm dumb, I don't know how. What do you know? Why don't I pray for you? Li Nian Fan almost burst out laughing. Even his shoulders were shaking. He was very amused. Perhaps this was the romance of a monk. He loved her, so he prayed for her. The crowd continued to move forward. Yun Yi Yi was very joyful. 
She was dressed in red and became the most active one in the group. Her energy level was even beyond Dragon and Nanan's. Yun Yi Yi looked ahead and said, Mr. Lee, it's Ching Yun City ahead. Why don't you take a seat at my house? So, she was getting closer to home. Li Nai and Fan smiled. Sure. Yun Yi Yi turned to look at Ji's. She smirked and said, Ji's, you parted without a goodbye last time. You must seek forgiveness from my parents this time. Ji's wore a complicated expression as if thinking of something embarrassing in the past. Yun Yi Yi took out the statue. Behave well and this statue will belong to you. Ji's put his palms together. Amitabha, I had the intention to visit anyway. Meanwhile, a group of people walked over from the other side. There were a few cultivators in the group. They had average cultivation, and they walked as they spoke in shock. Sai, if we didn't pass by Jingyun City, we wouldn't have known that the Yun family was destroyed. This is unbelievable. Yeah, the Yun family is the number one family in Jingyun City. They even have late combination cultivators. I wonder who's so powerful. I pass by Jingyun City often, the Yun family has a good reputation. Although they're big, they never use their power to bully others or act arrogantly. Why did they end up like this? A few powerful ones probably joined forces to get hold of a powerful treasure. They died wrongfully. Not much choice. That's how the world works, it's unreasonable. Chapter 356 Creed and Steel Vroom Yun Yi Yi marched ahead. Her body had turned into a shadow, appearing by the side of the group. Her eyes were red and she was exuding a tornado, forming into a wild windshield that was crashing toward the group. The powerful tornado was like a giant terrifying curtain, covering the group completely. Their hair was blown by the wind. They could not even open their eyes. The cold wind was painful to the skin and it made it difficult for them to breathe. Yun Yi Yi's eyes were full of disbelief. She scoffed, what did you say? What about the Yun family? Miss, Yun Yi Yi. Someone recognized Yun Yi Yi. He was blown by the wild wind, with his eyes squinting on his body like rootless duckweed. He was hugging a tree while swaying to the wind. He was shocked and bitter. Thinking quickly, he stuttered, Yun family's fine. We were speaking nonsense. Please, don't take it seriously. The wild wind instantly vanished. Yun Yi Yi stared into the air blankly. She was standing there as if she had lost her soul. She was in red. The group was so terrified that they crawled away. Farewell, farewell. Sister Yun. Nanan bit her lip. Her eyes were red. She felt for her. Back then, when the Golden Lotus sect was vanquished, the sadness she felt was beyond words. If it was not for her mother and the support from Brother Nian Fan, she would not have known what to do. Yun Yi Yi's family was just destroyed. That was way worse. Yun Yi Yi faced the crowd with her back. She waved and a golden light shot out. Jis received it. It was the statue of the Golden Buddha. Have the statue. With that said, she turned into a red light and flew away. There were some tears left in the air. She was about to find out whether the news was true. There was merely one last hint of impossible hope. Li Nai and Fan and the rest did not have to speak any further. They followed behind her. Ching Yun City was a prosperous city. It was a big and majestic city with many convenient shops and necessities. There was even a green mountain in the area that was rumored to have spiritual roots. The most unique thing about this city was that it was one of the rare cities with cultivators and ordinary men living together. Of course, this would become a trend in the future. There were three main families in the city they were all cultivating families. The Yun family was one of them. The crowd followed Yun Yi Yi into Jingyun City. They went to a house. In front of the red wooden door, a board with the word Yun was on the ground and broken into two. Quick, bring these out. Noises were coming from the house. Many people were carrying boxes, going in and out in a hurry. They neglected Yun Yi Yi. In the air, some cultivators were watching the drama. Li Nianfan was standing not far away. He looked at Yun Yi Yi's figure and could not help sighing. He shook his head. Meanwhile, Yun Yi Yi stood in front of her house as if she was an outsider. Her house was no longer warm. There was only a bitter chill left. Ding. Meanwhile, a green bracelet fell from a box. It fell in front of Yun Yi Yi. It was covered in dust and vaguely glowing. Yun Yi Yi looked at the bracelet blankly. She had tears rolling down her cheeks like a broken string of pearls. This bracelet was her first gift when she had first started cultivating. She was an active child and her parents gave this bracelet to her. It was good for blocking wind and making the body more agile. From then on, 
she grew very interested in wind-related spells. The two men trying to move the stuff jolted. They picked up the bracelet and smiled. They secretly kept it. It's a small treasure and should be worth some money. We earned it. Nanan frowned. She scoffed, Hey, what rights do you have to move things out from someone else's house? Ha, where did this little doll come from? How innocent. The young family's over. Their things have no owner. The main items are given out to the other families. So, it's natural for the smaller families like us to get some of the smaller items. Go go go, go to the other side. Says. Two wind knives flew past the two men's necks. Instantly, they jolted. Not knowing what just happened, blood squirted out from their necks and fell to the ground. Amitabha. Jis put his palms together and closed his eyes. Sister Yun, you. Nanan saw that Yun Yi's eyes were red. She was stunned and staggered a few steps backward. She could feel that Yun Yi had a violent chi awakening inside her. Where did the noise come from? Inside the house, a woman in a yellow dress came out. It was a beautiful lady with an unpleasant look on her face. She scoffed, this place will belong to my Chen family. Don't cause a scene. She saw Yun Yi Yi, who was in a red dress, standing by the door right away. Yun Yi Yi? You actually came back? The beautiful woman was not shocked. She was delighted. She smiled coldly, someone, come and take her down. Die. Yun Yi Yi's voice was low and hoarse. She did not even cast a spell. With a gesture, countless wind knives flew out. It was so shocking that it covered the world as the knives darted toward the woman. The woman's face turned pale. She was surprised. She quickly cast a spell and a wave was formed in front of her. Whoosh. The wind knives pierced through the wave and were not affected at all. They attacked the woman right away. They were so destructive that the woman lost her calm and staggered backward in a panic. Meanwhile, there was a faint glow on the body of the woman. Her belt was a shield treasure, forming into a curved shield and saving her life. Someone, come right away. The woman called out sharply, terrified. She turned into light and flew to the sky. She pointed at Yun Yi Yi and yelled in a loud voice, She's Yun Yi Yi. The treasure of the Yun family's probably now with her. Kill her, quick. This sentence was like a stone thrown into a calm lake. Instantly, ripples were everywhere. Countless eyes locked onto Yun Yi Yi. It was full of shock and greed. With countless chi, a lot of cultivators went forward. They started surrounding her, ready to attack. Miss Yun. An elder with half of his hair turned white appeared in the air. He had an item in hand. His white robes were flowing in the air. He looked like an immortal and spoke with a calm face. As one of the three main families in Qingyun City, I send my condolences to what happened to the Yun family. However, this happened because of the treasure. This item brings misfortune and isn't a blessing. I hope Miss Yun will hand it out. Ha ha ha, ha ha ha. Yun Yi Yi's face could not help changing. She ended up laughing mockingly, wildly. Her body rose in the air gradually. There was a strong tornado around her like a dragon rushing up. She was in the center. With a bright red flash, the wild wind blew vigorously in the air like flames. Her long hair was flowing in the air. One could not even see her face clearly. The item's indeed with me. Come and get it if you're unafraid of death. Her voice rang along with the wind, resonating in the air. The places touched by the wind became a mess. It all happened at a very rapid speed. Many ordinary people were unable to resist it and they were all blown away. Even the cultivators could feel a terrifying pressure arriving. They gave their all to resist it. Amitabha. Jis had a Buddha glow around him. He gradually took a step forward. The ordinary men that were being blown away instantly had a layer of glow on their back. This was so that they would be able to land on the ground safely instead of dying. Distraction Realm? The elder and the woman looked at the wild Yun Yi Yi with shock. They found it unbelievable. If they remembered correctly, Yun Yi Yi was only a Yuan Ying realm. They had not seen her in a while but she had already gone past out of aperture and went directly into the distraction realm. This speed was shocking and never been heard of before. The treasure. It must have been related to the treasure. Vroom. From somewhere in the city, another gust of chi rose into the sky. A flaming long snake shot up and went toward Yun Yi Yi. The flaming snake crashed into the swirling wind dragon around Yun Yi Yi. It was instantly broken and turned into a brilliant flame. Along with the wind, it surrounded Yun Yi Yi. The wind and the flames were alternating and forming a flaming pillar that shot up into the sky. They were swirling at a high speed. It was a majestic sight. Miss Yun's indeed gifted. 
you've grown so much within such a short time. I'm impressed, impressed. An elder with white hair said. However, he had a bright red robe on and a red fan in hand. His eyes glinted with darkness. Furthermore, more and more cultivators appeared. They were glaring at Yun Yi Yi with ill intentions. Chapter 357 Death is not scary. We have friends in the underworld. Someone said, Miss Yun. You're the only person left from the Yun family. We don't want to make it hard for you. Give us the treasure and you shall live. Yun Yi Yi glared at them coldly. Her tone was filled with violence as she said, My family was destroyed partly because of you. Today, none of you shall live. Vroom. The intensity of Chi around her strengthened. In the wind around her, there was a groaning of the dragon. The wind started to change in colors, engulfing her. The flames entangling the wind instantly dissipated and blended in with the wind knives, turning into flaming wind knives. They were lashing out in all directions. Says. Like a cannonball, they lashed out continuously, covering up the world. Says. Those cultivators who had no power and who were merely watching the drama were instantly slashed by the knives. They had flames all over their bodies. Before they could moan, they had already died and vanished. The surrounding buildings were severely destroyed as well. Everything was a mess. She's a demonic woman. Kill her for the sake of everyone. The elder with a whisk squinted. He waved the whisk in hand and instantly, countless white strings lashed out like snakes, circling Yun Yi Yi. The elder with a fan gently waved the fan. Instantly, there was a glow. Three gigantic flaming dragons launched at the wind knives. The others attacked as well. Instantly, spells were all over the sky flying in all directions. Wind, fire, and thunder were flashing, causing different effects. Nanan was watching with excitement with her little fists clenched up. She stared at the battlefield and asked through gritted teeth, Brother Nianfan, do we help out? Sister Yun so sad. Dragon nodded. She added, Yeah, this bunch of people are so mean. Li Nianfan only wanted to watch. He felt that these effects were so amazing. He asked, how likely is it for Miss Yun to win this? In theory, it's quite difficult. Dodgy analyzed. She's only in the distraction realm but the attacking crowd consists of two combination realm cultivators. It's not easy for her to have endured the fight up until now. I see. Li Nianfan nodded. He sighed and said, let her let out her rage. Watch closely. If she can't take it anymore, go and help her. Out. He watched the battle as Yun Yi Yi moved in red. She exuded a strong temperament in the windy air. She no longer had a smile on her face. The carefree look of her in red was unlikely to be seen again after today. It took merely half an hour for her to look completely different from the person she was before. Humans could be so weak and vulnerable. Meanwhile, fresh blood oozed from the corner of her lips. However, they curled up into a mocking smile. She raised her hand and a lotus leaf appeared, glowing strangely. At that moment, the world seemed to have stopped. If you want to know what treasure it is, I'll show you. Yun Yi Yi's eyes turned so dark as she exuded an air of extreme chill around her. Her tone was dark, totally unlike herself. It was a high above scoffing tone. The lotus moved slightly, its rhizome had turned black. Vroom. The wind around Yun Yi Yi not only powered up, they even turned into black wind, swirling outward. The black wind was like knives, cutting through everything they touched. The roof had turned into powder and vanished into thin air. The spells all around her were instantly cleared out. Dragon asked with curiosity, Brother Nianfan, what if they can't hold it anymore? Li Nianfan touched his nose, Erm, just pretend as if you didn't see it. This. This is. The bunch of cultivators looked shocked. They wanted to escape but the speed of the wind was too quick. Once they were touched by the wind, they instantly died and vanished without a trace. The faces of the two elders in the combination realm sank. They were terrified and wanted to run away. Meanwhile, Yun Yi Yi's red dress was even redder, like blood. With a point of a finger, two black swirling winds lashed out at an extremely quick speed. The two elders looked shocked as the black engulfed them. They vanished along with it. Cra, crazy. The woman and many other cultivators felt their scalps almost cracking open. They almost could not believe their eyes. They were so terrified that they felt their souls leaving their bodies. These were two cultivators in their combination realm. Yet, they died just like that. That was completely out of everyone's imagination. However, Yun Yi Yi did not give them time to think at all. She exuded an air of frost so violent as if they were in solid form. The attacking cultivators were soon all wiped out. 
Yun Yi Yi floated in the air as she glared at the ground. Her chills were so strong that nobody dared to meet her eyes. Her violence was as unstable as boiling water. With a wave, she floated toward a family. The family was instantly terrified. They knelt on the ground. Miss, Miss Yun. How did my family die? Yun Yi Yi's voice was so calm that it was terrifying. The Yunlin sect, Luokan sect, Dianhu sect, and Xing Yue sect joined forces, one of the younger men said with a trembling voice. He quickly added, it has nothing to do with us. Yun Yi Yi's ice cold face remained the same. How did the news of the Yun family getting hold of a treasure spread out? It's, it's. Whoosh. Yun Yi Yi made a gesture. A tornado instantly engulfed the group of people like thousands of knives, completely wiping out the entire family. It only took a little effort to turn the originally prosperous Qing Yun city into hell in the ordinary realm. There were dead bodies everywhere. Everyone was trembling and they did not dare to breathe loudly. However, Yun Yi still did not stop. She marched forward and appeared before another family. Miss Yun, we don't know anything. This has nothing to do with us. Yun Yi did not speak as her hair flowed in the air. She could not hold back her violence and was ready to kill them. Amitabha. Jeez, whose eyes were closed, finally walked forward to block her. Miss Yun, that's enough. Every crime has a source. This family's innocent, don't get trapped too deeply and let your desires control you. Jeez, I can't marry you. This was the first sentence Yun Yi Yi said. She was shaking all over and her eyes darkened as she exuded an air of violence. However, her tone was strangely calm. In merely an instance, I lost everything that I owned. Who can tell me why? She was glowing in red as her eyes had a cold chill in them again. My Yun family has always been friendly and kind for generations. This bunch of people benefited from our kindness. Half their lives belong to my Yun family. Now that my family has been violently destroyed, they're keeping themselves out of it without trying to help? I'm merely trying to take back what they owe us. Get out of my way. She waved her hand, and instantly, countless wind knives appeared. They rushed forward, leaving Jis alone as they killed the others. Jis had no emotion on his face. He exuded a golden Buddha glow that spread to his surroundings. He was blocking the wind knives. Miss Yun, this family did make a mistake, but they don't have to die. Let go. Li Nianfan could not help suggesting as he walked over with the crowd. Mr. Li, humans are heartless creatures who don't return favors. Even if you save them today, they won't remember your kindness. Who knows, they might even harm you in return. Yun Yi suddenly smiled. She looked at Jis and said pitifully, This is how humans are. How are you going to save them? Why not just kill them all? Kill them until they're scared and terrified. Only when they're all afraid of you, they'll stop harming others. Jis frowned and said, Miss Yun, you're in too deep. Ha, as Mr. Lee said, Buddhism's a path, demonic practice is also a path. Now that I'm forced to take this path, I have no choice. With that, Yun Yi Yi looked at the crowd and took a step backward. With a turn, she turned into a red orb of light and flew away. Crystal water droplets were floating in the air. Sigh. Li Nian Fan shook his head and sighed. He felt sympathy for Yun Yi Yi. He was instantly emotional. He witnessed a kind and energetic young lady turning into this. Amitabha. Jis chanted and gradually walked to the street. He sat on his knees as a golden glow circled him. A wave of sacred chi rushed into the sky, covering the Qingyun city. As the golden glow shone down, one could see with their naked eye that the souls were coming out. Following that, a powerful suction was felt, sucking all the souls toward Jis. If I don't save them, it'd be a crime. Not killing the demons is yet another crime. I should be responsible for this wrongdoing. With that said, the golden glow was gradually absorbed back into his body along with the souls, mixed together in Jesus' body. Jeez, you. Li Nianfan was stunned. He felt that this was not the way to do it. I'm calming the souls that died with hatred and grudge. I'm paying the debt, Mr. Li, don't worry, Jeez clasped his palms together and said calmly. How could he not be worried? He sucked in so many souls, they would feel so bad. Furthermore, the debt he mentioned. Was he paying his own debt or Yun Yi Yi's debts? Li Nian Fan did not understand, but he could vaguely guess. If I was more stubborn, I could have gotten that lotus, Ji said with regret. Da Ji said, the lotus is indeed problematic. The rhizome actually turned black. In the beginning, I already sensed that there was a terrifying demonic power coming from the depths of the lotus leaf. It seems to be a demonic treasure. 
Unfortunately, it's now too late to say it, Jeez halted. Suddenly, he said, Mr. Lee, perhaps I won't be able to go to the spiritual mountain with you. Li Nian Fan instantly waved it off, don't worry, we'll go ourselves. Do what you need to do. Everyone, goodbye for now. Jeez lowered his head and bowed. He then headed in Yun Yi Yi's direction. Li Nian Fan and the rest looked at the direction he went toward for a long time without speaking. Nanan and Dragon were sobbing, their tears streaming from their eyes. Da Ji and Fire Phoenix did not feel too good. They had become friends along the journey. Seeing that they were about to have a happy ending when this abrupt change happened, they somewhat felt as if they were involved in the story. Li Nian Fan looked around and realized that everyone was looking at them with an uneasy look. He could not help shaking his head. He walked out and approached the gate of the Yun family. He said to the crowd, fix this board and hang it back up. If not, when she comes back again, nobody will save you all. The crowd was too scared to speak. They simply nodded with understanding. It must be, it must be. Thank you for reminding us. Walking out from Ching Yun City with the pair missing, the team was less joyful than before. The crowd was rushing through the journey without speaking as much. Dragon bit her finger and cried. She said innocently, Brother Ji's went over, is he trying to stop Sister Yun? Li Nian Fan shook his head. Obviously not, perhaps it's just like before. He's going to pay Miss Yun's debt. What'd be the result? Nanan was more concerned. A body can only contain one soul. Jis used his body as a container, and the souls that he sucked bore a lot of hatred and grudges. If there was an accident, he won't make it, the Fire Phoenix said calmly and coldly as usual. However, there was a hint of sadness in her eyes. Huh? He'd die? Dragon's tears increased. It became a stream as she spoke with sympathy, Brother, can you help him? Li Nianfan could not help rolling his eyes. I'm an ordinary man with deluxe merit. How can I help? With an axe? He clicked his tongue and said, However, the sight of the souls did remind me of something. If his soul went to the underworld, I can go over to look for black and white impermanence. Since we're friends, perhaps they can help out. This was the benefit of having many friends. Death was no longer scary since he had friends in the underworld. Dragon wailed softly. She was surprised. Right, wow, brother. You're so clever. For the rest of the journey, nobody made any more delays. They traveled on clouds and soon arrived before the spiritual mountain. There were many mountains there as well as an ocean with waves, rippling over and over. Looking from afar, it looked like the statue of a Buddha either lying, reclining, or sitting. Although the location was not ideal, it caused no harm to the cultivators. The atmosphere was all right. One had to admit that Yucha was good at picking locations. Upon arriving, lights were flying in the air. Those who came were big shots from all over. They all exuded a strong temperament. Someone was riding on a gigantic owl. As it flapped its wings, the owl hooted loudly as if afraid that the others did not know it was an owl. Someone was riding on a luxurious horse carriage. With horses pulling it, it was shining with a gorgeous and incomparable glow. Those who attended this gathering naturally showed off their wealth. This was their public image. If they came in normal lights, they would look bad. Li Nian Fan looked from afar and mumbled, It seems that we can't walk anymore. The temple was located in the deep end of the spiritual mountain. Facing the mountains, it was impossible to climb each mountain on foot. Sit tight, the plane's about to fly. He smiled without making any movement. The deluxe merit automatically popped out like a tsunami. They gathered into a gigantic golden cloud that was so eye-catching and bright. The crowd was gradually lifted off the ground. Instantly, they stabbed the eyes of countless people. Chapter 358 This vegetable, is poisonous. In the air, shadows were passing by. Many of them did not know one another. When they exchanged looks, they would judge each other's appearances and compare. Meanwhile, an elder was sitting on the back of a flaming bull. He was drinking beer and looking like he was challenging the others that were passing by. He had a smile on his face. Below his buttock was a flaming bull with wildfire. Its four hooves were running, not on clouds but flames. With every step, the air shook with a loud sound. Furthermore, flames were lashing out in the surrounding area. Its speed was not only quick, but it was also spraying fire. Its temperament was very shocking, and it was definitely a rare sight in the air. The elder looked down on the others. He said proudly, in terms of flying, who can be more eye-catching than I? Meanwhile, the flaming bull suddenly widened its eyes. It said in shock, Master, someone's traveling on golden clouds up ahead. 
How are they doing it? What? Clouds? Golden? The elder was stunned. He looked down and almost jumped. His scalp was itching and he almost dropped his drink. Gasp, that's deluxe merit. This, this, this. How's there such a big deluxe merit cloud? He had blood in his eyes. He growled, flaming bull. Quick, turn off your flames. Don't let your flames touch any part of those clouds. Not even a flint. Quick, turn it off. Slow down. Change direction, we'll go the other way round. This was happening all over the sky. They were all peacefully showing off their wealth. However, they all started retreating, even reigning in their temperaments. They were afraid of offending this deluxe merit saint and causing a misunderstanding. Those riding on spiritual beasts instantly sealed their beasts' mouths. If they growled too loudly and hurt the ears of the deluxe merit saint, they would be destroyed. On the way, Li Nai and Fan and the rest faced no obstacle. Everyone made way for them and quietly left. As they said, nobody would compete when he used his merits. Li Nai and Fan nodded at the crowd, satisfied with how they were making way for him. After passing mountain after mountain, they saw a golden light in front. It formed a light pillar shooting up into the sky. Vaguely, one could hear the chanting of a sutra, calming one's soul. Moving forward, on top of a tall mountain, there were some temples. Each tower was built in gold. A golden glow was shining from within the architecture. The mountain was made into stairs. At the lowest steps, there was a big golden door. Two monks were guarding it while greeting the visitors. The steps stretched from the bottom, all the way up to the top of the tall mountain. Every nine steps, there would be two monks on each side with their palms clasped together. Their eyes were closed while they kept on praying. They seemed like they were asking the visitors to step up. The temples were very eye-catching. However, upon Li Nian Fan's arrival, he took away all of the attention. Compared to the deluxe merit clouds, these golden temples were instantly not as good. Not only were the deluxe merit clouds more apparent, they even had a type of temperament. In comparison, the gold of the temples was duller and cheaper looking. We unintentionally stole the attention, how embarrassing. Li Nai and Fan felt embarrassed. As he landed, a figure in the clouds landed before him. It was Yucha. She clasped her palms together and said, Greetings to Mr. Li. Li Nai and Fan smiled, Tara Yucha, long time no see. You're the main host this time. Why did you come out alone? Mr. Li's here and one of you is more important than everything else. Yucha looked sincere. No matter what it takes, Yucha must come out to greet you in person. She made a gesture and said, Mr. Li doesn't have to climb the stairs. Please, just fly into the temple. So, she came to make way for him. Li Nai and Fan nodded and followed Yucha as they flew into the temple. Below them, those who were climbing the stairs had to look up. Watching the golden clouds floating above their heads, it was as if they were thinking, we are different. On the way, Li Nai and Fan thought for a while and finally said, Tara Yucha, I met a monk recently. However, he couldn't make it. Yucha halted and asked, Did something happen? Li Nai and Fan merely sighed. He told her the story and finally shook his head. The most difficult thing in the world is emotions. Nobody can get involved. They'll have to work it out themselves. Li Nai and Fan wanted to help, but as an outsider, he was unable to step in. If he insisted on helping, it would have a negative effect as well. He could only step to the side to think of a solution. He had watched many romantic movies in his past realm. Now that this happened, he did not even know how to come up with a comforting sentence. Chicken soup was never enough when needed. Amitabha. Yucha's tone sounded complicated. She continued, Jesus unable to get past this catastrophe. Following that, Yucha fell silent as if she was thinking of something. Soon, the crowd arrived at the main hall. The hall was spacious and it was glowing in gold. There were no extra decorations, only a few pillars supporting the hall. Monks were welcoming the crowd. Dot. There were quite a lot of visitors. It seemed that Buddhism was well respected. Since the religion had spread to a wide area, they were higher up than the sects. This was an independent religion. Of course, Li Nianfan did not pay close attention to all these visitors. He simply glanced at them. However, he was very eye-catching. It was difficult for him not to attract attention to himself. Soon, many familiar faces gathered around him. Zi, immortal Lin Zhu, Xiao Changfang, Pian, Gu Chang Ching, along with his grandson were all invited. They had arrived earlier on. They made a pact and when they saw Li Nian Fan here, they walked over to greet him, Mr. Li. 
Li Nai and Fan smiled in return. Ha ha ha, so you all came as well. You just suggested, Mr. Li, why don't I arrange a room for all of us to catch up? Li Nai and Fan nodded. Good idea. Soon, the crowd left the main hall and went to a room in the back hall. Everyone looked strange. It was not until Li Nai and Fan had left that they dared to start discussing what was that? How does anyone have so much deluxe merit? Where did he gain so much deluxe merit? I've lived for a long time and this is the first time I've seen a deluxe merit saint. How unfair. I always save ordinary man from demons. Why don't they give me some? Most importantly, he's an ordinary man. How can an ordinary man gain so much deluxe merit? Perhaps he saved the world in his previous life? Li Nai and Fan did not have time to care about the shocked and gossiping crowd. He followed Yuchi to a quiet room. The room was different from the golden hall outside. It exuded a sandalwood scent. It felt like someone's home. There were wooden chairs and tables in the room which instantly made Li Nai and Fan feel at ease. He had seen so much gold that it hurt his eyes. Ordinary settings suited him more. Mr. Li, please, have a seat, Yucha invited sincerely. Then, she asked for tea to be served. Compared to the others, Yucha's place was quite disappointing to Li Nai and Fan. Whether it was the underworld, the Carp Palace, or the Xia Kingdom, there were always some beautiful ghosts, some stunning clam demons, or alluring palace ladies. They were all alluring and beautiful, making one's experience memorable. Here, however, there were only a bunch of bald monks. Their heads were so shiny that they even reflected light. It seemed that the Buddhism religion was not suitable to be a good host. Li Nai and Fan made a mental note. In his future tour, he would change places to visit. Other than the bad servers, the food was bad, too. It was a table full of vegetarian dishes plain and tasteless. Yucha, I have no choice but to say it, Payan could not help saying. Since we're all friends, if you're too poor, you can tell us. These dishes just aren't presentable. Most importantly, the expert was here. He was so high above. How could she serve him these dishes? My Buddhism does eat poorly indeed. Yucha was slightly embarrassed. She said bitterly. However, we planted these ourselves in the temple. We also collected the spiritual fruits from the surrounding area. The taste should be okay. Immortal Lin Zhu, being the foodie that she was, did not speak. She picked up a green vegetable and put it into her mouth. Arg, um. Her mouth moved a few times and instantly, her pupils dilated. She was stunned. Her mouth pouted, and with a sound, the vegetable flew out from her mouth. Oh, no. Oh, no. She was crying, leaning on Tizi. She was even slapping her own mouth with regret. She said listlessly, I've lived for so long, but I've never eaten something so disgusting before. The vegetables. Poisonous. I can't live anymore. Everyone quietly retracted their chopsticks. They looked at Immortal Lin Zhu with respect. Thank you, sister, for testing it out for us. Zhe was speechless. She said in a low voice, All right, get up. Can poison me even kill you? Disgusting food is the most poisonous drug to me in the world. Only good food can save me now. Immortal Lin Zhu hugged Zhe. She asked sincerely, Sister Zhe, I know you still have an orange. Save me, save me. Ha ha ha, what a foodie. Li Nian Fan could not help smiling and shaking his head. The one thing I don't lack is good food. On the way here, I did get some Kirin meat. You're in luck. With that, he made a wave and two Kirin thighs appeared on the table. Since there was too much Kirin meat, to store them conveniently, Li Nian Fan preserved the meat like cured bacon. Who would have thought that it would taste surprisingly good? The cured meat did not have much of a smell and it was more of a self-contained texture. Everyone looked at the meat with sparkling eyes. The food presented by the expert was surely the most enjoyable in the world. Wow, thank you, Mr. Li. Immortal Lin Zhu did not hold back. Her eyes lit up as she launched herself to grab onto one of the two thighs. She started munching away alone. The others were stunned and stared at her blankly. What was that? There were only two thighs. She took one whole thigh for herself? How selfish. Quick. Zhe knew immortal Lin Zhu well enough. She pestered, don't daydream, we must distribute the remaining thigh quickly. If not, she might start eating this as well when she's done with hers. What, so fierce? What are we waiting for? Quick. Hurry. 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 The crowd no longer looked like immortals. They looked like robbers, more energetic than when they were distributing spiritual treasures. They stared at the meat as their cheeks flushed red. 
With one bite, the crowd was instantly won over by the texture. They could not help closing their eyes to enjoy it. Immortal Lin Zhu instantly felt the poison in her body being cleared out. She stuffed the food into her mouth. Her words were muffled as she said, Kirin meat's indeed different. I haven't tasted Kirin meat all these years. Ha ha ha, this Kirin's a stupid one. It looked so arrogant at first, but in the end, it was burnt by its own thunder, Nanan said. She retold the story with laughter. The others were eating while listening engagingly. They all laughed in the end. Except for Yucha. She was eating happily with the crowd. However, she quietly put down the meat in her hand. She then spat out the meat from her mouth. She pouted and had tears in her eyes. She almost collapsed. Why could they not just eat quietly? Why did they have to mention that? Why could they not let her eat happily? The meat was already in her mouth and now she had to spit it out. Was there something more painful in life than this? Immortal Lin Zhu stared at the piece of meat. She gulped and said, Eh? Tara Yucha, why aren't you eating it? Yucha said bitterly, I can only eat meat if I don't know how it was killed. I heard the killing process, I, Immortal Lin Zhu was excited. She cut her off, wonderful, if you're not eating it, I'll eat it. Yucha was speechless. Amitabha. Following that, the crowd was munching on Kirin meat happily. Only Yucha was sadly munching on her vegetables. After the meal, everyone looked relaxed and happy. Xiao Cheng Feng wiped his mouth and started to show off, Mr. Li, how dare the Kirin attack you? That's because I wasn't there. If I was, I'd have killed it with one sword. The crowd naturally neglected his arrogant claims. Zhe frowned and said, the last major catastrophe was related to the Kirin family. Even back in the ancient times, we only heard about dragons and phoenixes. We rarely heard about Kirins. They had stayed hidden for long enough. Immortal Lin Zhu was licking the thigh that no longer had any meat left as she spoke, I thought all Kirins were killed long ago. Li Nianfan suddenly said, if I'm not mistaken, the Kirin family was involved with the investiture of the gods. Zhu's face straightened right away. She said, please, do tell us more. There was a godly beast mentioned in the investiture of the gods with the name Four Wrongs. You'd probably remember. Four Wrongs was the mistress of Kirin. Chapter 359 I Have No Fear The investiture of the gods was a story told by Li Nianfan. Everyone was familiar with it. Zi even revised it from time to time. After all, this was the story of how the heavenly temple appeared. However, this matter was not mentioned in the story. The crowd was shocked. Four Wrongs was the mistress of the Kirin? Should, be. Li Nianfan was not too sure. The story was quite complex, so he was not sure if the story was actually similar to what happened in this realm. After pausing, he continued, it's a long story. When the sky and the ground were separated, there were four innate elements earth, water, fire, and wind. They stabilized the space. The four elements then turned into godly beasts gradually. First, the dragons, then the phoenixes, and the kirins. They took care of the ground, ocean, and sky. They controlled the order of everything. And then? The fire phoenix looked at Li Nianfan, her voice trembling. Even Dragon stared at Li Nianfan without blinking. Her big eyes were filled with a desire for knowledge. She had always wanted to ask her ancestor about the story of the ancient times. However, he would not tell her no matter what. He was afraid of attracting unnecessary trouble. To her, her brother Li Nianfan was the best. He could speak and scold anyone as he pleased. Heaven never came up to him for trouble. This was the history of the dragons, phoenixes, and kirins. Then. Li Nianfan halted. He said, the three families were in luck. They reached their peak. To snatch control, they broke out into a fight. The fight made the world dark. The sun and moon were dull. The war caused a mess everywhere. The spirituals vanished. Dragon opened her mouth wide in shock. She stared with disbelief. So clever. Her scared ancestor back home actually had such a glorious history? Of course, they were clever. They were beasts that were as old as the world. Li Nianfan returned to the actual topic, the three families were in a mess, getting hurt and causing troubles. They were punished by heaven and luck decreased. From the peak to the pit. To keep their luck, the Kirin family made his mistress, Four Wrongs, get involved with the investiture of the gods to become Jiang Zia's pet. With that, whenever Kirins appeared, there was an auspicious ambition. I see. Everyone had looks of realization. They were also shocked. Although the story was short, the world portrayed in the story was not one that they had heard of. 
they did not dare to think of an even more ambitious world. Z took a deep breath and said, The Kirin family is so powerful, no wonder they're so ambitious. It seems that after the investiture of the gods, they didn't reappear. So, they bribed the demons. Li Nai and Fan looked at Z. He suddenly asked curiously, Immortal Z, you said you're all rebuilding the heavenly temple? How's the progress? Z did not want to hide it. She said, Mr. Li, we've found the heavenly temple. Found the heavenly temple? Li Nai and Fan halted. He was shocked. Who would have thought that he would receive such shocking news with a simple question? That was the heavenly temple. It actually appeared? So, immortals like the emperor, empress, Taishang elder, and Yu Lao were still there? He looked at Zi and felt his heart racing uncontrollably. He verified, you found the heavenly palace? Zi nodded. She then hesitated for a moment. Finally, she decided to admit to him, Mr. Li, I'm actually one of the seven adopted daughters of the empress of the heavenly temple. I didn't mean to keep it from you, I'm sorry. Li Nian Fan halted. Although he was surprised, he gave a smaller reaction. He could tell that Zi's temperament was different from the other immortals. The seven adopted daughters. So, you're one of the seven fairies? Zi nodded weakly. That was good. He actually met one of the seven fairies? And became friends with her? Li Nian Fan stared at Zi. He wanted to ask if Zi knew Dong Yuang but he did not do so. He recalled that when he heard about the immortals, he even thought about whether the seven fairies would come down from the sky. Who would have thought that he actually met one? Li Nianfan was staring at Zi, causing her to blush as she became shy. She wondered if she should look away politely or meet his eyes. Li Nianfan snapped back to reality and asked, What immortals are there in the heavenly temple? Zi nodded. She then shook her head looking upset. She said in a low voice, In the past, yes. Now. The immortals in the heavenly temple are all sealed. I see. Li Nian Fan nodded. He was not surprised. After all, there were not many who had survived the catastrophe. He could not help thinking. What kind of cultivational realm had he come to? There was clearly a big wipeout. Perhaps it was the final stage of the mythology? If this went on, he suspected that even the cultivators would vanish. By then, only ordinary people would be left in the world. And then, they would evolve again and finally arrive at the science era? Wow. Unlikely. Li Nian Fan shook off his thoughts. He felt like he was overthinking things. Whether it was true or not, it had nothing to do with him. He only had to live in the present. He licked his lips and could not help asking, then, can I pay a visit? This was the heavenly temple. Since he was here, of course, he had to visit it. Under Li Nian Fan's gaze, Zi nodded and said, of course. Mr. Li's a deluxe merit saint. You may go anywhere. Li Nianfan was delighted. Wonderful, how great. After briefly catching up, Yucha enthusiastically suggested showing the crowd around the spiritual mountain. Li Nianfan accepted. With the detailed tour, Li Nianfan instantly knew more about the spiritual mountain. Furthermore, since Yucha wanted to impress Li Nianfan, she even told them her future plans and ambitions. The spiritual mountain was way bigger than their imagination. Among those mountains, each mountain would have a golden temple according to Yucha's plan. They would look different, adding on to the tall mountain and reaching up to the white clouds. This place would become a Buddhist country. This goal was indeed ambitious. Li Nian Fan looked at the boundless mountains and found it difficult to imagine how grand it would look like. Perhaps it will be the era of Buddhism soon. Right until then, the development of Buddhism had gone on track. There were more and more disciples. Inside the temples, there were many monks and meditators. Furthermore, each of them was a cultivator of high ranking. They had surpassed any ordinary sect. Meanwhile, the crowd arrived at the backyard. The backyard was filled with trees unaffected by the season. They were thick and well grown. Strangely, the leaves were yellow. As they were blown away by the wind, they fell to the ground in slow motion, covering the ground with a thick layer of leaves. In the yard, a young monk was sweeping the floor with a broom taller than himself. He was slowly sweeping the floor full of leaves. Nan had found it funny and she could not help laughing. Little monk, will you ever finish sweeping this way? The young monk stopped. He saw the crowd and instantly put down the broom to run over. Yes, I will. Brother G's told me that when I'm done sweeping them all, he'll be back by then. As M. Nanan smiled and said, Little monk, you're so foolish. He was messing with you. You lie. The young monk said with a serious face. 
He spoke up for his brother, Brother G's never messes around. Nanan pouted and said, your brother isn't a proper monk anyway. The crowd had walked with G's for part of the journey. They knew about his temperament. In some ways, he was indeed not a proper monk. Yucha said, all right, Jiki, hurry up and greet the guests. Amitabha, greetings to everyone. Jiki clasped his palms and looked serious. He then looked at Yucha with anticipation, Tara, is Brother G's back yet? Yucha answered, you haven't finished sweeping the leaves. Of course, he isn't back yet. Oh. Jiki lowered his head with disappointment. He turned back and went back to sweeping. Yucha looked at the little monk and introduced, he's an orphan. Someone put him at our door of the West Mountain Temple. His Buddha understanding's no less than G's. He doesn't have any major obstacles in life, but he has fool written in his heart. Li Nianfan nodded. So, you're making him sweep the floor in hopes of easing his foolishness? Mr. Li's right. Indeed. Yucha nodded. Jiz brought him in, the two have a close bond. Li Nianfan looked at the yard. He could feel that the little monk and the trees made a perfect drawing. The sight would calm one's heart down. Suddenly, he saw a tree by the side door. It was as tall as a human. The tree was thick with triangular shaped leaves. They were jade green, contrasting with the yellow maple leaves. He said, that's a Bodhi tree? Yucha said, yeah, I remember Mr. Lee mentioned that this tree is related to Buddha. So, I planted them all over the place. It's indeed a mystery. Following that, the crowd stayed in the spiritual mountain. On the fourth day, Yucha invited the crowd over early in the morning. The ceremony was about to start. Ring, ring, ring. The clock rang nine times. Many monks had made preparations early in the morning. They were all standing at their designated spots. They had their palms facing inward, looking formal. Li Nianfan and the rest were on top of the square. They were the witnesses and did not have to do anything. In simple words, they came here to make up for the numbers and to make the ceremony look better. They could even help promote this ceremony after going home. After all, witnessing it and quietly helping to establish it was completely two different things. Many monks were well prepared. They were ready for all the procedures. Yucha started by declaring words of gratitude. On a mountain not far away, hundreds of black shadows quietly gathered. The big lord demon was taking the lead, his eyes squinting in the direction of the temples. His eyes were filled with violence. Big lord demon scoffed coldly with excitement. Ha, lord demon gods wise. With this attack, Buddhism might as well vanish and never come back again. By his side, a demon agreed instantly, even back in the days when Buddhists were everywhere with Buddha guarding it, we still managed to wipe it out completely. Now, this is nothing, not even a small dish. Well said. Big Lord Demon looked at the demon feeling impressed. What's your name? The demon was excited. He answered, my name's Moen. You're not bad. You're much stronger than Bako and Amon. Big Lord Demon was very pleased. He complained, they were too terrified to come to the ordinary realm again. Cowards. Moen nodded instantly, Lord Demon's right. We've always been undefeatable. We have nothing to fear. Ha ha ha, nothing to fear. Well said. We're on the same page. We need more promising demons like you. Big Lord Demon was even more pleased. Moen was very excited. He could not wait much longer to impress Lord Demon. Lord Demon, what are we waiting for? Let's go and clear them out. Wait. Are you crazy? Big Lord Demon pulled Moen back. He frowned, didn't you see the deluxe merit saint facing us? Come, follow me to find another way to attack. Instantly, hundreds of black shadows went into action, flying from this mountain to the opposite mountain. Lord Demon, let's go. Moen started again. He was so excited that he could attack in the next moment. Okay, the demons aren't afraid of anything. It's time for us to show our power. Big Lord Demon squinted his eyes. He scoffed, get ready, follow me. Meanwhile, Yucha's speech was almost at the end. Here, I'd like to thank a person with all sincerity. He's Mr. Lee. He's the one who inspired me to establish Buddhism. Without him, there'd be no Yucha today. Please, join me as I invite him over to initiate the ceremony. Clamp. 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 Applause. Li Nianfan was stunned. He stood up bitterly. Who would have thought that he would have a chance to perform on this occasion? E. A. Wait up. Big Lord Demon was terrified. He panicked and asked them to stop. Is. 
the deluxe merit saint went up to initiate the ceremony. I, the Lord Demon, am willing to show him some respect. Let's attack after he leaves. Li Nianfan received the pair of scissors and did not look nervous. He smiled at the audience and said, Thank you, Terayucha, for inviting me over. I'll initiate now. With that, the red cloth on the board was cut. Four words were shown, West Sky Spiritual Mountain. Clamp! 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 Another round of applause. The ceremony was about to finish. After Li Nianfan had cut off the cloth, he did not go back to his spot. In fact, he stood on the other side. Big Lord Demon growled through his gritted teeth, Everyone, follow me. We're changing directions. Chapter 360 Deluxe Merit Like an Ocean. Making Way. You just started to make the final speech. I now announce, from today onward, Buddhism will be officially established. All of the monks put their palms together. Amitabha. Ha ha ha, ha ha ha. Along with a burst of wild laughter, hundreds of black shadows suddenly rushed out violently. Instantly, there were dark clouds everywhere. A dark pressure weighed on them. It was terrifying. Although Big Lord Demon had lost a lot of weight, his laughter was still quite powerful, exuding a powerful chi. He scoffed coldly, Buddhism's established? What a funny thought. I, Big Lord Demon, shall be the first to disagree. It's the demons. The demons came. I knew they'd come to cause trouble. This is the Big Lord Demon of the demons? His size is different from what I expected. The crowd was shocked. They looked up at the sky uneasily. They staggered backward to keep a safe distance. Yucha's face sank. Be ready to welcome the demons. Amitabha. Many of the monks instantly rose into the sky. They remained formal with a golden glow all over, repressing the world with their glow as if facing their greatest enemy. There were more monks than demons. Instantly, the demons were outnumbered and surrounded. Yucha remained calm as she glared at Big Lord Demon. She said in a low voice, Today's our ceremony, we don't wish to kill. Please, leave. If not, don't blame me if I get involved. She did not want to fight today. They were at temple gates. Killing here would affect their cultivation. You want to intimidate me? Ha ha ha, you're not awake yet. You bunch of Buddhists are fake people. How dare you host such a big ceremony? What a joke! Big Lord Demon looked at Yucha mockingly. He took out a crystal ball and made a gesture. Instantly, there was a glow all over as a phantom appeared in the sky. Today, I'll show you all the true color of Buddhism. In the next moment, the glow transformed into a projection. The main character was Yucha. The projected Yucha was very different from the current Yucha. She was dressed in black leather and had a cold face. She even looked violent with no hint of emotion. She was mass killing. It merely took a while before a lot of lives were taken away by her. The entire scene was too violent to watch with countless lives getting hurt. Other than her, there were many other demons in the world. Was. There was a change in the scene, and Yucha was seen seducing the ordinary people with demonic spirits everywhere. She was so oppressive while forcing the people to join the demons. Do demons? Oh, God. Tara Yucha used to be a demon? This, how's that possible? She's such a big demon and yet she established Buddhism. What religion is this? Apart from the others, Li Nianfen was similarly shocked. Although he knew Yuja was a demon in the past, he did not expect her to be so violent. She killed countless lives. No wonder they said that immortals and demons were not to be one. Every sect wanted to join forces to seal the demons away. This meant that they had caused a lot of harm in the past. As for those monks, their faces changed. They all stared at the projection with wide eyes. They could not believe that it was their Terra Yucha. They felt like collapsing. Many monks even grew demons in their hearts. Their eyes went blank and they started walking around like zombies. They started walking around blankly, doubting lives. Yucha was a demon of my kind. She led the demons and attacked the ordinary realm three times. Finally, she was sealed inside the Azure Ville. Big Demon King walked over arrogantly, accusing Yucha of her crimes. She committed many crimes and treated humans like grass. Not even like a pig or dog. What right does she have to live in the world? Today, I, Big Demon King, am going to kill this mega demon for the sake of everyone. The crowd listened and nodded in agreement. However, they felt that something was not right. Indeed, I have sinned in the past. Yucha had her palms facing one another. She closed her eyes and said eventually, once Buddhism's established, I'll finish my deed. I'll wait for my punishment and reincarnate a hundred times to become a Buddha to pay my debt from the last generation. 
Ha, only in the past? Big Demon King laughed again. Everyone, I'll show you what Buddhism is currently doing. He waved and the scene changed again. Li Nai and Fan squinted. The person shown was someone familiar to him. It was Yun Yi Yi. Compared to the past, her cultivation seemed to have improved a lot. Around her, there was red and black mist circling her as if there were two streams. The crossing of two streams gave one the feeling of an evil and wicked temperament. She was standing before a village. Her red dress was covered in fresh blood. On her face, there were blood stains all over. Her face was extremely cold and her eyes full of violence like a beast. Whether she was meeting an ordinary man or a cultivator, she would attack them no matter what. In the blink of an eye, the village had been turned into hell. This woman's Yun Yi Yi, and she's a Buddhist. Everyone, look at what she's doing? Big Lord Demon scoffed painfully. She's already destroyed three major sects. Even the cities related to the sex couldn't escape from her murderous knives. She's killing everyone heartlessly. She's inhuman. After Yun Yi Yi left, a monk with his palms pressed together walked out quietly. He was on his knees, using his body to suck in the souls that were mourning. It was the exchange between a darkened wind and a Buddhist glow. Jesus' face was twitching. Inside his body, there seemed to be countless living things trying to come out. They were bulging from his body. One could only see how much he was hurting. Wah! Nanan and Dragon cried. Brother, we should have helped Sister Yun back then. The Fire Phoenix said, an outsider cannot help in this matter unless someone can turn back time to stop this tragedy from happening. Li Nai and Fan nodded and sighed. Or perhaps we could wipe out Yun Yi Yi's memory, make her forget the hatred. That's even more violent. He frowned slightly. Weighing the causes and effects, he soon realized the key. The lotus was indeed a demonic item. It affected Yun Yi Yi's rationality. Yun Yi Yi's family was framed and killed by the demons. The goal was to make Yun Yi Yi demonic. Jis would become unlucky as a result. This was the first time he experienced danger in this cultivating realm. The demons had too many plots, playing with their chess pieces. How terrifying! The demons were not only cruel, they even attacked Buddhism. They even knew about attacking one's heart. He had made adequate preparation for this day. He could not help sighing. So, this is a plot of the demons. The projection vanished. Big Lord Demon smiled mockingly and said, Did you see? That was a Buddhist monk. Silence. Many of the monks had nothing to say. They clasped their palms together and prayed in deep pain. Big Lord Demon said, If you're not a monk, I'll be kind and let you off. Go to the side. Instantly, most of the cultivators hid away. Big Demon Lord was paying close attention to Li Nai and Fan. Seeing that this deluxe merit saint did not move, he frowned. He could not help reminding the other demons, the deluxe merit saints over there. Never go near him. Stay away from him as far as possible. Don't use the group attack. If we touch any part of him, we'll be dead. With that said, he scoffed, small ones, kill them all. Vroom. Instantly, Demon Chi rushed into the sky. In the sky. A mask of a black ghost was formed. Its mouth was open as if it was ready to eat up the entire Buddhism religion in the next instance. The faces of many monks turned pale. They staggered backward in fear. They had lost their calm a long time ago. By then, they were on the verge of collapsing. They did not even have the heart to resist. They were perplexed and terrified. Buddhism was probably going to be established the same day it ended. Xiao Cheng Feng tightened his grip on the longsword in his hand. He was waiting for instructions. He asked, Mr. Li, what do we do? Li Nai and Fan sighed hopelessly. It seems that there's no choice but to get involved. The demons were everywhere. They had to stop the demons no matter what. Wait, you all must protect me, he reminded the crowd with a worried tone. After all, he could get hurt and killed. In the next moment, the deluxe merit cloud gradually helped him rise up. The golden glow around him was enhanced. He had turned into a golden man. The golden glow was too thick, spreading out almost everywhere. The world had turned into a golden swirl. However, it did not stop. The golden glow was still swirling and formed a pillar that rose into the sky. The surrounding mountains had turned into gold. Everything was transformed into a golden ocean. Everyone, including Zay and the rest, was stunned. Although they knew Li Nianfen was a deluxe merit saint, they did not expect his deluxe merit to be so powerful. Too much too thick. The thickness of this deluxe merit was beyond anyone's level. It was extremely terrifying. Even a simple glance of it was able to terrify everyone. Everyone felt like running away. 
The crowd did not dare to breathe. They were scared that a slight breath that accidentally blew against the deluxe Merit Saint's hair would get them killed. Big Lord Demon was stunned. His mouth had formed an O shape. He turned into a sculpture, trembling. He was in despair. Li Nian Fan unleashed all of his power. He formed a path with his deluxe merit, making way for the rest to escape. He scoffed with justice, stop it. At the same time, at the peak of a mountain, the Xing Yue sect was covered in blood. There were dead bodies everywhere. It was a cruel sight. Jis knelt in the center of it all. The blood had tainted his robes. Souls were struggling everywhere. Just like the ripples, they were sucked into his body. Humph. He groaned and spat out a mouthful of fresh blood. He had bloody tears coming out of his eyes. If one were to get closer to him, one could hear the howling of souls coming from within his body. Constantly hearing those howls would turn one crazy. Jesus' body was scrawny. He stood up and staggered as if he was thoroughly harmed. On his chest, the statue of the Golden Buddha was glowing. There was a Buddha's glow coming out from his body. If it was not for this Buddha statue, he would not have made it this far. He would have died a long time ago. Meanwhile, a gust of wind blew by. A red figure gradually walked out. Her eyelids were as still as water. She looked at Jeez and said, Jeez, if you can suck in people's souls, return the souls of those who killed my young family back to me. Chapter 361 I haven't showed up yet, and I'm about to die. Ji said, Lady Yun, they're dead. Their souls are no longer your concern. Someone will punish them for their sins. I can't give it to you. Yun Yi Yi asked, how so? Jis replied, the 18th level of hell. I had more faith in punishing them myself. Are you going to give the souls to me? Jis did not reply. There was a dark glint in her eyes. She was vividly cold towards Jis. In the end, she scoffed and was about to leave. Jis stopped her. He said, Lady Yun, it's time to let go since your enemy's already defeated. Yun Yi Yi looked lost. She appeared to be misguided. Then, she went cold again. She said tragically, how am I supposed to let go? Who can understand my pain? The world hurt me, I want everyone to feel the same pain, too. Stop it. Ask yourself, will that make you happy? Jis looked at Yun Yi Yi. They were like two people standing on two huge mountain tops with white clouds floating around. They stared at each other. Myself? Yun Yi Yi looked at Jis with an ironic gaze. I killed so many people, including Buddhists. Before they died, they still waited for the Buddha to save them. Did the Buddha come? Faith is just a foolish trick, it can't save anyone. Jis chanted Buddhist scripture silently. But faith can save itself. I beg of you, stop the killing. Just stop it. Okay? Yun Yi Yi looked at Jis. She was slightly out of it. Jis slowly walked forward and reached out. He looked at Yun Yi Yi and said, I can still marry you. Give me that lotus leaf as a dowry? Yun Yi Yi started to breathe fast. Her first reaction was joyous. She dazedly handed over the lotus leaf to Jis. The lotus leaf had already turned black. It shined in an evil light. Just when Jis was about to receive the lotus leaf, it started to shine brightly with jet black light. A cold and cruel voice could be heard from within it, Want me? Dream on. That lotus leaf melted into her palm. Then, a jet black arm suddenly grew out from the back of Yun Yi like a venomous snake. Jis was not ready for that attack and the arm pierced through his chest. He flew away like a cannonball. This boat is something else. He can even force me to attack him. Yun Yi Yi was speaking but it did not sound like her. Her voice was mixed with an unknown voice. It sounded extremely creepy. The lotus leaf multiplied underneath her feet. Black lotus flowers slowly bloomed and held her up. She started to emit an extremely creepy and terrifying aura. She levitated over to Jis. Jis at that moment had crashed into a wall. His chest had a wound as huge as the mouth of a bowl. Blood flowed out like crazy. Many souls inside him found an opening in his wound. They opened their mouths wide and howled tragically. They were ready to exit. However, they could only make it out halfway through. The rest of their forms were tightly locked inside Jis. Oh? Not dead yet? Yun Yi Yi looked at Jis mysteriously. Then, you shall be the fertilizer of the Black Lotus. She waved and the black lotus instantly shined with a dark light. It attacked Jis. Just when the black light was about to touch Jis, a golden light slowly appeared and formed a shield. The golden light was not intense. On the contrary, it was very subtle. It easily blocked out the black light. Gold and black were natural enemies in color. 
they were completely different and could not be mixed together. The souls were sucked back into G's. His wound healed itself but instead of flesh, it was with golden paint. G's reopened his eyes. He looked at that black lotus. Her body was as light as a feather. She was levitating. Is that... the... destructive black lotus? Yucha had already told G's all about the journey to the West stories. He was familiar with it, too. Therefore, G's was able to recognize it at first glance. Yo, you're quite knowledgeable. Yun Yi Yi grinned. This immortal item was born with a realm, and it's an ultimate heavenly spiritual treasure which can destroy realms. Lord Demon Lawless used this lotus to destroy Buddhism that year. And now, Lord Demon God has given it to me. Jeez asked in a low voice, Who are you? I'm the new Lord Demon. Lord Demon's voice echoed. It was cruel and cold. Jeez said, This is between us, come out from her body. Lord Demon laughed out loud. Ha, why should I? Come on. Come on, this is your lover. Are you going to attack her? Amitabha. Jeez did the namaste gesture and shined brightly. His majestic golden light shined and spread. There was a golden halo ring behind him. Suddenly, Buddhist light took over the realm. It looked like a golden egg from afar. The intensity of the Buddhist light made Lord Demon unhappy. The Lord Demon waved and spun the destructive black lotus. Demonic flames appeared, forming a long black dragon. Black and the gold were having a standoff. How? How's this possible? Lord Demon had wide eyes. She was in disbelief. The Lord Demon did not expect that the puny monk could withstand the power of the destructive Black Lotus. It was, impossible. She asked, What kind of treasure do you have on you? Jeez did not reply. He slowly raised his arm. Buddhist light poured out and formed a huge dragon. Heavenly dragon. Roar. The golden dragon was too huge. Its dragon head covered the sun and the sky. It was as big as a village. It opened its mouth and devoured the Lord Demon. From afar, it looked like a huge dragon chewing a ball of black smoke. The Lord Demon became serious. She raised her arm and said, Black Demonic Dragon. Roar. Another huge dragon also soared to the sky. It was made from black smoke with the lotus spinning around it. It was entangled with the golden dragon. Kaboom. At that moment, the realm flashed. Nothing was visible for thousands of miles. Everyone looked up and saw the symphony of gold and black light in the sky. They heard rumbles coming from afar. It was a rare and odd sight to behold. The Buddhist light and demonic energy became sky pillars. It looked extremely terrifying in the air, even the above immortal realm sensed that. Buzz. A big golden door slowly appeared out of thin air. Then, it opened and revealed a holy light. The heavenly gates were opened. Soon, the golden door frame started to split apart, revealing a crack. Then, the crack grew larger. The heavenly gates did not appear for long. It shattered like a mirror along with a clang. At that moment, some sort of block in the realm was suddenly lifted. The bridge to immortality was completely connected to the immortal realm. The limitations of the absolute era were shattered. Immortal chi started to pour in. Amitabha. Jis levitated. His whole body was covered in gold. He placed his hands together to do the namaste gesture. The Buddhist lights around him were like flashlights. It kept flickering, utterly sparkly and shiny. Since you won't come out, I shall beat you until you come out. Boom. The sculpture of the golden Buddha in his embrace slowly melted into Jis. It was endlessly powerful. Buddhist hymns could be heard out of nowhere. An enormous figure of the golden Buddha appeared behind him. Jis was sitting cross-legged but he looked holy with his namaste gesture. People would stop on sight. They might even worship him. Buzz. The aura of the place started to become chaotic. Jay sat on the chest of the giant Buddha while chanting something. The giant Buddha slowly raised his palm. The palm was way too huge. It covered the sky and attacked the Lord Demon. Jeez, would you really attack me? This time, it was purely the voice of Yun Yi Yi. She sounded pitiful like a beggar. However, Jeez ignored it. The palm went toward the Lord Demon. Nice one, monk. You would even kill your wife. Yun Yi Yi squinted. The destructive black lotus spun like crazy. The lotus leaf expanded and closed in. It wrapped her up. Waves of dark energy turned into countless huge snakes. It attacked the Buddha's hand. The Buddha hand landed and demolished the black snakes. It was like a huge mountain crashing into a black lotus. Boom. The horrifying explosion turned everything into dust. 
The high mountain underneath their feet did not stand a chance. It was wiped out before it could crumble. The surrounding mountains were the same. The forest was also gone. The earth cracked and crumbled. A horrifying bottomless pit was formed. The smoke and dust faded. The scary phenomenon also vanished. Two bodies laid on the ground next to the bottomless pit. One of them wore red clothes. The other one had a shiny bald head. Cough. Jeez had a lifeless gaze. His shawl was completely torn. He stood up with all his might and walked towards Yun Yi Yi. He fell over and crawled toward her, inch by inch. Yun Yi Yi weakly laid on the ground. She silently looked at Jeez. Tears were streaming out from her eyes. They were both done with fighting. Yun Yi Yi smiled palely. Monk, it turns out you can be sweet sometimes. Jeez laid with Yun Yi Yi. It's all over now. Yeah, over. It's so unfair. Yun Yi Yi said in a low voice, I was wrong. Ji slowly raised his arm. A few howling ghosts appeared on his palm. Didn't you want to see what happened to those people who hurt your family? I will make my body a living hell and let them suffer in the 18th level of hell. Ji looked down. Why, would I think it's fair to begin with? Are you still a monk, then? I think therefore I am. That's it. That's quite nice. Yeah. Quite nice. Their conversation gradually faded into silence. A black figure and a white figure slowly appeared in the bottomless pit. They were wearing high hats with morning staffs in their hands. Their hands were slightly trembling. They moved forward. Black, how about you go first? I'll be at the back to cover you. Lies. Why don't you go instead? Black and white impermanence bickered. Who fought here exactly? Are they really dead or pretending to be dead? Sigh, it's so hard to be an Oni. The two of them anxiously peeked their heads out from the bottomless pit. They did so with a lot of courage. They glanced nervously and noticed the two bodies. No way, they did this? White impermanence gulped. He floated over slowly and gradually became shocked. This. This is. The monk's body has a huge amount of souls. He trained his body to be a container of souls? How's this possible? How are we supposed to do our jobs? Black impermanence was also stunned. Then, he widened his eyes as if he remembered something. He exclaimed, a bald monk, a lady in red. Wide. Do you remember what the expert told us to do? Oh yeah, the expert told us to take notice of a bald monk and a lady in red. He wants us to pay attention to their situation, this is clearly important to him. White impermanence was enlightened. That's them all right. Let's go, be careful. Take them back to the underworld. At the demon realm. Oof. The lord demon on the throne suddenly jolted and groaned. His pupils were like copper coins in his widened eyes. He had bloodshot eyes. He looked shocked, more so discontent. A small stream of blood flowed from the corner of his mouth. How is this possible? How is this possible? He was enraged as if he went through the most horrifying incident. His body trembled as his aura weakened like crazy. He was going to die soon. How can someone so powerful exist? Who is it exactly? He used a small monk helper and was able to kill me in an impossible way? Even the destructive Black Lotus can't stop him, who is he exactly? I haven't shown up yet, and I'm about to die? That's too cruel. Lord Demon God, save me. This is so unfair. Lord Demon slowly rested in peace. Amon and Bako were guarding the door. They looked utterly calm, they might even be a little bit happy. Ever since the countless failures, they have already lost their confidence. They did not dare to go to the horrifying immortal realm ever again. All they wanted to do was to peacefully stay at the demon realm. It was nice to spend their time casually. Hence, they ended up being guards. Suddenly, they frowned at the same time and looked at each other. They sensed the confusion in the eyes of each other. What's going on? Did the aura of the Lord Demon suddenly vanish? I feel it too. The Lord Demon seems to be very aggravated. Then, all of a sudden, nothing. They looked at the door. They had no idea what happened. Amon felt slightly puzzled. The Lord Demon said he was going to cause havoc in the immortal realm with the destructive Black Lotus. He ordered us to guard the door and not allow anyone to disturb him. Nothing's going to happen to him, right? Bako gently stepped closer. He took a deep breath and knocked on the door. Lord Demon, are you alright? Silence. Knock knock. He knocked harder. Lord Demon, are you in there? Still no response. Creak. Bako and Amon carefully pushed the door open together. They immediately saw Lord Demon sitting on the throne. They were scared senseless. 
they fell to the floor. However, Lord Demon did not scold them. That was unexpected. The Lord Demon stared ahead lifelessly with his coin-like eyes. He seemed to be frozen in place. Bako gulped. Lord. Lord Demon? They looked up and realized the Lord Demon was bleeding from his mouth. They hurriedly stepped forward to inspect. They were instantly mind-blown after the inspection. They went blank and completely lost their ability to think. They stopped breathing and functioning. They fell backward, almost scared to death. This. 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 The Lord Demon's dead? The Immortal Realm. It must be the doings of the people in the Immortal Realm. Too scary. They can kill while being in their own territories. Boohoo, are they going to spare us a path to live? Chapter 362 If you don't leave, don't blame me for lying down. At the spiritual mountain. It was already an ocean. However, the ocean was gold. The sky, mountains, land, and everyone in it were covered in a layer of gold. Everyone bathed in the ocean of gold with blank minds. They were in a daze. Who am I? Where am I? What am I doing? They kept asking themselves that. They tried hard to recall what they were doing. They had to because their insights were on the brink of collapsing. Deluxe merit, so much deluxe merit. Anyone would lose their minds over it. Life's so unfair. Lee Nyan Fan glanced at everyone for their reaction. He had to nod in satisfaction. He was pleased with himself. It was the pleasure of being cool. Who would have thought that I, an ordinary man, can flex in front of all these big shots? All thanks to my golden touch. It took courage for him to show up, too. He wanted to ensure no one dared to fight so he used his powers. Although it was harmless, the powerful aura was still one of a kind. It instantly stopped everyone in their tracks. The way he yelled stop was strong and confident. It echoed in the ears of the demons like a rumble of thunder. They did not dare to move. The big lord demon snapped out of it. He instantly went cold and felt his skin crawl. He was scared senseless. He yelled nervously, stop, all of you stop it. Drop your weapons, don't use your powers. Don't hurt anyone by accident. There. Then, to be safe, he added, back up, all of you back up. The demons instantly backed up. The big lord demon calmed his quivering heart. He tried to sound friendly and said, Sir, this is the grudge between us demons and Buddhists. It's none of your concern, sir. Please, don't interfere. The demonic religion causes havoc and makes the people suffer. How can I stand by and watch as a human? Which is why I'll kill every single one of you, including whatever lord demon you got, even if it costs me my cultivation. Lean I and Fan smiled. He put his foot down for justice. After all, he could be reckless since he had the protection of his deluxe merit flesh. He could do whatever he wanted. Sir, you saw what Buddhism did just now. They're all a bunch of fascists. Don't be fooled by them. Big Lord Demon forcefully repressed his anger. Lee Nyan Fan looked indifferent. He said, enough. I see through your cheap tricks with my wise eyes. You're obviously framing them. You'll have to step over my dead body if you want to destroy Buddhism. Big Lord Demon was troubled. Sir, you're troubling us. Step over your dead body? By then, the demons would already be extinct before Buddhism could be destroyed. He went silent for a while. He had an idea and flicked his wrist. Out came a black dagger. He clenched his jaw and looked like he was in pain. He said, Sir, this is an ultimate heavenly spiritual treasure. This dagger's attack is incredibly powerful and it's indestructible. It can also corrupt souls. It's a rare and precious treasure. Please, leave us be. Sir. Li Nianfan was baffled. This big lord demons something else, he knows bribery. What are you doing? Are you looking down on me? This is an insult. Li Nianfan said in a serious tone. If you don't leave, don't blame me for lying down on the ground. No, please, don't. Let's talk this out. Big Lord Demon jumped. He looked troubled. In the end, he sighed softly and backed away. The demons frowned. They asked dazedly, Lord Demon, what should we do? Sigh. This deluxe merit saint such a pot stirrer. Can't he just play by the rules and let us fight fairly? This is too much. He went too far. Lord Demon. Suddenly, Moen spoke up with an unhappy face. He sounded sacrificial, let me have a go at it. Big Lord Demon was puzzled. Go? Where are you going? I'll go die with that deluxe merit saint. Moen looked righteous with a sanctified light on his face. He said slowly, I'm just an ordinary man. 
I can totally kill him. I'll die with them but for the demons, it's worth it. He was about to step out and sprint toward Li Nian Fan. Goodbye, everyone. I won't be back. Come back here. Big Lard Demon had cold sweat all over. Thankfully, he was fast and agile enough. He tackled him and was shocked and angry. He gave two big slaps to Moan before he said anything. Is something wrong with your brain? Big Lard Demon was baffled. He said coldly, you'll kill the deluxe merit saint for demons but we demons will all die because of karma. You stupid fool, you pighead. Moan did not get it yet. He said stubbornly, I'm responsible for my own actions. I'll be the one to kill him, what does it have to do with the demons? Who got this fool to work beside me? The big lord demon was dumbfounded. He was so livid that he was even entertained at one point. Come on, hurry up and drag him out of here. Oh yeah, for safety precautions, lock him up first for a hundred. No, wait, for a thousand years. Moen found it unfathomable. He cried while he got dragged away. He sobbed, big lord demon, why would you treat me like this? Sigh, don't let fools be your teammates. They can easily jeopardize things. Big Lord Demon sighed and groaned. He took out a black hexagon crystal in his hand. He cast a spell and the black crystal started to shine. He decided to contact Lord Demon and asked for his opinion. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Huh? Why is it taking so long? Perhaps Lord Demon's away at the moment? Suddenly, the black crystal shined. Big Lord Demon instantly looked alive. He said, Lord Demon, we have an emergency here. However, all he heard was frantic breathing coming from the black crystal. The panting lasted for a while. Then, he heard Amon's frantic voice, Big Lord Demon, bad news, Lord Demon's dead. What? Big Lord Demon looked around. He thought he was hallucinating. Then, he heard Bako sobbing, dead. Lord Demon's really dead. Big Lord Demon, hurry up and come back. It's too scary dead. Dead? The bad news struck him like lightning. Big Lord Demon was stunned. Bako and Amon would not dare to lie. He quivered and had a cold sweat. He yelled, everyone, listen to my orders. Retreat to the demon realm as fast as possible. Hurry up, hurry up. Fume. Hundreds of demons immediately soared to the sky. They were threatening as they came and quick as they went. They did not say goodbye to anyone. They disappeared into the horizon in the blink of an eye. How should we put this? It's kind of sudden. Everyone bafflingly looked in the direction where they disappeared. They could not understand why. Xiao Chengfeng said smugly, they ran fast. Otherwise, I would have killed them all with my sword. No one replied. They pretended they did not hear what he said. You just stood up and did the namaste gesture. She bowed at Li Nian Fan with respect. Amitabha, thanks for the help, Mr. Li. You saved Buddhism. Li Nian Fan shrugged it off, the demons weren't good anyway. Helping you all would be helping myself. It's not a big deal, Yucha continued, Mr. Li, I'm indebted to you for my conversion, for your advice, preachings, and for saving my life. I'm forever grateful to you. I'm afraid I won't be able to repay you in my lifetime. Li Nian Fan could tell what she meant by that. He arched his eyebrow, Tara Yucha, you. Don't call me Tara Yucha anymore. My sins are heavy. I can't give a bad name to Buddhism. Yucha paused and continued, it's not appropriate for my body to live in this realm. I can die in peace now that I have set up Buddhism. I shall disintegrate to wipe out the dirty stain in Buddhism. Li Nian Fan asked, Buddhism isn't strong enough. Tara Yucha, aren't you worried that Buddhism would be bullied if you leave? It's all up to fate. Yucha bowed at Li Nian Fan again. Then, she slowly levitated above the temple. I know that my sins are unforgivable. Today, I'm willing to disintegrate to pay for my sins. Please, witness it, everyone. She sat cross-legged and soon after, she was engulfed in golden flames while everyone watched. Chapter 363 Bodhi Understandings, Akron, and Nihei Bridge Golden flames danced in the air. Soon, Yucha's figure slowly disappeared. Then, the golden flames died out. Nothing was left. It was as if nothing happened. The scene was silent. A breeze blew by. Amitabha. Every monk did the namaste gesture and silently chanted Buddhist scriptures. The death of Vucha did enlighten the Buddhists. Sai, lost a friend again. Li Nian Fan shook his head. He felt sentimental. He experienced more things as he approached more cultivators. He learned various lessons in the immortal realm. 
He did hear about these things before but there was a difference when it was a personal experience. Most of the time, other people had chosen their paths. Even capable friends could not help them out at all. Cultivators were sometimes fickle. They did act like how immortals should act. That was the review of Lee Nyanfan. In other words, cultivators around him were friendly. Yucha's death meant that she must be in the underworld. I'll visit when I'm free so I can ensure she'll reincarnate nicely, thought Lee Nyanfan. He could only help her with that. The grand ceremony of Buddhism ended nicely. It was not perfect but it was a nice ending. Yucha was gone. The Buddha was gone. Buddhism was in a very awkward state. Lots of guests left. The incident would probably be the talk of the town for a long while. Li Nianfan and the others did not leave. Buddhism was unstable. So, he stayed to take care of things. Thankfully, the monks were mentally stable. Nothing bad happened. However, it was dead quiet at the scene and everyone looked kind of lost. Li Nianfan could not do anything about that. The Buddhists had to make it through that obstacle by themselves. He stayed for three days before he was ready to leave. Before he left, he went to the Buddhism backyard. He wanted to chat with Jiki. The little monk was the only monk he was familiar with at that point. A sky full of fallen leaves flew into the backyard. He saw a little figure holding a broom from afar. He was leaning on the broom, sleeping from exhaustion. He was mumbling in his sleep. It was very funny and cute. Li Nian Fan walked closer and heard his mumbles. Master Yucha, Senior Jis, I don't believe that you two are demons. You two will come back, right? I'll work hard to sweep the floor and clean up the leaves. Come back once I'm done cleaning, alright? I have new understandings in Buddhism, I don't know who I can talk to about it. Li Nian Fan smiled bitterly. He did not wake him up. He suffered such pain at such a young age. How terrible. He shook his head and was ready to leave. Suddenly, he saw a row of words in the corner of his eye. It was carved into the stone next to the Bodhi tree. The body is a Bodhi tree, the heart is a mirror stand. Frequently wipe it and clean it, don't let it be dusty. Li Nianfan was amazed. He turned to look at the sleepy little monk in awe. This is, his new understanding of Buddhism from sweeping the floor? This is legit. It's too bad he's not a straight-A student. He looked around and picked up a branch. He smirked and wrote another poem next to that poem. There's no Bodhi tree, nor a mirror stand. Since all is void, where can the dust alight? Little monk, bye. Li Nian Fan spoke softly and then slowly walked out from the backyard. An hour later. There was a smack sound. The broom fell to the floor. The little monk also fell on his face with an ouch sound. Bah. He spat out the leaves in his mouth and rubbed his bald head. He woke up. Yikes. How did I fall asleep? I have to quickly sweep the floor so that Master and Senior can come back sooner. He picked up the broom. Then, he was slightly surprised to see the new writings. Huh? Who wrote this? He bent down and read it slowly. He was awestruck after reading it. His mouth hung open as his mind wandered. This. This. This wisdom. He gulped and sat cross-legged underneath the Bodhi tree. He kept looking back and forth at the two poems. Wise so much wiser than mine. The previous poem highlighted wiping away a stubborn mindset and reflecting internally to constantly be pure. Li Nianfan's poem was much better. He expressed it clearly. There was no stubborn mindset to begin with so why the constant need to clean and wipe? It was deep and direct. The leaves in the backyard are nothing but my stubborn task. I keep being stubborn, and the leaves keep falling. All I had to do was let go of my stubbornness and these leaves will naturally be gone. He looked enlightened. He did the namaste gesture and shut his eyes. Buddhist light slowly formed around him as a halo also appeared behind him. His already shiny bald head was shinier. He was in a state of transcendence. Leaves danced around Jiki along with the wind. Then, it slowly vanished in the air. The dead leaves on the floor started to sway before slowly, they vanished. Meanwhile, Li Nianfan and the others left the spiritual mountain. They rode on clouds to a large city. The city had a city god temple. A lot of people worshipped the statues inside the city god temple. The statue in the middle was an elder with a goatee and a round hat. He looked friendly. Immortals would notice that as people lit the incense sticks, the smoke would fly to the sky. Then, a mysterious force would enter the statue. That was the power of incense wishes. Once incense wishes were accumulated to a certain point, it would be considered as deluxe merit for faith. 
This was why the souls of the city god temple could exist in the immortal realm for a long while. Li Nianfan headed in. The soul in the statue came out from its vessel to salute Li Nianfan. Then, he gesturally hinted and floated to the back. Li Nianfan and the others followed. They went to a side room in the backyard. The elder greeted Li Nianfan, Greetings to Mr. Li. I'm Ju Chengming of the Fallen Flower City God Temple. Greetings to everyone. Greetings to City God Ju, saluted Li Nianfan. Then, he said, I'm here to disturb you again, City God Ju. So sorry about that. Previously, he requested City God Ju to pass the message about Yun Yi Yi and Ji's to the underworld. You're too courteous, Mr. Li. I'm able to become a city god all because of you. City God Ju sounded sincere. He was able to become a city god so his manners were naturally on point. He continued, Mr. Li, black and white impermanent sires sent me a message. They said they found a monk and a lady in red. They're in the underworld right now. However, they aren't sure if they're who you're looking for. Li Nianfan was stunned. It was unacceptable. He asked in shock, at the underworld? They're dead? City God Ju nodded, it appears so. Sigh. Li Nianfan sighed and frowned. He then said, Can I trouble you to inform the impermanent sires, City God Ju? I, want to go to the underworld. His deluxe merit flesh allowed him to soar through the skies and go beneath the land. He would like to check out the legendary underworld. More importantly, he wanted to see if he could help Ji's, Yun Yi Yi, and Yucha. Please, wait just a minute, Mr. Li. I'll contact the black and white impermanent sires now, replied City God Ju. Then, he left. He was back after 15 minutes. A black figure and a white figure followed him. Black and white impermanents were both expressionless. They saw Li Nianfan and smiled. They said in a friendly tone, Mr. Li. Li Nianfan also smiled and said, Greetings to the black and white impermanence sires. Ju already told us everything. Mr. Li, you're more than welcome to visit our underworld. White impermanence bust. Then, he said, but I'm afraid it's not appropriate for a lot of people to enter since the underworld's an important land and it's not stable yet. He looked at the bunch behind Li Nianfan. This insult. Hmm, kind of obvious. Zay suddenly spoke up, sires, long time no see. You're. Black and white impermanence looked at Zi and suddenly jolted. They were shocked and pleasantly surprised. They said, Goddess Zi? You. You. Zi smiled and nodded, It's me. If it's the seventh princess, the underworld naturally welcomes you, white impermanence smiled and nodded. Then, he once again looked at everyone else. Immortal Linzu shook her head, I won't be going. There's no delicious food in the underworld anyway. Payan and the others were very friendly. They smiled and saluted the black and white impermanence. We won't be intruding. Those two were the death gods. The cultivators would die eventually so they had to give in. Black and white impermanence looked at Xiao Chengfeng. Xiao Chengfeng raised his eyebrow. He was instantly unhappy. What's the meaning of this? I'm not worthy enough to enter the underworld, too? Pei'an and Gu Yuan knew he was about to talk nonsense again. They hurriedly dragged him away. Do you know who I am? I'm that sword cultivator who's well respected by three million sword cultivators in the above immortal realm. The underworld will have to respect me. Xiao Chengfeng struggled. Let go of me. Sorry, there's no sword cultivator in our underworld, Black Impermanence smirked coldly. Then, he very naturally changed his facial expression when he was talking to Li Nianfan. He said in a friendly manner, Mr. Li, shall we depart now? Yeah, apologies for the trouble, sires. Not at all. Not a problem at all. Black and white impermanence waved it off. Then, they raised their arms at the same time and cast a spell. Ripples formed in the air. Soon, a jet black door appeared in front of everyone. Mr. Lee, please. Black and white impermanence led the way. They stepped into the door. It was creepily cold the minute they stepped into the door. It felt like being out on a summer day and suddenly walking into a cold room with an air conditioner. His eyes were slightly unfocused. He looked again and saw a huge river in front of him. The river was flowing strongly and was muddy yellow. Everyone stood on the side. They could feel water vapor in their face and could hear the loud waves. The river was wide and gushing. Li Nianfan did not expect that the process to enter the underworld was nothing but a door. He truly felt like he'd just entered a room from another room. He was instantly awestruck by the river in front of him. The underworld was dim like a constant sunset. The sky was red. It was kind of overwhelming and depressing. 
Lean Iron Fan licked his lip. He exclaimed, Is this, the Acheron? It's the Acheron, White Impermanence nodded and introduced. This is where the souls belong after death. Usually, the souls in the Acheron are lost ghosts. Only the souls who manage to find the Nihei Bridge and successfully reincarnate can get rid of their ghost identities. I see. Lean Iron Fan looked over. He saw fiery red patches on the other side of the Acheron. Those were Hagen flowers, and they were swaying as if they were giving direction. Lean Iron Fan suddenly arched his eyebrow. He realized something. Why aren't there any other ghosts here? Black Impermanence replied, Mr. Lee, this is a path for Onis only. The ordinary ghosts are elsewhere. So, this is an express lane. Lee Nian Fan nodded. He learned something new. To be honest, the path of the Acheron was very boring. It was a dim realm, only the gushing river and the beautiful red Hagen flowers were entertaining. Thankfully, the express lane was fast. Soon, they saw a bridge at the front. A long row of human figures was moving on the bridge. As they got closer, they could see that it was a bunch of ghosts lining up on the bridge. They looked exhausted and depressed. They stood in line with uneasiness. Apart from humans, there were a lot of souls from various animals. The number of souls was huge. Onis with uniforms handled them. They were managing the order by surrounding them. There was a huge stone near the bridge. Nihei Bridge was carved into the stone in blood red. It's indeed Nihei Bridge. Li Nianfen was emotional because that was the famous Nihei Bridge. He did not expect that he would be able to stand at the bridge as a living human, as a mere visitor. Too bad I can't flex this to anybody. Sigh, it's so lonely to be in a different realm. He looked over and saw an old granny with a face full of wrinkles. The granny was slightly hunched over. She smiled and scooped soup for the souls to drink. She saw Lee Nian Fan and instantly smiled in a friendly manner. She nodded as a friendly way to say hi. Lee Nian Fan smiled awkwardly in response. He looked at the soup and felt a shiver in his heart. He quickly looked away. That soup, isn't good must not drink it. No, I don't want it. Suddenly, they heard a desperate voice. The voice was from a middle-aged man. He looked fully terrified. He finally snapped when Meng Po gave him the soup. He was shaking all over and was ready to run. However, he was stopped by Onis before he could make a run for it. He was held down in place. Fella, are you trying to cause a scene here? Anoni smirked coldly. He threatened, drink up. Otherwise, we'll punish you on your way to reincarnation. No, please, I want to cooperate, too. But the soup's too terrible, the taste, blurg. The middle-aged man almost cried. Blurg. I can't stand it. This is considered my last meal, can it be something not awful tasting? Drink this soup, I guarantee you that you'll forget what tastes awful. The two Oni smiled. They were used to a situation like that. They easily forced the middle-aged man to drink every drop of the soup. The middle-aged man struggled and trembled like crazy. His face was twisted as if he was in agony. However, he soon stopped struggling. The middle-aged man was numb in his expression. He lifelessly looked at the front with dead eyes. He forgot about everything as he quietly floated over the Nihei Bridge. Yikes! Lee Nian Fan gasped. His skin was crawling. He was frightened by what happened. Scary, too scary. Thankfully, I'm not in line. Thank God. Chapter 364 Odd Situation, Fix the Underworld Li Nianfan was slightly scared. He asked in a frightened voice, really no problems in doing that? It's just the taste. It's a bit awful but there's nothing wrong with it. White Impermanence shook his head and then said, can't be helped. The Mangpo soup tastes like that. There's a nice saying in the immortal realm, forgetting is in itself a painful thing. Why is it painful? Because the Mangpo soup's a pain to drink. The corner of Li Nian Fan's mouth twitched. Where did he freaking hear this lousy saying from? If they knew that forgetting was a painful thing to do, they should have made the soup tastier. They should have at least made it acceptable. They passed through the Nihei Bridge and arrived on the other side of the Acheron. He could see a lot of Onis guarding the place. He followed black and white impermanence and was soon at the door of the main hall. There was a huge sign on it, with the underworld written in big fonts. The door was wide open. It was dark and hollow like a cave. It looked like a deadly beast that would devour anything. It was frightening to look at. This is the real underworld. They stepped in. There were no immortal realm lights, but there was a creepy dim green light. The surrounding walls were not made from materials, they were uneven rocks. It was as if the underworld was made from carving a big hole in a rock. 
The layout of the place was very simple and ugly. There was nothing much except for the little streams and huge rocks. However, there were a lot of little doors all around it. Ghosts kept coming in and out of them. Some of them floated here on their own. Some of them were arrested and escorted by Onis. White Impermanence automatically became the tour guide, Mr. Lee. These ghosts are being sent to their specific locations based on their situations before their deaths. Some drank the Mangpo soup and were going to reincarnate. Some were going to hell. Or perhaps, they were being sent for judgment. Li Nianfan nodded. He was basically standing at a hub. He asked, Can I trouble you sires to help me look for Yucha, Jis, and Yun Yi Yi? Black Impermanent smiled and replied, Mr. Li, you already informed us before. These three are with the Yama. Li Nianfan slightly raised his eyebrow. They drank the Mengpo soup? No, no. Black Impermanence shook his head continuously. He hurriedly said, Mr. Li, since you already informed us about them, how could we let them drink the Mengpo soup? However, their situations were abnormal. Li Nianfan was stumped. He asked curiously, what situation? White Impermanence replied in a troubled voice, I don't know how that monk did it. He made his body into a vessel and contained tons of ghosts and souls. His body was like an enigma. He was still in deep sleep. So was the lady named Yun Yi Yi. Her body went through some sort of transformation. The two of them won't wake up, and it seems we can't do anything about it either. What's going on with those two? Even the underworld can't do anything? Li Nianfan was shocked. Really? They immediately entered a door at the center. They walked for a while and came to the main hall. They could hear the sound of someone striking a table before they got to the door. Bam! Then, they heard a cold and strict voice, Sinner Chen Luyun. You're a liar and a fraud. You've indirectly caused the deaths of two innocent people for no reason. You shall walk the animal route, be a dog in your next life. I didn't do anything seriously evil, I don't think it's fair. You dare say that? Adding one more sin for you. Drag him out, be a pig in your next life. Your reward's a bowl of menpo soup. Soon, Anoni walked out with a lost soul, passing by everyone. Li Nianfan had no sympathy for sinners like that. He entered the main hall and saw the general of the Bloody Sea. He was holding the death note and was acting as a temporary judge. He saw Li Nianfan and immediately smiled. Mr. Li. Li Nianfan saluted, greetings to the general. The general of the Bloody Sea knew why he came by. He did not delay the conversation. With a wave, Anoni immediately brought someone in. Yucha looked confused at first. Then, she looked like she realized what was going on once she saw Li Nianfan. She smiled awkwardly and said, Mr. Li, who would have thought we'd see each other so soon? Li Nianfan smiled and nodded in response. He looked at Jis and Yun Yi. They were lying on the floor. They were not in ghost form yet. Their bodies were perfectly fine. They did not look like they were injured at all. The weird part was that Jis had a golden halo. It was shimmery and shiny unlike Yun Yi Yi. She had a sparkly black halo. Li Nianfan could not tell what was going on. He just thought it was very odd. He had to ask, when will they wake up? White Impermanence shook his head and said, I can't say for sure. They might be in a coma forever if we don't have a solution. Of course, maybe a miracle will happen. Maybe in the next moment, they will. He stopped in his tracks halfway through his sentence. He widened his eyes in disbelief. This. This this. They woke up? White Impermanent gulped. His face hurt. Everyone simultaneously looked at Li Nianfan in awe. They saw that he looked surprised, too. The corners of their mouths twitched at that. Big Shot, you're such a good actor. We were just waiting for your arrival to help us the whole time, right? You obviously did this, right? Jis had an intense golden light. The light suddenly soared to the sky. They could visibly see countless howling souls in the golden light. The souls were also helpless in the underworld. They could not get out of G's. Yun Yi Yi had an intense darkness, too. She levitated and formed a weird spiral. This is. The general of the Bloody Sea had wide round eyes. His mouth was wide and round, too. He dazedly moved forward. He kind of figured something out. He was astounded and excited at the same time. At that moment, the underworld was covered by a powerful aura. The creepy part was that they heard buzzing out of nowhere. Buzz. A horrifying air wave exploded with Jesus the center. A golden light dragon soared to the sky and became a light pillar. It almost pierced through the underworld. Everyone in the underworld saw the sky pillar, 
including the ones outside and the ones at the Nihei Bridge. They were shocked. They felt fearful looking at the pillar. They hurriedly looked away. They did not dare to move. Gradually, a figure of a pagoda slowly appeared in the light pillar. It spun slowly. It was about 108 meters tall. 18 layers in total. Meng Po was in disbelief. She trembled all over as she said, The, the 18 levels of hell. Kaboom. Another strong aura appeared. Next to the golden light was an intense dark light. The darkness formed a black lotus that slowly spun. A groundbreaking aura was emitted. Soon, the black lotus started to spin fast. It became a bottomless spiral. The jet black spiral was like a wormhole. Splat. The ladle Meng Po was holding dropped into the pot of soup. Her brain seemed to lose the ability to think. She had existed for countless years, yet her state of mind was instantly shattered at that moment. If it were not for the many strangers around her, she probably would have danced and cheered. Reincarnation. That's the reincarnation. The destructive black lotus represents destruction. A new life usually follows after destruction. The expert used the destructive black lotus as a base to patch up the reincarnation. This is, do, totally incredible. The reincarnation and the 18 layers of hell were damaged. The underworld seemed to be running properly on the surface, but deep down they could not solve the two huge issues. However, the reincarnation and the 18 layers of hell were now fixed. The underworld was whole again. Meng Po kept mumbling, I knew it. The visit of the expert is a sure blessing. Chapter 365 I think this could be a bonus. Inside the Yama main hall. Everyone was shocked, including Li Nian Fan. Although, to everyone else, he was just pretending to be shocked. Gradually, the pagoda solidified. An overwhelmingly powerful aura was emitted. Everyone felt like they could not breathe. Li Nian Fan suddenly said, Jesus' body. Jis turned golden. He started to become transparent, too. It was as if he was made with gold crystals. The light of the pagoda shone. In the end, his body was absorbed into the pagoda. It was the same for Yun Yi Yi. Her body spun as the black lotus melted into the odd spiral. Fume. Then, the golden pagoda and the black spiral beamed in different directions. Kaboom. The earth exploded. The entire underworld shook. Black and white impermanence, the general of the bloody sea, and Meng Po felt their hearts racing like crazy. They all thought of a possibility. They started breathing heavily. They wanted nothing more than to rush over and confirm it. It landed. The 18 layers of hell and the reincarnation landed in the underworld. Awesome. The underworld's now stable. They had all their facilities in check. However, the expert was next to them. Li Nian Fan did not move, so they had to contain their excitement and go along with it. They could not be rude. They stood in place. Jis and Yun Yi floated in the air as ghosts. They both looked lost. Finally, they snapped out of it after a long while. Yun Yi Yi saw Jis and instantly smiled. Jis, are we in the underworld? Jis nodded, Amitabha. Most probably. Ha, Jis. You're a ghost now, you don't need to Amitabha anymore, laughed Li Nian Fan. Mr. Li. Yun Yi Yi and Jis instantly felt at ease. They hurriedly floated over, Lady Da Ji. Lady Fire Phoenix. Nanan put her hands up and reminded everyone, us, too. Nanan and Dragon. Jis hurriedly said, sorry for being impolite. He did not expect to see familiar faces in the underworld. It was a pleasant surprise. However, he saw Yucha. He jolted. He said in disbelief, Dara Yucha, you. Yucha said, I was a demon before I died. It's good that I'm dead, otherwise, Buddhism would have a bad name. Jis did the namaste gesture and said in a tragic tone, Amitabha. Li Nian Fan said at the side, Jis, I didn't expect that you and Lady Yun would die. How did you two die exactly? Also, did you know what you two just did? How did you do that? That was amazing. To describe it in one word, awesome. How did they do it? You're pretending like you don't know? Everyone froze in place. They tried their best to control themselves. It was hard to endure. Jis was turning purple in the face. Buddhists should not call other people out on their lies. He wondered if he should break that rule. Yun Yi Yi coughed softly and said, Um, an odd occurrence. Jis and I fought each other to death. Li Nian Fan said, Your odd occurrence is so powerful. White Impermanence nodded and agreed, Indeed powerful. Definitely one of a kind. Black Impermanence went along with it, too. You two are blessed. 
but I'm afraid your odd occurrence is related to the underworld, our shattered 18 layers of hell and reincarnation are back on track. So, that's what those two things are, nodded Lee Nyan Fan. It seems like the expert's trying hard to pretend that it has nothing to do with him. Since the big shot's pretending, we have to go along with it. If the big shot suddenly pointed at a pig and said it was a dog, then the pig was a dog. Whoever said it was a pig, they would fight them. Yeah. Yeah. The general of the bloody sea smiled. He asked, Mr. Lee, do you want to take a look? Lee Nian Fan was interested, I can? Sure, of course, black and white impermanence immediately nodded. To be honest, we can't wait either. Lee Nian Fan laughed, then what are we waiting for? Let's go. Here, here. The general of the bloody sea led the way. Everyone walked out from the Yama main hall. They went back to the hub and stood in front of a door at the side. The general of the bloody sea stopped in his tracks. He was very nervous. He felt fearful, like reaching home after a long time and fearing that it would all be for nothing. After a long while, he took a deep breath and entered the room. They all walked in as well. Lee Nai and Fan felt overwhelmed. There were clanging sounds out of thin air, and a burning heat from the floor. They felt anxious. They were standing on a narrow bridge. Underneath the bridge was hot molten lava. The golden lava slowly flowed and created waves of fire. It was blinding because the underworld was dim and gloomy. Scary. Li Nian Fan had not compared lava before. However, he had a feeling that the lava was more than a hundred times scarier than volcano lava. There was a pagoda in the lava, underneath the bridge. The pagoda had 18 layers. It was extremely huge, and it looked like the pagoda figure they saw earlier. The pagoda was connected to the bridge and the four walls with metal ropes that were thicker than people. The bridge swayed in the air. They could see what was happening inside the pagoda from the bridge. All sorts of weird and scary torture devices were in there. Some rooms looked like kitchens full of boiling oil. They could also see a mountain full of knives and a sea made of fire. Lee Nian Fan looked at it from afar. He felt visually impacted. He suddenly felt like he was puny. If he had to describe it, it was astounding, majestic, and very scary. 18 layers of hell. It's the 18 layers of hell. It's back, it's really back. Black and white impermanence and a lot of onis were awestruck by the sight. They were emotional and they teared up. They almost cried a river. For countless years, they came here and saw nothing but a wasteland. The lava used to be cold rocks. The pagoda used to be what was left of it. They felt cold and miserable. However, things had changed. The wasteland became the true 18 layers of hell. They were all thinking of the previous wasteland, so it impacted their emotions harder. They wanted to not cry but it was too hard to endure. The general of the bloody sea looked at Li Nian Fan from behind. He had nothing but respect for the man. He can easily change realms. Even the destructive black lotus can be transformed in the eyes of the expert. The 18 layers of hell and reincarnation are probably toys in his eyes. Anybody with his level of abilities would have treated the world as an insect. Only the expert would deny taking credit for it. Why? He's clearly trying to be more approachable with others. Once the expert admits he's awesome, he'd be so high up. How could we be his bootlickers by then? He would be unapproachable. His level of thinking is so far above us. It's indescribable. Oh yeah, said the general of the bloody sea. He suddenly had an idea and felt like he had to perform for all the big shots. He said, previously, the 18 layers of hell were destroyed. A lot of evil ghosts didn't get the punishment they deserve. I could put them in here. What do you think, Mr. Lee? Lee Nian Fan smiled. You should do as you need, General. Onis, bring them up. Soon, a bunch of Onis walked over with a batch of evil ghosts with cuffs on their wrists and legs. A lot of the evil ghosts were from the previous Bloody Sea. They looked extremely disgusting and horrid. They were scary to look at. They also struggled and roared. A lot of ghosts begged and screamed in agony. However, it was too late to regret their actions. The General of the Bloody Sea looked harsh. Ha! You all are lucky to be the first batch of the new 18 layers of hell. Have fun. Every Oni got assigned their tasks under his orders. They sent the ghosts to different levels of hell. Li Nian Fan was perfectly fine. He did not enjoy looking at torture so he soon lost interest. Jeez, Yucha, and Yun Yi Yi had complicated facial expressions. They looked frightened because they felt like they could not escape the fate of hell. They felt weak. The general of the Bloody Sea noticed that Li Nian Fan was not interested. He asked, how about we check out the reincarnation area? Li Nian Fan nodded, if that's possible, 
That'd be nice. He visited most of the underworld. The trip was pretty worth it. Reincarnation was naturally an important land of the underworld. It was very important so there were a lot of Oni's guard in the area. Li Nai and Fan followed the general of the Bloody Sea to the reincarnation area. He realized that there were as many ghosts there as there were on the Nihe Bridge. The same long rows of ghosts. Through the express lane, they were soon at the front row. They saw a huge wheel. The wheel was like a huge windmill, spinning slowly. There were six parts on the wheel with six different wormholes. They looked like they could suck the souls out of their eyes. They felt dizzy just looking at it. The six black holes could be put in two groups the group on the left and the group on the right. A curved yin and yang line separated the two groups in the middle. So, this is what the six wheels of reincarnation look like. Li Nai and Fan gained knowledge again. The left and right parts represent yin and yang. White impermanence nodded. He replied, in a way, yes. It's more commonly known as good and evil. Li Nai and Fan nodded and stared at two figures in front of the wheel. The two figures were eye-catching. Li Nai and Fan instantly recognized them on sight. They were the ox head and horse face for sure. They guarded the area and scratched their ears. They seemed to be anxious. The ox head and horse face immediately came over when they saw Li Nai and Fan and the others. They looked excited. Horse face could not wait to say, General, what happened in our underworld? Staying put to guard this area is inhumane. This is torture for us. Exactly. When can we get more helpers out here? Shouted the ox head. Then, he exclaimed, the wheel of reincarnation has started to spin again. The effectiveness of reincarnation is going to increase. All we lack are helpers. You're troubling us brutes by letting us decide the reincarnation routes of the ghosts. It's more tiring than fighting. Stop complaining. Who isn't tired like a single dad or a single mom around here? I worked in multiple positions. Did I say anything about it? The general of the Bloody Sea interrupted the two complainers. He moved aside and glared at Oxhead and Horseface. He threw them hints like crazy. Then, he said in a serious tone, These are the important guests of the underworld. This is Mr. Lee. Hurry up and greet them properly. Mr. Lee? That expert. Oxhead and Horseface instantly jolted. They were nervous and excited. They felt like they were meeting their idol. They knew they were able to break their seal all because of the expert. He was the golden big shot of the underworld. No wonder there was such a hassle just now. Even the wheel of reincarnation was fixed. It's because the expert has arrived. Blessing of the underworld. This is a blessing of the underworld. Mr. Lee, I'm Oxhead. Welcome to the underworld. Mr. Lee, I'm Horseface. Next time you're here in the underworld, I've got your back. Lee Nai and Fan saluted. He smiled and asked, Pleasure to meet you too. Are you too? Judging for reincarnation? Yeah. Are you interested, Mr. Lee? Oxhead and Horseface lit up. They quickly jogged over. Mr. Lee, let me show you how it's done. They immediately raised their hands and out came a small book. It was the death note. A calligraphy brush appeared in the other hand. He said in a professional tone, Next. A dog ghost slowly walked over. Woof. Look, Mr. Lee, said Oxhead as he put the death note in front of Lee Nyan Fan. This indicates the judgment for the dog. Loyal guard dog, died defending its owner. Can be reincarnated as a human. The word can implied that reincarnation was all based on the decisions of Oxhead and Horseface. Oxhead picked up the brush and drew a tick on it. The wheel of reincarnation spun. One of the black holes sucked the soul of that dog. Next. A student appeared. He did not do much because he drank the mangpo soup. His mind was like a baby's. Look again, Mr. Lee. Oxhead kept it true. This is the judgment of the death note. The small row of words at the side here are the comments and suggestions of the city gods. Kind-hearted, helpful, rule abider. A good person. Should be reincarnated as a human. The comments of the city gods stated, this person is kind. Likes to read books. However, he felt like life is painful. Physically and mentally exhausted. Did not want to reincarnate as a human, would rather be a fish. Ethical kind of bow held only. Oxhead was stumped. He rubbed his horn. This is a difficult case. There's nothing much to go on and not a lot of bonus to the personality. The student could only be reincarnated into a normal household. They didn't specify what type of fish they wanted to be either. Lee Nai and Fan asked curiously, can we find out what type of books he liked to read? Not hard to find out. Oxhead did his thing. Two more words appeared, original publishing. 
Li Nian Fan instantly respected that. He said, this could be a bonus. Thanks for the reminder, Mr. Li. I thought so, too. Oxhead circled the words and added, shall be reincarnated into a rich family. A happy life with money and success. Death by old age while sleeping. Chapter 366 Theoretically there is a pass, trick for food. Li Nianfan was taken aback. You can, simply change it? Ox had replied humbly, just small adjustments. Not that different. I can't change a pig into a dog. You just changed someone's reincarnation from being born into a normal household to a rich household. You call that a small adjustment? That's more different than changing a pig into a dog. Authorities who don't understand the suffering of the common people. Li Nianfan changed his mind about the adjudgment position. Such a cool job. I can't believe Oxhead and Horseface would complain about it. How dare they? They are blessed without knowing it. I feel so envious. Li Nianfan was glad that he was close with the underworld. It was great that his afterlife would be nice. He noticed that Jeez and the others had not spoken in a long while. They looked sad wearing their frowns. They could almost write the word worry on their faces. They did not even dare to speak. He instantly had an idea. He asked, Brother Ox, tell me honestly. For these three people, how would you judge them? This. Oxhead looked at Yucha and the others. He felt troubled. Then, he said softly, two of them killed innocent lives, another one illegally trapped souls. Those are huge sins. They might not be able to reincarnate. That meant that they were going to the 18 levels of hell. Yun Yi Yi went pale. She smiled awkwardly and said, Mr. Lee. I deserve the punishment. You don't have to beg for me. Suddenly, Ji spoke up, I followed her the whole time. I could have stopped her but never did. The karma of Lady Yun should be mine. Li Nian Fan hurriedly interrupted the couple that was about to go all lovey-dovey. Brother Ox, um, can you give them a pass? Theoretically, I can't, replied Ox Head. The word theoretically was crucial. As expected, the Ox said, however, for these three, one of them set up Buddhism, one of them restored hell, and the other fixed the wheel of reincarnation. These are huge achievements. I could plead for them. Li Nian Fan smiled and said, that's great. News. So-called pleading. The judgment is decided by Oxhead the entire time. He immediately took out his wine gourd and poured him a drink. Oh yeah, brother Ox, brother Horse, this is our first time meeting. You haven't tried my homemade brew. It's not as good as immortal wine but it tastes nice. Please, try it. Mr. Lee, don't be a stranger. We don't need this hospitality because we're close friends now, right? Oxhead and Horseface said. However, their eyes were fixated on the drinks, almost popping out of their skulls. Black and white impermanence had not stopped bragging about how powerful the expert was since they were back. They mostly mentioned his delicious food and wine. They said it was a hundred times better than the so-called ambrosia. Every time Oxhead and Horseface heard about it, they would salivate hard and would feel hungry. They wanted nothing more but to taste it. Is this the expert's beautiful wine? They sniffed. Wow, what a nice smell. Li Nian Fan smiled and said, precisely because we're close, I have to treat you to a drink. Don't be courteous with me. Oxhead and Horseface gulped hard. Thank you then. They could not wait. They took the wine glass and drank it. Ah! Beautiful wine. It was indeed beautiful wine. They smacked their lips. The flavor was delicious and it was also beneficial for their cultivation. The wine, was from another realm. Oxhead and Horseface were instantly astounded. They respected the expert even more. They could not believe that they were back in the underworld tasting such beautiful wine. It was unfathomable. They would not even dream of it. Li Nian Fan held the wine gourd. He smiled and said, Come on, there's another glass of wine after this one. He did not just pour wine for ox head and horse face. Black and white impermanence and the others by the side got a glass each, too. Even the Onis who stood guard had their own glasses. The Onis were already glancing in his direction. They thought they could sneak closer to smell the beautiful wine aroma. They did not expect to get a glass of wine for free. They were instantly surprised and continuously thanked him. As for the line of ghosts, they could only watch them pitifully. Suddenly, an elder protested. Why don't we get some? Spare us a drop. Huh? Oxhead was surprised. This old man has such a clear state of mind. What's going on? Horseface waved, looks like someone's intelligence is still intact. 
drag him out and reward him with another bowl of menpo soup. Everyone enjoyed the beautiful grape wine. They were instantly in a better mood. Oxhead's cheeks were flushed. He joyfully patted his chest and said, Mr. Lee, these three are your friends, which means they're my friends, too. It's not much but I'm good at helping out my friends. You can count on me. He immediately raised his hand. The death note gleamed. The information about Yucha appeared first. Demon. Killed countless lives. A massive sinner. Should go to the 16th layer of hell for 3000 years before being reincarnated as a pig. That's too scary. Imagine spending 3000 years in the 16th layer of hell and then reincarnating as a pig. Piece of cake. Oxhead smiled and put the brush in his mouth to wet it with his saliva. He started to write. This person is regretful of past actions and created Buddhism. Guided others to be kind. Did good karma. Temporarily abolished the punishment in hell. To be confirmed. Oxhead scratched his head and said, Mr. Lee, the hell punishment has been removed. As for reincarnation, I'm afraid it would be a tragic life, and she might not be human. Thank you so much, said Yucha genuinely. She paused and said, Can you let me reincarnate into a boy? It seemed like she wanted to become a monk in the next life. Ha, easy. Oxhead smiled and wrote guy, male, man. Next up were Jis and Yun Yi Yi. They both looked nervous. As expected, the punishment for their sins were as harsh as Yucha's. Oxhead smiled. You two are easier to deal with. Plus, we're grateful for what you two have done for the underworld. This will be a piece of cake. Yun Yi Yi asked excitedly, can you make sure we're a married couple in the next life? Oxhead replied, I can but since you both have sinned, you're destined to have troubles in your next lives. Li Nai and Fan smiled and said, no worries. As long as they have a good ending in the end. Oxhead did not say anything else since Li Nai and Fan spoke up. He wrote, okay. Let me try. Relationship troubles. Every trouble they face will be harsh and brutal. An unsuccessful relationship, as if fate keeps stopping them. However. Oxhead reread the sentence. In the end, he just wrote the two words, happy ending. Damn, I don't care anymore. I have written down the main plot. Fate shall do as it pleases for the specific details. I'm not very educated. I can only help you two this much. Yun Yi Yi was immediately happy. She said, thanks, Cyrox. Black and white impermanence noticed that they were done. They smiled and said, all right, you all can go reincarnate after drinking the mang po soup. Yuch and the others looked at each other. They all bowed at Li Nai and Fan at the same time. They did not speak because words could not express their gratitude towards him. Li Nai and Fan laughed. All right, you should be thanking the sires of the underworld. Live well in your next life. He pursed his lip. He felt like something was off about that sentence. Black and white impermanence led the way. Please, follow us. Yu and the others naturally used the express lane of the underworld. They did not need to line up. They were back at the Nihei Bridge. The old granny who scooped soup was still there. She looked friendly. She smiled at everyone as she scooped three big bowls of soup for Yucha and the others. Don't be courteous, drink up. She looked at Li Nai and Fan and the others again. She smiled and asked, Guests, do you want some? Hell no. Nanan and Dragon jumped and hid behind Li Nai and Fan. Zay had to say, Granny, stop joking. She smiled. She remembered that the granny would always ask her that question to scare her when she used to visit the underworld. Ha, it's little Zi. Mangpo looked kind and caring. It's been a lot of years since I last saw you. How's the heavenly palace? Zi looked troubled. She opened her mouth and was ready to tell Mangpo about the heavenly palace situation, hoping to get a solution. Blurg. Yun Yi suddenly vomited. She took the bowl and sniffed it when she was not ready yet. She immediately felt her stomach twist. She looked horrified. Smelly and stinky. I'll die if I drink this. Thingy, right? She looked at Yucha and Jis again. The two of them had closed their eyes. They seemed to be chanting Buddhist scriptures. However, their hands that were holding the bowls were trembling. Yun Yi Yi hurriedly apologized, Sorry, I just feel a bit. Blurg. Lean Eye and Fan had to say, Um. Granny, can I add some seasoning to the soup? To better the flavor. Mangpo smiled and said, if you have some, you can try adding it into the pot, Mr. Lee. Okay. Lee Nai and Fan took out a seasoning packet that he had brought with him. He tore it open and poured half of it into the pot. Mangpo stirred for a short while. Then, it emitted an odd aroma. 
The nervous ghosts suddenly scrunched up their noses. They looked at the Mengpo soup weirdly. They might even be excited to try it. Black and white impermanence's gazes were fixed on the pot of Mengpo soup, too. They had to lick their lips. White impermanence had to ask, Mr. Lee, what did you put in there? It smells so good. Chicken essence and cumin. These two things can better flavor and smell for anything. White impermanence was awestruck. Goodness, chicken essence? That's a legendary item. Black impermanence looked mystified and wanted to know everything. What kind of chicken produced this essence? I have to capture some chicken. Mengpo started to scoop soup for the ghosts and souls again. A middle-aged man had a bowl of Mengpo soup in his hand but he did not drink it. Anoni looked unhappy at that. He scolded, what? We already made it better for you, why don't you drink it? Hurry up. The ghost looked like he was in pain. He said, you don't know this, sire. I'm in love with a girl. Our groundbreaking love is more solid than gold. The memories of us being together have been deeply etched into my mind. I once promised her that I'd never forget her. The Oni frowned. What are you trying to say? I'm saying that one bowl of Menpo soup may not be enough. You daring punk. You're just trying to scam us for another bowl. The Oni had seen through his schemes. He waved, fellas, give him the original version of the Menpo soup. Let him have it. Chapter 367 Splitting the Realms, Conspiracy Yuch and the others quickly thanked Li Nai and Fan again. Yun Yi Yi was leaning on Ji's. They stood at the bridge to look at the view. They were publicly lovey-dovey for a while before they were satisfied. They drank the Mengpo soup and went to reincarnate. Li Nai and Fan looked sentimental as they left. That goodbye was final. He wondered if he would ever see them again. Even if he did, they would not recognize each other anymore. Black and white impermanence moved their heads closer to the pot. They gulped and asked, Granny, this Mengpo soup. Would there be any issues if we drink it? Mengpo gave them a friendly smile and said, Nope. Don't delay, hurry up and drink it. Black and white impermanence were instantly disinterested. They moved away from the pot and said, It doesn't matter. We have self-control. Li Nai and Fan looked at Mengpo. He did not expect the old granny to be so evil. Little Z, how's the heavenly palace? Mengpo put down the ladle and simply passed it to Anoni. She wiped her hands and said, let's go. Everyone, why don't we find a place to sit? Have a chat with Granny, okay? Li Nai and Fan nodded. Sorry to intrude. Everyone was about to head out. The Oni who took the ladle finally caved into temptation and tried the soup. Black and white impermanence were instantly intrigued. They stared at the Oni excitedly and asked, how is it? The Oni smacked his lips. He looked at black and white impermanence in a daze. Then, he scrunched his nose up and said, Huh? Why is there a pot of soup here? It looks delicious. Slurp. A moment later. Huh? Why is there a pot of soup here? It looks delicious. Slurp. Huh? Why is there a pot of soup here? It looks delicious. Stop drinking it. Your brain will melt if you keep drinking. Black and white impermanence hurriedly stopped him. Guards, drag him away. This comrade caved into temptation in the end. Sent him away to reincarnate. An excellent only dragged him away in the blink of an eye. He left peacefully while thinking of that pot of soup. They went back to the main hall. Female ghosts immediately served them tea. Li Nai and Fan naturally did not drink it. After the Mengpo soup incident, he made a mental note to himself that he should not eat or drink the food from the underworld. He took out the wine gourd and a lot of fruits. Drink my wine, everyone. Fruits, too. I also brought tea leaves, it tastes quite nice. Mr. Lee, I feel sorry about this, the general of the bloody sea apologized while he stood up to respectfully take the stuff from Lee Nian Fan. You're a guest of the underworld but I troubled you to bring your own food and wine. It's a sin, it's our fault. Mr. Lee, there's a serious lack of food in the underworld. After the catastrophe, we sigh, let's not mention it. White impermanence shrugged it off. Anyhow. Thank you so much for your food. We'll shamelessly take it. Shameless, scoffed Nanan. She also poked her tongue out at black and white impermanence. Hee <laughs> hee. Nanan, don't be rude. Li Nai and Fan hurriedly smacked some sense into her. He ruffled her head. The little brat did not understand the importance of civilized manners yet. It would be bad if she offended the sires. Everyone drank wine, ate fruits, and chatted. They were bonding. Finally. The conversation was back on the main topic. Mengpo enjoyed the tea made by Li Nian Fan. She instantly felt comfortable. 
Even the wrinkles on her face went away. She asked again, Little Z, how many people are left in the heavenly palace? V. M. Not much. Z shook her head. That year, I was the youngest. My sisters and everyone else protected me. Luckily, I survived the catastrophe. Not long ago, I had the chance to return to the heavenly palace but I realized. Everyone had been turned to stone. Her voice became hoarse when she talked about it. Tears were in her eyes. As expected. Meng Po sighed. She calmed herself down and said, the primordial spirits have been sealed, permanently. It's not hard to guess who's able to do that. Zhe was utterly nervous. She asked the most important question, are they salvable? Too difficult. Meng Po unconsciously looked at Li Nai and Fan. If the expert was willing to help, they would eventually be saved. For example, Ox Head and Horse Face were unsealed because of the expert. They got lucky. But of course, she could not say it. If I was still at my prime, I could have woken them up with the power of reincarnation. It would take a long time though. Meng Po sighed softly before she continued, I'm just glad that it's just a seal. It means they're still alive and we have a chance to save them. Zay sighed in relief when she heard that they were alive. It was considered good news. They could find a solution. Li Nai and Fan listened to their conversation. He was intrigued. He remembered that in the legendary stories, a part of Meng Po's soul was split from the Hao to Empress. What if? Really? He had to ask, Granny, may I know if you're the virtuous Hao to? Meng Po shook her head and smiled awkwardly, Mr. Li, as reincarnation was shattered, the virtuous Hao to no longer exists. She really was the virtuous Hao to. Li Nai and Fan jolted. He was riled up because he was with a famous saint. He was prepared to meet the big shots in his legendary stories but he did not expect to meet one so sudden. Black and white impermanents were famous, too, but they were just errand runners, the cameos of the fantasy realm. It felt different to meet a main character. Li Nai and Fan went serious and said, How do Empress, you sacrificed yourself for reincarnation and blessed countless spirits and souls. No one would dare forget it. I respect you. Among all the saints, Li Nai and Fan was only impressed by two of them. One of them was How do Empress, the other was Goddess Nuwa. They were also the only two female saints amongst all the saints. It was not an exaggeration to say that Li Nai and Fan grew up listening to stories of how Goddess Nuwa patched the sky and how she made humans with clay. The humans were forever indebted to her generosity. Even Wukong was born from the stone left by Goddess Nuwa. As for the How to Empress, she was one of the main characters. In the end, she had sacrificed herself for the sake of continuing reincarnation. She also left a deep impression on Li Nai and Fan. Those two were his idols. That's an exaggeration, Mr. Li, chuckled Meng Po. She humbly waved it off but she could not stop smiling. She could tell that Li Nai and Fan genuinely respected her. It was hard not to be happy after receiving such a great comment from the expert. The expert understood her. However, when Li Nai and Fan said his next sentence, she truly felt an unexpected sting in her heart. How to Empress, you must have endless deluxe merit. Meng Po gradually stopped smiling. Endless my foot. If this sentence was said by someone else, I would have believed it. But to come from you? That's just mean. You have the deluxe merit flesh. My deluxe merit compared to yours is like a strand of hair. You complimented me so much just to show off in the end. I wanted to cry, this is bullying. It was as if a rich guy told the hard-working worker, wow, you're so hard-working and you earned $500. Awesome, I respect that. Then, the rich guy ate a meal worth more than $500. Was it even a compliment? No. I can't think about it anymore. My heart hurts. Zhe was more concerned with the heavenly palace. She continued to ask, Granny, what happened during the catastrophe? Meng Po sounded sentimental. She slowly said, about the catastrophe, I wasn't planning to talk about it. However, the underworld's now back on track. I don't have to hide these things anymore. It's going to be a long story. Everyone went serious. They listened attentively. Meng Po picked up the kettle and refilled her cup of tea. Then, she slowly sipped on the tea and enjoyed it. Once she was satisfied with the suspense she had created, she put down her teacup and started the story. Buddhism was destroyed in the first place because someone incredible suddenly appeared in the realm. He was more powerful than the saints. Meng Po looked scared. She took a deep breath and said in a low voice, This person also caused the first tribulation of the dragons and the phoenixes, his name was Luoho. He's on the same level as the Buddha. The fire phoenix slightly furrowed her brows. She asked, 
he caused the first tribulation of the dragons and the phoenixes? She had to look at Lee Nyan Fan. Not long ago, Lee Nyan Fan talked about the first tribulation of the dragons and the phoenixes in his stories. He claimed that the first tribulation was caused by a war among the three species. The two stories did not add up. Don't look at me, how to empress is indeed right. Lee Nyan Fan shrugged. The fight of the three species was the main reason, but secretly, Luo Ho was the one who instigated it. Luo Ho was sneaky and wanted nothing more than to cause havoc. It was beneficial to him that more people died. Li Nian Fan finally pieced together the last plot piece when he heard the name Luo Ho. Demons were created by Luo Ho. Lawless seemed powerful but in reality, he was just a chess piece for Luo Ho. He remembered that Luo Ho had two famous items. One of them was the God Killing Spear. The other one was the destructive Black Lotus. He was a big shot in the same era as Hong Jin. Meng Po was excited. She asked, Mr. Li, you know Luo Ho? What exactly is he? She was an ancestor but she only appeared after the realm split. She did not know what happened. Li Nian Fan groaned for a moment. He pursed his lips and replied, I, will have to start from when the realm split apart. Of course, this is just a story I heard. The accuracy of it is yet to be confirmed. We get it. Everyone nodded at the same time. They had oranges in their hands. They were excited to listen to his stories while eating them. The experts going to start story time. Take notes, everybody. The splitting of the realms, how majestic. Everyone slowed their breaths down as their hearts clenched. Meng Po was more excited than the others. That was probably the story of her father. She did not expect that the expert was from the same era as her father. No. Perhaps he was someone more ancient than her father. Scary, terrifying. Li Nianfan cleared his throat. He said, so, the world was still in chaos before the realms were split apart. The chaos birthed 3,000 demon gods. Each demon god represented a power. Pang, Luoho, and Hongjin were amongst the 3,000 demon gods. One day, Pang, with the power of law, achieved maximum cultivation. He was planning to split the realms apart to create a new world. He wanted to level up his cultivation. However, it was opposed by all the other demon gods, Li Nianfan said casually. He did not speak in a dramatic tone. However, everyone could not help but visualize it. They were immersed in the scary story. Li Nianfan continued, Pang was powerful. When he split the realms apart, he was attacked by the other 3,000 demon gods, but he single-handedly killed most of them. Meng Po asked nervously, Mr. Li, what happened next? Li Nianfan shook his head and said with pity, it was too bad that Pang was exhausted. He could only choose to transform his body into a part of the new world. His mind created the mountains, lands, lakes, and oceans. His primordial spirit transformed into the three kings, which are also the three saints. His body and blood transformed into the twelve's ancestors, one of which was the How to Empress. The rest was transformed into countless heavenly spiritual treasures. Aside from Meng Po, everyone's eyes were wide. They felt their skin crawl and had goosebumps all over. They had to look around. Everything around them was created by Pang. They had the utmost respect for him while also being fearful. Splitting the realms and creating all sorts of lives. What an incredible existence. The realm was created, by a person, Nanan gasped. She looked awestruck. That's so awesome. Pang was naturally powerful. His abilities, state of mind, and personality were awesome. You could say he was born to create realms. It's a pity that. What? It's a pity that someone exploited his work. Li Nian Fan shrugged it off. He was slightly emotional as he said, Pang created a new world by sacrificing his body. The new world was like a newborn baby. The 3000 demon gods were not all dead yet, so, of course, they started to fight for power to rule the world. Meng Po felt her heart sink. She realized something. She asked in a low voice, Mr. Li, are you referring to Hong Jin and Luo Ho? Not just Hong Jin and Luo Ho. However, I guess only the two of them managed to live until now, Li Nian Fan said as he nodded. Hong Jin's the bigger winner. He cultivated into a Buddha. Meng Po scolded, that's the result of stealing father's work. He's just a thief. It's a shame that I didn't know that in the past. Otherwise, I would have fought him. She felt sad when she thought of her brothers. Back when it was the prime age of the twelve ancestors, she could have fought him. However, she had nothing left. Li Nianfan said, it's normal that you didn't know about it. He didn't dare to let you all know. He also tried to weaken your powers. After all, 
You're all made from Pang. A reincarnation of Pang. Meng Po's eyes widened at that. She was mind blown. She sat in place, dumbfounded. Usually, the words of an outsider could snap a person out of it. The first tribulation of the dragons and the phoenixes, the cultivators and demons war, and the power seal tribulation. I get it now, I see. All the creatures, including dragons, phoenixes, cultivators, or even demons were transformed from Pang. Hong Jin schemed, instigating the Pang reincarnations to kill each other. They weakened each other and Hong Jin simply waited to collect the benefits. In the end, he successfully did it. Not only did he succeed, he also took in the three kings as his disciples so he could have all the power to himself. It implied that he basically stole everything created by Pang. Chapter 368 Heaven is failing in the source of catastrophe. Meng Po frowned. She looked helpless and sad. Damn. Everyone else looked shocked with wide eyes and opened mouths. They could not snap out of it. They felt like they had just heard something incredible. They still had not figured out what happened in between the stories yet but. He split the realms apart, created a new world, and got knocked off by others. The phrase Secret Villian described Hong Jin the best. They truly felt the harsh and cruel reality of the world. Too scary. The fights between big shots are too scary. The Fire Phoenix had a complex look. She thought the dragons, phoenixes, and Kirins were the natural born species of the realm. She did not expect that in the end, they were all chess pieces. Even her ancestors were tricked. Her ancestors were one with heaven. Did he rule heaven at that time? Li Nai and Fan continued, Hong Jin was against every species made by Pang. However, the world was transformed from Pang and it isn't perfect. Therefore, regardless of the Three Kings, or your reincarnation, it maintains the world. It's the foundation that keeps the world running. He can't kill you all to extinction. Moreover, heaven was not perfect either. Hong Jin had no choice but to go along with it because he did not want to be limited. He did not want to lose his freedom. Everyone nodded simultaneously. They looked like they gained some knowledge. I see. All right, that's the end of the story, said Li Nian Fan. He looked at Meng Po. That was a hint. It was her turn to tell her story. Li Nian Fan was curious as to how the catastrophe happened. Meng Po took the hint. She said, Thanks, Mr. Li, for telling the story. You helped me understand a lot. Otherwise, I'm afraid I still would have been fooled until the day I die. Let me finish my story from earlier. After Buddhism was wiped out, Hong Jin gathered everyone and had a meeting at the Zixiao Palace. The future was discussed. Six words summarized their discussion, Heaven is failing, the absolute era. Heaven is failing meant that Heaven had limited resources or abilities. There would be more limits and troubles. The meaning of the absolute era spoke for itself. Li Nai and Fan frowned and thought about the six words. In other words, it probably meant that the world was about to go downhill, informing everyone to be prepared. He mumbled, incoming chaos. Meng Po sighed and said, yeah, once the news got out, it caused chaos indeed. Dragon was puzzled. Brother, what's the meaning of those six words? Why would it cause chaos? Li Nai and Fan explained, the actual scheme. Was to affect the minds. Once the minds of the people were messed up, everything else would be messed up, too. Hence, chaos ensued. He was used to the modern world so he knew that words in themselves had power. It was very scary. Naturally, any ordinary person had no power in saying that. However, it was said by a big shot so it was impactful. It was like hearing a super billionaire say the economy was failing in a very formal and public event. Naturally, it would cause chaos in the stock market. How badly could words affect the results? Everyone would quote the super billionaire and follow him. Everyone would do something about it, especially the other big shots. They wouldn't want to protect themselves. Thus, chaos would ensue. Meng Po nodded. His words made everyone anxious, especially the heavenly palace and the underworld. Every species and sect were scared. No wonder. No wonder it was named the Absolute Era. Anyone could publicly harm the underworld and the heavenly palace. We even had internal problems. A lot of big shots had that mentality where they'd rather sacrifice other cultivators than their own. They wiped out the other sex to ensure the safety of their own sex. Hongjin. Truly Hongjin. It wasn't even a conspiracy. He just sat there and watched it all unfold. He tricked everyone with his words. Of course, maybe he meant it when he said that it was going to be the absolute era. However, he was most probably trying to instigate things. The rest is history. 
there must be all sorts of scheming, fighting, and tribulations after that. However, Li Nai and Fan frowned and started to think. Hong Jin would be the biggest winner if nothing unexpected happened. What's in it for him? More straightforwardly, is it beneficial for him to rule the world? The plans of a big shot aren't that shallow. What was Luo Ho's role in the story then? There's no way he wasn't connected to Hong Jin. There's a second possibility but it's a stretch. Perhaps Hong Jin was never scheming. Perhaps he was just sitting there, chilling and not participating. Whatever. I won't think about it anymore, what does it have to do with me anyway? I have the golden touch and I'm a deluxe merit saint. Who would try to hurt me? As for my capabilities, I'm just an ordinary man. I can't do anything and I'm not a threat to the big shots. I'll just be a nice guest. Live life leisurely in a simple way. Dragon and Nanan were kind of confused. The others were shocked. They gasped. Meng Po sighed softly. She said, thankfully, after the catastrophe, our underworld managed to get back on track again. However, it's a shame that we lack workers. It's a troubling concern. She glanced at Li Nai and Fan. She was trying to find out if the expert had anyone to recommend. They would hire them for sure. After all, the expert single-handedly brought back the underworld. They wished the expert could recommend someone. In that case, the underworld would have a closer bond with the expert. Li Nai and Fan did not say anything. He could not interfere with those kinds of matters, especially the hiring of workers. It was the privacy of the expert. He could not intervene unless it was necessary. It was a pity that their friends were not dead yet. Otherwise, they could have told them, go ahead and die. Our underworld's hiring. Say hi and we'll get you a position. Everyone finally figured out what started the catastrophe. They felt emotional. Zil looked down. She felt like it was now harder to revive the heavenly palace. She was in a daze and she did not know what to do. White Impermanence said invitingly, Mr. Lee, it's getting late. How about you stay at the underworld for a few days? We'll provide you with the best service and the most comfortable place of stay. Yeah right, service and nice environment in the underworld? I can accept the female ghosts. They might be ghosts and they're beautiful. But a comfortable place to stay? How can it be comfortable? I don't have weird likings like staying in the underworld. Li Nai and Fan shook his head and smiled without hesitation. He said, Ha, thanks for the consideration, but I'm not used to sleeping in the underworld. Too bad. Black and white impermanence shook their heads. Li Nai and Fan stood up. He saluted and said, Thanks for everything today, everyone. I shall leave now. He visited the underworld and gained a lot of knowledge. He also perfectly helped Yu Che and the others. It was all thanks to his cultivator friends. The general of the Bloody Sea left and said, You're welcome, Mr. Lee. Our underworld isn't much, but one of our best qualities is our hospitality for our guests. Meng Po said passionately, Mr. Lee, you're welcome to swing by next time. After a while of chatting, Black and white impermanence opened the underworld gates and they returned to the immortal realm. It was much easier to return from the underworld because they could use any one of the city god temples as a location. They were directly brought back to the city god temple of the fallen town. It was fast and convenient. Li Nai and Fan had a new idea. That was a teleportation spell. If he was ever in a hurry to go somewhere, he could just use the underworld as a transit. It would be far more convenient. Of course, it was just a thought. He would never do that. Soon, it was night time. The fallen town city god received a message. He was waiting at the city god temple. He was an elder named Joe. He said with respect, Greetings to the impermanent sires, greetings to Mr. Lee. Lee Nai and Fan had heard of the elder before. He smiled and said, Hello, Elder Joe. Black and white impermanence nodded. They hinted at the elder with a polite warning, Fallen town's a beautiful place. You are able to become a city god here. Your future is bright, so keep up the good work. Don't relax. Otherwise, we'll make your life a living hell. They sent a clear message for the elder. The expert stayed nearby, and he personally created the fallen town city god temple. It was a place of luck. If they could, black and white impermanence would have pushed the elder out and become the city gods themselves. Yes, I got it. The fallen town city god kept nodding with seriousness. White impermanence was taken aback by something. He said, Yo, it's late at night but it's still so crowded here. The fallen town city god smiled awkwardly. He shook his head and said, No, impermanence sires. We ran into a big problem around here. Li Nai and Fan frowned. He asked, What happened? 
Sigh, we can't fish at the nearby lakes. The fallen town city god was troubled. Not sure what happened but there are always demons fighting in the ocean and the lakes. Every time we go out to fish, we'd see crabs and lobsters as tall as half a human fighting each other. They'd turn the tides and cause a lot of water-related disasters for us. The people are helpless so they've been coming to beg for my help. However, I'm not that great of a cultivator. I can't do anything about it either. Chapter 369 CIs, Where's the Promising Tsunami? The demons are fighting? Everyone was shocked. Black and white impermanents were slightly curious. They asked, usually, big battles are related to war. How did this happen? What did the sea creature do? Small fights erupting among the demons were unavoidable. However, group battles were quite rare. The fallen town city god smiled awkwardly and shook his head. That's not all. The water-related disasters are worse. Although there wasn't a tsunami, a lot of nearby places were flooded. The fishermen's boats can't sail out to fish for sure. White impermanence nodded and said, these things indeed can't be helped. I'm afraid you'll have to rely on the other cultivators for help. The fallen town city god said, cultivators tried to help but they were soon chased away. I'm afraid this isn't an easy case. Black and white impermanence frowned. This. Something's wrong. There's most probably an internal fight under the sea. They were deities of the underworld. Hence, they were only concerned with the underworld and the ghosts. They did not care much about water-related disasters, and they could not help either. Lee Nye and Fan smiled and saluted, Thanks for the escort, impermanent sires. Do you want to have a drink at my place? No, no, Mr. Lee. We shall leave. If you need anything at all, just contact us through any city god temple. Feel free to do so, you don't have to be courteous with us, black and white impermanents saluted. They could tell that Lee Nye and Fan was just trying to sound polite. They wanted to drink but they had to be considerate. Lee Nye and Fan said in a pitiful tone, too bad then. Next time, next time. They walked out from the city god temple. Lee Nye and Fan looked at Dragon. He asked curiously, Dragon, do you know what's going on? Has this happened before? Dragon had a rich family in the eastern sea. They had endless seafood. They must be affected by the underwater war. Dragon tilted her head. She seemed to be thinking with her little head. Then, she shook her head. She worriedly said, No, but my father should be fine, right? If he's there, how would the Eastern Sea be in chaos? She knew that her father would not allow that to happen. After all, the expert was living nearby. Allowing this to happen would affect the expert. Lee Nyanfen said, Let's go check it out. It won't take long anyway. It'll also satisfy my curiosity. He yawned and repressed his sleepiness. He rode on his clouds with everyone else on it. They headed to the clear moon lake. He had a disciplined routine, but that was the first time he stayed up late. He was not used to it. However, he had to check it out for dragon's sake and for the nearby surroundings. Soon, a golden cloud appeared at the clear moon lake. The clear moon lake was quiet under the moonlight. The color of the water was darker than the land. It looked like a bottomless lake. The soft ripples reflected under the moonlight. The surface of the lake was very calm and quiet. They continued forward. Suddenly, they saw a sudden commotion at the lake. Two figures jumped out of the lake with their claws up high. They were having a standoff. Lee Nye and Fan focused and saw a big hairy crab demon and a flower crab demon. The two crab demons were significantly larger than usual, especially their claws. Their claws were trained to be huge. It was almost larger than their bodies. Moreover, they were shiny and sharp with jagged teeth. If they pinch me with those, I don't dare to imagine it. Lee Nye and Fan licked his lips. He secretly said, such a big claw. Must be filled with meat. It'd definitely be more satisfying than biting on a drumstick. Dragon said, brother, the opponent of that hairy crab's not from the eastern sea. I've never even seen it before. That's a flower crab. Lee Nye and Fan analyzed. It seems the foreign demons are fighting the local demons. They ignored the two demons that were fighting with their claws while salivating. They continued forward. They were soon at the sea. It was much noisier than at the clear moon lake. They could hear waves splashing from afar. The waves kept splashing with each moment. Waves as high as three meters would appear from time to time. It was highly unusual. Soon, a body was washed up ashore by the waves. It was the dead body of a huge king crab. Although it was dead, it was still fresh. Lee Nyanfen said in a pained voice, Get it out of the water, we can still eat it. Don't let it die in vain. 
Nanan said at the side, I know, I know, this is called making death worth it. The tides grew stronger as they got closer. The dead bodies of the sea creatures started to increase. There were so many bodies that Lee Nian Fan did not even have the time to pick all of them. He only picked up the big ones. As for the little ones, he could only let them be. Meanwhile, they witnessed all sorts of seafood battles. The battle of the Australian lobster and the shrimp. The battle of the salmon and the tuna. The battle of the squid and the cuttlefish. It was the battle of the seafood. The sea was in turmoil from all their stirring. Lee Nian Fan felt very hungry watching them. He could not help but imagine that the sea was a big pot of soup. This pot of seafood soup, delicious and fresh. Dodgy suddenly pointed in a direction and said, Look at that fish. It's so colorful. Lee Nian Fan was also surprised. He exclaimed, Yo, that's a saddle grouper. And it's a demon. The fish was huge. It was covered in yellow dots with obvious black stripes. It was an extremely expensive fish in his past realm. Ordinary people could not afford it, especially when it was that huge. It wiggled its tail in the sea, swimming incredibly fast as it kept changing its course. It shot a strong water pillar against a king crab. The king crab was hit, causing it to faint in the water. Its squirting skills so powerful. Li Nianfan exclaimed. Then, he added, this fish would be delicious as sashimi. I'll get it right away. Dragon raised her arm and cast a spell. A water ball instantly entrapped the saddle grouper. It slowly rose to the air. The saddle grouper was being boastful at that moment. Then, it suddenly noticed that it had been lifted above the water's surface and was still rising in the air. It looked bewildered. When did I learn how to fly? Nanan noticed something, too. She said, Brother Nyanfan, look over there. That crab's super huge. That's the Red King crab. Lee Nyanfan was like a walking encyclopedia. He simply introduced, This crab's one of the biggest crabs in the world. It's a fighter, but of course, its delicious meat is at the top of the list. Dragon said, can't miss out on that. Get it. Wow, that fish is full of spikes. Get it. Wow. Get it. Everyone went ahead catching the seafood as Lee Nian Fan introduced the various meats of all sorts of seafood. The seafood battle suddenly became a delicious seafood auction. In the end, the seafood demons noticed them. They panicked and did not dare to fight with all their might anymore. They were scared of being noticed. Lee Nian Fan suddenly snapped out of it. Oh yeah, we aren't here for seafood. Daji and the others stopped searching. Daji said, this situation's highly unnatural. Demons from other regions likely invaded the eastern sea. And, the battle's still ongoing. Boom. Suddenly, they heard an explosion from afar. A water pillar soared to the sky like a giant dragon. It was hundreds of meters tall. The surface of the water shook as the waves gushed like crazy. Boom. Boom. Several explosions followed the first. It caused huge splashes in the sea. Splash. The sea was affected by that. Angry waves overlapped with one another. Dragon hurriedly said, That's my father fighting with someone. We have to go check it out. Lee Nian Fan looked serious. At that point, it would eventually cause a tsunami and it might affect the fallen town. Everyone sped up and headed toward the direction of the explosions. Daji cast a spell. A blue light shield was formed around everyone. As they got closer, the demons started to look different. They saw demons with human parts. Some demons even flew into the air, wanting to attack Lee Nian Fan and the others. However, they were either turned to ice pops or burned to ash before they could get close. It was inevitable. Meanwhile, at the border of the sea, a black hole formed in the deep central part of the sea. The black hole was huge and extremely creepy. It was overlapped with the seawater but it did not blend in with the sea. Nothing was covering it either. It was oddly embedded in the sea. If one were to look closely, one would realize that the black hole had a pearl lying in it. A light blue pearl spun slowly with a shiny gleam. Two figures stood before the black hole. They were slightly panting while looking serious. They were Ao Chang and Ao Yun. Two figures stood in front of them. One of them was an elder with not much hair. His hair was white. He had a single horn on his forehead. He placed his hands behind him and looked at Ao Chang and Ao Yun calmly. The other figure was a middle-aged man. His face was gaunt with a coldness to it. He slightly raised his eyebrow and smirked, incredible, so incredible. Ao Yun, you're not dead yet? They thought their mission would be a success. They even thought they could have easily killed the Eastern Sea Dragon King. However, they did not expect the sudden change. 
Ayun was not dead. The dragon killer poison bug had been untreatable for countless years. Ayun did lose an arm. However, his survival could be described as miraculous. You dragon scums aren't dead yet, so how can I die? Ayun coldly stared at them. He looked angry. He lifted his remaining arm and out came a purple golden hammer. Electrical current was coursing through it. Ao Chang questioned them in a deep voice, Ao Fang, why did you betray the dragon kind? You're all too ignorant. We southern sea dragons didn't betray you. We're simply going along with the future, fighting for the survival of the dragon kind, Ao Fang said and shook his head. Then, he said, if I were to be like you guys, we'd all be dead in the end. Us southern sea dragons being alive is better than the extinction of all dragons. Ayun mockingly laughed and said, you betrayed your own kind to survive. Do you have no shame? You'd be better off dead. You're a royal prince. Aren't you embarrassed by what you said? Ao Chang saw through it all. You southern sea dragons just want to rule the sea for yourselves. Ao Feng said confidently, there's no use for talking. Move, I might spare your lives. Ao Chang looked serious. He yelled, the sea I has been protected by the dragons for generations. Are you crazy? How dare you? Protect? Have you two lost your minds? The realm has changed. What's worth protecting? Ao Feng sounded pissed. Then, he said in a low and condescending voice, Ao Cheng, Ao Yun, don't say I didn't give you a chance. The realm's very different from what it once was. This is the dragon's chance to rise to the top again. This dragon soul pearl given to us by our ancestors is our chance. Ao Yun said with seriousness, once the dragon soul pearl's gone, the sea I would lose control. Endless seawater would spread to the land. It would drown half of the realm. People will suffer. Do you think we'll allow it? Ridiculous. We're dragons. Why should we protect the weak humans? Ao Feng looked at Ayun and Ao Cheng with contempt. The heavenly palace is gone. The realm won't look out for us, and nobody would care if our people are all killed. The southern sea dragons will have the dragon soul pearl. The elder at the side said, Prince, we've already wasted a lot of time. There's no use talking to them. Ha, anyone who gets in my way will die. Ao Feng growled and reached out with his hands. A crystal spear immediately appeared in it. The spear launched forth like a dragon. It immediately caused endless waves. A giant water dragon appeared. Ayun leapt to the air with his purple golden hammer. Electricity surrounded him and attacked the water dragon on its head. Kaboom! Countless strikes of lightning went towards Ao Feng and that elder. Roar! The elder sneered. He transformed into a hundred meter long black dragon. It looked cold and prestigious. He flicked his tail and the sea was instantly turned over. Its huge claws lashed at Ayun while its tail flicked toward Ao Chang. Ao Chang and Ayun had no choice. They also transformed into dragons. They roared and fought the elder. The three dragons spun around in the sea. They flew out of the sea without casting spells. Their bodies clashed and affected everything else around them. Explosions ensued. Black Dragon said, Prince, I'll delay them. You go get the Dragon Soul Pearl. Yeah, right. You? Ao Chang scoffed and flicked his tail. He was going to attack Hao Feng. The Black Dragon opened its mouth and out came a golden mark. The golden mark expanded, and soon, it was the size of a mountain. It separated the seawater, weighing down on Ao Chang. Ao Chang was blocked by that attack. He was also stuck and could not move. Ayun did not look happy at all. He wanted to stop Ao Feng but was busy with the Black Dragon. Ao Feng sneered at Ayun and Ao Chang. He walked freely towards the sea eye like a champion. Soon, he was in front of the light blue pearl. Ao Cheng was very nervous. He scolded, Ao Feng, think about it. Once you get it out, the consequences would be unbearable. You can't take it, you really can't take it. Stop, listen to me. It was a serious sin to upset the expert. Of course, Ao Feng did not care. Humans have been the elites for so many years. It's time they stop being the main focus. Today, I, Ao Feng, will take the pearl and drown the humans. Dragons will rise again. This will be a legendary moment in dragon history. It'll be passed down for generations too. Come. He looked excited. He grinned and reached out without hesitation. His arm transformed into a dragon claw and he took the dragon soul pearl. No. Ao Cheng and Ao Yun looked horrified. They used all their powers to get rid of the black dragon. They swam toward the sea eye as fast as they could Ao Chang said in a pained tone, Brother Yun, goodbye. I'll block the sea eye with my body. The dragons are going to rely on you from now on. 
What nonsense are you talking about? I'm fatter than you. I'm naturally the better choice to block the CI. Move aside, don't get in my way. Fat? You only have one arm, how are you going to block it? Hurry up and move. The two dragons did not budge. They surrounded the black hole and were ready to die. Ao Feng held the dragon soul pearl and mockingly laughed at Ao Chang and Ao Yun. So touching, you two fools. Ha ha ha. However, his laughter gradually froze and sounded awkward. Then, it vanished. He stared at the CI, then looked at the dragon soul pearl in his hand. He looked confused. CI, buddy, what's going on with you? Where's the tsunami as promised? Is it broken? Ao Feng and Ao Yun laid on top of the CI. They were also stumped. They all looked at each other. Perhaps this is a fake CI, or maybe. That's a fake Dragon Soul Pearl? Chapter 370 Dragons. Shall not be slaves. Suddenly, the sea was slowly split into two. A path was revealed. At the end of the path was a golden light. Ao Chang and Ao Yun were taken aback. They widened their dragon eyes and opened their mouths. They stared at it dumbfoundedly. That. That's. Their hearts started to tremble. They were too familiar with the golden light. It was like early morning sunlight that slashed through the dark night. It appeared suddenly. Ao Chang and Ao Yun rubbed their eyes and looked again. They instantly felt a warmth in their hearts. They teared up. He's here. The expert's here. Ao Feng and the black dragon were stumped. They also stared at the golden light with wide eyes. They felt like it was an incoming enemy. Deluxe Merit? Someone rode in on a Deluxe Merit cloud? They were utterly confused. They expected someone would own Deluxe Merit in the Immortal Realm. But, so, what? Would the CI be threatened by Deluxe Merit when it explodes? Obviously not. Ao Feng had to shake the Dragon Soul Pearl in his hand. He triple confirmed that it was real. The CI was also real. Why won't it work? Is it out of water? It doesn't make sense. Li Nai and Fen arrived and saw the three dragons. A ferocious black dragon stared at him. Two other dragons were lying on a black hole. They were also staring at him. A middle-aged man stood by the side with a big pearl bead in his hand. The smile on his face seemed awkward. He must be the one who laughed out loud previously. Cover me. Li Nai and Fan backed away as he reminded everyone. It was the first time he saw dragons but he was used to the immortal realm so he was not too scared and shocked. It was obvious that they were fighting. The battle stopped because Li Nai and Fan suddenly arrived. The two dragons who laid on the CI leapt up and transformed back into Ao Chang and Ao Yun. They saluted Li Nai and Fan and said, Mr. Li. Brother Ao. Li Nai and Fan sighed in relief. Then, he groaned for a moment. He said, You two are dragons, right? Their family name was Ao. That was the name of dragons in legendary stories. Li Nai and Fan pretended not to notice it before, but he just saw them in their dragon forms so he was able to confirm his theory. They are dragons, why would they claim to be carp demons? What kind of weird hobby is that? Yes. We're dragons, stuttered Ao Chang. Then, he sighed and said, but it's not wrong to say that we're carps. Apart from the ancestral dragons, most dragons were carps who leapt through the dragon door. We don't want to admit it but our origins can be traced back to a carp. I see. Li Nai and Fan nodded. He was familiar with the story. The story of the carp leaping through the dragon door. It was a gift from the dragons. The dragons realized that the carps were highly compatible with their bloodline. They wanted to increase the dragon population so they blessed a carp, helping it transform into a dragon. It was also common among Kirins and Phoenixes. After all, those three species were extremely powerful. They were born from the realm, which was why they were difficult to populate. They had to do that to prevent extinction and continue their bloodline. Otherwise, why would dragons in legendary stories be so weak? Neja learned a few tricks and was able to conquer the third prince of the dragons. The dragon kings were practically useless. Ancestral dragons were very powerful. They only became weak because of this. Li Nianfan was instantly impressed by Ao Chang he was already a dragon but he didn't forget his roots. He was humble and identified himself as a carp. How amazing, not a lot of people can do that. If it was anybody else, they wouldn't admit that they were a carp. Any mention of being a carp would be unacceptable to them. Nonsense. Ao Feng shouted by the side. He looked at Ao Chang with contempt and scolded, We're dragons. How can we be compared to puny carps? Your words are blasphemous. You don't deserve to call yourself a dragon. Li Nai and Fan looked at Ao Feng. He was the opposite example. 
Ao Cheng sneered and said calmly, Ignorant fool. You know nothing. I know nothing? Ha! Ao Feng was so angry that he started to laugh like he heard the funniest joke. Ao Cheng, are you serious? As a person? No, wait, as a dragon, coming from carps are in the past. A dragon's a dragon. You keep looking back to the past, which is why you're destined to be a failure. We southern sea dragons always want more. This dragon soul pearl's the first step to our improvement. Just you wait, we'll become the true ancestral dragons soon. Ha, ignorant, Ao Cheng said the same thing. You know nothing. He watched Ao Feng brag with calmness in his eyes. He almost wanted to laugh. There are some things that I can't tell you to your face. Don't mention being a carp, even if I was an earthworm, my future's still brighter than yours. Do you know who this is beside me? Our real ancestral dragon staying in his backyard. The expert's right in front of you but you don't recognize him. On top of that, you're even bragging. Sigh, ridiculous. Ignorance is such a scary thing. The black dragon transformed into human form and landed next to Ao Feng. He reminded him in a low voice, Prince, stop wasting time with them. We got the dragon soul pearl. Time to split. He felt mentally exhausted. He was looking at Doji, the fire phoenix, and Zay, alarmed. He could tell from their aura that they were Tai Yi golden immortals. They were in serious danger. You are not running. Instead, you have time to brag about your future. Are you out of your mind? Ao Feng finally caught on. His face fell and he silently nodded. You're right. Ao Cheng, go ahead and be a carp demon. We won't stay around to entertain you anymore. He sneered while transforming into a dragon. He swam away along with the elder. Where are you going? Ao Cheng and Ao Yun yelled at the same time. They also transformed into dragons and chased after them. Zay furrowed her brows. She soared to the air and shouted, Mr. Li, the CI is very important. I'll go and help. I'll go, too. The fire phoenix flapped her wings and flew at full speed. She could finally fight a dragon. She was overjoyed and very excited. Doji did not go. She stayed with Li Nian Fan. Li Nian Fan also followed them but he was slow. He kept a safe distance at all times. Doji, let's find a safe and nice spot to watch the battle. Kaboom! The four dragons soared out from the sea. They caused a huge wave. Huge splashes were made. It was a majestic sight along with the dragons. Roar! The dragons struggled and crashed into each other. They spat out all sorts of spells with their mouths. The sea was turned into a chaotic battlefield. The people and the cultivators could hear explosions and roars from miles away. It made them uneasy and anxious. Ao Cheng, you dare attack us? Ao Feng did not look happy at all. He nervously swerved and said, My father's still alive and he's a Daluo Golden Immortal. You dare hurt me? Ao Cheng smiled coldly. He slapped him in the face with his tail, mentioning daddy because you can't win against me? The dragon ancestor's still alive. Should I mention the ancestor, too? Ao Feng scolded, I'm being serious. What nonsense are you talking about? The dragon ancestor's alive? You think I'd believe that nonsense? Suddenly, a light slashed through the sky with a shriek. It went straight to Ao Feng. Zay said in a cold voice, put down the dragon soul pearl. Ao Feng kept finding chances to escape. Ha, no way. Just kill them. The fire phoenix had a rope in her hand. She tossed it at them and the rope slithered towards them like a snake. It elongated, reaching for Ao Feng. Ao Feng was instantly scared into a deranged state. He exclaimed, the immortal trap rope? The black dragon puffed up its body and knocked the immortal trap rope away. It used its dragon body and blocked everyone. It spat out a big golden mark. The mark formed a huge mountain that fell on everyone. The black dragon yelled, Prince, go. Leave me. All right, good luck. I'll come back and avenge you. The voice seemed to come from a far away distance. The black dragon turned to look and realized Ao Feng had already fled. Ao Feng wagged his tail without looking back. Suddenly, the black dragon felt wronged. Misery flashed through his eyes. He looked at everyone and expanded his body. His power started to boil as he yelled, You're not going to succeed even if I die. Come on, come at me. I'm going to self-implode. Ha ha he struggled and roared, puffing up into a ball. He bit down with determination, feeling righteous with his last shred of dignity and pride. Dragons. Shall not be slaves. The black dragon glanced at everyone. All of a sudden, the golden light appeared. He instantly felt his heart thump. 
He took a deep breath and went over with his bow like body. He told Li Nian Fan, Sir, I'm going to self implode. It'll be a mighty explosion. How about, you step further aside? Li Nian Fan shook his head and suggested with kindness, No, don't self implode. It'd be a waste of your body of dragon meat, right? Look on the bright side, don't be so extreme. The black dragon turned purple. He shivered and almost spat out blood. In the end, he deflated like a balloon. He accepted his fate with tears streaming down his face, fine. Please, make it fast. Chapter 371 Li Nian Fan's Plan Someone was here. The black dragon's request was satisfied. He soon died peacefully with no pain. Li Nian Fan looked at Ao Chang and asked curiously, Brother Ao Chang, are you guys in the middle of an internal conflict? Sorry to have embarrassed ourselves. I only found out recently that they betrayed us after the major catastrophe. As a result, all forces were severely harmed. Ao Chang shook his head bitterly. He continued, Unfortunately, they still took the Dragon Soul Pearl. Perhaps it's going to get troublesome in the future. He frowned. He was anxious. Dragon's eyes flashed. She said innocently, Father, what's the Dragon Soul Pearl for? As you saw, there's a black hole under the water, the sea eye. It's known as the Eye of the Four Seas. Ao Cheng halted. Then, he continued, there's boundless seawater inside the sea eye. Once it loses control, the seawater will flood the entire world. The villagers would be in pain and vanish while the Dragon Soul Pearl will be used to control the sea eye. So terrifying? Li Nian Fan's face instantly changed. He could not help looking at the sea. Wasn't the Dragon Soul Pearl taken away? Why doesn't the sea eye have any reaction? Perhaps there was a delay? This. Ao Chang cautiously looked at Li Nian Fan. Perhaps, the sea eye has been calmed and doesn't need to be controlled. He knew well enough that the reason it did not explode was purely because of the expert. A deluxe merit saint was able to make the CI behave this way, but, was the expert merely a deluxe merit saint? Maybe that was just the surface. With the expert around, just a word from him was able to make the entire world listen. Li Nian Fan let out a sigh of relief. That's great. Hopefully, this CI could remain stable to make everyone less worried. Ao Cheng had a look of delight in his eyes. With this sentence from the expert, he felt that 80% of the problem was solved. This was more effective than any treasure. The expert's words were like gold. Since he said it had to be stable, then it had to be stable. Would the CI dare to mess things up? Obviously not. The problem with the CI isn't big. Ayun let out a sigh of relief. He said with a worried tone, however, the Dragon Soul Pearl contains too much power. If they have it in hand, they'd use it to cause major problems. Back then, besides the Dragon family, Countless big shots were tossed into the CI since ancient times to calm the CI. Since the Dragon Soul Pearl had gathered so much energy from the big shots, its power was incredibly shocking. Your was. The Southern Sea Dragon family had snatched the Dragon Soul Pearl. Their intention was too scary. Li Nianfan could not help them. He could only comfort them by saying, The ship at the dock will be right. There'll be a way. Hopefully, what you say comes true, Ao Chen nodded. He added, Mr. Li. Thank you for coming in time today. If not, Brother Ao Yun would have been in trouble. Ao Yun nodded and said sincerely, Yeah, Mr. Li, you saved my life once again. It's just a coincidence. Furthermore, I merely came for the excitement. They're the ones who helped you. Li Nian Fan pointed at the Fire Phoenix and Z. Instantly, Ao Chen and Ao Yun said in unison, Thank you Immortal Fire Phoenix, Princess Z. Z waved, It's okay, it's nothing. Ao Chen invited, it's quite late now, why don't you all stay a night at my place? I've picked some hairy crabs recently. Their meat is top graded. Li Nian Fan smiled and shook his head and said, It's okay. It doesn't take too long to go back. I shall go back to the Heavenly Temple, Zi said as she shook her head, too. She sighed as she had been thinking of ways to unseal it but still had no clue. Her brows furrowed with worry. Li Nian Fan could not help comforting her, Immortal Zi, now that you've found the Heavenly Temple, you'll eventually find ways to unseal it. Since you've already waited for so long, why hurry? Zi was instantly relieved. She seemed to have understood it. She said, Thank you, Mr. Lee, for pointing this out. I was too close-minded. Recently, she had not felt too secure. She had been blaming herself and being anxiously absent-minded. To an immortal, this was a terrifying thing. If she was unable to wake up, there would be some obstacles in her cultivation. 
perhaps she might die with just a thought. However, after Li Nai and Fan had pointed it out, she instantly had cold sweat all over her body. Ao Chen quickly arranged for some hairy crabs for Li Nai and Fan to bring home. Li Nai and Fan did not resist. He thanked him and left. His trip to the sea did make him some gains. Apart from all kinds of seafood, there was even dragon meat along with those huge hairy crabs. He did not have to go out for a long time. On the way back, they were not in a rush. They were slowly enjoying the sea breeze in the air. Li Nai and Fan could not help saying, unknowingly, this trip has taken us almost three months. This was the longest time Li Nai and Fan had been away from home after his trip to this realm. He traveled the furthest this time. Daji looked at Li Nai and Fan. She asked caringly, Mr. Li, are you, happy? Li Nai and Fan looked at Daji. He asked with a smile, what about you? Daji's eyes sparkled like water as she said gently, as long as I'm with Mr. Li, I'll be happy. Ha ha ha, me, too. Under the moonlight, Li Nai and Fan reached out to hold Daji's hand. Her hand was gentle and small. In his hand, it felt as if it was boneless. Furthermore, compared to Daji's cold temperament and her cold spells, her hand was surprisingly warm. Li Nai and Fan did not intend to do anything. However, just from holding her hand, he felt like he was unable to let her go. Suddenly, he felt very at ease. He could not help looking at Daji. He saw her cheeks blushing, her tiny head slightly lowered like a mimosa, unable to be touched. Daji already looked very beautiful. With the night sky as her background along with the gentle waves behind her, she was like an immortal under the moon. It seemed almost as if she was glowing, looking extremely beautiful. Li Nianfen was amused. He had a playful thought. He held Daji's hand and gently kissed her on her palm. Mwak. Daji instantly moaned softly. She could not help herself from leaning toward Li Nianfen slightly. The Fire Phoenix, Dragon. And Nanan were watching even though they knew they should not be watching. They had no emotion on their faces and did not look at them too obviously. It seemed as if they did not know anything. Li Nianfen was playing with Daji. He was amused and yet, he said with a serious tone, this trip is indeed quite joyful, and we did go through quite some things. They arrived at the Xia Kingdom first. They then went to a Buddhist temple, and then to the underworld. They even went to the East Sea. On the way, they met some obstacles and witnessed the fight between Buddhism and demons. There was even an internal conflict between the dragons. They had been through the death of friends and learned more about the catastrophe. There were many games and many emotions. Hmm. Daji's voice was slow. She was absent-minded and a little startled. This world. Li Nai and Fan took a deep breath and suddenly did not know what to do. This was the world similar to the familiar mythology he used to read about. Meanwhile, this was also a dangerous place with mutual murderers plotting a world full of violence. Daji asked, concerned, Mr. Li, what about this world? Li Nai and Fan smiled and said, nothing, I just feel that some unity would be ideal. Now that it's quite chaotic, it's not going on the right track. He felt that after the major catastrophe, many heroes were fighting internally and externally. They had no more restraint. Most importantly, Jason and Yun Yi Yi died. Li Nianfen was deeply touched. Earlier on, Ao Chen almost died as well. He thought about his journey and how the Kirin attacked them. It seemed that everyone around him was under attack. This was unsettling. If this did not happen around him, he would not have felt it. However, now that it happened in front of him, it felt different again. Da Ji said, Mr. Li, this day isn't too far away. Li Nianfen smiled. Hopefully. I'm merely expressing my feelings. The sky's getting dark. Let's hurry and go home and rest. He looked at Daji. He was moved. He and Daji had finally gotten closer. His chance of a successful confession would be a hundred percent. However, this was not the era for that. Confessing was too low. There was no boyfriend or girlfriend. He might as well propose right away. He was prepared to pick a suitable time to propose to Daji. He genuinely hoped their wedding would be as formal and grand as possible. After all, he did know quite some people. Furthermore, each of them was a big shot. He would invite them all. Meanwhile, Zay went back to the heavenly temple. She stood on the heavenly bridge for a long time, staring blankly. Inside the heavenly temple, there was no glow but a vast silence. Finally, she sighed. I shouldn't come here before finding a solution. Every time she came here, she would be emotional and hurt. The expert was right. She had waited all these years. 
Now that the heavenly temple resurfaced, there was no fear in waiting. Not to hurry, not to hurry. She calmed her heart. She walked off the bridge and went past the buildings. She was ready to greet her sister in the Rainbow Seventh Pavilion. She would not be visiting them often in the future. However, when she arrived at the Seven Rainbow Pavilion, her pupils dilated. She remained transfixed on the spot. Her face was changing constantly from excitement to unease. Even her breathing became rapid. Before she left, she intentionally removed a hairpin and placed it between the door. However, the hairpin had disappeared. Click. Anxiously, she pushed the door open to enter. There were tears in her eyes as she ran around quickly. Finally, she stopped in front of the stone statues of the five sisters. Her voice was trembling with anticipation as she said, Second sister, is that you? Chapter 372 Are you a pig? Do you believe this? Zay stood in the hall. She was looking around anxiously, like a child who suddenly heard from her family when she was feeling hopeless. Second sister, you must be here. Come out and meet me. Zay's voice was soft but determined. Since my return, I realize that everything here is too familiar. Be it my sisters or the other immortals, they look the same as they once had. Obviously, they didn't look like this when getting sealed. You fixed them, right? There was only silence around her. The tables, chairs, and setup are all the same as before. The hobbies of us sisters, like big sister who liked to play the zither and fourth sister who liked to play the lute only you knew about those. You put them in their happiest state, Zee said gradually. She did not know if her second sister was here. She looked like she was talking to herself. I secretly put my hairpin between the doors. You took it, right? I know it's you. If you're here, why is it so hard to come out and meet me? As she finished speaking, her face froze. She turned into pieces of purple leaves and disappeared. When she reappeared, she was on a platform on the rooftop of the pavilion. Here, a woman in an orange dress was standing. On her delicate face, two streams of tears were rolling down. There was a ribbon at the end of her dress that looked like a tail flowing in the night wind. She looked as if she could be blown away at any moment. Compared to Zee, she appeared even more mature and formal, cold and elegant. Zee looked delighted. She called out with surprise, second sister. The second sister looked at Zee, her eyes filled with love and gentleness. Seventh sister, you've grown up so much. You even pulled a trick on me. Second sister, if you weren't sealed, why didn't you look for me? Zay looked at the second sister, feeling hurt. Her eyes were filled with doubts. The second sister shook her head and sighed. Silly, so what if we meet? I'm lucky to be able to come to the heavenly temple from time to time. I can't have any interaction with the outside world to avoid any unnecessary trouble. Zay continued asking, where have you been living all these years? The second sister hesitated for a moment. She said, actually. I've been with the Empress. Empress is still here? Zay was surprised. She asked, wait, I didn't mean that. What I meant was, the Empress is still alive. No, what I meant. All right, I know what you mean. The second sister shook her head and smiled. She continued, the Empress and Emperor were following Dao Tzu around. Since they had many good deeds, they can't get in trouble. They're merely forbidden. Zi bit her lip and said, I met Hao to Empress and I learned a lot regarding the catastrophe. Dao Tzu. All right. This matter seems to have other reasons behind it, don't talk about it. The second sister cut her off. My element is in Apenthes. The Empress intentionally saved me to be with her in hopes of forgetting her worries. It's apparent that she doesn't want to get involved in this matter anymore. What other reasons? I don't know. I heard from the Empress that the world changed abruptly. Dao Tzu didn't have a choice. Zay did not dwell on the surface questions. She said, second sister, let's think of a way. Perhaps it won't take long before we rebuild Heavenly Temple since we have the Empress. Her eyes sparkled with excitement on her face. Her tone consisted of something known as hope. So innocent, how's that easy? The second sister shook her head bitterly. She said, however, you were able to unseal the Heavenly Temple. I was shocked. How did you do it? Second sister, do you know that the Underworld's now completed? This is all because we met an expert. The Underworld's completed? The second sister frowned. That's unexpected. Zay continued. As if she was a child showing her treasure to her senior, she said in a mysterious tone, Second sister, did you get flat peaches from staying with the Empress? The second sister shook her head. She could not help rolling her eyes at Zay. Do you think times are as they were? Many heavenly spiritual plants had been mixed with impurities. 
Why? You have a craving? Zay smiled and said, I always have spiritual plans. Perhaps you're the one with cravings. The second sister was speechless. I think you're eating in your dreams every day. Ha ha ha, here, for you. Zay grinned from ear to ear. Suddenly she took out an orange and handed it to the second sister. What's this? An orange? The second sister frowned. She received the orange from Zay with a strange look. This orange, are you telling me this is a spiritual fruit? She peeled the orange skin and saw that the orange was clear like jade without impurity. Each piece was regularly sized. The presentation of it was far better than those fruits back in the heavenly temple. Oranges can actually grow this way? The second sister felt as if she was learning something new. She gradually plucked out a piece and placed it in her mouth elegantly. She chewed gently with her lips closed. Along with a gentle bite, the rich juice of the orange seemed as if it was unleashed, shooting out suddenly and flying into each corner of her mouth. Eventually, a golden yellow liquid gradually oozed out from the corner of her lips. However, she had no time to wipe it off. This was because a sour and sweet taste had exploded inside her mouth. The wonderful taste, the sourness with sweetness, had triggered her taste buds. She lost her ability to think momentarily. This, this is actually, spiritual fruit? And it's so delicious? Her eyes widened. She was not forcing more fruit into her mouth. She pursed her lips and carefully tasted them. Although the flat peaches back in the days were heavenly spiritual plant, their taste could not come close to this orange. To be blunt, she had lived so long and had not eaten such delicious food. This had refreshed her understanding of good food. Zay was watching by the side. The second sister had always been a calm person with a cold and elegant temperament. Zay thought she could watch the second sister lose her composure. She would then record it with a picture pearl to blackmail her in the future. Thus, she was, rather disappointed. However, having her usually elegant second sister acting this way already showed how powerful this orange was. The second sister looked at the picture pearl in Zay's hand and quickly stuck her tongue out to lick away the remaining orange juice. She warned, what are you trying to do? Nothing, just wanted to check if this picture pearl was broken or not. Zay remained calm and kept the picture pearl? The second sister asked with a serious tone, this orange, was given to you by the expert you mentioned? Indeed, Zay nodded. She then said with excitement, second sister, the expert's very powerful. It's beyond your imagination. I feel that if we serve him well, we'll get anything we want. To serve him well? Get anything they wanted? The second sister looked at Zay differently. You got this orange from serving him? Zay nodded. My poor girl. The second sister ruffled Zay's head with pity. She was quite emotional. They were the seven fairies. They were not the actual daughters of Empress. They were adopted. They were once the high above fairies, beautiful and elegant. They were called the goddesses. Yet now, the youngest seventh sister had to serve a man for an orange. Although, this orange was indeed an exquisite treasure. With that in mind, she put another piece of fruit into her mouth. Right, I remember we had two Daluo golden immortals guarding the heavenly temple. Did they give you a hard time? Not just a hard time, they called me useless and wanted to capture me. Zay then smiled. However, they were exploded by the expert's fireworks. The second sister halted. Fireworks? What treasure's that? Zay said, listen, I'll tell you slowly. At the same time. At the southern sea. Alfang twisted his dragon body with an anxious look. Soon, he swam back to the southern sea dragon palace. After transforming back into a human form, he continued walking in. Inside the dragon palace, quite a crowd had gathered. One of them was an elder in black robes. They were having a meeting. Seeing that Ao Feng had come back, he smiled and asked with concern, Ao Feng, you're back? Did it go well? Eh? Where's the elder that went with you? Ao Feng looked pained. Father, there were some changes. The elder won't be making it back. The crowd frowned. They found it hard to believe. What's the matter? Ao Feng said, Ao Yun was poisoned but he didn't die. This wouldn't have affected the outcome, but, surprisingly, in the end, a few Tai Yi Golden Immortals got involved. Even the CI had problems. It didn't shoot out any water. The Elder frowned. There was a problem at the key moment? Did you bring back the Dragon Soul Pearl? Ao Feng took out the Dragon Soul Pearl and smiled. It's back. Good. The Elder smiled and let out a long sigh of relief. He said in a low voice, this matter was my fault. I should have sent more people. Recently, the situation has changed. Even the Lord Demon God's dead. 
The crowd was shocked. They found it hard to believe. Lord Demon God's dead? Is this news, reliable? He was a Daluo Golden Immortal. Not just any ordinary Daluo Golden Immortal, he was at his peak. How did he die? Someone asked with confusion. The Southern Sea Dragon King shook his head and said, cause of death was unknown. According to the rumors, he was sitting down before he suddenly died. The two demons guarding his room had been captured. There's such a death in the world? Perhaps he took it hard and killed himself? Other than a saint, who else could do such a thing unknowingly? All right, we need to be more careful now that he's dead. Don't talk about this matter anymore. The Southern Sea Dragon King declared. He said with a serious tone, now that many changes have been happening out of nowhere, we must be even more cautious in the future. The crowd nodded. Ao Feng's heart sank. He said, Dad, I heard from Ao Chen that the ancestor of dragons is still alive. Should I take that into account? Ha, ridiculous. The Southern Sea Dragon King shook his head. He scoffed, Are you a pig? You believe this? Chapter 373 Zi's Conquering Act Inside the Heavenly Temple Zi was still telling her second sister how powerful the expert was. She was describing a fanciful world where words had power, where sun and moon passed by in the blink of an eye, where a single word could hold up everything. In her description, the expert was a creator. The so-called major catastrophe was nothing in front of the expert. As long as the expert was willing to, with just a word from him, the catastrophe would disperse automatically. The second sister froze. She could not help thinking that Zi was spouting mythology. However, it was so interesting, she was unwilling to cut her off. Do you still have an orange? The second sister asked for the sixth time. Zi was excited. She had no choice but to reach inside her pocket, no more. She could not help sighing and saying, Are you here for the story or the oranges? Both. In order not to let her seventh sister down, she added with an understanding tone, Of course, it's mostly to listen to your story. However, in the depths of her eyes, there was a flash of pity. She gulped. Zay smiled with satisfaction. She continued, Sit down and listen to me. The main point is, do you know what the expert has in his backyard? Spiritual roots. All spiritual roots. From tree leaves to the soil, there's nothing there that isn't a treasure. Even in the ancient times, these would be so rare let alone now. The orange you had was just a low-grade fruit. The second sister's mouth opened in shock. So powerful? Are you sure you're not exaggerating? She had been waiting and was shocked. What Zay said was so exaggerated. It was not that it was not true, it was just too unbelievable. How could there be such a powerful being in this world? I'm not exaggerating. Zay shook her head. She added, right, when we dine at the expert's place, do you know what we use? The second sister frowned. She guessed, what? Some treasures? Ha, treasures? Is that all you can imagine? Zi smiled coldly. She continued, we used ultimate heavenly spiritual treasures. There was a box full of forks, another box full of knives. Even the glasses for wine were ultimate heavenly spiritual treasures. The second sister went quiet for a long while. Suddenly, she shook her head and said, I feel that this is all either in your imagination or you're speaking gibberish. I'm not making this up. My head's clear. Zi's tone sounded determined. She continued, Do you remember the golden bees? Back when we wanted to eat the honey from the golden bees, we asked the gigantic immortals to hunt for some but they were wounded severely. Even the milk of the five-color sacred cow. When the empress wanted to drink it, we had to exchange it for treasure. Those creatures have all become pets of the expert. Whether it's honey or milk, he can have as much as he wants. So powerful? The second sister thought she would not be shocked anymore, but she still could suppress the shock. Aren't the golden bees and five-color sacred cow known as unconquerable creatures? Zhu's eyes were glowing like some powder. Ha ha, there's no such thing as impossible at the expert's place. Sigh, second sister, how are you still so calm? Zhu pouted. Was her story not shocking enough? Or did she not portray well? Why did the second sister not gasp? She quietly kept the pictured pearl. It was so difficult to capture the embarrassing moments of her second sister. Big sister was the best. If it was her, she would have jumped by now. She might even be so excited with no composure left. I'm not calm anymore. The second sister patted her chest. If there's such a powerful person in the world, perhaps the world will be changed completely. I must go back to tell the empress. However, what you said is true. Second sister asked again. I admit that the orange is pretty good, but... 
This doesn't make me believe in all the absurd things you said. It isn't a joke. You still don't believe in me? I'm your seventh sister. Zhu's eyes widened. She looked as if she was wrongly accused. She jumped up. The second sister's calm and elegant temperament had agitated her. Zhe had to prove it to her today. You just wait. I'll call for someone, Zhe said and left on the cloud. She flew out of the heavenly temple quickly. Wait for me, don't leave. The second sister stood on the roof watching Zhe leave. She could not help smiling and shaking her head. This girl's just like before, she mumbled with a sense of familiarity. All these years, this young lady had indeed grown up a lot. However, whenever she was with her sister, all her composure would be gone and she would become the young girl again. She could not help smiling. This was a long-forgotten smile all these years. She called out, I'll wait for you, fly slow and safe. Zay flew out of the heavenly temple and went in one direction. Recently, she had been selling chives with the rest. She knew the way well enough. She drove her cloud and first went to the black market shop. Meanwhile, inside the shop, Ma Yunming had an old, worn-out thing resembling a scroll in his hand. He was stroking his beard and looking at it. The outside of the scroll was broken and covered with dust. It was wrinkled and dull-looking. It could not be called ordinary anymore. One could even call it trash. Owner, this scroll is something we risked our lives to get from an ancient secret border. Don't get fooled by its worn-out appearance, it won't get harmed by water or fire. Nothing can harm it at all. In front of Ma Yunming were a couple. The man was an elder. He was promoting his treasure, this is a treasure. Even a golden immortal is unable to open up this scroll. Ma Yunming tried and did not manage to open this scroll. Not even when he used his power to do so. He instantly squinted, his eyes glowing as he said, not bad. Worth ten chives. Are you serious? Only ten chives? The elder did not seem pleased. This treasure is definitely from the ancient times. Look closely. Ancient times? Ma Yunming smiled coldly. Who can use it? I've seen these things a lot. Even if it was from ancient times, it's likely that it cannot be used now. If it cannot be used, how's that different from trash? If you don't want to trade, you can keep it in hand and see who lives longer, you are the treasure. This, why don't you look at it again? The elder said. Two more chives and we can be friends. Click. Meanwhile, Zay barged in. She said, Brother Ma, don't sell the chives, follow me. Okay, Ma Yunming nodded. He did not speak further. He knew his stance in front of her. Owner, don't do this. Why are you not selling? The couple panicked. Ten chives, then. We'll trade. Trade what? Let me see. Zay frowned and took the scroll. She looked it up and down and said, What trash is this? It's only worth five chives. If not, we'll leave. The couple exchanged a look. The woman held on to the elder and gritted her teeth. We'll trade. After coming out of the black shop, Ma Yunming had a thought. He then realized and could not help admiring her, Seventh Princess, how did you come up with this? This is a genius business strategy. I've been running this shop all my life but compared to you, I'm nothing. He learned something new. He would use this tactic more in the future. This was a genius tactic. What tactic? I really had a problem, Zi said. Bring me all the tribes and hunt some demons. That'll show my second sister. You. Come along, it's an opportunity. Opportunity? Ma Yunming looked suspicious. After spending so much time with this group of people, he sensed that they seemed to be working for a big shot. Not right, working for was too much. They were probably the big shot's bootlickers. They always referred to him as the expert and would repeatedly say, everything's done for the expert. He wondered who this expert was. However, the man was able to provide these chives, oranges, and even honey from the golden bees. He must not be ordinary. Zi was in a rush. She called up Payan and Guzairu. Immortal Zi, it's so late. What's the matter? Payan asked. My second sister's here. Do you still have the hot pot sauce from the expert? Bring them to me, I want to show them to my second sister. Zi was impatient. Hurry, don't waste any time. The crowd rushed toward the heavenly temple. Second sister, I'm back. When Zhe saw that her second sister was still at the same old spot, she flew over and placed the hot pot bowl down. The second sister smiled and asked, What now? You're making me a meal? Zhe smiled. Yeah, I hope second sister can still keep your elegance later on. The second sister looked behind Zhe. They are. The three of them quickly said, 
Weir Pen, Ma Yunming, and Gu Ziru. Greetings to the second princess. I'm Chen Yi, greetings to everyone. Chen Yi nodded at the crowd. Zay pestered, Brother Pei, hurry up and bring out the hot pot sauce. All right. Pei and brought out the hot pot sauce unwillingly. He was unwilling to give this away. This was awarded to him by the expert. All this while, he was unwilling to eat it. He looked at the sauce every day and felt a deep sense of satisfaction. Sigh, whatever. These were the two princesses. Furthermore, to the expert, they were more important. At least, they were still able to taste the hot pot together. They set up the pot and fire. It was quick. Seventh sister, this is. Chang Yi looked at the red oil that coated the top of the soup broth. Her beautiful eyes were suspicious. She felt that this delicious food was rather violent. Was it edible? Hot pot, very yummy hot pot. Ze gulped and stared at the boiling soup. The broth was given to us by the expert. It'll leave you wanting for more. Hot pot. This? In the beginning, Chen Yi did not think she would like it. She felt that these people had been drugged by the expert. However, as the broth started to boil, there was a fragrance beyond words floating into her nostrils. She had to admit that her saliva was secreting. Ma Yunming's eyes wished they could pop out as he stared at the pot. It was apparent that he was conquered by this fragrance. This hot pot. How do we eat it? Is there a spoon? Do we drink it? We use it to boil. Follow me, you'll eat it soon enough. Z picked up a slice of meat and put it inside the pot. She sighed as she did so. Other than the broth, our materials and food here are nothing close to the experts. The expert had roulades, how delicious. What they were having was so rough. The expert made it seem so easy and effortless, when they had to do it themselves, it was so difficult. Perhaps this was the reason. The crowd followed what Zi did. Soon, the first round of food was cooked. Ma Yunming's neck elongated. He could not wait to pick up a slice of meat that was dripping with red oil. It looked very appetizing. The moment he placed it inside his mouth, Ma Yunming merely chewed a few times before his pupils dilated. His entire face hardened. This, this. What was that inside his mouth? Food could be so delicious? Unbelievable. Life was a mystery. He sensed that his mouth was already overwhelmed by the fragrance. The pores all over him opened up. The slightly spicy taste triggered his taste buds. This was a sensation he had never had before. Not only was the taste delicious, but it was also more of a blending of all sensations. What a hot pot! What a hot pot! They cooked and ate on the spot. The pot was boiling and the taste was, extremely blissful. He roughly chewed the meat in his mouth and could not help swallowing it. He felt the food slipping down his throat and into his stomach. How pleasant! Swiftly after, he rose and picked up the second slice of meat and put it into his mouth. Delicious! How delicious! His eyes became watery. He wanted to cry. He found like his life was complete. Expert. He was really an expert. I, Ma Yunming, am incredibly lucky to have this opportunity to eat this hot pot. Cheng Yi could not resist the temptation any longer. She picked up a piece of meat and ate it. The truth was, she still had some doubts about the red oil. She felt that this way of eating was inelegant. However, when she chewed on the meat, she froze. The hot pot broth and the taste of the meat started spreading out in her mouth. As she chewed, the texture became even more ideal. Blissful. This word appeared in Cheng Yi's mind. The long journey of cultivation would become dry and boring ultimately. Unknowingly, her standards had gone higher and the things she enjoyed became less. Although she had lived for a long time, there was no fun. However, the introduction to this hot pot was an exciting addition to her dry and boring life. She blushed and almost moaned. She glanced at Z. The picture pearl was secretly placed by the side. Her seventh sister. She was lucky she held it in. Chang Yi looked at the pot again. Boil. 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 Red oil bubbles were boiling. The doubts she had had all vanished. No matter how she looked at it now, it looked very delicious. Her face remained unchanged, but the truth was that her movements had become quicker. Her rate of chewing had increased. She even became impatient. No way. The people around her had even stood up to dig meat out from the pot. She was losing out. Seventh sister, you're an adult now. As a princess, where's your image? Look at you, you have so much meat in your bowl. Why don't you quickly put down the meat in your hand? Chapter 374 3000 Years of Paths The next day. 
The sky had brightened up. Lee Nye and Fan woke up later than usual. After all, he had stayed up late the previous night. Click. He opened the door and stretched in the direction of the sun while yawning. What a refreshing morning. Mr. Lee, good morning. Brother Nyan Fan, good morning. In the yard, Doji and the rest were busy. They all had smiles on their faces. They were in a good mood. Wow, you all seem happy. What are you preparing to do? Lee Nyan Fan looked at them and realized that they were all busy around the kitchen. Doji had a ball of dough in her hands as if she was making buns. Nanan and Dragon were kneading the flour by the side, adding water into the dough from time to time. They were busy but seemed very happy. Even the Fire Phoenix felt embarrassed to do nothing. She was holding a knife while cutting the meat. Chop! 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 She looked stunning dressed in red. However, she held on to the knife, cutting the meat violently. She constructed a very beautiful sight for the eyes. Blackie and Xiao Bei had nothing to do. Blackie laid by the rockery while sunbathing under the morning sun. He seemed lonely with a displeased look. Master went away for so long without bringing me. Wah! I'm not happy. HMPH. I didn't do anything. I took the time to go to the immortal realm and ruled all the dog demons there and became their lord. It was quite fun. Xiao Bei stood by the side like a sculpture. It met Li Nai and Fan's eyes and explained, as if it was wronged, Master, listen to me. It wasn't me who got lazy. They were the ones asking to make breakfast themselves. Doji smiled and said, Mr. Lee, although the food you make is delicious, we can't just eat and do nothing. We'll work hard to make you a meal. A plump bun appeared in her hand. She said, Mr. Lee, how's my bun? Lee Nai and Fan laughed. Ha ha ha, delicious, it'll be delicious. He felt pleased. Perhaps this was the feeling of home. Nanan said instantly, Brother, the dough's made by Sister Dragon and I? Her face and nose were covered in flour, looking adorable and joyful. Both of her hands were coated with sticky flour that had stuck all over her sleeves. Dragon looked similar. The two kids were mostly playing instead of making the dough. Li Nai and Fan looked away and saw the meat under the fire phoenix's knife. He could not help raising an eyebrow. This, this is. Dragon meat? Hmm. Actually, Cutting it too hard would affect the texture of the meat, Li Nian Fan suggested. He felt that the Fire Phoenix was seeking revenge. Being an old dragon was not easy. He's already dead and yet you're chopping his dead body like that? How inhuman. I'm getting revenge. Fire Phoenix emphasized the words. Li Nian Fan did not try to talk her out of it. He looked around and said, Xiao Bei, you go and prepare the hairy crab. Pick out the yellow stuff to make crab buns. Xiao Bei nodded instantly. Okay, my master. Li Nian Fan said, Drag in, you can only eat the crab bun. Oh, okay, brother. Dragon nodded understandingly. After all, dragon meat was similar to hers. Although in the cultivational realm it was normal to eat your own species, for the demons, eating your own species would increase your power. However, Li Nian Fan wanted to avoid this from happening. Li Nian Fan smiled and said, Don't worry. The crab bun's definitely more delicious than the dragon meat. Really? Dragon's eyes sparkled with excitement. Li Nai and Fan nodded, really. Meanwhile, Doji was excited. Mr. Li, the first batch of buns are ready. Arg, have a look, I want to eat it. Nanan and Dragon were excited. Even the fire phoenix who was cutting the meat had to stop her movements. She looked at the steamer with eyes filled with excitement. Open the lid. Doji opened the steamer. The crowd frowned and halted. They looked bitter. They saw that in the steamer, those buns were no longer buns. They had exploded. Some lucky buns had only exploded halfway and were still edible. Those unlucky ones had juices coming out and were completely open. They were no longer in shape. Doji pursed her lips. She almost wanted to cry. She said sadly, how could it be? They looked fine when I put them in just now. Doji looked like she was cooking for the first time. The bigger the expectation. The bigger the disappointment. Furthermore, Doji really wanted to impress Li Nian Fan. She was working on becoming a good wife. She even organized this group to make breakfast. She could not accept what just happened. That's because the dough for noodles and buns are different. Li Nian Fan smiled and touched Doji's nose. There's nothing to feel bad about. It's actually quite hard to make buns. Since it's your first time, it's already quite impressive to have made these. As he spoke, he reached out to take out an almost perfect looking bun from the steamer. After blowing on it, he bit into it. 
To be honest, the texture of the bun was not good. It was not bouncy and it was rather dense. The shape was strange as well. If he was not careful, the juice would ooze out. Hmm, yummy. Li Nianfan was nodding as he ate. Soon, he finished the bun. Luckily, they did not put any condiments. Thus, the taste was not too strange. The original taste of the dragon meat and the flour had a good foundation, so it was not as bad. Daji looked better but did not seem too pleased. She felt embarrassed and looked down on herself. Li Nianfan waved, all right, nothing's learned without a teacher. Let me teach you all. He walked to Dragon and Nanan and kneaded the flour. He shook his head and said, kneading is different. You need to add water to the flour accordingly. Also, during the kneading of the flour, pressure's not the main thing. Gentleness needs to be considered, too. He spoke as he demonstrated it to them, his movements slow. The crowd looked at his actions and did not find it hard. They felt like they were having a vision when watching. However, when they tried to recall what they saw, they would realize that they had forgotten the previous movement. Path Scour There were 3,000 years of paths. Everything had its own path. The expert's cooking was in its own path. No wonder the expert's food was way beyond the standards of delicious food. By using spiritual roots as vegetables and using ordinary materials to cook, even an ordinary man would live longer or even become a cultivator after eating his cooking. Furthermore, there were 3,000 years of paths. Just by watching him, it was very beneficial to the crowd. As the saying went, it was not to be said but felt. Everyone was clever. They stopped watching Li Nian Fan's movements and emptied their minds to feel it. Around Li Nian Fan's body, there was a gentle and soft light. Meanwhile, the crowd was affected. They felt as if they were sitting in a rocket shooting upward. Nanan's cultivation was the lowest. She felt the deepest, her small face was blushing in red. She was only in the combination realm. If she was an ordinary cultivator, she would not have been able to hold up this terrifying insight and would have to take a few steps backward. However, she was different. She had the power of devour to enlarge her limit a few times bigger. This isn't so bad. Li Nianfan smiled. He gently pulled the dough in front of the people. Instantly, with everyone watching, he pulled out a long string and used force to toss it in the air. The string was tossed up and pulled back again. As if being hit by the string, the crowd's worldview had changed completely. Li Nianfan had a nostalgic look in his eyes. He could not help sighing as he said, back then, to learn this, I had to stay up for three days and nights. I had to drag the string so long for three rounds to pass. It's painful to, be a chef. Li Nianfan shook his head. He then tossed it in the air and smiled. Nanan, go and catch it. All right, brother Nianfan. Nanan instantly caught the other end of the string the bouncy string had a nice texture. She felt a deep and gentle energy going into her body. Between Li Nianfan and Nanan was a long string of flower bouncing energetically. Every time it jumped, it let out an unlimited glow surrounding the crowd. Even with Nanan's power of devour, she was unable to digest these deep and thick insights. This was because it was too much and too deep. It was like a child drinking a river's worth of water. Hmm, Nanan moaned. She was unable to control her restlessness, as if something was about to spurt out. As if, she was about to have a cross-tribulation. Chapter 375 Your opportunity has arrived. Nanan took a deep breath to calm down her restlessness. She did not dare to suck in the surrounding insights anymore. Li Nianfan smiled. If the dough can be made this way, it's considered pretty good. Considered pretty good? Was there another way to communicate with him? The crowd chose not to talk back. They chose silence. We'll make the buns following that. Li Nianfan raised his hand to pluck out a wide and soft piece of dough from the bigger ball of dough. No one do the children like to play. The stickiness and bounciness were indeed quite a good touch to the hands. He pinched at the dough and squeezed it. He simply picked some dragon meat with his agile fingers. Without moving that much, a bun was made. The entire movement flowed smoothly. It was a pleasing sight to watch. Each movement was flowing with insights. Nanan was standing by the side. Since she was drawn by the path, her consciousness went blank. She was unable to hold it back anymore and she instantly went into the interrogation of insights. To her, the interrogation of insights was not a problem at all because she had too many insights around her. There were too many insights around that there was nothing to be interrogated about. She went into a blank state. It was like a kindergarten teacher testing a pupil who was sitting for a doctorate exam. When the two met, they were perplexed. What was there to be interrogated about? 
who was testing who. What a mess. Li Nian Fan's movement was quick and fluid. He pinched the dough and a bun was made. With another pinch, another bun was made. Each of them was rounded and regularly shaped. They were delicately made. Following that, the buns were put in rows and placed into the steamer. After clapping his hands, he said, that's it, all we'll have to do now is to eat. Dragon's eyes sparkled like stars. She admired him so much. She cried out with joy, brother, you're so clever. You managed to make buns with only one hand. She did not expect the seemingly simple buns to be quite difficult to make. Lee Nian Fan made them so effortlessly, even the process of making the buns was full of insights. Dragon almost wanted to worship him. This was the actual expert. He looked so professional while making the buns. Could a saint do that? Could they make buns, too? The children's admiration made him feel satisfied. Li Nian Fan smiled humbly with delight. It's a small trick, not to be mentioned about. Vroom. Without any warning, a dark cloud appeared in the sky. Instantly, the sky became dark and unstable. Even though it was early in the morning, the surroundings had darkened. Voila! Among the dark clouds, lightning struck like a dancing silver snake. It cracked the sky, making the sky flash brightly. The lightning was thick and powerful. Even though they were only looking at it, the crowd felt their scalps go numb. A thunderstorm? Li Nianfan looked up at the sky. He could not help frowning what happened? Why so sudden? Brother Nianfan. Nanan pulled on Li Nianfan's sleeve and said in a small voice, I'm about to enter my cross-tribulation. Cross-tribulation, so soon? Li Nianfan halted. He knew about the cultivation realm well enough to know that the cross-tribulation was the highest realm here. However, this was not the right time to make a fuss about this matter. He was mostly worried. Are you confident? He looked at Nanan seriously. He looked at the fire phoenix and asked, Can someone help in cross-tribulation? Brother, don't worry. I'll be fine, no problem, Nanan sighed and smiled. She then turned into light and flew out. She said with an effortless voice, I'm about to cross-tribulate. Be careful. Li Nian Fan reminded her and rode on his cloud. He chased after her while keeping a safe distance. He was going to watch. Vroom. He followed behind Nanan as more and more clouds gathered as if there was a black blanket in the sky. However, this blanket was short and only covered the sky above Nanan. Looking from afar, it looked strange. If he looked closely, he would not be able to smile. This was because, among the not too big patch of dark clouds, there was a skinny and dense strike of lightning like a silver snake. It was playing among the clouds, producing fear in one's heart. Compared to the natural tribulation, Nanan was only a child. She was too young. However, she did not seem weak at all. Her small figure floated up into the sky. She looked up with her eyes sparkling. Her small figure exuded a fearless temperament. Li Nianfan was flying far away. When he saw her, he suddenly felt that Nanan seemed to have, grown up. She was the little girl who was usually by his side, the girl who acted and behaved like a child. However, after leaving her home to cultivate and after going through so many accidents, she had seen more of the world with Li Nianfan. How could she still be a small child? A young eagle, will fly toward the sky anyhow, Li Nianfan mumbled to himself. Unknowingly, Nanan has become so powerful. This makes sense, though. She's creative and even invented some kind of power of devour. She must be the one in a million genius. Dragon started to boast. She said, brother, I'm even more powerful. I've reached the realm of an immortal. Ha ha ha, Dragon's also a one in a million kind of genius. Li Nian Fan smiled and nodded. I'll need you all to protect me in the future. Hmm. Dragon nodded seriously. Come on. Nanan scoffed loudly suddenly. She exuded a powerful temperament. She reached her hands out and a black swirling hole appeared on top of her head. A strange suction force spread to her surroundings. Sizz. The clouds felt challenged. The lightning started to gather up. Their chi had reached the peak as well. Following that, along with a loud sound, a bolt of lightning struck and lit up the sky. It went straight for Nanan's black swirl that was above her head. Bam. The lightning was swirling in the black hole. It did not take long before it was sucked in. Hmm? Nanan could not help frowning. This natural tribulation, so weak. The look of it seemed powerful, but, so weak. It made her feel as if it was, acting. The natural tribulation was indeed too weak. She engulfed the spiritual chi of the natural tribulation. 
Instantly, she felt her power increasing greatly, making way more improvements than her usual cultivation. She could not help tilting her little head. She yelled out at the sky, feeling unsatisfied, it's so weak, can you give me something stronger? Vroom! The clouds rolled in as if they were responding to her. In the next moment, another lightning bolt fell from the sky, making an eye-catching crack that left an imprint in the sky for a long while. The power was three times more than the previous one. It can still be stronger. Nanan sucked it in again. The sky was instantly stabilized. I feel that it can be five times stronger. Vroom! The clouds responded again. In the next instance, the third lightning struck. The power was not more or less, it was exactly five times more. Instantly, Nanan was assured that this natural tribulation was acting accordingly to the needs of its clients. How professional! The rest of them were dumbfounded. Did the natural tribulation become so friendly over the years? How was this natural tribulation? To Nanan, this was obviously a free opportunity. Ding! Sister, our opportunity has arrived. Please, come out and collect your natural tribulation. The natural tribulation was active, and it took care of its clients' feelings. Vroom! How do you feel? Nana nodded. It's still okay, come again. Another lightning bolt struck Nanan's body accordingly. Without any exception, they were all sucked in by Nanan without wasting anything. Her temperament was getting stronger each time. Since she had spent so much time around Li Nian Fan, she did not have to digest them for them to be taken in. Her power was increasing from early cross-tribulation to mid-cross-tribulation right away. Clever. I didn't expect Nanan to be so powerful. Li Nian Fan could not help feeling astonished. It's like she's using the natural tribulation to take a bath, and using the thunder as her shower. Perhaps she really is a genius, how powerful. Dodgy and the Fire Phoenix could not help rolling their eyes at Li Nian Fan. Big Shot, could you be less pretentious? Who's the powerful one here? Your ability to lie with your eyes open is too advanced. If you open your mouth, the natural tribulation would come to your mouth and offer itself to you as a meal, let alone showering with the natural tribulation. It would even make itself taste better, do you believe me? With that, Nanan had easily passed nine lightning strikes without any accident. The clouds started to spread out, making some noise. Vroom! Please, leave a review. Nanan's small face flushed red. Her cultivation had reached the late cross tribulation. She went back to the moonlight and looked at Li Nianfan with excitement. Brother Nianfan, I've succeeded. This natural tribulation isn't bad at all. It's gentle and it helped improve my power. Her powerful temperament had disappeared. By then, she had turned into an energetic child again. Clever. So clever. This is great. Li Nianfan ruffled her head and did not say anything else. To him, Nanan was a child he watched grow up. Even if she immortalized and became undefeatable, she would still be a child to him, let alone cross-tribulating. He smiled and said, hurry up and go back. The bunch should be ready by now. Right, cross-tribulating makes me hungry. Let's go home and have some buns. Even though it was a terrifying tribulation, it looked more like a professional delivery guy who had gone back after delivering the powerful and filling meal. When they went back to the four-part architecture, steam was coming out from the steamer. The timing was just right. Just like the saying, in ancient times, warm wine was used to ease the city. Now that they had steamed buns after the natural tribulation, it came just at the right time. When he lifted the lid, the heat escaped with the scent, spreading all over. Instantly, it triggered one's appetite. Other than the scent, the appearance of the buns was even more ideal. They were shaped like plump white snow, good to the touch. Having one in hand would please one's senses. Even after poking it with a finger, it would bounce back up. Its elasticity made it look alive. Mr. Lee, your buns are too beautiful. Compared to what they had, Lee Nianfan's buns instantly won the admiration from everyone. Dodgy even decided to practice harder for her buns to look better. What a filling meal. Lee Nianfan did not plan any activity nor did he prepare to go out. He carried his chair over to the side of the fire and asked the fire phoenix to light a fire as a heater. He sat in the chair and laid back languidly as he stretched. Hmm. How relaxing. Days with no work were so chill. The only thing lacking was entertainment. Actually, there was some entertainment. It was just that they were not advanced enough. Li Nian Fan started to relax his mind and recall the female Onis from the underworld and the dancing clam demons from the sea. He concluded that other than their looks, be it their dancing or choreography or their sense of rhythm, they were bad. 
The dancing of immortals should be something pleasing to watch. Even though the hardware looked good, the software was bad and it did not look good overall. Lee Nyanfan could not help imagining what it would be like if there was an immortal dancing in front of him with another woman playing an instrument while also singing a few songs. It would be the best thing in life. Ew. He had gone backward. He had gone backward. Lee Nyanfan quickly changed his mindset. It was the fault for not having a phone. If he had a phone, he could use his phone to read a novel or even watch some beautiful ladies dance. This should be the right thing for a man to do. Unknowingly, his mind went blank gradually as he dozed off. Dodgy gently placed a blanket over Lee Nyanfan before walking to the backyard. When she got to the backyard, she took out the golden gourd and examined it in her hand. The fire phoenix looked at the gourd and asked, This gourd can suck in demon's consciousness? Yeah, Dodgy nodded. I think this is the sucking gourd that was mentioned by Mr. Lee in the investiture of the gods, the one used by Empress Nua. It can be used to gather all of the demons in the world. The fire phoenix had a hint of admiration in her eyes. She could not help saying, Mr. Lee's so nice to you. Yeah, without Mr. Lee, I'd still be a tiny fox by now. Dodgy looked nostalgic and sweet. She then smiled and said, No, I'd actually be dead. The fire phoenix looked at Dodgy and asked, What are you prepared to do? Mr. Lee said this world's messed up. Of course, we need to solve his problems. Dodgy squinted as she smiled happily while speaking with a determined tone. Mr. Lee fixed the heavenly temple and underworld to ease up the chaos in the world. We're still in need of a lord demon, so I'll arrange for one. The fire phoenix pursed her lips. After a moment, she said almost unwillingly, I, on behalf of the phoenix family, support you, a fox. Since the birth of the world, dragons, phoenixes, and Kirans were the major figures. Lord Emperor Jun and Emperor East were born as the Lord Demon. The nine-tailed fox was nowhere close to it. However, now that she was with the expert, nobody could say no. Thank you for your support, Sister Fire Phoenix. Dodgy smiled. She raised her hand to gently rub the golden gourd. Instantly, a glowing light appeared. By the entrance of the gourd, smoke floated, forming phantoms of a Kiran and a dragon. They looked at Dodgy in unison and scowled. How despicable. So what if you've got a sucking gourd? Don't think you can get a hold of our hearts after getting our consciousness. We won't give in even if we're dead. Chapter 376 You know nothing about power. A black Kiran and a black dragon were formed in the air. Although they were now criminals, they still had the dignity of being ancient beasts. They looked at the crowd coldly. Meanwhile, their noses moved. Their eyes turned around and could not help looking at the bun in Nanan's hand. There was such a fragrant bun in the world? What was it made of? Impossible. They were born with the world and yet they had never tasted it. Black Dragon scoffed, Ha, they're trying to tempt us with good food? How innocent. Black Kieran scoffed as he retrieved the saliva oozed out, I might only consider it if there are at least a hundred thousand buns. Nanan stuffed the bun into her mouth. It bulged up as she looked at the Black Dragon and said in a muffled tone, This bun's made with your dragon meat. My meat tastes so yummy? Black Dragon was shocked as if he just knew about himself. He looked at his body with only its primordial spirit left. He regretted it. Unfortunately, I didn't taste it myself before others had it. Dodgy looked at them and said calmly, Now that the world's messed up, my master wants to recreate the order of the people, demons, and immortals. However, he doesn't like to kill, so from now onward, I'll be in charge of the demons. If you surrender to me, you don't have to die. If the master was to do it, of course, he would not even need to speak. A sneeze from him would destroy all species. Since he had chosen not to show his cultivation, obviously he was trying to remove himself from the scene and merely act as a spectator. He wanted the others to do the work for him. Thus, Dodgy could not let her master down. Attacking Kirans and dragons was too unrealistic since they were too powerful. Therefore, Dodgy was using the wisest way. As the one closest to Lee Nyanfan, other than constantly being baptized by his words and actions, she had heard many of his ideas. The sentence Lee Nyanfan repeated most frequently was, Don't use violence to solve problems. Master did not like violence and did not like to use his power. Or else, why would he keep pretending to be an ordinary man? Surrender to you? Ha, who are you kidding? A mere nine-tailed fox trying to be the Lord Demon? Most importantly, a small fox with a master? Who are you? You're insulting the entire demon race. Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. And what did she say? Don't want to use force? And she expects us to surrender to her? 
Perhaps she thinks by capturing the two of us, she could rule the world? Black Kirin and Black Dragon start insulting Daji. Since they were beyond dead, they were arrogant as usual. They did not look weak and seemed powerful as usual. Little Fox, listen to me. If you're not the one dreaming, your master's the one dreaming. Black Dragon smiled. He put on a senior expert kind of look as he said with pride, the reason I was caught by you was due to an accident. Let me let you in on a secret. During the major catastrophe, only my southern sea dragon family was kept alive. It's just a matter of time before we rule the entire ocean. Furthermore, I'm already beyond life and death. I've become a Daluo Golden Immortal. Now that I have the Dragon Soul Pearl, I can bring back the glory of dragons like the past. What do you have to rule the demons? Your Nine Tails? Your Southern Sea isn't too bad, but compared to my Kirin family, you're still behind. Black Kirin smiled and fixed his posture. He put on a flying pose with one hand in the air and said arrogantly, My Kirin family's the winner of the catastrophe. However, that's not it. Good things will turn bad, bad things will turn good. After the catastrophe, a genius appeared in my Kirin family, known as the Kiriner. He was born with everything and with extra powers. Kiriner will be something in the future. However, I'm not done yet. Back then, when the Kirin started to turn bad, Kiriner turned into a Kirin cliff. However, his soul was left behind. My Kiriner not only woke up under the cliff, he even inherited the entire Kirin family. Even Adaluo Golden Immortals nothing in front of Kiriner. He's the pride of my family. At the end, Black Kirin was so excited. He was shaking, his eyes squinting. It was as if he had seen his Kirins in glory with tears in his eyes. Black Dragon mocked, Ha, how would a mere junior compete with a Southern Sea Dragon King like me? What do you know? Do you know how talented my Kiriner is? You know nothing. Do you know how powerful my Dragon Soul Pearl is? Do you know how hard my Kiriner works? The two were getting more and more agitated. The two spirits were already fighting. If it was not for their lack of power, they would have fought properly. Ha, you two have no idea what power is. Dragon scoffed with a smirk. Her small body was filled with arrogance as she said proudly, Dragon Soul Pearl? Soul of the Kirin? That's it? Do you know what we have here? My dragon families. Whoop. Meanwhile, a golden carp fish suddenly jumped out of the pond in the heart of the backyard. It caused ripples that did not match with its figure. It landed back into the pond and then jumped out again and again. Whoop. 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 Eh? What an active carp fish. Black Kirin stared at the fish blankly and sighed. Its meat must be muscular. Dragon swallowed back what she wanted to say. However, she was not finished. She said, whatever, this is a big secret. I promise to keep it a secret so I can't tell you all. Inside the pond, the golden carp let out a sigh of relief. Its eyes were looking emotional. Luckily, I warned her in time. If not I would have been exposed. How dangerous, how dangerous. Black Dragon and Black Kirin merely scoffed. They stopped fighting for a moment and looked at Draji. Do you still think you can rule all of the demons? Black Kirin scoffed coldly. Give up the thought. We won't surrender to you. It's impossible for the Kirins to surrender to you. Little Fox, back then, my dragon family didn't even show respect to Dao Tzu. Your master's nobody to us. It's impossible for us to surrender, if you want to kill us, go ahead. Black Dragon's tone was full of determination. His tone was cold and harsh. Says. Without any warning, countless flashing strings appeared and circled the Black Dragon and Black Kirin. The strings were pulling and stretching them out. The Dragon and Kirin were dumbfounded. They were pulled into an embarrassing pose hanging in the air. They were unable to move. There was a playful voice coming from the forest. These two don't even know who they are, this should be the correct pose for them to speak to you. What are you doing? How dare a small tree demon insult us? Black Dragon and Kirin were both struggling and trying to move. They scoffed around angrily. With just a glance, their bodies jolted. How they wished they could pluck out their eyes. The strings tying them down was. Spiritual root? And the tree demons around them, they were all spiritual roots? There were apples, oranges, pears, and other fruits hanging on the trees. Under the sunlight, the fruits seemed so tempting and delicious. They were glowing. They gasped and almost went crazy. Spiritual roots and immortal fruits? Am I hallucinating? Kieran, have a look, quick. Are those spiritual roots tying us down? Black Dragon called out with disbelief, his voice becoming squeaky. Shut up. Black Kieran's eyes popped out. He started looking around. He did not notice earlier, but with just a glance, 
His entire face grimaced out of shock. His primordial spirit started shaking vigorously and almost collapsed. His voice shivered as he stuttered, This, this is. The fire phoenix had a smile on her lips. She said, This is the backyard of our master. The place where he plants and grows some chickens. Plants and grows some chickens? Here? Black Dragon and Black Kieran felt their heads buzzing. Everything in sight was making them gasp with their last breath. Even the flat peach garden of the heavenly temple back in the days was nowhere close to this place. Even the house of the saints was probably not as luxurious as this place. Black Dragon took in a deep breath. He had a look of respect in his eyes. He said, What's the matter with this spiritual root? Aren't these fruits? How did they become spiritual root? Daji smiled and said, The realm of my master has gone way past your ability to understand. Turning something ordinary into extraordinary is something very normal. Even grass could be turned into a spiritual root here, let alone fruits. Black Kieran shook his head with disbelief. This is impossible. Although he said so, the look of shock on his face showed that he believed what he heard. The tree demons were moving and twisting around. The sound resonated again. We were all ordinary fruit trees. We only managed to become spiritual roots thanks to our master. It's your blessing to be able to work for our master. Black Kieran and Black Dragon exchanged a look. They felt their hearts sinking. They were perplexed. The resistance they had earlier had completely vanished. If everything they said was true, this master was too terrifying. The so-called Southern Sea Dragon King and Kiriner were insignificant. Black Kieran had a straight look on as he said seriously, My Kirans are as old as the world. Since I'm one of them, my life belongs to them, alive or dead. If you want me to work against my family as a spy, you must tell me, what are the benefits? Black Dragon nodded. What he said. Chapter 377 No Need to Explain. We trust you. Says. Suddenly, a shadow slipped past and turned into a strong whip, whipping the buttocks of the Black Dragon and Black Kirin. Bam! Their primordial spirits instantly jolted as they wailed uncontrollably. Black Dragon was in so much pain that his body softened like a small snake having a seizure. He scoffed, How are you so inconsiderate? Why do you suddenly beat people up? The tree demon smiled coldly and said, Being able to work for our master is your blessing. How dare you ask for benefits? Many tree demons had raised their branches. They tangled around Black Kirin and Black Dragon's bodies, especially around the buttocks. Many branches had gathered and were moving energetically. They seemed to be ready to take action. Black Kirin watched with terror, extremely terrified. He felt that he was completely helpless as he asked, shivering, Please, let's talk it out. A man moves his mouth and not his hands. Little fox, why don't we talk calmly? There's no need to do this. Black Dragon looked at the tree branches cautiously. He was very anxious. Or just be more gentle. You and your families can only be considered as the unofficial staff of my master. As for your future, it depends on how you perform. Daji looked at them and continued coldly, as for the benefits? A simple piece of trash from my master would be the greatest benefit you'll ever have. I promise. After a moment of hesitation, Black Kieran sighed heavily. Whatever. Who'd have thought that there's such an expert in the world? I'm not betraying my family this time, I'm saving them from danger. Perhaps this would be an opportunity for my family. Hopefully, many years later, my family will understand. Black Dragon nodded. I share the same thoughts as Black Kieran. Not using any power was for your sake. After all, you won't be able to take it when my master gets mad. Your primordial spirits are inside the sucking gourd. I hope you can behave. Daji nodded and made a gesture. The golden gourd started to glow. By the side, the gourd vine was moving with the wind. The soil on the ground rose gradually, circling Black Kieran and Black Dragon. The soil was merely some gravel on the ground, nothing significant. However, with just some gravel, one turned into two, two into three. They gathered up and rushed into the spirits of Black Kieran and Black Dragon. They started condensing. Black Kieran and Black Dragon were perplexed. They were able to make sense later on with their widened eyes. They looked at their bodies. This is, Nine Heaven Breathing Soil? They already knew that this yard was nothing ordinary. However, they did not notice the soil. Little did they expect the soil to be of the Nine Heaven Breathing Soil. This was the soil used by Nuwa to make humans. The Nine Heaven Breathing Soil. The reason why humans became the masters of all beings the leader of all creatures, was due to them being molded with the nine heaven breathing soil. This was the greatest opportunity of all time. Scary, so terrifying. 
How was this a backyard? This was a mini condensed world of all the powerful essences in the world. Are you sure your master made this yard? Black Kieran found it hard to believe. Perhaps. He was lucky and stumbled across some ancient cave? Bam! The almost boiling tree demons finally found the chance to raise the branches and heavily slapped their buttocks. This was for them to learn what pain was. How dare you doubt our master, you shall be punished. Ouch! Black Dragon felt his buttocks burning painfully. His face was twisted and he could not help crying out loud, he was the one doubting the master. Why am I punished as well? There's nothing to protest, your thinking must be the same as his. I know. With the nine heaven breathing soil along with the help of the sucking gourd, their flesh quickly gathered up. Daji waved it off, all right, hurry up and go back. I'll contact you through the gourd. Black Kieran and Black Dragon were perplexed. Okay, goodbye. Instantly, they went away into the clouds. Black Kieran chased after Black Dragon. He asked, Brother Black Dragon, where are you heading? Black Dragon sighed. The master of the small fox is probably a powerful figure. We cannot offend him. Now that our primordial spirits are controlled by them, we can only do what they say. Have you thought that perhaps the changes in the world are related to their so-called master? Black Kieran had a serious look on. He started analyzing, the so-called expert wants to put the humans, gods, and demons in order. It's unlikely that they're only ruling us, the demons. They must have started somewhere else as well. Now that many restrictions have been broken, the heavenly temple and underworld have changed. These, are too much of a coincidence. No one ordinary could have done this. He looked at Black Dragon and saw that he was biting his own arm. Black Kieran jolted and asked, perplexed, what are you doing? Black Dragon jolted as well. He quickly covered up his bleeding arm as if nothing had happened and said, idiot. If I don't injure myself, the rest might suspect me. Although it's a good thing that I've recovered, I, must injure myself. Don't mind me. Black Kieran said, I see, I see. I thought you were trying to eat yourself. Nonsense. I'm not. Black Dragon scoffed and said, all right, let's talk next time. Goodbye. He wiggled his tail and shot downward. With a big whoosh, he vanished into the sea without a trace. Hmm? How strange. Isn't my meat supposed to taste nice? Why does it taste so bad? Perhaps the nine heaven breathing soil affected my texture? Or maybe I'm only delicious when made into buns? Black Dragon was swimming quickly in the ocean. After entering the southern sea, he went straight to the Dragon Palace. Soon, he gained the attention of the others. The prawns and crab soldiers were stunned. You, you are, Elder Aoshu? Aoshu panted and said urgently, hurry up and pass it on to the Dragon King. I, Aoshu, am blessed and survived this incident. Soon, a dragon family with horns on their heads swam out. When they saw Aoshu, they were extremely shocked. Aofeng marched over and cried angrily, Elder Raoshu, who did it? Who did this to you? How dare they hurt you so badly? The crowd did not dare to look at him. They mourned, how cruel, so cruel. You don't even have a complete body. Each part of your body has a patch of meat missing. Who did this? Even one of your dragon horns is missing, who's so cruel? Aofeng was filled with guilt. He said, Elder Raoshu, I've wronged you. I shouldn't have left you behind. Aoshu instantly said, Prince, please, don't say that. Being able to sacrifice for the dragon family is my worth and my pride. Well said. Meanwhile, the Southern Sea Dragon King spoke. He went over and hugged Aoshu. His eyes were filled with pity. Aoshu, you've been wronged. Aoshu replied, Dragon King, I'm alright. The Southern Sea Dragon King smiled coldly. As long as you're back. We've got hold of the Dragon Soul Pearl. Also, I've gotten better at controlling it. Once I've mastered it, nobody in the world would be able to stop me. I'll take revenge for you. Aoshu tried to explain with tears in his eyes, Dragon King, the reason I escaped was. Southern Sea Dragon King instantly cut him off. You don't have to explain. As long as you're back. Aoshu was perplexed. He prepared a long speech along the way with a nice plot of his life-threatening escape. It was a tearful plot. And yet, the Dragon King cut him off? No, I think it's better if I say it. Aoshu fought for a chance to perform. No need, the process is unimportant, only the result counts. The Southern Sea Dragon King laughed and declared arrogantly, hurry up and prepare a batch of top-grade seafood. Tonight, we're hosting a feast to celebrate Aoshu's survival. On the other side, Black Kirin went back to the Kirin Cliff. 
he was stunned when he was outside the gate. He saw Big Lord Demon speaking to the Kieran family. He was looking guilty as he kept apologizing. The two exchanged a look and were instantly stunned. Big Lord Demon was dumbfounded. He thought he was hallucinating. He cried out with disbelief, You're still alive? By the side, the Kieran family was equally shocked. From the tower, a cry of delight was heard, Uncle. Kieraner. Black Kieran called out with excitement. He walked forward and said politely, Greetings to the Demon King. Uncle, no need to be polite. Demon King walked toward him with excitement. It's really you. The demons came and said that you were framed and died. I didn't believe them. Big Lord Demon was stunned for a moment before saying, Demon King, this thing's tricky. I saw it with my eyes that he wasn't going to make it. The truth is that, this man before us has a problem. Big Lord Demon, the demons have a problem. Black Kieran suddenly cried with anger, I was indeed framed. I was framed by the demons. They baited me to attack a deluxe saint and I ended up getting hurt. Luckily, I was blessed and survived. The demons have a problem. They want to hurt our Kieran family. Really? Demon King looked at Big Lord Demon. He did not seem friendly. Big Lord Demon was shocked. He quickly shook his head, I'm not. Black Kieran continued, Why didn't you tell me there was a deluxe merit saint? I, this, I forgot. Instantly, an uproar. As cultivators, our brains are good. How could you forget about this? A problem. The demons have a big problem. Luckily, Black Kieran has come back and revealed the true color of Big Lord Demon. Big Lord Demon panicked. His eyes were glowing in red as he said, Listen to me, I really forgot, the reason being. Demon King waved and scorned coldly, surround him. What now? Big Lord Demon and the demons behind him looked terrified. They warned, Unless, you're trying to challenge us? How dare you frame my uncle? You're not to be forgiven. Demon King narrowed his eyes and declared, We, the Kirin family with me taking the lead, will be undefeatable. Now that Lord Demon God's dead, what are you all? Big Lord Demon took a step backward quietly. He said, Demon King, your uncle has a problem. You're not attacking him but attacking us? Black Kirin did not change his look. He said, Demon King, I can explain. Uncle, no need to explain, Demon King cut him off. He scoffed at Big Lord Demon, what a joke. If I don't believe my uncle, you want me to believe you? He scoffed and a powerful temperament exploded. He growled, Kirins, listen up. Attack. At the same time. Somewhere in the world. The mountain was green and the water was clear. Not only was there a stream with water, there was also a pavilion. It was a beautiful place. It gave off an unreal feeling, looking as if it was a painting. Meanwhile, a ripple was made in the sky as if it was water. Following that, a jade-like leg gradually stepped out of it. It was then followed by a jade and lotus-like arm. A long dress gradually appeared in the air. The dress was flowing in the air as Chang Yi walked out of the ripple. She had a big pot in her hand, hugged closely to her small figure. The pot had a red packet in it it was the hot pot sauce. In her other hand, she had a wooden bucket. It was filled with all kinds of meat and vegetables. She was looking excited as she walked over. Chapter 378 Feeling the Joy of Living Again Walking down this painting-like world, a cottage appeared not far away. It was an ordinary cottage. However, it complemented its surroundings, making it seem very homely. Cheng Yi held onto a pile of things, walking toward the cottage. Outside the cottage, around a few hundred meters away from it, there was a man with a goatee and a crown on his head. He was wearing a brown robe, standing by the stream. Both of his hands were behind his back. He looked worried but put on a calm look as he looked at the stream as if nothing was wrong. Cheng Yi walked over with excitement. When she saw the man, she fixed her composure and quickly fixed the pot in her arms. She greeted, greetings to the Jade Emperor. All right, how many times have I told you, don't mind the gesture. The man waved it off and smiled. Did you find anything on this trip? Cheng Yi could not help smiling. This time, I met my seventh sister. Seventh sister? The man halted and asked with a strange tone, How did you two meet? You managed to get out of the heavenly temple or did she manage to get in? Chen Yi, don't talk to him. Come over here. Suddenly, a voice was heard. The man and Chen Yi halted. Jade Emperor, I'll leave you here. Cough, cough, go on. The man waved without changing his expression at all. Before the cottage, there was a pavilion. A woman with her hair down in a golden robe was sitting there. 
The first impression of this woman was that she was elegant, noble, and well-behaved. She looked similar to Cheng Yi. In other words, Cheng Yi learned her behavior and mannerisms from this woman. Other than those, the woman looked beautiful, but would not let anyone even think of having her. She exuded a motherly temperament generous and respectable. Cheng Yi lowered her head and greeted politely, greetings to the Empress. The Empress smiled and nodded. Sit. Cheng Yi sat and asked in a small voice, Empress, you're having conflicts with the Jade Emperor again? She felt tired. She had not left for too long, and yet they had started fighting, again? Over the years, they had a major fight every three days and a smaller fight every two days. Cheng Yi could never understand how there could be so many things to argue about. Humph! The Empress scoffed. I was about to win the chess game, but he used a dirty trick to beat me at the end. How heartless! Cheng Yi looked at the chess game set up. She looked from left to right and still could not make out how the Empress was about to win. Sigh, it was a horrible loss. Oh, Jade Emperor! Why did he not let the Empress win? Cheng Yi could not help recalling, right, the last argument was caused by the Jade Emperor letting the Empress win. As the Empress said, with my skills, why would I need you to let me win? Do you look down on me? Sigh, the Empress was difficult to deal with. All right, let's not talk about this. The Empress pointed a finger and the chessboard disappeared. She then looked at Cheng Yi and said, Cheng Yi, you met Zi? Where did you see her? The Jade Emperor was still staring at the stream. He seemed to have turned into a sculpture but his ears were listening carefully. Cheng Yi said instantly, Empress, we met in the Heavenly Temple. Seventh Sister unsealed the seal of the Heavenly Temple. Unsealed the seal? The Empress frowned. She could not help shaking her head and sighed. This silly girl's stubborn. Fighting against the bigger force will get her in trouble. Did you try to talk her out of it? To ask her to? Stop. All these years, Seventh Sister has grown up a lot. Cheng Yi paused and said, this time, we talked for a long while. She said an expert appeared in the world. The changes of the world are caused by this expert. He not only formed Buddhism, but he also appointed a human sovereign. He even rebuilt the underworld. Silence. The Empress was perplexed. The Jade Emperor was dumbfounded. After a long while, the Empress took a deep breath and asked with a serious tone, Are you sure this is true? Cheng Yi nodded. She continued, Seventh Sister isn't joking. Furthermore, the two Daoluo Golden Immortals guarding the Heavenly Temple were vanquished by this expert. The Empress had a serious look. Right, with your Seventh Sister's ability, she's unable to fight a Daoluo Golden Immortal. Perhaps some changes have actually occurred. She could not help looking at the Jade Emperor, wanting to discuss it. The Jade Emperor looked at her at the same time. However, seeing her, his face sank and he scoffed arrogantly. He looked away. He mumbled to himself, if this is true, the expert's quite powerful. The Jade Emperor could not help shaking his head and smiling bitterly, now that the Empress had no choice but to speak to him. They were thinking about it at the same time. Who was it that had so much power to do such things? Right. Empress, Seventh Sister gave these to you. Cheng Yi said as she placed down the pot in her hand. She slowly laid out the things on the table. The Empress saw her movement. She could not help smiling and shaking her head. Look at you, you're the most mature one out of them all. Why would you mess around with your Seventh Sister? Why did you bring these back here? Actually, the Empress already noticed these the moment Cheng Yi got back. She thought it was something good since Cheng Yi did not mind about her image and carried these back. That had never happened before. However, when she saw what these things were, the Empress was rather disappointed. These were merely some meat and vegetables. What good did they have? She was the Empress of the Heavenly Temple, how would she be impressed by these things? The Empress looked at the meat again. She could not help frowning and shaking her head. She looked down on these items. Ever since becoming the Empress, she had never tasted any ordinary food. She was used to having spiritual roots as food. Even the drinks had to be ambrosia. Meat was impossible. It was too low level. She was used to having some dragon liver and essence of phoenix but she got bored of these as well. Empress, these are food that my sister earned from the expert. They call it a hot pot. It's the best food I've ever eaten, Cheng Yi said as she set up the pot and lit a fire. The Empress could not help shaking her head with disbelief. Unless this is all the expert's eating? Instantly, she thought lowly of the expert. An expert who ate these would not be too powerful anyway. After all, even an ordinary immortal had no appetite, let alone saints. If they found some immortal fruits, they would eat them. 
If not, they would not need to eat. The so-called food was for ordinary men. Empress, this hot pot's delicious. It's a one-of-a-kind pleasure. Cheng Yi spoke highly of the hot pot. She gulped with anticipation as she said, Empress, you've been trapped here for so long, you must be bored. I know you feel bitter, so you must try this hot pot. It'll bring back the joy of life. The Empress halted. She suddenly felt emotional as she said with a confused tone, You silly girl, why would you say such emotional things? I've lived for countless years. There's no more difference between life and death to me. There's no joy in being alive anymore. Cheng Yi had been accompanying the Empress around, so she knew the Empress well enough to know what she would resonate with. The Emperor had been noticing them while stroking his beard. He smiled and shook his head, sigh, Cheng Yi, to us, everything's dry and boring. You brought over this food to make our life more exciting. I thank you for your effort, but, forget about eating this. The Empress and I are well restrained, we're not people who would be tempted by good food. Cheng Yi tried to convince them, just give it a try. This hot pot's yummy, perhaps you might like it? The Empress was helpless. She smiled lovingly and said, All right, since you and your seventh sister insisted, let's give it a try. I'm watching by the side. The Jade Emperor and the Empress sighed quietly. They shook their heads. Owls. They could not help raising their heads, looking around with sadness in their eyes. No matter how beautiful the scenery was, this was a small place. They had lived there for more than 10,000 years without leaving. They had grown bored of it. It was similar to being sealed in this place. They could not see the scenery outside nor could they touch the outside world. If someone did not have enough restraint, they would have gone crazy. They both knew why they would argue from time to time. They did this to make their lives more interesting. If not, their lives would be so dry. However, this hotbot was unable to excite them. Zay was so innocent. The expert she met was probably not reliable. She should be warned before the expert stole from her. Who knew, she might have been framed. Gulp, gulp, gulp. As she was thinking, the red broth in the pot was boiling with bubbles. A source of heat rushed up and spread out. The heat turned into smoke. The smoke floated to the Jade Emperor and Empress. Their bodies jolted as their lips turned dry. They started salivating. This taste. Fragrant. What a fragrance beyond imagination. They looked at the pot at the same time. Since it was boiling, bubbles were popping out. Inside the pot, there were all kinds of condiments inside. The oil and fats were on the top layer. By the looks of it, it looked different from properly prepared delicious food. However, the seemingly simple outlook of the food contained so much fragrance. It piqued one's appetite. That was it. That was hunger. The Empress and the Jade Emperor took a deep breath at the same time. They suppressed their panic and agitation. It had been too many years since they last felt hunger. It was so long ago, when they first tasted flat peaches. They were curious about the flat peaches and after tasting the flat peaches, it felt. May. Who would have thought that after countless years, they still had hunger and appetite. Furthermore, this was different than the previous time. This time, it was through the fragrance that triggered the most basic hunger and appetite. Just like someone who was hungry and who felt like eating. Hunger was a problem, but this problem was also a source of happiness for some people. Since immortalization, they had lost too many problems. At the same time, they also lost their easily satisfied desires. That original desire came back. They wanted. To cry. The Jade Emperor and Express did not resist this feeling. In fact, they became more drawn to it. Uncontrollably, their breathing started to speed up. Their chests moved more with the intention of sniffing more of this fragrance. It smelled so good. Even the smell of it made one feel loved. The Empress could not help looking at the pot while exuding an air of motherly temperament. She sat there as if she was not moved by this fragrance, while her eyes stared at Cheng Yi's spoon blankly as she scooped out the roulade and vegetables from the pot elegantly. Cheng Yi laughed to herself as she filled up the bowl before the Empress. She continued to persuade them, Empress, just do it for the sake of Seventh Sister and me. Why not give it a try? The Empress hesitated for a moment before fixing her clothes. She maintained her image and said calmly, Whatever, since you've filled up my bowl, I'll give it a try. Gulp. Suddenly, a loud gulp was heard. The Jade Emperor's face grimaced. He awkwardly turned over and faced them with his back. He quickly coughed to cover up. Cough, cough. Cheng Yi instantly realized. She ran over to pull the Jade Emperor over as she said, Jade Emperor, there's too much hot pot, let's eat. 
The Jade Emperor's expression remained the same as he sat down. He rolled up his sleeves and said, Since you insisted, I won't say no to you, then. Chapter 379 A Godly Figure Like Pang They had a hot pot meal with smoke all over. Their faces had flushed red and they were enjoying it with pleasure. Of course, the Empress and Jade Emperor maintained their images. Even before the good food, they did not lose their calm. They remained elegant and expensive. They only ate the food Cheng Yi had scooped into their bowls while making a face as if they were doing her a favor. Halfway in, the Empress suddenly said, Jade Emperor, do you taste something? What? The Jade Emperor who was munching halted. He reached his chopsticks into the hot to stir the broth. Other than being delicious, what else is there in the pot? The Empress's face sank. She scoffed, stop fooling around. It's the path. Cheng Yi was perplexed. She could not help asking. There's a, path in there? Indeed. The Jade Emperor put another piece of meat into his mouth. After munching for a moment, his face turned serious as he said, There are three thousand paths. Eatings related to the prolonging of thousands of thousands of lives. Thus, it's wisdom. Back then, the food god in the heavenly temple took this path. However, compared to this hot pot, the path of the food god must have been wrong. He turned the food into trash. Cheng Yi and the Empress's faces sank. They quietly put down the chopsticks in hand. The Empress's eyes glared at him as she scoffed, Jade Emperor. Put down your chopsticks. You're not allowed to eat anymore. Don't, it's my fault, the Jade Emperor pleaded without caring for his image anymore. He then changed the topic and analyzed, the so-called food path, although it's not as destructive as the other 3000 paths, it's still a very, very terrifying wisdom. Cheng Yi halted. She did not feel anything though. She asked with curiosity, how terrifying. The Jade Emperor squinted his eyes and said, How do you feel when you're having the hot pot? Cheng Yi tried her best to recall. Very satisfied, very blissful, and, like. The Empress added, Do you feel that the person making the food is someone nice? Someone you want to get closer to, or even become friends with? Yes, it seems to be it. Cheng Yi opened her eyes wide. She cried out in shock. What you meant was that eating this will affect one's thinking. This is only a small part of it. The Jade Emperor shook his head as he continued, The reason behind this is because the person making the food is kind-hearted. Therefore, the wisdom in the food is not harmful and is friendly. However, if the food made by this person contained violence, although the taste would be the same, those eating it would turn cruel. If the food contained desire, those eating it would become the puppets of the chef. Cheng Yi gasped with disbelief, So scary? Scarier than that. This path could directly affect one's insights. The Empress said with a complex tone. Eating has always been the basic desire of everyone. Once this desire is enlarged, one would agree to do anything to eat it. This person's insights are so terrifying and powerful that if he did anything, the Jade Emperor and I would have been harmed. The Jade Emperor nodded. Indeed, my insights are nothing in front of this person. I can be easily attacked. I wonder if the saints back in the days were even able to resist him. Clamp. The meat in Cheng Yi's hand fell on the floor. Her scalp was itching. This, this, this. She knew that the expert Zay met was extraordinary. However, her knowledge had restricted her imagination. After hearing what the Jade Emperor and Empress analyzed, she was shocked to find out that eating had such wisdom. Her heart was beating rapidly. Don't worry, we can tell that this person is friendly. It's not only harmless, it's actually beneficial to us. The Jade Emperor laughed as he picked up another piece of meat. The Empress was shocked. Who would have thought that someone in this world could actually gain so much food path? Since when did we have such a saint in the world? Cheng Yi remained stunned for a very long time. After a while, she said, biting her tongue, Empress, that's not all about this expert. The Empress was curious. Why do you say so? I heard from Zi. Instantly, Cheng Yi repeated what Zi said to her. She thought Zay was exaggerating things before but now she believed her. As Cheng Yi spoke, the Jade Emperor and the Empress's faces were constantly changing. They were moved and did not see it coming. They felt their hair standing and finally gasped. Gasp. He easily became a deluxe merit saint, vanquished the calamitous Black Lotus into reincarnation, and the Buddha statue he carved became the 18 levels of hell. He appointed a human sovereign used fireworks to defeat two Daluo golden immortals, and the most terrifying part of all was his backyard and boxes full of ultimate heavenly spiritual treasures. All of these thoroughly moved both the Jade Emperor and Empress. 
Even though they had special identities and experiences, they never dared to dream about these even in their dreams. These were too unrealistic to even think about. These were no longer food paths, this was doing anything he felt like doing. The Empress gasped and stood up instantly. She asked with a trembling voice, Are you sure his backyard's full of spiritual roots? The oranges and apples had become spiritual roots? Cheng Yi nodded. Indeed, Seventh Sister gave me a few oranges, they're definitely spiritual roots. The Empress looked at the Jade Emperor. She tried her best to cover it but her voice was still shaking, Jade Emperor, do you think Dao Tzu could turn things into spiritual roots? Apparently not. The Jade Emperor shook his head. He stood up and started walking. He was not calm anymore. Spiritual roots were made by nature. They came with the world. In other words, they were made when Pang opened up and made the world. Unless, this man's like God Pang and he can create lives. In other words, a figure as godly as Pang had arrived in this prehistoric world? Terrifying. Strange. The three exchanged looks. None of them spoke. They were trying to digest the shock in them. Even the Empress was stunned and perplexed. She said, Jade Emperor, where's, Dao Tzu? Does he know about this? The Jade Emperor shook his head. As you know, he hasn't come back after leaving five years ago. We lost contact. The Empress asked caringly, did your seventh sister speak of how close she is to the expert? She's a silly girl. I hope she didn't offend him. Seventh sister claims to have a good relationship with the expert. She didn't offend him. Cheng Yi shook her head. She halted and asked, however, I heard from seventh sister that the expert has a particular interest in seeds. He even asked her to look out for some for him. He wanted to plant it in his backyard. Special seeds? I do have them. The Empress did not hesitate to flip her wrist. Two seeds appeared in her hands. She had a nostalgic look on as she said, These are the flat peach and yellow plum seeds. If the expert wants it, hurry and send them over. Cheng Yi halted. She hesitated and said, Empress, these. She knew that the Empress would zone out staring at these seeds from time to time. These seeds contained her memories and meant a lot to her. The Empress waved it off, willing to give them out. She pestered, there's nothing to hesitate. There aren't many chances for us to help an expert like him. It's a privilege to give him something. Hurry up and bring this to your seventh sister. Yes. Cheng Yi nodded and left with the seeds. Seeing that Cheng Yi had left, the Jade Emperor and Empress exchanged a look. They were equally shocked. The Empress could not help saying, it's a big thing. The expert Zaymet is probably going to turn the world upside down. Changing the world, it could be a blessing or a disaster. The Jade Emperor sighed and sat down again. He looked at the hot pot. The meat's ready. Don't waste the vegetables. Hmm? There are some chives. I need to try them. Time passed like water. Five days had passed. At the fallen immortal mountain. Early in the morning. Li Nian Fan woke up early like usual. When he opened his bedroom door and saw the lively scene in his yard, he could not help smiling and shaking his head. Daji was making buns with the rest of them. Recently, they had decided to wake up early in the morning to master the art of making buns. They did make some improvements, a big improvement indeed. At least on the surface level, the appearance of the buns was all right. Brother, brother, look at this. When Dragon saw that Li Nian Fan had come out, her eyes sparkled as she ran over with a small dough. She cried out with excitement, guess what this is? The dough in her hand was not shaped like a bun. She decided to roll it into another shape. Li Nian Fan smiled and said, this is a small snake. Dragon. It's a dragon. Dragon protested. Look, it has four legs. Brother Nian Fan, look at mine. Nan and walked over with another dough. Li Nian Fan shook his head. He said honestly, it's not right. At least I've never seen anyone's face as flat as this. With that, he glanced at the steamer and noticed that they had not steamed the buns. He let out a sigh of relief as he said, we haven't been to the fallen town for a long time. Why don't we get breakfast there? Recently they had been having buns made by Daji and all for breakfasts. Although they were not too bad, they were not too good either. The taste had never changed. Most importantly, they had been eating the same thing for so many days. Li Nian Fan needed a change. Dragon was confused. To the fallen town? I was going to steam this small dragon. I wonder what it tastes like. Nana nodded, yeah, I want to try making my mini man, too. Yeah, the ones you made won't taste good anyway. When we come home, I'll teach you all how to make them. Li Nian Fan smiled and ruffled their heads. 
If knew what was like you all back then when molding the humans, perhaps the humans would end up looking like demons. Chapter 380 New Year is Coming. Celebration. After walking out from the four-part architecture, they did not choose to fly. They walked instead. The immortals did not treat time the same way. They flew from place to place and never stopped to admire the view. When would they feel the change in the world? After all the flying around, Lee Nyanfan realized the surroundings had become greener. Although they were not jade green, some green sprouts were coming out. The original Ebal tree branches started to have some greens. How long did it take? It's spring already? Lee Nyanfan was perplexed. His ears were ringing with the rustling of the leaves on the ground. He was walking in snow not long ago, but in the blink of an eye, it was already spring? Right, he went on the trip and three months had passed. As the saying goes, winter's here, how far can spring be? Lee Nyanfan sighed as he admired the view around him. Although it was not yet spring, there was already the fragrance of soil blended with flowers and plants. Since it was early in the morning, there was dew on the flowers, moistening the air while making one feeling refreshed. The thought of spring made one feel refreshed. This was the right season for vacation. Soon, the fallen town was in front of them. Upon entering the town, it was livelier than usual. Along the streets, there were more stalls than usual with smoke and heat in the air. Lee Nyan Fan went straight to the breakfast stall. Only then did he realize that behind the stall, two shops were undergoing renovations and changing in shape. Seeing that the owner was pleased, Lee Nyan Fan smiled, Owner, you're upgrading your store? Yo, Mr. Lee. When the owner saw them, he smiled. He quickly prepared a table for them and greeted, All thanks to you. You haven't been here lately, been busy? Here, have a seat. I went to the underworld and admired the 18 levels of hell and the door of reincarnation. Of course, Lee Nyan Fan kept this to himself. He would have scared off the owner if he said it out loud. Lee Nyan Fan smiled and said, went on a trip. Another trip? The owner asked with admiration. He said genuinely, I'm so jealous of Mr. Lee, living so freely and not restrained by anything. The world was big, so the owner wanted to explore as well. Lee Nyan Fan smiled and said, what? You want to go out as well? Let me tell you, the outside world's interesting. You walk a little bit and demons are jumping out to scare you. The owner shrunk his head in fear. He shook his head bitterly and said, Ha, I don't have what it takes to be out. I knew Mr. Lee wasn't any ordinary man. Here, Mr. Lee, your buns and tofu pudding. Lee Nyanfan looked at the buns and smiled. Owner, let me tell you a new way of making buns. The owner's eyes sparkled. He said with excitement, Please, teach me. The reason his stall was doing great was all due to Lee Nyan Fan's teaching. The information provided by Lee Nyan Fan was never ordinary. Lee Nyan Fan smiled, at the clear moon lake, there's a species that has a shell and eight legs. It's known as the hairy crab. You only have to steam it and remove its shell. You can then use its meat to make buns. The taste is fantastic. He told this to the owner so he could make it the next time he came. After all, he did not want to make his own breakfast every day. The owner listened carefully. He asked, does the thing have large pincers? Lee Nyan Fan nodded. Indeed, it does. The owner did not doubt him at all. He said sincerely, thank you for your pointers. I didn't know that it was edible. I'll find a chance to try it. To thank Lee Nyan Fan for providing such information, the owner gave them another free batch of buns. He also waived the bill. Lee Nyan Fan thanked him. Although this was only a small pointer, it was surely a priceless pointer to the owner. As he was about to leave, the owner suddenly thought of something. He said, Right, I heard that there will be some activities on New Year's Day. It seems that some cultivators are organizing a big event, do join us. The cultivators celebrating New Year's Day? Li Nianfan was startled. Has this happened before? Never heard of it. It's usually the ordinary people celebrating New Year with cultivators joining occasionally. I've never heard of the cultivators organizing New Year's events. I wonder what they're up to. The owner shook his head with a hint of anticipation in his eyes and he could not help saying, I'm guessing it'll be quite lively. I don't know where it'll happen though. Mr. Lee, you're always out. Do take part if you're interested. Lee Nyan Fan looked at his look of anticipation and he could not help saying, who knows, it could be held in the fallen town. The owner shook his head bitterly. Impossible, why would the cultivators pick a town with ordinary men? They would at least pick a prosperous land. Nanan pouted beside him. She could not help mumbling, Humph! What festival is that? 
Is it as entertaining as a television? Bam! Lenian Fan's face darkened. He slapped Nanan's head and said, You're always watching television. I'm punishing you. No television for three days. The television was one of the few entertainments for Lee Nian Fan. To him, making up his own shows was quite boring. However, to Nanan and the rest, this was an otherworldly object, very shocking. Lee Nian Fan was trying to keep Nanan and Dragon from boredom. He would play some cartoons for them. However, it went out of hand instantly. These two young girls were addicted to it. They begged him to let them watch television every day. It was not just them. Even Daji and the Fire Phoenix were acting the same. Lee Nian Fan did not know if he was making it up in his head, but he somehow felt that the chicken he was raising also watched the television from behind them. Right, this realm had no entertainment. This bunch of people could get addicted to listening to stories, what more watching television? Oh! Nanan pouted. She agreed unwillingly. Dragon asked with anticipation, Brother, what about me? I'm fine, right? You, too. No television for three days. Instantly, the smile on Dragon's face vanished. She was upset as well. The crowd walked around before returning to the four-part architecture. Meanwhile, at the bottom of the fallen immortal mountain, two clouds arrived one after another. Guzairu saw the other party. She greeted hastily, Greetings to Princess Z. She then said to Chin Manyun beside her, Manyun, this is the seventh princess of the Heavenly Temple. Say hi. Chin Manyun instantly greeted, Greetings to the seventh princess. Oh, immortal Gu. Hello. Z greeted back. She asked, You're here for Mr. Li? Yeah. Gu Zairu nodded. She said, My disciple thought of an idea. We came here to invite Mr. Li. Oh? Z looked at Chin Man Yun. Gu Zairu continued, Seventh Princess, my disciple met the expert a long time ago. I met the expert all because of her. I see. Z's face became serious. Her attitude toward Chin Man Yun had changed. So, you probably know the expert quite well? I won't say quite well, just a little of what he likes. Chin Man Yun stopped for a moment before saying, the expert's power is beyond speculation. He lives as if it's all a game. However, he's calm and friendly. He doesn't like to win or be competitive. Therefore, if he treats life as a game, he just likes interesting activities. The truth is, I had the privilege of attending a few events with the expert and he seemed pleased. You're right, the expert. Zay thought of the things Chang Yi said to her. She had a look of terror in her eyes. However, she took back what she was about to say. The expert's way beyond this world. He's reached the realm of doing whatever he pleases. We can't anticipate his moves, but we must remember one thing, we can't upset him. What do you plan to do? The expert taught us two divine pieces and we haven't performed it for him. It's almost New Year, and we want to use this opportunity to host a festival. We'll prepare many exciting activities and invite the expert over. Chin Man Yun paused. She then continued, the reason we came this time is to find out what the expert thinks about it. If he's happy with it, we'll start inviting people. This idea's good. Zay smiled and nodded. She said, if we're performing for the expert, it has to be carefully planned. Count me in, we'll organize it well. Gu Zairu and Chin Man Yun smiled and said, with the seventh princess joining, this festival would be massive. Gu Zairu asked, right, may I know what's the reason the seventh princess is visiting the expert? Zay replied, doesn't the expert like to collect seeds? I brought over the seeds of the flat peach and yellow plum. I hope the expert likes it. Flat peach? Yellow plum? She was indeed the seventh princess. How wealthy! She even had such seeds. Gu Zairu and Chin Man Yun felt their eyes popping out. They were excited. They did not know much about the yellow plum, but the name of the flat peach was like thunder to the ears. How shocking! Especially Chin Man Yun. She remembered when she first heard of the journey to the west. The flat peaches left a deep impression on her, especially their effects. She felt that these fruits were beyond her reach. And yet, the seed appeared before her. It was like a child who grew up listening to the stories of the immortals and finally meeting an immortal. How unreal. Everything happened because of the expert. Without the expert, immortalizing would still be an issue, let alone getting this close to the seeds. Guzairu licked her lips as she asked, this. Seventh princess, will eating a flat peach make one live forever? Yes. Zay smiled, her tone playful to excite Chin Manyun and Guzairu. However, she continued, if you keep eating and have enough of them, you will. 
The last sentence instantly helped Chin Manyun and Gu Zairo to calm down. When Zay saw their expressions, she could not help saying, the flat peaches can help the ordinary to get rid of their mortal shells and immortalize right away. Furthermore, it has the benefits of longevity. They can slow down the five decays of the immortals but only delay it. If not, the flat peach festival only needs to be held once. Why would they need to hold one every 3,000 years? The world had its order, so did the lifespan of beings. How could it get easier? Gu Zairu and Chin Manyu nodded. They understood and cried out with astonishment, it's very impressive. To the immortals, the five decays was a very terrifying disaster. The mention of it was already very terrifying. Many immortals would do crazy things to live longer. This showed the importance of flat peaches. After all, the lives of the immortals were too precious. Gu Zairu could not help asking, how long can it prolong one's life? Zay smiled and said, as the journey to the west said, the number of years it takes to ripen is the number of years it adds to one's lifespan. Gu Zairu and Chin Manyun learned something new. As they spoke, the four-part architecture gradually appeared in sight. They straightened their faces and had a serious look on. They stopped talking. Chapter 381 Certified Farmer Li Nian Fan That place was like where Lord Pang lived. The mountain shall be known as, the best saintly mountain and the blessed sacred land from now on. Zi thought to herself. Chin Manyun took a deep breath and stepped forward. She carefully raised her hand and knocked three times on the door. May I know if Mr. Lee's home? Guests? I'll go answer the door. Tap tap. Creak. Dragon opened the door. She had flour on her face looking like a messy cutie. She looked at everyone outside and smiled. Hey, it's Sister Zi. Please, come in. Zi and Guzairo smiled at the same time. Hello, Dragon. Then, they stepped into the four-part architecture. They saw the busy people in the yard. White flower was floating in the air. The floor was also covered in white flower. It looked like a mess. Li Nianfan and the others were kneading dough. They added water to the flour and they had all sorts of stuff to knead the dough with on the table. Xiao Bei had hands like a vacuum machine, chasing after loose flour and cleaning up the place. Zi and the others had imagined countless scenarios when they walked in the door, except for a scenario like that. When they saw the house full of flour, the corners of their mouths unconsciously twitched. That's not flour, that's incomprehensible luck. If cultivators, or even immortals, were there to see all that flour, they would have lost control as if they had discovered some ultimate treasure. Then, they would do anything to gather it. Are they playing with luck? Luxurious, too luxurious. They looked at Daji and the others. They seemed alright. It seemed like they did not think it was wasteful. Forget the expert. Since when were you girls so carelessly lavish, too? Huff. So. Chin Manyun breathed fast. She noticed that some flower was floating in front of her. She silently turned her mouth into an O to suck the flower in. Suck it in as much as I can. Rich people don't understand the desires of the poor. It'd be a shame to waste it. Li Nianfan saw the guests and instantly smiled. He said, Yo, Lady Manyun's also here. I haven't seen you in a while. Chin Manyun hurriedly saluted and bowed, yeah. Greetings to Mr. Lee. Gu Zairu and Zay also hurriedly said, Mr. Lee, sorry to intrude. Li Nianfan smiled. Ha, there's nothing to intrude. It's a bit messy at the moment. Sorry about that. No, not at all. Gu Zairu sounded a bit anguished. You should feel sorry for us instead. We've never seen a messy house caused by excessive luck. We truly learned something new this time. Li Nianfan said, sit, have a seat. Xiao Bei, turn off the vacuum machine mode. Hurry up and serve tea to the guests. Yes, my noble master. Xiao Bei immediately went off to make tea. Zhe and the others looked to where Li Nianfan was standing. They looked at the dough on the table. Their hearts raced on sight. They felt as if the dough was lively, or like it would come alive at any moment. However, the feeling disappeared when they looked closely. It still felt extraordinary. There were puppets and all sorts of animals on the table. Li Nianfan and the others made them from kneading dough. However, it was easy to differentiate. After all, the dough kneaded by the others was too ugly. Not only were they ugly, they were tragic to look at compared to what Li Nianfan made. The difference was too obvious. Zay stared closely at a puppet kneaded by Li Nianfan. She could only detect a hint of powerful aura from it. It meant that her level was still too low. She was not worthy enough to understand the wisdom within it. The dough must have contained some sort of wisdom, 
and it was far beyond Z's comprehension. The insights from his doe were way higher than the others. It was subtle and mysterious. It seemed like the expert was not trying to preach. It was more like, a creation. Perhaps this doe is a kind of, super powerful spiritual treasure? Z guessed in her mind. Suddenly, Li Nian Fan casually placed the puppet doe into the steamer. He steamed it. Li Nian Fan noticed that Zay was dumbfounded while she was looking at the steamer. He had to laugh as he asked, Goddess Zay, what are you looking at? Do you like this puppet doe? Zay snapped out of it. She hurriedly replied, Mr. Li, that puppet doe's well made. I unconsciously had to look at it. Li Nian Fan laughed. He shook his head and said, Actually, it tastes better than it looks. Goddess Zay, if you like it. I'll give some to you later. Xiao Bei came over with a tray to serve them tea as well as a fruit platter. Please, enjoy. Guests. The three of them thanked it at the same time, thanks, Xiao Bei. They looked slightly ashamed. They were embarrassed to receive free food and drinks. Da Ji took out her handkerchief and carefully wiped Li Nian Fan's hand. The two of them walked together and sat down. Li Nian Fan smiled and asked, Is there any reason why you're all here? Chin Manyun put her words together and said, Mr. Li, I'm here to invite you to an end-of-the-year event hosted by Cultivators. Li Nian Fan had a realization. He asked, intrigued, Ha, huh, what a coincidence. I just heard someone talking about this today. Since when did Cultivators start getting interested in end-of-the-year events? Chin Manyun saw that Li Nian Fan had laughed. It seemed like he was not against it. She was immediately thrilled. She said, Actually, we just did. It's lonely being cultivators so we wanted to gather and create some events. It just so happens to be the end of the year, so we're just doing it together. She paused, bit her lip, and said, Apart from battles, we have dance performances. I will be performing with my zither, too. You'll be performing on stage, too? Li Nianfan looked at Chin Manyun weirdly. She was quite prestigious. It seemed like the event would be very formal if she was going to show up and perform. Chin Manyun nodded. She asked excitedly, Mr. Li, are you going to come? I practiced hard on ambush and high mountains and flowing water. Li Nian Fan smiled and said, Since Lady Manyun already said so, it makes no sense if I don't go. Chin Manyun and Gu Zairu were overjoyed. They hurriedly said, We'll pick you up for the event, then. Li Nian Fan laughed. He said smugly, No need to do so. I don't need to rely on the skyship anymore. Zay silently sighed at the side. She felt lonely. If the seven princesses were together, they could perform a set of dances for the expert. However, it was just her. She could not present the performance on her own. She lightly flicked her wrist and out came two seeds in her hand. She spoke, Mr. Lee, I heard you were looking for special fruit trees to fill up your backyard. I found these two seeds by accident. How about you take a look? Oh? Let me see. Li Nianfan was instantly interested. He took the seeds from Zi and carefully observed them. The two seeds were not that different in sizes. They were plump. However, one was smoother, the other one had deep patterns and small holes on it. They looked kind of dry they appeared to have been out in the wild for quite some time. Thankfully, the environment was nice at the immortal realm. There were spiritual chi everywhere. If the seeds were placed in the past realm, they would have dried out and died a long time ago. Good seeds. These are good seeds. Li Nian Fan carefully touched them and smiled. This one's a peach, and this one's a plum. Both are good seeds. Goddess Zi, thank you so much. So the flat peach is called a peach and the yellow plum's called a plum? I see. You're welcome, Mr. Li. I can't plant this. Peach seed and this plum seed anyway, so I may as well give it to you. You gave it to the right person then. I'm a certified farmer after all. It's not hard to plant these seeds. Li Nian Fan laughed. Once I harvest the fruits, I'll give them to you, Goddess Zi. Planting spiritual herbs, flat peaches, and yellow plums. Is there anybody else in the world who could do something that cool? Yet, you merely referred to yourself as a certified farmer? The expert's truly the expert. Even his cool act is beyond us. Zi was excited but at the same time, she felt her emotions were being relentlessly attacked. She kept smiling. Ha, ah, thanks, Mr. Li. Li Nian Fan put the seeds aside. He was planning to plant them later. He suddenly had a thought and asked curiously, Oh, yeah. How's the heavenly palace? Her face dropped at the mention of that. Zay sighed and said, No progress at all. But fortunately, I saw my second sister. 
Your second sister? Li Nianfan was slightly surprised. He thought to himself, her second sister would be the second princess? Awesome. Why isn't she here? It'd be great to meet more legendary characters. Zi automatically answered his question. She said, yes, but she was confined. She can't leave the Heavenly Palace yet. I see. Li Nianfan nodded. Then, he asked, can we go to the Heavenly Palace? Li Nianfan only asked casually but Zi's heart clenched hearing that. Her heart started beating frantically. She was excited and anxious. She was thinking a lot and could not control her breathing. The experts starting to take an interest in the Heavenly Palace. If he went over, there might be a chance for everyone to wake up. Previously, Zay did not dare to guess what Li Nianfan was thinking. Therefore, she never asked him to do anything. However, the expert himself brought up the Heavenly Palace. That was a different case. Deep down, she knew that she could never think of a solution on her own. Even the Jade Emperor and Empress of the Heavenly Palace could not do anything. It was an unsolvable issue. The only hope lied with the expert. However, could she directly ask the expert for help? Obviously not. If she asked for help, she would not receive it. She would probably also be dead. At that moment, Zay wanted to cry. She did not know how it would end but it would be a huge blessing if the expert was at the Heavenly Palace. After all, there was a prior example, the Underworld. Maybe the expert will rebuild the Heavenly Palace if he's in a good mood? Her mind was running fast. She hurriedly calmed her overturned heart. However, her voice was still shaky. She said, slightly nervous, of course, you can. Mr. Lee, if you want, I can bring you all there right now. The Heavenly Palace isn't that different from the Eldra Chiras. Nen. Li Nianfen was thrilled. Really? Can we go to the Heavenly Palace? Zi almost begged him. She kept nodding, yes, you absolutely can. Li Nianfen looked at Daji. Daji, how about it? How about we, have a stroll at the Heavenly Palace? Daji smiled and said, I'll follow you if you want to go. We've been to the Underworld, so of course, we can't miss out on the Heavenly Palace. We must go. We must go. Li Nianfan looked excited. He was thrilled. That was the Heavenly Palace. In the past realm, the Heavenly Palace was an important place in every legendary story. It was also the holiest and most mysterious place. The story of havoc in the Heavenly Palace won the hearts of countless teens. He was, about to visit the Heavenly Palace. Chapter 382 Plucking the Stars from the Sky Mr. Lee, shall we depart, now? Z took a deep breath. She was irrecoverably nervous. No rush. I'll deal with some things first. Please, wait for a moment. Li Nianfan smiled. He looked at the hot steamer and said, Oh, yeah. Goddess Z, if you like my puppet dough, I should give this steamer to you. Xi Bei, help Goddess Z pack it up. It was common courtesy. Since Goddess Z gave him two seeds, he had to be polite and give something back. Then, he took the two seeds into the storage room and started to cause a commotion while looking for something. Soon, he walked out of the storage room with a small container. He slowly walked towards the backyard. Zay and the others looked at the small container. It had translucent liquid inside. It seemed ordinary but everyone felt their hearts. Race. They could not forget about that. That's the growth serum. It must be the growth serum. Extraordinary people could look ordinary. The same could be said for treasures. The growth serum looked like ordinary water. However, it was a legendary liquid that defied the laws of nature. Awesome. We'd probably be eating peaches and plums in no time. Everyone sat and waited. After a while, Li Nianfan walked out from the backyard. He satisfyingly smiled and said, All right, shall we, depart? Zay suddenly stood up. She could not contain her excitement. She smiled and said, Yeah, any time. Li Nianfan felt sentimental that he was able to befriend such a kind seventh princess. Then, everyone rode on clouds and slowly rose to the sky. Zi became the tour guide. She said, Mr. Li, I stay at the Ice Palace in the above immortal realm. That's also where the heavenly gates of the heavenly palace is at. Later, we'll pick an intersection route from the immortal realm. We can go directly from there. Whatever you decide, Goddess Zi. Li Nianfan smiled. He stepped on a golden cloud and flew in a direction. He looked up to the sky as he rose. The sky was like a blanket, slowly descending upon him. He was curious where the above immortal realm was at. However, before he could observe anything closely, he felt a movement in the air. 
It was like bursting through ripples after resurfacing from beneath the water. They swam past an invisible border and peeked their heads out in the above immortal realm. They arrived at a vast field when they reappeared again. The land was filled with grass and flowers. There were forests in the distance filled mostly with small trees. Li Nianfan was slightly startled. He asked, We're here? We don't need to fly anymore? Zay said, No need. The heavenly gates are gone. The restriction between the three realms is basically gone. Great cultivators can easily pass between the three realms now. Yo, awesome. This is much more convenient. Good, good. Li Nianfan remembered when the immortals would be struck by lightning whenever they went to the immortal realm. The lightning was not useful or effective but they still had to be struck. Transcending to the above immortal realm also seemed difficult. It was much more convenient now that the bridge was wide open. Everyone else silently glanced at Li Nianfan. They pursed their lips to stop themselves from cursing him out. Of course, you think it's good. The realm became like this because of you, right? Are you trying to compliment yourself? Zay coughed and interrupted Li Nianfan and said, Mr. Li, the heavenly palace is up there. Up there? Li Nianfan looked up in surprise. Are we going to reach outer space? The clouds continued to rise. He did not feel any obstacles at that time. He looked up at the sky and saw thick clouds. The clouds were as huge as an ocean. It was endless. They passed through the clouds and opened their eyes again. They arrived in front of a huge gate. The gate was broken. Only two pillars and half a sign were left. Li Nianfan was slightly startled. Southern Sky Gate? They walked into the Southern Sky Gate and stepped on the bridge above the Sky River. He looked at the palace amongst the clouds with a complex gaze. He had arrived at the Heavenly Palace. Li Nianfan shook his head and said, It looks like how I imagined it to be but something's off. It isn't majestic enough. The Heavenly Palace was beautiful and had clouds as paths. The basics were there but there was no immortal chi and magical phenomenon. The Heavenly Palace was very quiet. It was different from what he expected. Buzz. Suddenly, the quiet buildings beamed strands of light. The lifeless palace instantly became a light source. The heavenly palace was shining brightly. The light beamed into thin air and formed a magical phenomenon. The heavenly palace became a holy and opulent place. Splash! The water of the Star River started to flow. There were no waves. Instead, in the river were endless stars. The stars sparkled, decorating the river water. The colorful Star River was eye-catching. Dang! Immortal music played softly from afar. A sky full of sunset halos shined. Then, a rainbow bridge appeared from south to north. Cranes were flying around the rainbow. It was shiny, prestigious, and regal. Immortal chi surrounded the palace as immortal music echoed. The palace was like a pearl covered in dust, dust that was suddenly blown away. This, this is. D.S. Z, who was next to Li Nianfan, instantly widened her eyes. She gasped. She was so excited that she had goosebumps. It was as if she was back at the original Heavenly Palace. She always felt like the Heavenly Palace would have hope if she brought the expert. She did not expect the nice surprises to come so early. A comment from the expert revived the lifeless Heavenly Palace. Actually, the entire Heavenly Palace was a spiritual treasure. It was born from the realm. It was a demon palace at first, which Hong Jin gave to the Jade Emperor. Then, it became the Heavenly Palace. After the catastrophe, the treasure ceased to function. It did not shine anymore and it would not be activated. However, the expert arrived. Did it start to present itself like crazy to impress the expert? Ha, I knew it. This is how the heavenly palace should look like. Li Nianfan was slightly surprised. Then, he had to ask, this heavenly palace is so prideful. What if it became like that because I said something just now? Zhe felt her skin crawl because Li Nianfan showed off. She forced herself to reply, ha ha. Stop joking, Mr. Lee. Of course, N, not. A beautiful orange figure flew in their direction from afar. She looked startled by the sudden lights in the heavenly palace. She was excited and in disbelief. What's going on? The heavenly palace is back in business? She quickly flew to the southern sky gate and saw her seventh sister. Then, her heart instantly raced when she saw that her seventh sister was carefully standing next to a man. Her skin crawled. She almost turned around to flee. It's him, it's that guy. No wonder the lifeless heavenly palace works again. Come on, seventh sister. Shouldn't you warn me before bringing the expert here? At least let me be mentally prepared. She felt uneasy. 
However, she noticed that Lena and Fan had seen her, so she could only force herself to go. Time for an improvisation test. The girl with the orange dress remained calm. She flew in gracefully like a beautiful goddess. She glided in with her slim arms in the air as her orange dress blew in the wind. She waved and out came a halo around her. She was holy, graceful, and prestigious. Seventh sister. She gracefully landed in front of everyone. She slightly bowed, smiled, and asked, You brought guests today. Second sister, greeted Zay. Then, she introduced her to Li Nian Fan. Mr. Li, this is my second sister. Her name is Cheng Yi. She's indeed the second princess. I finally got to see her in person. Li Nian Fan already guessed who she was. He hurriedly saluted and smiled, Greetings to Goddess Cheng Yi. Cheng Yi bowed politely at Li Nian Fan. Mr. Li, I heard about you from Z. You are the great deluxe merit saint so just call me Chang. This lady is truly Z's sister. Z feels like a bit of a brat compared to her sibling. Li Nian Fan did not mind bonding with her. He nodded and said, Lady Chang. Z at the side hurriedly said, Oh yeah, Mr. Li, you can call me Z from now on, too. Otherwise, it'd be too formal. Li Nian Fan smiled. Ha, okay then. I didn't know we'll be having guests today so I didn't prepare much, so sorry about that," Chang Yi said while moving aside. How about I bring you to look at the Heavenly Palace's view, Mr. Li? Nice. Li Nian Fan nodded and followed Chang Yi. They walked on the cloud path. Rainbow lights illuminated the path when they glided across it. They seemed to be reminding everyone that they were at the Heavenly Palace. He smiled and said, It's much better with the lights, everything's shiny and bright. Cheng Yi smiled and said, as long as you like it, Mr. Li. The heavenly palace was big. Most of the buildings were connected with cloud bridges, or they needed to fly on clouds to get there. The layout was very interesting. Li Nian Fan visited a lot of the palaces out of curiosity. He realized that the people inside were turned to stone. They looked peaceful. Cheng Yi brought Li Nian Fan to a wide and high tower. She said, Mr. Li, this is the observatory. There are a lot of observatories in the heavenly palace but the view here's the best. It was evening and the sun was setting. A red cloud covered the sky and spread to the horizon. The heavenly palace was called the heavenly palace because it was high up in the sky and they could look down upon the realms. They could see the split realms from afar. The sky was separated one part was a fiery sunset, and the other was a night sky. For Li Nian Fan, that was the endless universe. Multiple stars and galaxies were aligned with the heavenly palace. They shined and glimmered, sometimes bright, sometimes dark. Sometimes they were far, sometimes they were near. A cool silver sphere hung high in the sky. Li Nian Fan did not need an introduction to know that it must be the moon. It was also the legendary moon palace. At that moment, nothing was out of reach. Plucking the stars from the sky was no longer just a rumor. Chapter 383 Sorry, we can't go along with this performance of yours. Li Nianfan stood on the high tower and fully felt the benefits of being an immortal. The view was truly scattered with stars like chess pieces on a board. The vast galaxy was just a chess piece. Immortals at that time could probably move the infinite stars around. Although they had limitations, it's still exciting to think about it. Li Nianfan asked, Lady Z, can the galaxy be manipulated? Yes. There are managers for the stars. Some were born with the galaxy and some were assigned by the heavenly palace. They control the movement of the stars, the time, and the changes of the four seasons. Zi paused, then said, Taoist Zing is one of them. Li Nianfan thought of when he first met Taoist Zing. He was surprised. Yo, that's awesome for brother Taoist. Which one is he in charge of? Zi lifted her hand. She was about to point it out. She looked for it for a long while and said awkwardly, It's a bit far and a bit small. And a bit dim. Can't see it from here. Ha, huh, I understand. Li Nian Fan laughed. He looked at the intersection of the realm and the universe again. They were star crossed, it was extremely beautiful. Cheng Yi smiled and said, Mr. Li, this is just the sunset. The sunrise is more beautiful. The morning sun will pass through the heavenly palace. So exciting, nodded Li Nian Fan. Then, he looked around and said, Truly the heavenly palace. It's such a great place. Cheng Yi was thrilled to hear that, she even blushed. She felt like she understood what the expert really meant. She hurriedly said in a trembling voice, Mr. Li, if you want, you can pick a palace to stay at. Zi also hurriedly said, Yeah, Mr. Li. 
There are a lot of empty palaces. My second sister and I can pick out the best one for you. Li Nai and Fan smiled and waved it off. Ha, ha no thanks. I'm just a nobody and I'm an ordinary man. How could I stay at the heavenly palace? I'm not worthy. Thanks for the generosity. Chen Yi and Zay secretly sighed at the same time. The expert's supposed to like it, why did he reject us? If the expert truly liked the heavenly palace, the future of the heavenly palace would be secured. Sigh, we failed to promote the heavenly palace. What a miss. Chen Yi continued to introduce the place. She pointed at a nearby palace and said, Mr. Li, this is our palace of the seven princesses. Li Nai and Fan immediately smiled. The palace of the seven princesses is located nicely, and it's next to the observatory. He he, we like to watch the view. We were just favored by the empress, said Chang Yi. She led the way and walked towards the palace of the seven princesses. Mr. Li, how about you visit my palace of the seven princesses? All right. Li Nai and Fan nodded. They entered the palace of the seven princesses. It was a classic room for young ladies. It was fresh and elegant and very tidy inside. It smelled a bit like incense candles and perfume. At that moment, Li Nai and Fan suddenly realized something. He said, I'm a man. It's not appropriate for me to be in your room, right? Cheng Yi pursed her lips and chuckled. Mr. Li, no need to be a stranger. We sisters don't care about that much. If it wasn't for the fact that five of my sisters are still sealed, we could have performed for you, Mr. Li. Li Nai and Fan waved it off. He smiled troublingly and said, Stop joking, Lady Chang. I'm not worthy. How can I let the seven princesses perform for me? Then, everyone saw the five other princesses that ended up as statues. They were still smiling and they seemed to be chatting. Chen Yi and Zhe stopped talking at the same time. They silently sighed and looked down. Nanan and Dragon stopped looking so curious. They said with sympathy, Brother Nai and Fan, they're so pitiful. There'll be a way as long as they're alive, comforted Li Nai and Fan. Then, he asked curiously, Lady Z, is the Jade Emperor and the Empress also sealed? Zhe shook her head and replied, No. For all these years, Second Sister has been with the Jade Emperor and Empress. However, they're stuck somewhere. The Jade Emperor and Empress are here? They're major big shots. Li Nai and Fan nodded, he was slightly weirded out. He was also unavoidably excited. He focused and noticed a scroll on the table. He picked it up and inspected it in his hand. What's this? Zhe and Cheng Yi were stumped at the same time. They stuttered as they struggled to answer the question. The scroll was previously traded from Ma Yunming with chives. They could not open it and could not damage it. Cheng Yi was studying it earlier. She simply placed it on the table because of the sudden change in the heavenly palace. While they were stumped, Li Nai and Fan tugged the scroll. Then, he easily pulled it open leaving them dumbfounded. The first thing he saw in the scroll was the mountains and rivers. The ink on the scroll was already dried out. The painting scroll was long and filled up with contents. Apart from the mountains and rivers, there were a lot of animals and all sorts of plants. The old painting started to gleam as he opened it. A powerful and endless aura started to knock them in the face. Everyone felt their hearts thump as they felt a fearful respect. This, this is. Chen Yi astoundingly looked at the painting with her pretty eyes. She suddenly widened her eyes and breathed fast. She unconsciously tightened her grip because she was overly excited. The veins on her hand slightly popped up. The Land of Mountains and Rivers Painting That's definitely the Land of Mountains and Rivers Painting. She was with the Empress for a long time. The Empress always told her stories of the Eldritch Realms because she was overly bored. It included stories of spiritual treasures. The Land of Mountains and Rivers painting was one of the most important ones. The painting was an ultimate heavenly spiritual treasure but its function was extremely unique. The painting was about a scene from a prehistoric world. It was a scenery painting. It had everything in it. Also, the painting was alive. The painting could change its scenery however its master desired. It could also absorb someone into the painting and trap them in there like a vessel. Out of all the spiritual treasures, Cheng Yi was most impressed by the Land of Mountains and Rivers painting. Not because of any fancy reasons. It was just because the painting could save the Empress and the Jade Emperor. The Land of Mountains and Rivers painting was also a seal that could trap people in it. If she placed the Empress and the Jade Emperor inside the painting, then brought it out, she could save the Empress and the Jade Emperor from being trapped, right? The possibility of that, was high. She dreamt of that scenario countless times all those years. She knew that it was nearly impossible to get the Land of Mountains and Rivers painting after the catastrophe. 
However, she did not expect that the painting would appear in front of her in the most incredible way without any warning. It was unreal. She had to look at Li Nianfan. Thoughts were running in her mind. She did not know how to describe how she felt at all. She was irrecoverably impressed by the expert. Truly the expert. He did it so easily for something that was impossible for me. He succeeds at everything without trying hard. The land of mountains and rivers painting automatically appeared in front of him. This is a hodgepodge of landscape paintings. Li Nian Fan finally opened the whole scroll. He looked at it for a while and gave his review. Good painting. He curiously looked at Xian Cheng Yi. He asked, This painting's incredible. It has a lot going on. I wonder who painted it? The painting was an ultimate heavenly spiritual treasure. It recorded everything from the prehistoric world. It was born with a realm. It could not have been painted by someone. Her mind was running fast. She quickly thought of how to answer that question. Cheng Yi forced a smile and replied, Don't know. We just, think that it's a good painting so we kept it. I see. Li Nianfan nodded understandingly. He groaned for a moment and said, No wonder. The painting dried out for too long. There are already a lot of damages. It makes me want to paint. I wonder if I could fix it? It was pretty easy to understand what that meant. Everyone jolted. The land of mountains and rivers painting was damaged. Is Mr. Lee going to perfect it with a brush? Can he do that? Of course, why you, can? Cheng Yi stuttered. She could not be blamed. Even the Empress would fumble in front of such an expert. It was hard to maintain calm even if she was mentally prepared. The expert constantly turned her worldview upside down. It was hard not to be shocked by that. There was nothing he could not do that they could think of. She hurriedly said, Seventh Sister, hurry up and prepare the brushes and inks for Mr. Lee to paint. No need for all that trouble. I brought my own brush and ink. Daji, help me grind the ink. Yes. Then, Li Nian Fan placed the scroll on a long table. He held his brush and started to inspect the painting. He did not rush to paint because it was not his painting. He was just going to retouch the original painting. He had to think like the original artist. Otherwise, the painting would end up mismatched and sloppy. The others did not dare to breathe. They felt like they were witnessing a miraculous moment. Everything and everyone, including saints, would not dream of that miraculous moment. Li Nian Fan smirked while they stared. Then, he started to paint. Some of the mountains were blurry, Li Nian Fan sketched its sides with ink. There was a missing spot at the lake, so Li Nian Fan painted a swimming fish in it. His brush strokes were gentle as if it was dancing on the painting scroll. It was a sight to behold. Li Nian Fan retouched the painting. Everyone noticed that the land of mountains and rivers painting started to change. The initial still painting seemed to be alive and flowing. A mysterious aura was emitted from the land of mountains and rivers painting. They felt as if they were in a mountain forest where the mountain was high and steep, and the sky had a sun and a moon at the same time. Then, they felt as if they were immersed in the river, waves splashing over them as fishes swam freely. Then, they imagined a starry night, feeling the vastness of the universe. The vast universe, the mountains, the rivers, the lands, the light, the sun, the moon, the stars, the flowers, the grass, the trees, the animals, and all the living beings birthed in the realm. Everything was in place. It was as if the painting was a real land of mountains and rivers. Everyone stared at the ever-changing painting without blinking. They almost lost themselves in it. Done. Suddenly, Li Nianfan finished painting. Everyone snapped out of it. They looked at the painting scroll again. The mysterious feeling had vanished. However, the painting was way better than before. They were not sure if they imagined it but they felt like the painting looked newer, too. He did it. The expert painted the ultimate heavenly treasure. Terrifying, horrifying. Li Nian Fan satisfyingly looked at his work. He smiled and asked, How is it? Cheng Yi gulped. She replied, Mr. Li, your painting skills are truly beyond. This is too beautiful, too majestic. Cheng's impressed from the bottom of her heart. Li Nian Fan laughed. Look, my talents impress the second princess. He immediately said with humbleness, Hey, it's just some tricks. I'm not trying to brag or anything, but even though I don't know how to cultivate, I still know a lot of odd tricks. Of course, we know you're not trying to brag. Not only were you not bragging, you were overly humble. You call that odd tricks? You call that not knowing how to cultivate? Can you please stop attacking us? Let us be useless losers in peace. Li Nian Fan put the painting scroll aside. Then, 
He gave it to Chen Yi. Here. Thank. Thanks. Chen Yi did not reject it. She took the painting scroll and bowed at Li Nianfan. She gripped the Land of Mountains and Rivers painting in her hand. It felt unreal. The Land of Mountains and Rivers painting was too important to her. It was so important that it was unreal to her. The painting might help the Empress and the Jade Emperor. She would also be able to leave the Heavenly Palace. They got the painting, opened the painting, and repaired the painting because of the expert. If it was not for the expert, they would have been desperately helpless in whichever of those three steps. However, the expert easily solved them. Chen Yi looked at Li Nianfan. He had a casual facial expression. She suddenly teared up and almost cried. The expert might not mind it but I have to remember this. She could not repay his generosity. If it was not for the taboo of the expert, she would have knelt and thanked him without hesitation. Chen Yi wanted to do more for the expert, as long as the expert was happy. She said with respect, Mr. Mr. Li, let me take you elsewhere to visit. Thanks, Lady Chang. Li Nianfan smiled and nodded. He groaned for a moment and asked curiously, Oh, yeah, where's the famous flat peach garden? Can you bring us there? Chen Yi immediately smiled and said, Of course. Please, follow me, Mr. Li. The flat peach garden was behind the palaces. It was huge and fenced with jade-like snow. There were refined windows on the walls. The only entrance was a wonderful red door. A sign was hung on top of the door. Three golden words were on the sign Flat Peach Garden. Creek. Cheng Yi pushed the door open and entered. Li Nian Fan looked over and was baffled. There was nothing in the garden, only an empty land. Even the grass and flowers were gone. A few goddesses had baskets in their hands. They were graceful and they were laughing but they were also turned into stone statues. Cheng Yi said, after the catastrophe, all spiritual plants were wiped out. I heard from the Empress that it was hard to raise immortals in the Absolute Era. It was even harder to raise spiritual plants. Hence why they were wiped out. Sigh, too bad. This is the legendary Flat Peach. Li Nianfan looked like he was in pain for a moment. He sighed, how can it be gone just like that? I want to eat one. I also want to become an immortal. Everyone had to glance at him. No one spoke because they did not know how to reply. Sorry, we can't go along with this performance of yours. What are you acting pitiful for? Tell me what's in your backyard again? Chapter 384 The Experts Hint, Missed Opportunity Li Nianfan looked at the empty flat peach garden and then he looked at Xian Cheng Yi. He suddenly had an idea. He asked without thinking, did that monkey steal peaches here? Cheng Yi was stumped at first. Then, she smiled and nodded. Yeah. Li Nianfan continued to ask, he targeted you all? Zay scrunched her nose in response. Humph. That monkey's too naughty. We were freshly transformed back then. Otherwise, how could we be easily defeated by him? Li Nianfan asked what everyone was thinking about, did he do anything else once he targeted you all? Anything else? Cheng Yi thought about it. She shook her head and replied, what's more important than eating the flat peaches? Zi also shook her head. Nothing else, I assume. Li Nianfan did not change his facial expression. He nodded understandingly. True. Nothing's more important than eating peaches. Brother, brother. Suddenly, Dragon tugged on Li Nianfan. She looked up at Li Nianfan and said coyly, I know how to revive the stone statues. Xian Cheng Yi jolted. They asked excitedly, what is it? Dragon and Nanan raised their hands at the same time. They made a fuss and said, be a being of light. Smack. Li Nianfan felt embarrassed. He smacked Dragon and Nanan on their heads. Shut up, little brats. What nonsense, read the room. He hurriedly chuckled awkwardly. He apologized to Xian Cheng Yi, Lady Cheng, Lady Z, sorry about that. These two have been watching too much television. They don't know what they're talking about. He decided to make Nanan and Dragon watch less television when they get back. They were becoming foolish from that. Nanan and Dragon rubbed on their heads and pouted. They mumbled, it's true though. As long as we believe, we can become a being of light, too. Li Nianfan smiled coldly. Ha, I believe that there will be no more television to watch when you go back. Cheng Yi looked serious. She asked excitedly, that. Mr. Li, what's the meaning of become a being of light? Can this situation be joked about? Li Nianfan truly did not know how to explain. He could only reply, cough, it's nothing. Don't mind it, Lady Cheng. Um, it's getting late, we should go back now. 
Chen Yi and Zhe looked disappointed. However, they noticed that the expert did not want to tell them more, so they did not dare to question it. They said, it's late. How about my seventh sister and I prepare a palace for you? Stay the night, Mr. Li. Li Nai and Fan shook his head and saluted, no thanks. I won't be disturbing you all. Farewell. Safe journey, Mr. Li. Come again next time. Chang Yi and Zhe watched Li Nai and Fan leave. They could not calm down. Especially Chang Yi. She was holding onto the land of mountains and rivers painting tightly. Her voice was shaky as she said excitedly, Seventh sister, wait for me here. I'll go and try to see if I can bring the Jade Emperor and the Empress back. She instantly leapt and was gone with the wind. Somewhere in outer space. Chang Yi quickly walked in with ripples following behind her. Tap tap. She could not maintain her gracefulness anymore. She breathed fast and walked quickly. The Empress and the Jade Emperor were in a good mood that day. They did not fight either. They walked together like a lovely couple. The Empress scolded, Chang, why the rush? Didn't I tell you that you have to be mindful of who you are? You have to be poised and graceful. What's the use of rushing? You're right, Empress. Chang Yi nodded. Then, she could not wait to ask, Empress, if I have the land of mountains and rivers painting. Am I able to get you out of here? The land of mountains and rivers painting? The Empress was stumped at first. Then, she said, that painting is the essence of how the prehistoric world looked like. If we do have the painting, it would help us escape. However, the realm's broken and I'm afraid this painting no longer exists. The Jade Emperor also nodded. He said, yeah, Chang. I know you're always trying to help us escape, just like your seventh sister. You were always hopeful, too, but, it's too hard. This is beyond all of us, so stop trying and let it be. The Jade Emperor and the Empress were greater cultivators than the Seventh Princess. Hence, they knew how serious the catastrophe was. They could see it, they could feel the despair and fear. Sometimes, giving up was a relief. It would be nice if they kept giving up. He paused. Then, he added, remember to bring more of those chives next time. The Empress and I are stuck here. It's nice that we finally have something we like to eat. Cheng Yi took out the painting scroll in her hand and said, but. I think I have the land of mountains and rivers painting in my hand. The Empress and the Jade Emperor ridiculed her and shook their heads at the same time. Impossible. You thought wrong. No wonder the girl was in such a rush just now, she recognized the wrong treasure. The land of mountains and rivers painting is too eldritch. Even if it still exists, how could it possibly end up in your hands? However, they watched Cheng Yi open the painting scroll slowly. They were bewildered at the same time. Their facial expressions and their gazes froze in place. Let me see, let me see. They rushed to take the painting scroll. They did not dare to caress the painting as they inspected it without blinking. They felt the pulse of the painting scroll and that overflowing mysterious aura. The Jade Emperor and the Empress felt their hearts race. The Empress said with a shivering voice, The land of mountains and rivers painting. It's the land of mountains and rivers painting. They were stuck at the same place every day. They looked at the same view for years. It would be a lie to say they did not wish to leave. The appearance of the land of mountains and rivers painting was way too valuable to them. It was their ticket for survival. The Empress looked at Chang Yi with disbelief. She asked in shock, Chang, honestly, where? Did you get this painting? Chang Yi smiled and replied, I got it from the expert. No wonder. The expert gave it to you, nodded the Jade Emperor. Then, he asked in disbelief. He was willing to give this treasure to you? Cheng Yi pursed her lips. She said weakly, actually. The painting's just a normal painting in the eyes of the expert, and it was already damaged. It lost its power. The expert retouched it by painting on it and fixed the painting. What? The Jade Emperor and the Empress almost jumped. They had their jaws on the floor as they gasped. This is just a normal painting to the expert? The expert painted on the land of mountains and rivers painting? They stood in place. They were baffled. They felt like their minds were buzzing and they had entered a whole new world. So. He can do that. An expert, an ultimate expert. The Jade Emperor widened his eyes in extreme shock. He was surprised, respectful, and nervous all at the same time. He said in a trembling voice, I can confirm it. He can do such an incredible task, he must be someone on the same level as Pang. The Empress asked, Did you give the flat peach seed and the yellow plum seed to the expert? Cheng Yi nodded. I did. I heard from Seventh Sister that the expert seems to be pleased. The Empress instantly smiled. 
Great, the expert must have felt our sincerity so he was willing to give us the land of mountains and rivers painting. He's helping us to escape. It must be. It most probably is. The Jade Emperor nodded in agreement and said with sentimentality, the expert played around in the realm for joy. He was willing to help us all because he was in a good mood. It's greatly beneficial to us. You have to know, I was just a kid sitting next to the Buddha back then. To put it nicely, the pawns close to the expert are more valuable than me, the Jade Emperor. The Jade Emperor and the Empress looked at each other. They looked excited and anxious. They knew how great it was to be close to the big shot. They could not calm down. That's the big shot who surpassed the Buddha, and as powerful as Lord Pang. You and Z did a nice job for befriending such a big shot. Nicely done. The Empress took a deep breath. Then, she said with seriousness, what else did the expert tell you? Tell us everything in detail so we can provide better services for the expert. Cheng Yi immediately started the story. So, the expert suddenly wanted to visit today, so he followed Seventh Sister to the Heavenly Palace. EA. The Jade Emperor and the Empress had their ears up. They listened attentively. They did not dare to miss a word. When they heard about the automatic reboot of the Heavenly Palace to welcome the expert, they were not surprised. They nodded. Seems like the Heavenly Palace isn't stupid, quite observant. However, when they heard about how the expert complimented the Heavenly Palace, the Jade Emperor suddenly frowned. He sighed and said, Cheng, you didn't handle this properly. Cheng Yi jolted. What is it? The Jade Emperor said, the expert likes to travel around the three realms, so you have to give the expert a palace. You also should have given him the most majestic one with the best location. You failed to give it to him. Sigh. Cheng Yi said with regret, I wanted to but I was rejected by the expert. You still didn't understand what the expert meant by that. The Jade Emperor shook his head. Then, he said, how did the expert reject you? He said he wasn't worthy. That meant he wasn't an immortal yet. Was the hint not obvious enough? We have to give him a title before we can give him a palace. The Empress was intrigued. Do you mean we have to give the expert a job? Careful of your words, careful of your words. What were you thinking? How can I be the Jade Emperor if the expert works here? Are you trying to kill me? The Jade Emperor went pale in an instant. He hurriedly said, we can't give him a job. Since the expert's a deluxe merit saint, we can give him the official title of the deluxe merit saint. Once we give him a respectable title, we could have given him a worthy palace, right? Chapter 385 Real Spy Operation, Start The Empress nodded in agreement. Truly the Jade Emperor. You're detail-minded and have great ideas. You were right. Sigh, why didn't I think of it at that time? The expert must be so disappointed in me. Cheng Yi frowned. She wished she could turn back time. She missed that opportunity. What a waste, what a shame. It's still fixable. Wait for future opportunities to give the expert a palace, said the Jade Emperor. Then, he asked, what next? Then, we brought the expert to the Seventh Prince's palace. The expert painted the land of mountains and rivers painting. Then, we visited the flat peach garden. Cheng Yi seemed to recall something. She suddenly went serious. Even her voice changed. She said with uncertainty, I think I heard the solution to remove the seal. What? The Empress and the Jade Emperor suddenly stared at Cheng Yi. Are you sure? Cheng Yi shook her head. I'm not sure. She paused and continued, the solution wasn't said by the expert. A kid next to the expert simply said it, but they seemed to be fooling around. They were also scolded and punished by the expert. The Jade Emperor was intrigued. You heard something? I think it's something like, becoming a being of light? Cheng Yi frowned. She could not figure out what it meant. Become a being of light. The Jade Emperor and the Empress fell into deep thought. They could not figure it out either. However, their facial expressions gradually became serious. They looked at each other and took a deep breath. They said, Cheng, it might be the solution. The Empress said softly, anyone who stayed with the expert would know a lot of things under his influence. The casual words of that kid must be because they noticed something from the expert. Too bad the expert won't allow them to speak more of it. The Jade Emperor nodded and said, the Empress and I were also servants for the Buddha back in the days. Although we just served tea, we still had a greater advantage than any genius who worked a hundred times harder than us. They couldn't compare to us. Then, he warned, remember, don't offend the expert in any way. The same goes for those around the expert. Of course, I know that. Cheng Yi nodded. Then, she asked, what should we do, then? 
How about we start from the two kids, ask them for the specific meaning? No. Scrap that idea right now. The Jade Emperor hurriedly stopped her. He said nervously, if you do that, where's your respect toward the expert? The expert's plan is the most important thing. You being so calculative will displease the expert. Cheng Yi immediately realized. She hurriedly said, you're right, Emperor. The Empress waved it off. She said, forget it. We shall pick a nice day to visit him ourselves. We should check out the Heavenly Palace first. The Jade Emperor immediately said with excitement, Ha ha, you're right, Empress. Let's hurry up and leave this lousy place. I can't wait. It was late at night when they returned from the Heavenly Palace to the four-part architecture. Li Nai and Fan Yuan then said goodbye to everyone. Then, he went back to his room to sleep. After half an hour, Da Ji and the Fire Phoenix slowly crept out of their room. They ensured they would not disturb him so they looked at each other and started walking outside. Draji waved and summoned a little fox from the woods. She hugged the little fox. Then, the little fox gently looked up and said quietly, I already gave the orders. The operation starts now. The name of the operation was. Real Spy Operation. It was an easy and direct operation. The operation involved a spy in the mix. Then, it would gradually convert and take in a second spy, and then a third. Once they had a spy of every species, they could easily overpower them. The little fox nudged her head at Daji. She changed into a comfortable position in Daji's embrace. She asked with enjoyment, Sister, where are we going? Daji petted the little fox. She smiled and said, On the way to becoming the Demon King. The little fox relaxed and moved her ears. She immediately said with admiration, Wow, sister's so awesome. Daji lifted her by the tail. She had to frown and ask, All right, stop acting cute. Why haven't you been immortalized? Immortalization's so dangerous. I heard that 8 out of 10 people die from the lightning tribulation when they're immortalized. I think it's quite nice to be a fox, I don't think I'll immortalize. The little fox was kind of scared. She did not dare to look at Daji. That won't do. Daji frowned harder. I'm here, so you'll successfully immortalize. Also, we have the master. Even the tribulations will lessen for you. The little fox flinched. Just in case. More importantly, I like being a fox. Daji was annoyed. However, it was not the time to speak about that. She said, I'll deal with you later. The fire phoenix at the side asked, just the two of us. Daji replied, I also called Dao Chang just in case. We'll meet up later. The Fire Phoenix had to say, it's a bit too safe. It's important. Our opponent's a Taiyi Golden Immortal after all. They must have a lot of tricks to defend their lives. We have to ensure safety and avoid mistakes. They chatted on the way there. Daji and the Fire Phoenix stood on clouds and traveled toward the faraway horizon. Meanwhile, two figures snuck out of the Dragon Palace. They peeked around and made sure no one was alarmed. They were Ao Feng and Ao Xu. Elder Rao Xu, what kind of opportunity is it exactly? Stop playing riddles, I'm truly itching from curiosity, rushed Ao Feng. His eyes were sparkly with excitement. Ao Xu smiled and said mysteriously, Don't worry, Prince. Would I lie to you? That day, I was being hunted and I ran for my life. But, I also got lucky from the disaster. I passed by a secret border and found a great opportunity. I'm only willing to share it with you. You didn't tell anyone, right? Ao Feng immediately said, Do I look that foolish to you? What opportunity is it? Tell me. Ao Xu reached into his pouch. Out came an orange in his hand. Take a look. What is this? An orange, right? Ao Feng looked closer and slowly realized it was extraordinary. He was about to reach for it to take it when Ao Xu hurriedly put the orange aside. You saw, right? This orange is a spiritual fruit. It's a spiritual fruit? Ao Feng was bewildered. He looked jealous. Elder Rao Xu, did you find a spiritual plant that grows oranges like that? Ao Xu nodded. Ha, that's right. Ao Feng widened his eyes. He was excited and also full of regret. He said with shame, Elder Rao Xu, I'm truly sorry. That day, I left you behind. Now, you found an opportunity and the first thing you thought of is to share it with me. I'm ashamed. Ao Xu slightly teared up from that. He said with affection, Prince, don't say that. You're the future of the Southern Sea Dragons. I'm willing to do it for you no matter what. Ao Feng was teary from being emotional. He was touched. He said, Elder Rao Xu, don't say anything anymore. From now on, you're my foster father. 
All right, Feng. Let's not delay. Hurry up and come with me. Yeah, you're right, father. We can't let others get to it first. They immediately sped up and swam further. After an hour, they arrived at a small island. Then, they slowly came out from the water. Father, are we there yet? Ao Feng was flushed from excitement. It was as if he could already see the spiritual plant. Ao Shu nodded, yeah, Feng. We're here. Then what are we waiting for? Spiritual plant, here I come. Ao Feng yelled and burst out from the sea. He caused a huge splash. Then, he jolted and realized he was trapped in an ambush. The four cultivators levitated in the air in a square. He landed right in the middle of the ambush. His smile instantly faded away. Daji had the little fox in her arms. She looked cold. The fire phoenix smirked mockingly. Her long red hair flowed with the wind. Ao Cheng and Ao Yun were on standby, ready to attack. Ao Feng was alarmed and he instantly yelled. He dived back into the sea, Father, there's an ambush. Retreat. Kaboom. However, when he dived back into the sea, the seawater exploded. A terrifying aura formed a tornado and burst into the sky. He was pushed out from the sea by a strong force as he groaned. Then, Ao Xu teared up as he blocked his path to the sea. He said, Feng, I'm sorry. Father disappointed you. Ao Feng was mind blown. He could not understand what was going on. He yelled in disbelief, Father. Why? Ao Xu replied, Feng, I'm doing what's good for you. How can you say that? You're clearly trying to kill me. Ao Feng shook and transformed into a black dragon. He roared and turned around. He was ready to escape. He knew what he had to do. He knew that it was impossible to win against them but he still had hope to escape. Did we say you could leave? The fire phoenix licked her red lips. She waved and the immortal trap rope shot out like a snake. It went towards Ao Feng. Ao Feng knew how powerful the immortal trap rope was. He frantically turned around and spat out an emerald green dragon scale. The scale grew with the wind and turned into a dragon scale shield. It shined and stopped the immortal trap rope. Just when he was about to sprint, a giant handprint landed on him like a mountain. He heard Ao Shu say, Feng, father suggests you quit. Spurt. Ao Feng did not take the hit. However, he was panicking and he was livid. He spat out blood from anger. Ao Cheng and Ao Yun attacked at the same time. Huge waves surrounded Ao Feng and turned into a water ball in the blink of an eye, trapping Ao Feng inside it. He struggled but he could not escape. Daji took out the golden gourd and cast a spell. Light instantly beamed on Ao Feng as it forcefully absorbed his spirit. The fire phoenix took out an orange at the side and simply tossed it to Ao Shu. Here, this is your reward. Ao Shu immediately said, Thanks, goddess fire phoenix. Ao Feng saw that from within the water ball. He glared hard. He could not believe what was happening in front of him at all. His voice was extremely agonized when he said, Ao Shu, you sold me out for an orange? Feng. I did this for your own good. You'll understand why in the future. Nah. Aren't you ashamed? You animal. You're the embarrassment of the Southern Sea Dragons. Suddenly, two Karens casually walked over and saw the scene. They stopped in their tracks and watched with shock. One of the Karens panicked. Not good, Elder Kiran. Something isn't right. The opportunity you speak of has been taken by someone else. Don't panic. As long as you know what to do, we'll still have opportunities. Then, the elder Kirin immediately attacked the Kirin without any warning. Bam! The Kirin was knocked over without any warning. It landed near Daji and the others. Ao Cheng and the others smiled coldly. The tension was in the air. The Kirin was horrified. It looked at the elder Kirin in disbelief. Elder Kirin, you, you. I'm a spy. On that day, a cloud flew in and landed gently at the bottom of the fallen immortal mountain. Then, Four figures slowly appeared. It was the Jade Emperor and the others. They hesitated for a long while and finally decided to visit the expert as a family. Mainly because they needed to know how to break the seal. They could not take it anymore so they rushed here. They had to ask, Empress, do you think the expert will tell us the solution? The Empress shook her head. I don't know. Let's try as best as we can. Did you bring the items I told you to prepare? Zay nodded. She smiled and said, I did. It's a great idea, Empress, giving the rainbow garment as a gift. The rainbow garment was made from clouds in the sky. Not just any ordinary clouds, it was made from clouds that were shined on by the first rainbow in thousands of years. Then, it was carefully weaved by goddesses. Although it was not a spiritual treasure, it was still beautiful, 
luxurious, and regal. It was a sign of status to wear the beautiful garment. It could even accentuate gracefulness. Girls could ignore their defense skills or whatever, but they could not ignore their beauty. Therefore, the rainbow garment was a legendary item that attracted girls. No one could resist it. The Empress brought out the treasured rainbow garment without hesitation after knowing about Li Nian Fan. On top of that, she took out four sets. One for Da Ji, one for the Fire Phoenix, one for Nanan, and one for Dragon. Ha, this is a reverse tactic. The expert wouldn't be impressed by whatever we give him, but we can please those around him. That's halfway to success. The Jade Emperor smiled. I thought of that idea. Wise idea, Emperor. Chapter 386 Nice, what a nice idea. The four of them arrived at the four-part architecture while they chatted. They all tensed up and hurriedly composed themselves. They reminded themselves and adjusted their attitudes. They were cautious. Zay walked forward and knocked three times on the door with respect. Coming. Li Nianfan could be heard. Then, with a creak, he peeked his head out from the door. Huh? Lady Z, Lady Chang? Li Nianfan looked weirdly at the visitors. Then, he said with shock, Lady Chang, you're able to leave the Heavenly Palace? He then looked at the man and the woman behind them and felt his heart thump. Their auras felt extraordinary so he guessed who they were. They did not look old but their eyes were filled with stories and they had a regal vibe. They must be someone of high status. Zi and Cheng Yi were like their servants. Cheng Yi smiled and said, Mr. Li, we got lucky. We were able to get out of the trap. This is the Jade Emperor and Empress. They really are the Jade Emperor and Empress. These two big shots also escaped? And why are they here? Awesome. It's only been a few days and they managed to escape together. I have to be steady. The bigger the big shot, the less humble I need to act. Otherwise, I will be looked down upon by the big shots. I'm the deluxe merit saint, what am I afraid of? Li Nian Fan widened his eyes. His mind was running fast. Then, he took a deep breath and said, Rare guests, what rare guests? Greetings from Li Nian Fan to the Jade Emperor and Empress. Please, come in. We'll be intruding then, saluted the Jade Emperor. Then, he said with seriousness, Greetings from Hao Tian to the Deluxe Merit Saint. Li Nianfan was startled. He immediately said, Emperor, you're too courteous. The Jade Emperor said, Mr. Li, a Deluxe Merit Saint has never appeared before. You're approved by the realm. You're on the same level as I am. Li Nianfan felt ashamed of himself. He said in embarrassment, I just got lucky. I don't deserve it and I didn't do anything to help the realm at all. I got all the deluxe merit out of nowhere. I was confused, too. Li Nianfan was being honest. He wanted to say it was just because of his golden touch. The Jade Emperor and the Empress went silent. Before they arrived, Xian Cheng Yi reminded them thrice that the expert loved to play pretend, and that it would hurt especially when he would say something significant so casually. Although they were warned, they still felt hurt when it happened. RV. Va. You already made the human sovereign, changed the realm, rebuilt the underworld, and started to fix the heavenly palace. What do you mean you didn't do anything to help the realm? No one allows you to be this humble. You were confused about having deluxe merit? I want to be that kind of confused, too. Instead, I truly am freaking confused. The emperor calmed his broken heart. He smiled and said, Ha, no matter what, Mr. Lee. You should be respected by everyone in the realm since you're the deluxe merit saint. That's an over compliment, laughed Li Nianfan. He instantly felt more comfortable with the Jade Emperor. People with high status are truly different. They know how to socialize and be approachable. They're nice to get along with. He immediately showed them into the house. He shouted, Xiao Bei, important guests are here. Hurry up, bring out the new milk tea and some fruit plates. Yes, my master, said Xiao Bei. Li Nianfan continued, sit. Come on, sit. My place is lousy compared to the heavenly palace. Please, forgive it. Ha, no, not at all, the empress and the jade emperor waved it off at the same time. They slightly freaked out. S. You have a house full of spiritual treasures. Even the chairs under our butts are made from spiritual plants. My throne, the throne of the jade emperor, isn't even as luxurious as this. You're telling me this is lousy? How can the heavenly palace compare? You must be joking. Soon, Xiao Bei came out with a tray of milk teas and fruits. Compared to the wine and tea, the milk tea looked impure. 
It was too intense and it was not transparent. It had a bright color and seemed to be boiling hot. Li Nian Fan smiled and said, This time, it's grape flavored. It's a bit sour, I hope everyone can get used to it. The Empress took the milk tea. It was warm. She smiled and said, Mr. Li, Z never stopped complimenting the delicious food here. We'll like it for sure. Then, she looked at the straw in the cup. It was a thick straw. It looked great. She sucked on it. The aroma of the milk tea instantly surprised her. A smooth sensation that she never felt before coated the tip of her tongue. The texture was velvety smooth as it flowed into her mouth. Every drop was delicious and intense in flavor. It played with her taste palate. It was hard to imagine that something so delicious could exist in the realm. It was extremely delicious. Then, she had to suck on the straw twice. The second time, she sucked a little harder than the first. A solid item was suddenly sucked into her mouth. It was soft and slippery. It tasted sour and sweet. She bit on it and realized it was a grape. Not just any ordinary grape. It was a spiritual fruit. The Empress jolted. She was pleasantly surprised like she hit the jackpot. Delicious. More importantly. Extremely valuable. If she placed this milk tea together with the flat peaches, the Empress had no doubt most people would choose the milk tea. Good tea, good grapes, good milk. Li Nai and Fan observed their facial expressions. He noticed that they were pleasantly surprised and instantly knew they liked it. He smiled and asked, How's the taste? The Jade Emperor genuinely said, Delicious. To be honest, I've been the Jade Emperor for countless years, but I've never eaten anything this delicious before. Mr. Li, you're truly talented. The Empress smiled and said, If only we knew you earlier, Mr. Li. We could have asked for your expert advice before my flat peach ceremony. Li Nianfen was in a great mood. Ha, as long as you like it. Don't just drink the milk tea, have some fruits. They're freshly plucked from my backyard, absolutely fresh. The Jade Emperor and Empress nodded at the same time. They felt kind of awkward looking at how he treated his guests. Back when the Heavenly Palace was at its prime, they only treated important guests with ambrosia. Compared to the expert, they did poorly. Why am I the Lord of the Heavenly Palace? I should just spend my days here and eat free food. What a tough life I have. Everyone got along well. The Empress threw Zay a look. Zay instantly understood it and took out the rainbow garments. She said, Mr. Lee, this is a token of appreciation from the Heavenly Palace. Please, accept it. Lee Nianfen looked at the clothes. He was kind of surprised. The four sets of garments were shining. Two were small, and two were large. The colors seemed to be changing with the light like a rainbow in the sky. It felt soft and light. Anyone could tell the clothes were extraordinary and expensive. Aesthetically, it looked extremely cool. Expensive, beautiful, and high-end were not enough to describe those garments. The first reaction of Lee Nianfen was to reject it. He shook his head and said, It's too rare and expensive, I can't take it. Cheng Yi said, Mr. Lee, these are just clothes. They aren't even considered spiritual treasures, so they're not that rare. Also, they suit Lady Daji and the others very well. I bet they'll like it. Li Nian Fan raised his brow and looked at Daji and the others. Daji looked at the rainbow garment calmly. Although she was calm, she kept staring at it. That meant something was up. The acting skills of the Fire Phoenix were not as good as Daji. Her eyes were filled with admiration. Nanan and Dragon were different. They astoundingly widened their eyes. Their mouths mouthed wow. You could tell that they wanted to touch the garments. Women. So troublesome. This. Li Nianfan struggled. He could not accept any rewards without doing anything. It was easy to accept things but it felt wrong. He had an idea. He asked probingly, You're too courteous but may I ask if there's anything I need to do? The Empress sighed and replied, Mr. Li, you're too smart. We did have something we wanted your help with. Mr. Li, Zi and Cheng previously heard about the solution to remove the seal from your kids. The Jade Emperor gulped. He asked nervously, may I know what the solution is? The Jade Emperor and the others did not dare to breathe. They avoided eye contact and did not dare to look at Li Nianfan. Seconds passed by like years. Their hair stood on ends as they waited for his reply. They thought about it a lot and finally decided it was best to be straightforward. This. Li Nianfan looked like he realized something. Then, he felt troubled. He had to glare at Nanan and Dragon. These two immature brats. They spoke nonsense and now they've caused me trouble. 
The solution to remove the Heavenly Palace seal was naturally very important to the Jade Emperor and the Empress. No wonder they came to visit and even prepared expensive gifts. But the problem is. The solution is nonsense. He forced himself to smile as he said, to be honest, the kids were just talking nonsense, you can't take them seriously. I'm sorry to disappoint you. Cheng Yi clenched her small fist. She anxiously looked at Li Nai and Fan and said, Mr. Li, no matter what it is, we're willing to try. It. Sigh. Li Nai and Fan had no choice. He groaned for a moment and said, Actually, this solution. It. Nanan, you and Dragon did this. Tell them yourselves. It was too idiotic. He could not say it. He blamed it on Nanan and Dragon. Nanan and Dragon could not wait. They instantly chimed in. Sister Chen Yi, there's only one way to revive the stone statues, which is to become a being a light. Yeah, as long as everyone believes in the immortals, there will be light. The world fell into darkness because a lot of people don't believe in immortals anymore. Li Nai and Fan painfully shut his eyes. He pretended he did not hear anything. However, the Jade Emperor and the others were very serious. Their eyes widened as they breathed harder. Then, their faces were flushed from excitement. They looked like they realized something, as if someone woke them up. I see, I see. The Jade Emperor kept nodding. He looked like he had learned something. He exclaimed in a trembling voice, Nice, what a nice idea. Chapter 387 Preach, Household Tale Nice? Nice how? Li Nianfan thought he heard it wrong. He opened his eyes. He saw the Jade Emperor and the others standing from excitement. They all looked like they were hopeful. No way, do you really think there's nothing wrong with the solution? Are you serious? The Jade Emperor analyzed, it's just like how the markings of the realm got wiped out when the Heavenly Palace ceased. If everyone knows the Heavenly Palace is still here and believes in the Heavenly Palace, we'll have deluxe merit from the faith of the people. We can use it to break the seal. The Empress kept nodding. She said with understanding, that's right, it's a great plan. Why didn't we think of it before? Awesome. We got this. They were irrecoverably excited. The expert's truly the expert. This hard situation is just a small case to him, he easily found the solution. If it were us, we won't even know how long it'll take before we can think of that. Li Nai and Fan had to gently cough. He said, everyone, I think you should all calm down. The Jade Emperor and the others instantly jolted. They hurriedly stopped smiling and adjusted their attitudes. How could we forget our composures in front of the expert? We shouldn't have done that. They hurriedly sat back down with caution. Sorry about that. Li Nai and Fan saw how excited they were, and they were convinced that it would work. He did not want to say anything that would hurt them, so he asked, What do you all think about the solution? The Jade Emperor said, It's spot on. It'll probably work. Li Nai and Fan nodded and asked, What are you planning to do then? Um. The Jade Emperor was stumped. He looked confused. He had to look at the Empress and ask, Empress, what do you think? The Empress slightly frowned and groaned. She said, Since we need the people to believe in the immortals of the Heavenly Palace, the most important thing would be to spread the news. Soon, the four of them looked at each other. They were a bit clueless. They knew the solution but when it came down to specifics, they did not know what to do. How? The Jade Emperor and the Empress fell into deep thought. They frowned. Are we going to give out flyers on the streets? Zay at the side said, it's kind of like preaching. The Buddhists would know what to do, maybe we should pay them a visit? Cheng Yi suggested at the side, we can also ask for help from the underworld. At that moment, they realized that humans were very important. The humans were directly related to the deluxe merit they needed. They were truly the elites of the realm. Li Nai and Fan noticed that they looked troubled. He hesitated for a moment and finally said, If you're sure that you want to carry on with this solution, I might be able to help. He did not know whether it would work. However, since everyone made up their minds to accept the solution, Li Nai and Fan felt like he had to help. After all, the Jade Emperor and the Empress were so courteous. He should do something for them, too. You have methods, Mr. Li? The Jade Emperor was overjoyed. He hurriedly saluted and said, Please, teach me, Mr. Li. Li Nai and Fan smiled and said, It's not that deep, but I'm an ordinary man after all. I'm more familiar with ordinary people. Everyone nodded in agreement. If the big shot said he was an ordinary man, then an ordinary man he was. Li Nai and Fan structured his sentence and said, Um, if you want to let the people know about the Heavenly Palace, 
let the people be familiar with it. The best way to do so is through stories. Stories will be passed on. It's best to create a household tale. Household tale? Zay had a thought. She asked without thinking, Mr. Lee, do you mean like Journey to the West kind of story? You could say that, nodded Lee Nian Fan. Chang Yi asked curiously, but. Journey to the West is already well known. Why aren't there any signs of the Heavenly Palace's revival? I think it might be because of the characters. Journey to the West simplifies the Heavenly Palace in the story. The main focus is on Wukong. It's not quite powerful enough. Li Nian Fan put it nicely. Truthfully, the Journey to the West TV series also focused on Wukong. Humph, if it wasn't for the orders from the Buddha, I wouldn't have backed down and gone along with it. The Jade Emperor and the Empress did not look happy at all. Their flat peach ceremony was ruined and it was a huge embarrassment for the Heavenly Palace. Li Nian Fan instantly looked curious. He asked casually, Can you tell me the details? Back then, the Buddha was fighting with Luoho. Luoho ruined the western areas, which caused the west side to be poor. The people didn't have faith. Jia Yin and Thun Ti made up their minds to help the people in the west to have faith again. Therefore, they gained deluxe merit and were able to become saints. The Jade Emperor reminisced. He continued, it could be said that the deluxe merit was borrowed from the realm. The two western saints wanted to fulfill their wishes as soon as possible, so they did anything they could. Their methods were too extreme, but the people were indeed poor, so the Buddha naturally helped them. During the investitures of the gods, the heavenly palace gained the most benefits. The western religion did not benefit as much as we did. During the journey to the west, the west got to improve and grow speedily. Li Nian Fan nodded. He knew about the legendary stories but he did not know the context. He learned something new. The Empress smiled and said, It's a shame that the West was destroyed by Luoho in the end. That is how it goes. There's no smoke without fire. I can only say that karma has its own ways. I see. Li Nian Fan nodded. He paused, then said, I think that if we want the people to believe in the Heavenly Palace, the important focus shouldn't be on the Heavenly Palace. It should be on the characters instead. Characters? The Jade Emperor and the others looked confused. They felt like they could learn something new with each moment around the expert. They asked, why so? Li Nian Fan smiled and replied, people only recognize one thing. The fastest way for people to recognize something is through characters. You can list out the characters in the Heavenly Palace and choose the ones that can best represent the Heavenly Palace. It's better if they went through struggles, and it's even better if they have a tragic backstory. Then, make it a household tale. People will have a deep impression on the Heavenly Palace by then. Choose representative characters of the Heavenly Palace? The Jade Emperor immediately went serious. He asked, Mr. Li, what do you think about me and the Empress? We served the Buddha for countless years and we slew a lot of evil demons. We're the Jade Emperor and Empress of the Heavenly Palace. I would say that leaves quite an impression. Obviously not. Li Nian Fan shook his head without hesitation. You two did leave an alright impression. But that's not the point. There's no emotional backstory. No tear-jerking incidents. The character development's poor, it won't leave an impression on the people. It'll be doomed to fail. The Jade Emperor and the others struggled to think of anyone. Li Nian Fan decided to give them some hints. He said, you can think of more examples around you, especially the ones with a romantic story. The Jade Emperor and the others started to recall their memories. Some incidents were similar to legendary stories. Li Nian Fan had not heard of them, but they were not a big deal. Li Nian Fan also realized that the seventh princess, Zi, had not met Dong Yong yet. She had not experienced the cowherd and the weaver girl love story. Maybe it had not happened yet, or maybe there was a mix-up with reality and the legendary stories, but it was none of his business. Suddenly, the Empress had an idea. She said, Jade Emperor, do you remember your sister and this? Really? It's a shame in our family. The Jade Emperor looked troubled. He looked at Li Nian Fan and said, Back then, my sister, Yao Ji, married an ordinary man and gave birth to a son and a daughter. Their names are Yang Jian and Yang Chan. Years later, Yang Chan also married an ordinary man and gave birth to a son. The Jade Emperor sighed heavily. It was hard for him. His sister and his niece both liked ordinary men. Their tastes in men were troubling. He did not see it coming. What about you guys? Didn't you stop them? Li Nian Fan cared more for that question. Of course, we did. We also fought. They don't see that I'm just looking out for them. The Jade Emperor sighed. Then, he said, 
I understand the mind of an immortal. Back then, the Buddha created marriage that was all about yin and yang, all about harmony. It's just the way it is. How can an immortal and an ordinary person last forever? They don't have the same bodies. Years will pass by in the blink of an eye. You haven't even enjoyed it yet and that part will already be old and useless. Li Nai and Fan processed that phrase and felt like the Jade Emperor made a dirty joke. His point of view was quite fascinating. Li Nai and Fan felt like an immortal should not be with an ordinary person because one would grow old and die. Their ages were not compatible. However, the Jade Emperor had a different angle, he considered that part of compatibility. What did he experience to have such a unique state of mind? However, Li Nai and Fan confirmed that there were mix-ups in legendary stories and reality. The Jade Emperor was not as extreme in opposing their love as how the legendary stories described. Nothing bad happened to his sister. Every problem she faced was reasonable. The Jade Emperor was a lord, and he was the student of the Buddha. His sister fell in love with an ordinary man, so he had to oppose it. However, he was not as violent as described. No idiot would attack his sister either. This is a nice setting. There's an ordinary man in the story so it's relatable. But it still won't work, there aren't enough obstacles. Li Nai and Fan started to help them fill in the story. You should oppose their love strongly, send someone to hunt him down. Then, banish your sister or your niece to the ends of the world. Let them go through struggles. Li Nai and Fan told the story while everyone went serious because he was talking about them. They could fully immerse themselves in the stories, it was fascinating. A goddess and an ordinary man fell in love because of a coincidental meeting. Their love was opposed. In the end, they had a happy ending. Li Nai and Fan finished the story without thinking about it. By the end of the story, Cheng Yi and Zai had tears streaming down their faces. Their shoulders slightly trembled from the sobbing. Their romantic teenage girl hearts were enslaved by the tragic love story. Nanan and Dragon were also touched. They said with sympathy, I feel like this love story is more touching than Sister Yi Yi and Jesus' love story. Li Nai and Fan analyzed, because this story has three parts. The happiness when they were in love, the pain when they were separated, and the hard work they did to get back that happiness. Plus, the emotional incidents along the story make people feel something. The Jade Emperor snapped out from the story. He started to question his life. I can't believe I'm such an animal. Li Nai and Fan said awkwardly, it's necessary to add in some opposing elements in the story. If you feel like it's inappropriate, we can change it, Jade Emperor. The Jade Emperor said, no need. It's indeed a good story. It's also your hard work, Mr. Li. We can't waste it. Li Nai and Fan added, apart from that, we need to have positive stories, too. Like how the Jade Emperor saved the people from demons, or how he supervised the realm and made sure everything was alright. Everyone listened closely with a serious face. They were fearful with respect. They felt like they could fully immerse themselves in his stories. They did not grow impatient at all. Subconsciously, they also learned a lot. They chatted. The sky turned dark before they realized it. Li Nai and Fan ate an orange that Daji passed to him. Then, he smiled and said, there's something more important than the story. The Jade Emperor naturally saluted and said with respect, please, teach me, Mr. Li. That was the eighth time he did that. The Honorable Jade Emperor was like a repetitive machine. Stories exist in people's hearts but they aren't convincing enough. The best deal is for them to see it. Li Nai and Fan held his chin and groaned for a moment. That requires a live performance. We need a script and proper actors. The location should be suitable, too. Goddess Guzairu invited me to an end-of-the-year cultivators event last time. Maybe you should use that as a reference. Zhe was instantly intrigued. Can we use the end-of-the-year event? Li Nai and Fan shook his head. It's a cultivator's event. How many ordinary people will be there? It won't be powerful enough. We can invite more humans, said the Empress. She chimed in, we can change the event into an ordinary end of the year event. What do you think, Mr. Li? That, could work. Li Nai and Fan nodded. He was suddenly looking forward to the event. It would probably be nice and crowded. He had to suggest, we have an audience. As for the performance script, how about I write it for you? Chapter 388 End of the Year Event Discussion, Borrow Us Your Spear The Jade Emperor and the others immediately said, Thank you so much. Li Nai and Fan smiled. He had too many legendary stories in his mind, any one of them could be turned into a script. However, he had very few stories that could be an impressionable performance. 
your performance will be different from the usual performance. You have to bring out your acting skills. Lee Nye and Fanfust. He said, this story is the cowherd and the weaver girl. He immediately told the story. As expected, everyone cried again. Everyone had to present the story well. Lee Nye and Fan asked, oh, are there any objections on the hairpin transforming into the galaxy part? Are we able to do that? The Empress was slightly stumped. She asked, objections? It's not hard. Why would we object to it? Is there anything we need to take notice of? All right, I see that being weak and puny limits my imagination. They can transform any galaxy at will. Immortals are awesome. Li Nianfan was super envious. He coughed softly, no, I was just asking. Never mind. The Jade Emperor stood up and said, Mr. Li, thanks for solving our problems. It's getting late, we won't disturb your rest anymore. Goodbye. Li Nianfan also stood up. He smiled and saluted, safe travels. He paused. He smiled and said, oh yeah, if the plan is confirmed, let me know. I can check out how the event will be prepared and decorated. I'll also participate. Li Nianfan was not surprised that the Jade Emperor and Empress would easily decide to change the end of the year event. Who in their right mind would oppose the two big shots? The Jade Emperor immediately said, don't worry, Mr. Li. We will, we will. They walked out of the four-part architecture. The Jade Emperor and the others naturally did not need to rest. They rushed to the Lynxian Palace. Soon, they were on top of the Lynxian Palace. The Lynxian Palace at that moment was still bustling. Music could be heard, too. A lot of disciples gathered at the field in unison. They had zithers in front of them. They worked hard to practice. The zither music was like a fresh summer breeze. It was very enjoyable. Gu Ziru, Yao Mengji, and Qin Manyun supervised and directed them at the side. They all looked serious. They were responsible for choosing and eliminating the candidates. While they were giving directions and advice, they would also point out what was lacking. Yao Mengji could be heard. He said with seriousness, be aware, this event has to be greater than a cultivator battle event. It's a great honor for you to be able to perform for a big shot. Work hard. Ensure that nothing goes wrong when you're on stage. Be attentive, said Gu Ziru at the side. This is a legendary tune given to us by the expert. This is his trust in us. We can't let it go to waste. Suddenly, Chin Manyun shouted, change the music. Jam, jam. The disciples lifted their hands at the same time. They plucked the zither strings with their fingers and the music turned serious. Tension filled the air. Zay flew in from afar. She smiled and greeted, Goddess Gu, it's so late and you're still rehearsing. Gu Ziru, Yao Mengji, and Chin Manyun were startled at the same time. Then, they all flew to the air and welcomed her. Don't stop, continue with your practice. I want to see your effort. Gu Ziru scolded. Then, she greeted Zay. Goddess Zi, why are you here at this hour? She looked at the Jade Emperor and the others. She instantly felt overwhelmed. A terrifying aura came over her and she could not breathe. It was as if she was an ordinary person meeting the king. She instantly looked horrified. Zi smiled and said, Don't panic, Goddess Gu. They're the Jade Emperor and Empress. This is my sister. They escaped because the expert helped. Gu Ziru and the others panicked harder. They hurriedly bowed and said, Greetings to the Emperor and the Empress. They were the lords of the Heavenly Palace. They were in charge of all the immortals, and they were big shots who had a flat peach garden. Although things were not like what it once was, it was still unimaginable for them. If ordinary cultivators got on their good side, they would be instantly successful. No need to be so courteous, said the Empress gently. She gracefully glanced at the band. She said, the music of this cultivation sect is so extraordinary. The tunes are so fresh. Gu Ziru said, Empress, the two songs, High Mountains and Flowing Rivers, and Ambush, were all given by the expert. We got lucky. I see. No wonder. The Jade Emperor and Empress nodded understandingly. They said, it's your blessing to be given something by the expert. It's the expert's approval and your breakthrough. You're right, Empress. We're truly lucky. Goddess Gu asked carefully, Emperor, Empress, do you want to have a seat in our sect? The Jade Emperor nodded. Sure. We have business to discuss, too. Everyone sat in place. Gu Ziru looked agonized. She clenched her jaw and decided to bring out the most valuable treasure in the Lynxian Palace. It was, the limited fruits and tea given by the expert. Ha, we just got back from the expert's place. You don't have to do that, 
Goddess Ku. The Empress immediately laughed. Then, she asked, I heard from Z that you guys are planning the end of the year event for the expert? Gu Zairu nodded, Yes, Empress. The Empress said, We just got some assignments from the expert. We plan to change the end of the year event, so we came here to discuss it. Feel free to say so, Empress. Gu Zairu and the others instantly sat up straight. They did not dare object to anything that relates to the expert and the Jade Emperor. Everyone immediately started to present and discuss their opinions. They all looked serious. The aura was very dense, too. It was very strict and serious, as if they were having a meeting about a realm-changing war. Finally, the Empress concluded, Firstly, the previous end of the year event was too low class. Most performers were ordinary cultivators. It isn't enough, and we have to improve it. I'll be handling that. Secondly, the final performance will be a performance from the Heavenly Palace. The performance has to be well planned. Thirdly, the location. The expert suggests we do it in the Immortal Realm. The location part was neglected on her side. Yao Mengji sighed. He suddenly started to reflect. The expert lives as an ordinary man. The end of the year event originated from humans, too. We should have held it in the Immortal Realm. It was truly a bad choice on our part. Gu Zairu asked, Mengji, where do you think we should have the event? Yao Mengji replied, naturally somewhere with immortals. I think we can choose somewhere near the fallen town, but not at the fallen immortal mountain because that's the expert's peaceful home. We can't allow anything to go wrong there. Zhu nodded and said, it's a nice suggestion, and it shouldn't be hard for people like us to create a performance space near the fallen town. What do you think, Emperor? The Jade Emperor nodded and smiled, yes. And the expert said that he wanted to participate in the event decorations. Setting it nearby would be convenient for the expert. The expert wants to participate in the event decorations? Gu Zairu was pleasantly surprised. She hurriedly said, we have to prepare it well then. It'd be best if we can see some results by tomorrow. So, we confirmed our initial planning. We shall see what the expert has to say in the future. The empress smiled and said, we won't be delaying you. We'll contact the others and create a variety of performances. Farewell, Emperor, Empress. They left the Lynxian Palace. The Jade Emperor and the others headed straight to the Eastern Sea. What? An end of the year event for the expert? Ao Cheng widened his eyes and jumped up from his throne. Such a big event. Why didn't you tell me sooner? You have to count me in. My sea creatures are ordinary except when it comes to performing. We're born naturals. Tortoise Chancellor, Tortoise Chancellor. Ao Cheng could not wait to start planning. Spread my orders. Gather for an emergency sea meeting. Clam demons, mermaids, and snake demons should all be candidates for singing and dance performances. Ayun glared from the side. He had to sigh. My western sea dragons are gone. Otherwise, I would have planned a good performance for the expert, too. Then, the Jade Emperor and the Empress visited the trusty human sovereign. At that time, Zhou Yunwu and Meng Junliang were discussing the end of the year event. They were choosing and eliminating various performances. At the same time, they were thinking of how to invite the expert to attend the event. They suddenly received the news and immediately scrapped their initial plan. They passionately joined in. That night was fated to be a non-peaceful night. Big Lord Demon was kneeling somewhere facing a dark hole. He had injuries all over. Even his face was slightly disfigured. He cried, I don't mean to disturb you, Lord Demon God. However, Lord Demon's dead. The Kirans were boastful, they dared to attack us. The realm's changing and the demons are in danger. Please, give us some advice, Lord Demon God." The demons quietly waited for a response. However, it was silent. The Lord Demon God's an expert sleeper. We called several times but there are no signs of him waking up. Big Lord Demon sighed. He stood up and said, let's go. We failed again. The Lord Demon God's still in his slumber. Suddenly, a demon disciple rushed in. Big Lord Demon, there are Asura people outside that came to visit. Big Lord Demon raised his eyebrow. Bring them to the lobby. Soon, he arrived at the lobby. A lady in a red dress stood at the center. She smiled as she looked at Big Lord Demon. She said, the Lord Demon's dead. Big Lord Demon is now the leader of the demons. Congratulations. Big Lord Demon looked defensive. He said coldly, no need. You came from the bloody sea, what do you need? The lady in the red dress moved closer and wrapped her thin arms around Big Lord Demon. She said seductively, Please, Big Lord Demon. Borrow us your spear. 
Chapter 389 Maybe You Misunderstood Performances Big Lord Demon backed up. He did not look happy at all. He alarmingly shook his head and said, No way. This spear is the basis of the demons. We won't lend it to others. The lady in red smiled and said, Those were the words of Lord Demon. Lord Demon's dead now, so you get to decide who borrows it. Moreover, borrowing us the spear is beneficial for both of us. Big Lord Demon sounded determined, I get to decide, and I still decide not to lend it to you. He furrowed his brow. He had to sigh because he could not make up his mind. That was a moment that showed the importance of good leadership. Back then, no matter what the Asura kind had to say, Lord Demon would confidently reject them. Even if Lord Demon God was in deep slumber, Lord Demon would never allow the Asura kind to become powerful. However, things had changed. More importantly, Lord Demon passed away too suddenly. He did not even leave his will. It was a troubling situation for Big Lord Demon. Big Lord Demon, the situation now is detrimental for you demons. The lady in red chuckled. She said, demons are supposed to rise when Buddhism falls. You finally waited till the day came but now, you have all these unnecessary changes. All these failures, even your lord demon died for no reason. What else can you do next? The simple question left big lord demon stumped. The lady in red noticed that big lord demon did not respond. She continued, so. How about you borrow the god killing spear to us asuras? Help us remove the seal of our master. We can change things around. It'll be good for both of us. Big Lord Demon hesitated. What's in it for the demons if we free your master? My master's acquainted with your Lord Demon God. We'll help you out if you run into trouble. Also, the people that the demons aren't able to attack, we're able to. The lady in red paused. Then, she said, this is the best solution by far. You demons have Lord Demon God. Are you seriously worried that the Asura kind will attack the demons? Big Lord Demon felt conflicted. His mind was running in circles. In the end, he nodded and said, Okay. You made quite some sense. But I need you to help us attack the Kirins. The demons were weak at the moment. He had a grudge with the Kirins, too. He also had no other choice. The lady in red naturally agreed. She asked, He he, of course. Where's the spear? This is an important matter. Follow me. The next day. The warm sun peeked its head out from the clouds and chased away the darkness. Light was brought to the realm. It was early in the morning. Zay visited Li Nai and found to invite him for the event preparations. The end of the year event was located at the east side. It was a huge space. When Li Nai and Fan arrived, the venue had been cleared up. The roads were clean and tidy. A lot of familiar faces had gathered there, too. They were rehearsing in an orderly manner. They all hurriedly greeted Li Nai and Fan when they saw him. Cheng Yi passed him a golden piece of paper with tidy words printed on it. Mr. Li, we followed your suggestion. I've listed the performances here. Li Nianfan looked at the performance list with curiosity. The others tensed up. They nervously observed his facial expression. They were afraid that the expert would not be impressed by the performances. There were not many performances, just eight in total. However, Li Nianfan knew that there was a ninth performance, the final performance. The first performance. Pageant performance of the three sea beauties. Li Nianfan looked at Ao Cheng. He smiled and said, Brother Ao, this is the performance you prepared, right? You know us so well, Mr. Li. It is, Ao Cheng said in response. Then, he said, I brought the performers. We can show it to you now, Mr. Li. He gestured with a wave and twenty figures jogged over. They were all ladies of the sea and they looked extremely beautiful. They were chosen beauties of the sea, too. They looked very anxious because they knew they were being assessed by the big shot. Ao Cheng said with seriousness, put some effort into the performance. The 20 sea ladies immediately went into formation and started to dance. The three species of sea ladies had different styles. However, their bodies were extremely great. Their dances were light and seductive, plus they were wearing very little clothing. It was fantastic to look at. They were truly the three beauties of the sea. He had to say that the dance formation was a killer performance. If it appeared in his past realm, the performance would have gone viral on the internet for sure. However, Li Nian Fan frowned. He did not speak. He waited until the dance performance was over. Then, he said, Brother Ao Cheng, I think this performance of yours is slightly inappropriate. Ao Cheng instantly focused. He hurriedly asked, Mr. Li, are there any dissatisfactions? Or are you displeased with someone among the performers? 
the performance is good, the performers are beautiful, too. It's just the setting that's unsuitable. Lee Nye and Fanpost. He said, your performance should be focused on showcasing the sea people. It's not supposed to please the crowd. I think you can change your performance into a sea people showcase. You have beauty, but you also need strength. The performance was a public show. To put it more straightforwardly, it was vulgar. Lee Nye and Fan felt like Hao Chang misunderstood what a public performance was. It was eye-catching, but would the people like it? Hao Chang immediately promised, Don't worry, Mr. Lee. I'll improve it. The second performance, a zither performance. High mountains and flowing water. The third performance, water and fire battle. Then, Lee Nye and Fan watched the performances according to the performance list. He gave some suggestions and advice from time to time. Truthfully, the performances were flawless for the immortal realm that lacked entertainment, especially when the crowd was ordinary people. Each performance was fantastic. Unless it was a misdirected performance like Hao Chang's, Li Nian Fan had nothing much to comment on. Suddenly, several figures flew in from the fallen town's direction. Black and white impermanence led the way. They looked flustered. Mr. Li, Emperor, Empress. Black and white impermanence said straightforwardly. Why didn't you guys tell us about the big end of the year event? If we weren't informed by the Fallen Town City God Temple, we would have missed this. White Impermanence moved aside. He introduced, Mr. Lee, look at the ghosts behind me, what do you think? They can all sing and dance. We found out about the event and instantly picked them. Count us in on that performance list. Lee Nyan Fan looked at the pale-faced ghosts. He smiled awkwardly and said, Brother White, ghosts and humans don't go well together. This, is unsuitable. It really can't be helped. The audience would be full of ordinary people. The ghosts were willing to perform for the ordinary people, but would the ordinary people dare to watch? The thought of it was chilling. Mr. Lee, don't reject us so quickly. The ghosts of the underworld are very talented. Black Impermanence hurriedly tried to fix it. He pushed out a ghost and said, perform a beheading for Mr. Lee. The ghost immediately plucked his head off without a second word. Li Nianfen was a knowledgeable man but he was frightened by that unexpected action. Black Impermanence continued, and this do, perform a tongue trick. Another ghost stepped out and opened her mouth. A bloody tongue fell out and rolled to the floor. Black Impermanence was proud of it. How is it? These performances are fresh, right? It'll entertain the people for sure. Li Nianfen shut his eyes. He did not dare to look. This is a performance event, not a horror movie theater. The Jade Emperor noticed that Li Nian Fan did not look well. He hurriedly gestured, drag them away, hurry up and drag them away. What is this? Black Impermanence still said, if it's not acceptable, we can improve it. Please, give us a chance. Li Nian Fan said, no more chances. I think you guys have misunderstood what a performance is more than Brother Rao Chang did. It's not suitable, it's really not. This isn't for you. He was worried that if he allowed the Underworld to participate, a bunch of audiences would pass away with terror. Black and white impermanence looked down. They sighed and felt like they could not help the expert. Perhaps we ghosts just don't have performing talents in us? Suddenly, Li Nianfan thought of something. He said, Emperor, Empress, I suddenly thought of something. Even if the end of the year event is grand, it would only attract the nearby humans to come watch it, right? The Jade Emperor was helpless about that. Indeed so. Li Nianfan asked, then, can we use spells to set up a television in each area so that other people from other cities can watch it? Television? The Jade Emperor and Empress did not understand. Li Nian Fan explained, our performances here could be projected to other areas at the same time. The Jade Emperor and Empress jumped. They instantly understood it. They immediately had new ideas, followed by a joyful feeling. We can. We can do that with our powers. The Jade Emperor immediately smiled. Then, he laughed and exclaimed, in that case, we could save time and effort. We can get a lot of people to believe in the heavenly palace in a short amount of time. Nice, this is too nice. My powers are capable of doing so, why didn't I think of it? They could achieve their desired effect in one night when it originally needed hundreds of years. The original 10,000 audiences could instantly become millions of audiences. The Empress was also excited. She hurriedly thanked the expert, Mr. Lee. Your idea is too important for the Heavenly Palace. Thank. You. You're welcome, Empress. It was just a thought. Li Nian Fan smiled and said, 
I only thought of it because I saw black and white impermanence. A lot of places have city god temples now. The effect of projecting the event through city god temples must be fantastic. However, I'm afraid we'll have to trouble the underworld. Black and white impermanence instantly turned their frowns upside down. They said, no trouble at all. Don't worry, Mr. Lee. We got this. Chapter 390 The Situation, The Current Villains A month passed by in the blink of an eye. Lee Nai and Fan lived leisurely. He was the director of the Heavenly Palace, the Sea Kind, the Underworld, and the Humans. He was responsible for giving directions. Even in front of all the big shots, it was an easy job for someone with his talents. He would return to the four-part architecture at night to rest. He would go to the venue and direct in the daytime. He would chat with the Jade Emperor and the others while he was free. It was nice. Li Nai and Fan also felt vain whenever the actors would listen to his directions attentively. It was hard to imagine that he came this far without noticing it. He must be considered a big shot in the realm. Li Nai and Fan discovered interesting stories of the legendary characters through the many chats. He also had a clearer picture of the situation. In conclusion, it was a replacement of an era. To quote Wu Kong, the Jade Emperor title takes turns, it's my turn this year. The realm was changing. Hidden forces or ambitious people had appeared. Some liked to live in peace. They wished everyone could be happy. Some liked to see the world burn so they could benefit from it. The Jade Emperor, the Underworld, and the dragons became species of the past who wanted to bring back their glory days. The opposers were defenders of the new era who wanted to change the realm. In other words, once they eliminated the Jade Emperor and the others, they could rule the world. Li Nai and Fan had to say, the situation in the realm still can't differ from battles. He unconsciously befriended all the past big shots. Hence, he already chose sides without considering it. However, he was not worried. First of all, Li Nai and Fan felt like the Jade Emperor was trustworthy. Combining his knowledge of the legendary stories, no one was more powerful than the Jade Emperor apart from the saints. The Empress was also the second most powerful being in the realm. They were students of the Buddha. As for how to Empress in the underworld, she was also quite powerful. Moreover, he was a deluxe merit saint. His defense was great. He could just sit by and watch. Everyone drank alcohol at the venue. The news of the event was out. Immortals promised that it would be good and everyone was exhilarated. The fallen town was bustling. However, the event venue was still on lockdown so no one dared to trespass. They were all very excited. The Jade Emperor nodded and agreed, You're right, Mr. Lee. Since the beginning of time, the realm was always filled with battles among various species or clans. That's how the catastrophe started. Zhou Yunwu also said, It's too hard to avoid war. It's almost impossible. He was the human sovereign. He only experienced a fraction of the war from the prehistoric world. Even humans fought internally. It could not be helped. Li Nai and Fan had already let it be. Wars and battles were a constant occurrence. He cared more about protecting himself. He asked, Emperor, do you know any powerful beings that still exist in this realm? The Jade Emperor groaned for a moment. He shook his head and sighed softly, I'm not sure. After the catastrophe, Dao Tzu said that those who were stronger than Daluo Golden Immortals would not be in the immortal realm anymore. Then, everyone either hid or they were sealed. But now, the absolute era seems to be over. I've been sealed for so many years, I'm not sure who's still alive. Li Nai and Fan frowned. It was a difficult situation. There could be a lot of saints, and there should be a lot of Daluo Golden Immortals. He could confirm the enemies. The demons, the Southern Sea Dragons, and the Kirans. The three clans were hard to deal with. The demons were more troubling. Their main target the demons. They also had Luoho as their powerful and terrifying boss. The Southern Sea Dragons had something called the Dragon Soul Pearl. It seemed to be a legendary treasure that would make them instantly powerful. Kind of like those ultimate bosses in his past realm novels. Maybe they would be the biggest threat. The Kirans were unpredictable. He did not know how powerful they were but they were one of the strongest species in the realm. They must be difficult to deal with. Suddenly, two figures flew in from afar. They were tall and buff and had an ox head and a horse face. They were easily identifiable. Their voices were hoarse and ferocious. They bowed at everyone and greeted, greetings to Mr. Lee, the Jade Emperor, and the Empress. Then, they looked at the table behind everyone. They stared at it and almost salivated. Black Impermanence said, Brother Ox, Brother Horse, why aren't you guys guarding the reincarnation area? What are you doing here? Oxhead glared. 
He moved angrily and said, that's easy for you to say. Why don't you go and guard the reincarnation area? Black and white impermanence, you two spend all day eating good food and drinking nice booze, living a leisurely life while we brothers work hard at the underworld. Won't your conscience hurt? Horse face pointed at black and white impermanence. He yelled and scolded, look at my sexy horse mane, it's almost bald. He said while brushing out his little braid. His hair flowed in the wind. They felt bitter. Their jobs were already hard, but it was tougher to see black and white impermanence living so lavishly. They endured it for too long. They thought of the delicious food and finally snuck out from the underworld. Lean Eye and Fan smiled and said, Guys, take a seat since you're here. Thanks, Mr. Lee. We'll be intruding then. Oxhead and Horseface were instantly overjoyed. They did not try to be courteous either. They took a glass of wine after sitting down. Sorry to intrude. We'll punish ourselves with a glass of wine. Then, they drank it in one go. Oxhead and Horseface instantly squinted in enjoyment. Nice, this is a nice life. Lean Eye and Fan smiled and asked, You two snuck out without permission. Will everything be alright? It's fine. We trained some Onis recently. They know what to do. As long as it's not an emergency, they'll be fine. Oxhead looked at Meng Jun Leong. He said, Mr. Meng, I know you're a teacher, too. You have to prep these students and make sure they're ready. We'll be waiting for their job applications down there. Horse Face also said, King Zhou, Mr. Meng, we're workers of the underworld. Hence, we have to give you a heads up. Zhou Yunwu and Meng Jun Leong said at the same time, we appreciate further details. The realm works by its own laws. For an ordinary man, death and sickness are the natural paths of life. But for someone of your status, you can naturally elongate your life using cultivator's medicine. It's just a temporary fix, but if you forcefully try to buy more time, it'll be recorded on the death note. Unless you transcend into cultivation, it'd be considered as bad karma. Horse face pussed. He continued, all living beings will die. They have the chance to be hired by us. If they forcefully try to prolong their lives, they'll become sinners. Not only would we not hire them, but they'll also be punished for their crimes. Black Impermanence was a straightforward speaker. He said, the underworld and the city god temples are in desperate need of staff. We have a lot of open positions. It's an opportunity. You guys should talk some sense into those keen on being hired. Tell them to stop enduring and living. Hurry up and come to us. Zhou Yunwu and Meng Jun Liang felt awkward. They fake smiled and saluted, I see. Oxhead and Horseface raised their glasses again and said, Cheers to King Zhou and Mr. Meng then. Li Nai and Fan noticed that they were much more relaxed. He smiled curiously and asked, Is the underworld back on track now? It's all thanks to you, Mr. Li. Let me tell you, the city god temples were a genius idea. Otherwise, it wouldn't be easy for us. Oxhead and Horseface were grateful. They raised their glasses again and said, We're two buff dudes and we're not good at sentimental words. All our thanks are in the wine. Cheers to Mr. Lee. Lee Nai and Fan finally realized that the ox and the horse were here to get free drinks. They had raised their glasses thrice in three sentences. Ox had put down his glass and rubbed his head. He said, By the way, the sticks of the underworld is starting to wreak havoc again. Those Asuras are up to something. I'm afraid bad things are going to happen. The Jade Emperor was intrigued. The sticks? Lee Nai and Fan was intrigued, too. He was familiar with the sticks. It was as famous as the Acheron. In the legendary stories, the sticks was transformed from a puddle of blood. The blood puddle was from the body of Pang. More importantly, it gave birth to a deity named Styx Leozu. He had two ultimate heavenly swords and they were named Yuan Tu and Abi. There was a saying that the bloody sea would not dry out and the sticks would not die. If the saying was true, Styx Leozu was most probably alive. The sticks was also most probably their villain. All right, we were just thinking about who might still be alive. Now comes a super powerful deity. Oh yeah, apart from the Styx Leozu, the Styx also birthed Luyuchi Mosquito Taoist. He was also a bad SS character. It was a shame that he sucked away three of the golden lotuses from the saint. He was also most probably, a villain. There were too many big shots. Each of them could destroy realms. No wonder the tribulations and disasters kept happening. Oxhead looked serious as he said, back then, the underworld was ruined. We had no choice but to throw the countless ghosts into the sticks. Now that the underworld's slowly recovering, the sticks is uncooperative. The Empress frowned. 
she said in a deep voice, Styx Leozu tried to imitate goddess Nuwa so he could become a saint. He created the Asuras in the end. The Asuras are a bunch of ghosts who devour anything. It seems like they're starting to cause trouble. The Jade Emperor became worried when they talked about the situation. I wonder if we can revive the Heavenly Palace. It depends. Everyone lined up and chatted. Half a month passed by in the blink of an eye. The highly anticipated end of the year event, began. Chapter 396 I am useful after all. The more excited the Jade Emperor and the Empress were, the guiltier Li Nian Fan felt. What's our slogan? No agent fees. The Jade Emperor and Empress don't know about this slogan. Otherwise, it'd be troublesome. Whatever. We're all friends here, I won't take away their deluxe merit. Soon, the phenomenon went away. However, everyone could not snap out of it. The Jade Emperor and Empress were excited. Those who did not earn the deluxe merit were more excited than they were. They were oddly proud. They were inspired by their heroes in front of them. The Empress and the others genuinely thanked Li Nian Fan. Their voices were shaky. Thank you, Deluxe Merit Saint. Li Nian Fan waved it off. He smiled and replied, Ha ha, no need to thank me. You guys rebuilt the Heavenly Palace, this is what you deserve. Li Nian Fan told the truth but they interpreted it differently. What kind of generosity is this? He blessed us with deluxe merit but made it sound so casual. Who else could do that in this realm? They finally understood why the expert decided to become the deluxe merit saint. Did he really become the deluxe merit saint to protect himself? Obviously not, he was doing it for us. The glory of the realms was hidden because of the absolute era, deluxe merit was nowhere to be seen. The expert must have been annoyed so he robbed the deluxe merit from the realm to share it with all of us. We don't deserve it. The Jade Emperor and Empress looked at each other. They were both touched. They said with seriousness, Mr. Li, say less. We understand. Cheng Yi at the side chimed in, Mr. Li, you blessed us with such precious deluxe merit. It's so wonderful, we should thank you. Cough, there's no need for that. Li Nianfen scratched his nose. He said, I'm not trying to brag or anything. I just feel that deluxe merit is nothing to me. I can grow deluxe merit even when I give it away. It would be a waste to keep deluxe merit. I can give you all a set of deluxe merits if you want. Grow deluxe merit? What does it mean? Everyone was mystified. It was a simple sentence but their minds could not handle it. They went blank as their hearts thumped. They almost choked. It's too cruel. What a cruel sentence. What are we supposed to say in a situation like this? What facial expressions should we respond with? Everyone felt numb in the face. They could not control their faces anymore. That's deluxe merit. Even saints would be very careful with deluxe merit. How can the expert, grow deluxe merit? I see. Being weak and puny limited my imagination. No one knew what to say to that. The third princess, Huang, blinked. She asked skittishly, Um, saint, can I have deluxe merit? Li Nian Fan looked at her. He shook his head, Sorry, I don't see yours. Huang, stop messing around. The Empress scolded. What do you think Deluxe Merit is? It's only earned by people who helped the realm. You can't have it. You don't deserve it. You can't ask for it. The Jade Emperor winced at that. He also scolded in a low voice, Huang, you shouldn't ask questions from now on. Quiet. Deluxe Merit could be ours if the expert is willing to give it to us. How could she ask for it? So immature. No worries. Li Nian Fan softly coughed. He slightly looked up and searched amongst everyone. However, he did not notice deluxe merit on everyone. It was just as the Empress said. Not everyone could have deluxe merit. Helping a granny across the street was not sufficient enough to earn deluxe merit. Deluxe merit was earned mainly through their meaning for the realm. Every immortal jolted. They hurriedly stood up straight. They were terribly hopeful. Suddenly, Li Nianfan raised his eyebrows. He smiled and said, Juling Shen, come over here. Me. Me? Juling Shen was puzzled. He saw that Li Nian Fan nodded so he anxiously walked over. His buff body walked over with tiny steps. He was trying hard to control his footsteps. He bafflingly asked, Saint, do I have deluxe merit? Li Nian Fan did not say anything. He lifted his finger and a strand of golden deluxe merit light slowly went toward Juling Shen. The size of the strand was not different from the Jade Emperor's. It was even thicker than Zay's. However, deluxe merit was deluxe merit. Everyone was jealous. Juling Shen had wide, coin-like eyes. He was utterly excited. 
he was mystified by the sudden gift. He hurriedly took his two axes from his waist to create weapons with the deluxe merit. His axe was an ordinary deluxe spiritual treasure. However, after improving it with deluxe merit, it was improved tenfold on all attributes. It was almost as powerful as an ultimate spiritual treasure. Juling Shen inspected his two axes and almost dropped his jaw from laughing. Fortunately, he knew how to behave. He calmed down and thanked, Thanks, Deluxe Merit Saint. Li Nai and Fan casually waved it off, Credits go to you for fixing the Southern Sky Gate. No need to thank me. Fixing, the Southern Sky Gate? That counts too? Even the Jade Emperor was taken aback. He glared and thought to himself, Damn. I should have gone to fix it, too. What a lucky guy. Juling Shen had his mouth wide open. He slapped his chest and said, Lord Saint, I'm not trying to brag but I'm a professional at that. If you need me to do the heavy work, I'll handle it. Don't be courteous with me, feel free to request it. Li Nai and Fan nodded. Then, he turned around and looked at the palace of the Deluxe Merit Saint. He said, who would have thought that I'd have abilities like that with the Deluxe Merit Saint title? It's interesting. Seems like I'm not completely useless after all. The Jade Emperor sneakily wiped the cold sweat off his forehead. The expert sure loves to joke. He smiled apologetically and said, You're useful and you're crucial. So, this immortal palace of yours. The Jade Emperor hurriedly gestured and said, Stop joking, Saint. This is your immortal palace. You truly deserve it. Please, please, feel free to enter. Thanks, Jade Emperor, saluted Li Nian Fan. He walked towards the palace. Li Nian Fan would be lying if he said he disliked the Immortal Palace. It was the place for immortals and he could see the vast universe from there. It would be amazing to stay there. He walked into the palace of the Deluxe Merit Saint. The interior design was luxurious and opulent. Everything was prepared for him. He could just check in and stay there. The position of the rooms was nice, the ventilation was good. The heavenly river could be seen passing through. He could see everything through the windows. There was an observatory in the attic, too. He could tell that the view during the nighttime would be tremendously majestic and beautiful. Everyone wanted lake view rooms or sea view rooms in my past realm. So, this should be considered as, a stargazing room? Or perhaps, a heavenly river view room? Nanan and Dragon already started to play around in the palace of the deluxe merit saint. The Jade Emperor did not want to disturb them any longer. He said goodbye and left with everyone else. As they walked out from the palace of the Deluxe Merit Saint, the Jade Emperor and Empress sighed in relief at the same time. They could finally relax. They were excited, anxious, shocked, and terrified. The Jade Emperor said, Phew, the expert finally accepted the palace of the Deluxe Merit Saint. The Empress asked the question in her mind, Jade Emperor, the Deluxe Merit Saint title could sense and give Deluxe Merit to other people? Ha, huh, you haven't realized it yet. What happened to your usual intelligence? The Jade Emperor smiled bitterly and shook his head. Then, he said, how's that possible? The Deluxe Merit Saint is a custom title we created for the expert. There has never been a Deluxe Merit Saint before. How could it have such a powerful ability? Then, then. Think carefully of what the expert said. The Jade Emperor paused and reminded, the expert said, his Deluxe Merit isn't beneficial to others. He felt like his Deluxe Merit Saint title was useless, it was nothing to him. The Empress widened her eyes. She said with disbelief, so. The expert purely added the ability for himself? What do you think? The Jade Emperor sounded shocked. For someone of his level, what can he do? He could create a Deluxe Merit Saint ability at will. Does he even need a reason to do that? The Empress had to nod, you make a lot of sense. Cheng Yi groaned for a moment. She said, Emperor. Empress, I think we've pleased the expert. That's why he was willing to let us have deluxe merit. The Jade Emperor and the Empress fell in deep thought. Oh? Cheng Yi analyzed, the expert must be pleased with the title and the palace of the deluxe merit saint. But he wants to be honorable and well deserving of it. So, he wouldn't have a title that was an empty front. He was in a good mood and decided to bless us on a whim and call it an ability. At the same time, he's rewarding us. You're, right. The Jade Emperor was joyous. The expert does things based on his mood. We coincidentally made him happy. We did that because of luck. We're so lucky. If we gave up halfway, we would have missed out on this giant opportunity. This must also be a test of the expert. The Empress took a deep breath. She said, no matter what, it's a huge blessing from the expert. He blessed us with deluxe merit. We have to work harder. 
the reconstruction of the heavenly palace needs to be back on track, and we also have to quickly rebuild the three realms so that we can please the expert. The Jade Emperor nodded. True. There are a lot of things that need to be done at the heavenly palace. Work hard, everybody. Chapter 397 I have never been this rich while hugging you guys. At the immortal realm, fallen immortal mountain. A few clouds floated by slowly in the air. Then, they landed at the four-part architecture. Xiao Bei stood at the pavilion. Xiao Bei slightly bowed and said, Welcome home, master. Li Nai and Fan looked around and asked curiously, Xiao Bei, why is it only you at the house? Where's Blackie? Went out to play, still not back yet. Li Nai and Fan frowned. I've neglected Blackie. Let Blackie have fun, as long as Blackie doesn't run into demons. He thought about it and realized he was always busy. He always left Blackie alone at home. However, it could not be helped. He was around a lot of immortal big shots. He could not let an ordinary dog accompany him. It was slightly inappropriate. This metal Nyaki can speak, exclaimed Juling Shen behind Li Nian Fan. He looked at Xiao Bei with disbelief. He exclaimed, Awesome, this metal piece has a conscience and it has shiny eyes. Unbelievable. Xiao Bei turned to look at Juling Shen and said, Buff guy, I'm a robot. Juling Shen scratched his head. You're not a robot. You're more like a robotic demon. Juling Shen, please, shut your big mouth. Tai Bai Jinxing at the side softly coughed. If he could, he would slap Juling Shen twice on the face. Why are you talking nonsense? Who cares if Xiao Bei's a robot or a demon? Xiao Bei's someone important to the expert. How can you bear the consequences? You won't live long like this. Then, he looked at Li Nai and Fan and said, Saint, feel free to order us around if you need anything to be moved. Li Nai and Fan smiled and said, It's just some daily household items. I don't need your help, I can just put them in the system space and move it. Saint, how can that be? Tai Bai Jinxing waved his horse tail whisk and said with seriousness. You're officially moving. People who move would hire other people to move their stuff. It's tradition. Juling Shen also nodded. He flexed his muscles and said, Yeah, Saint. Don't be courteous with us, it's my hobby to help others move. All right. Li Nai and Fan helplessly shook his head. He was not surprised that Tai Bai Jinxing and Juling Shen were so friendly. His position was like an employer. He felt like he was not as powerful as someone with high status, but anyone sane would try to befriend him. Xiao Bei at the side asked, Master, you're moving? Are you bringing Xiao Bei? Li Nai and Fan casually replied, I'm not moving. I have a new house. I'll stay over there occasionally. He smiled and let Tai Bai Jinxing wait for a moment. He went to open the door of the storage room and walked in. Tai Bai Jinxing and Juling Shen stood outside the door. They silently observed everything in the four part architecture. The house full of spiritual treasure astounded them. However, the thing that caught their attention the most was the air purifier and the water purifier. Juling Shen carefully put his head closer to the air purifier. He inhaled the mist and instantly felt energized. His powers slightly improved. Although it was slight, it was still incredible. Juling Shen felt like he could do nothing all day and just inhale the air from the air purifier. It was way better than his cultivation. If he had one air purifier with him, his powers would be through the roof. He was awestruck. This is pure immortal chi. The effect is as good as an immortal Dan. Tai Bai Jinxing was calm. He said quietly, the water purifier could filter water into spiritual water, too. These two items could transform ordinary elements into immortal elements. I'm sure they're ultimate heavenly spiritual treasures. All right, stop freaking out. Can you bear the consequences if you displease the expert? However, after a moment, he was stumped. Li Nai and Fan walked out from the storage room with a water purifier and an air purifier. Tai Bai Jingxing thought he was seeing things. He rubbed his eyes and looked at Li Nai and Fan. Then, he looked at the misting purifiers in his hand. He felt puzzled. He could not help but ask, baffled, Saint, why? Do you have two of those? Is it weird that I have two of these? Li Nai and Fan thought it was funny. Aren't these like chairs and tables? It's just daily household items, it's not worth a lot. I have a lot of these inside. I would have left them stacked in there if I wasn't moving. Tai Bai Jinxing's mouth was open. No sound came out. Can we have a normal conversation? He screamed internally. That's an ultimate heavenly spiritual treasure. Not worth a lot? You have a lot of these? You can count the amount of ultimate heavenly spiritual treasures you have? 
Did you manufacture it? Tai Bai Jingxing gradually calmed down and kept a poker face. He did not move. Clang. Things were getting thrown out by Li Nianfan from the storage room. Pots, pans, ladles, bowls, and kitchen utensils. Each of them shined beautifully. Heavenly spiritual treasures. Their superior heavenly spiritual treasures. They, were either in a box or simply placed on the floor. They were thrown out like garbage. This. So many treasures. Can I even count them? Tai Bai Jingxing was stunned. Zhu Shen rolled his eyes while his jaw was on the ground. He was thunderstruck. He silently took the two axes on his waist and hid them away. It was too embarrassing of a comparison. His mind went off and he suddenly wanted to cry. Not long ago, he was glad that the saint blessed and rewarded him with deluxe merit. He was happy that his axes were improved. Back then, he was a happy guy. He was so excited that he showed off with his axes in front of everybody. However, his two axes were just inferior deluxe merit treasures. He looked at the set of knives tossed out by the expert. From the small fruit knife to the big knife, which one isn't a superior heavenly spiritual treasure? So embarrassing. I'm sorry, I didn't know I was so poor. Tai Bai Jinxing at the side also silently put away his horsetail whisk. The treasure he most valued was inferior to kitchen utensils. He felt painfully jealous. All right, almost done. I'll leave it like that first. Li Nianfan walked out of the storage room and wiped his hands. Then, he said, Oh yeah, Xiao Bei, prepare a hundred grams of fruits for me in the backyard. I'll bring some for convenience. Yes, my noble master. Xiao Bei immediately went to the backyard. Tai Bai Jingxing and Juling Shen learned something new from that. Spiritual fruits can be calculated with grams. And it's, a hundred grams. Li Nianfan packed some eggs, jellos, and wine. He was finally done packing after half an hour. All right. Xiao Bei, look after the house. I'll come back anytime, ordered Li Nianfan. They headed to the Heavenly Palace carrying luggage and bags. Tai Bai Jingxing, Juling Shen, and two guards carried his things with caution. They did not dare to neglect it. They looked intensely serious as their hearts pounded. They held on tight. You might not believe it but I'm hugging a bunch of heavenly spiritual treasures. I have a satchel of spiritual fruits on my back, too. I'm the cheapest thing on me right now. I have never been this rich while hugging you. Guys. Li Nianfan saw that the old man, Tai Bai Jingxing, was covered with bags. He felt bad but Tai Bai Jingxing insisted on carrying it for him so he let it be. He was bored on the road. Li Nianfan asked curiously, Oh yeah, Brother Chancellor. I noticed recently that the immortals of the heavenly palace have been very busy. What are you all doing? Saint, you don't know this. All these years, the world revolved around the realms. A lot of places lack management. Moreover, there were a lot of demons in the three realms. Powerful demons caused havoc everywhere. We're in desperate need of staff to defeat them. Tai Bai Jingxing paused, then said, We need staff at the heavenly palace, too. The emperor's recruiting. At the same time, we're also searching for guards or generals that survived. I see, you guys are indeed busy. Li Nianfan nodded. It seemed like the Heavenly Palace had a thousand tasks to do. He continued to ask curiously, who did you guys hire so far? It should be easy to hire people to work for the Heavenly Palace. Sigh, it's too difficult. Tai Bai Jingxing frowned. The star on his forehead was slightly scrunched from his frowning. He sighed and said, the Heavenly Palace isn't the same nowadays. In the past, we could attract staff with flat peaches. But even so, those who are capable aren't that willing to join us. The Heavenly Palace has fallen, and it's not as famous as it once was. We can only hire those with average cultivation and capabilities. Really? Li Nianfan raised his eyebrow. However, it was normal once he thought about it. To ordinary people, the Heavenly Palace was too high-end and mysterious. However, in the eyes of big shots, the Heavenly Palace was not worth their time. Joining the Heavenly Palace meant restricting their freedom. Big shots naturally would not want to. Chapter 398 Dingshan Armor, Most Suitable Choice Li Nian Fan carefully thought about it and realized the phenomenon always existed. The Heavenly Palace also could not hire anyone when they first started. They especially could not get experts to join them. Powerful experts were lovers of freedom. They were powerful and blessed by the realm and they were more into religion and education. No one cared about the Heavenly Palace. Therefore, the Jade Emperor ranted to Hongjin. He said that he needed assistance. 
In the end, it caused, the investiture of the gods. The war was as bad as the catastrophe. A lot of immortals became chancellors of the heavenly palace. The heavenly palace was instantly filled with staff. However, the immortals of the heavenly palace were not all hard workers. For example, Neja. She was like a top spy in the heavenly palace. She helped whoever was against the heavenly palace. Also, Gajiro. He would not listen to orders and would fight anyone powerful just to embarrass the Jade Emperor. Those who were inferior to a Daluo Golden Immortal would be nicer because they relied on the flat peaches to extend their lives. However, they were also schemers. Most of them did their jobs with minimum effort. Some of them were spies working for other forces. The Jade Emperor seemed to have a hard job. Li Nian Fan had to look at the buff guy at the side. He was smiling while carrying the items. Juling Shen seemed to be the most loyal worker in the entire Heavenly Palace. He was a nice himbo but he was usually the cannon fodder character. No matter how powerful the enemies were, he would defend the Heavenly Palace by charging at them, and getting beaten up. Flat Peaches were gone. He could tell that the Heavenly Palace would not be successful in recruiting staff. Most importantly, the people from the era were not aware. They did not realize the... Li Nian Fan asked curiously, what's the Jade Emperor going to do? We have three strategies so far. Tai Bai Jingxing did not try to hide it. He said, first, we gather the old staff of the Heavenly Palace. Second, we communicate with the underworld and search for the guards or generals lost souls. Third, we recruit new members. Ghost immortals, human immortals, and even earth immortals could try out. If we don't have powerful candidates, we'll train the weak cultivators and go from there. Li Nian Fan nodded. The strategy of playing it safe. This truly can't be rushed. Li Nian Fan thought to himself, the Heavenly Palace thinks too much. The Underworld's also understaffed. They won't allow ghost immortals to be candidates. Human immortals are humans that are immortalized. They could accept them. Earth immortals are mostly mountain demons. Normally, they could be in charge of the lands in the mountains. Those who perform well could be promoted into the Heavenly Palace. Tai Bai Jingxing sighed and said, it's hard to get good candidates. Li Nian Fan thought of Xiao Chengfeng and Yiliu Yuan. He had to say, I can recommend some friends to the Heavenly Palace. But it's up to you guys on whether they can join or not. Tai Bai Jingxing was instantly overjoyed. He said, Saint, it'd be best if you could recommend some people to us. I'll personally invite them over to join us. They arrived at the Southern Sky Gate while chatting. They were carrying a lot of bags which instantly attracted the attention of the the deluxe merit saint to move. However, they did not expect so much stuff. More importantly, the stuff in question looked like daily household items, but they were all spiritual treasures. It was too terrifying, it showed them a whole new world. A rich guy moved in. A rich guy moved into our heavenly palace. The immortals stared and remembered the shocking sight. All the treasures combined in the entire heavenly palace aren't even worth his set of daily items. He just increased the value of the heavenly palace. From my calculations, everyone in the heavenly palace is at the wealth level where we averagely have a superior heavenly spiritual treasure. Nonsense. My only set of deluxe spiritual treasure would be leveled out. I have nothing now. Woe is me. Everyone watched them with complex gazes. Li Nian Fan and the others slowly returned to the palace of the deluxe merit saint. Li Nian Fan did not expect that the Jade Emperor and Empress would be in the room. He also did not expect that they would be playing cards with Dragon and Nanan. They were blushing, too. It seemed like they were having fun. The four of them looked awkward when they saw that Li Nian Fan had returned. They unwillingly stopped. The Jade Emperor and Empress hurriedly stood up. They straightened up and looked serious. Juling Shen and Tai Bai Jingxing had their heads buried in the bags. They pretended like they did not see or know anything. Li Nian Fan told Nanan and Dragon, You too. No self awareness once the Fire Phoenix is gone. The Fire Phoenix was a phoenix and she was not fond of the heavenly palace. She said she was going to rule the demons so she said goodbye and left. It was her ambition. Li Nian Fan naturally did not stop her. However, Da Ji and the little fox also followed her. The little fox was a nine-tailed fox so it would be normal for her to follow the fire phoenix. Da Ji also followed her. Li Nian Fan could only say that their sisterly bond was close. Last time, they were ambushed by the Kirins. It must be terribly difficult to rule the demons. I hope everything goes well. Li Nian Fan reminded them to be careful when they left, and if they ran into any situation, they should come to the Heavenly Palace. He was a person of status and connection at the Heavenly Palace, 
so it would be easy to protect them. All right, leave the things here. Li Nianfan smiled at Juling Shen and the others. Sorry for the trouble. You're too courteous, Saint. This is just a small task. Everyone unwillingly put down the things. To be honest, this is the peak moment of my life. I wonder if I'll have the chance to touch treasure again. Tai Bai Jingxing and Juling Shen were suddenly aware of the Jade Emperor and Empress. They bowed and greeted, greetings to the Emperor and Empress. The Jade Emperor waved it off with satisfaction, yeah, go on. He looked at the daily household items that Li Nian Fan brought and winced. His eyes uncontrollably teared up. So luxurious. I've been with the Buddha and I've never seen such luxury. He suddenly felt, embarrassed for the things he prepared. He did not want to give it to Li Nian Fan anymore. However, he needed to. He could not do nothing. The Jade Emperor forced himself to flip his wrist. Out came a thin crystal-like armor. He smiled and said, Saint, you've just become a part of the Heavenly Palace so you need a decent immortal item. This is the Dingshan armor. It's made from an essential material. The four elements were used to create it. The defense of this armor is fantastic once you wear it. Please, don't mind it, Saint. He said it casually but it did not change the fact that the armor was a deluxe spiritual treasure. The Jade Emperor and Empress considered it for a long while. They felt like it was their best choice as a gift. The expert was still an ordinary man, so he did not need weapons if he did not have any powers. However, the expert was wary of his safety, so they had to give him a defense armor suitable for ordinary people. Therefore, they searched the whole heavenly palace and found the Dingshan armor. It was considered an automatic defense type of armor. The armor was a precious treasure. However, compared to the daily household items, it was whack. No one pulls up with lousy gifts like I do. Good item. Li Nianfan was overjoyed. Even his face was slightly flushed from excitement. He laughed and said, Thank you, Emperor. This item's too good. I've been lacking this, thank you so much. He was always concerned for his safety even though he had the deluxe merit flesh. The deluxe merit flesh was a slow defense. What use is the deluxe merit flesh if it only reacts after I've been hurt? I can't rely on others to protect me all the time. This armor's too important. He felt protected with the armor. He was invincible and felt like he could go anywhere. The Jade Emperor is truly the Jade Emperor. He has endless treasures, any one of them's beneficial to me. Good, good. He did not expect that he would be bribed by others with gifts one day. It felt, very good. The Jade Emperor noticed Li Nianfan was overjoyed. He sighed in relief and said awkwardly, As long as you like it, Saint. You gave us so much deluxe merit, this armor's nothing. The expert's so odd. He has so much heavenly spiritual treasure but he needs to pretend like he's happy. He's such a good actor, other people can never. This must be the legendary method acting. Li Nianfan accepted the armor. He had to be concerned with the situation of the Heavenly Palace, so he asked, Emperor. Did you find any survivors of the past Heavenly Palace Immortals? It's not that easy. The Jade Emperor shook his head and sighed. The Heavenly Palace is responsible for supervising the Three Realms. We need too many staff, but right now, we're severely understaffed. It's hard. The Empress also nodded and said, Yeah, I even sent out Cheng and the others to help out as best as they could. Li Nian Fan pouted. Yeah, right. Weren't you guys playing cards just now? He asked. Did you contact the Sea Race or the Underworld? If he remembered correctly, the Sea Race and the Underworld were special departments of the Heavenly Palace. They were important roles in the Three Realms, after all. Li Nianfan was planning to check if they had deluxe merit on them so he could reward them. The Jade Emperor nodded and said, Of course. There are a lot of ghosts in the Underworld, and the Sea Race is bustling, too. I'm going to borrow some of their staff resources to help out at the Heavenly Palace. Li Nian Fan looked at the Jade Emperor weirdly and thought to himself, Where did you get that confidence from? You think the Sea Race and the Underworld would help you out? According to my knowledge, they're both understaffed, too. Suddenly, Tai Bai Jinxing who left earlier came running back. His long white beard swayed from side to side, Saint, Emperor, Empress, the people of the Underworld and the Sea are here. The Jade Emperor smiled and said, Right on. Li Nian Fan nodded, Yes. I wanted to meet my old friends. Tai Bai Jingxing looked troubled. He quietly said, But, Emperor, um. The sea race is being carried in. Chapter 399 Sea Problem, Bluff. Carried in? Li Nian Fan and the Jade Emperor were taken aback. Then, they walked out together. 
Li Nian Fan first thought of the internal fights. Maybe the Southern Sea Dragons used that Dragon Soul Pearl and fought them? It was highly possible. Ao Chang was most likely the side that was defeated. He arrived at the Lynx Sao Palace with the Jade Emperor. A lot of immortals were there to watch and gossip. Black and white impermanence stood at the center of the palace. Ao Chang stood at their side. He was fine, but Ao Yun silently laid on a stretcher. He looked terrible and he was drooling blood. He looked terribly injured. Ao Yun's hurt again? Huh? Why did I say again? Brother Ao Chang, Brother Ao Chang. Ao Yun laid there struggling to speak. He was using his last breath to talk. Ao Chang looked serious. He said, Brother Yun, say it. I'm listening, I'm here with you. Help me get, get. Ao Yun panted and pointed at black and white impermanence. Help me get away from them. They're waiting for me to die. Black and white impermanence alarmingly moved her way. You and your bloody mouth. How dare you accuse us? Suddenly, Tai Bai Jingxing shouted to remind everyone, cough. Greetings from Tai Bai Jingxing to the Emperor and Empress. Black and white impermanence and Ao Cheng all snapped out of it. They bowed and said, Greetings to the Emperor and Empress. Then, they saw Li Nian Fan. They smiled and saluted, Mr. Li. Juling Shen glared and scolded them, What's with that attitude? This is our deluxe merit saint. How impolite. Greet the saint properly. Li Nian Fan was pleased with Juling Shen. It was no fun hyping himself up on his own. He needed a hype man. Juling Shen created the perfect setup for his appearance. He smiled and casually said, Hey, we're old friends here. Never mind. The Deluxe Merit Saint is just a title. He casually waved while he said that. A golden Deluxe Merit light immediately covered black and white impermanence and the others. They were soaked in the golden streams of Deluxe Merit. Black and white impermanence, Ao Cheng, and Ao Yun were taken aback. They were irrecoverably shocked. The pleasant surprise came out of nowhere. Then, they were overjoyed. They hurriedly accepted it. They were also kind of confused. Deluxe Merit Saint. Saint? Li Nian Fan casually replied, I became the Deluxe Merit Saint. It appears that I can sense and give out Deluxe Merit. It's quite an interesting trick. Interesting trick? Black and White Impermanence and Ao Cheng felt their hearts thumb. They were shocked, fearful, respectful, and confused. They placed all their emotions aside. Just bootleg. We know how it goes. They went serious and bowed at Li Nian Fan with respect. They said in a genuine tone, Thank you for the reward, Saint. We were ignorant just now. Please, forgive us, Saint. Quick, help me up. Ao Yun struggled to the floor. So I can bow to the Saint. Relax. We're old friends. We don't need to do all the courtesy stuff, laughed Li Nian Fan. Then, he said, You guys deserve the credits for helping to rebuild the Heavenly Palace. Plus, I can sense your usual deluxe merit. You deserved it, I just helped you get it. The generous saint. All wise saint. Black and white impermanence and Ao Cheng inhaled, they looked like they were about to kiss up to Li Nian Fan. Li Nian Fan hurriedly stopped them, let's get back to business. They stopped being bootlickers. Emperor, please, help us. Ao Cheng quickly stepped forward. He became totally different. He instantly teared up and cried, my brother, Ao Yun was the ruler of the Western Sea. He barely survived when the Western Sea was destroyed. He recently just started to heal from his wound. He felt better so he planned to go back and check out the Western Sea. Who knew that? The Western Sea had been colonized by an evil dragon. It also injured him. If my brother Yun was bad at escaping, he would have been killed. Boohoo, Ah Yun sobbed hard at the side. He seemed to be hinting at something. Yeah, I know. Ao Chang understood his hint. He said, Outraged, once, once again, the dragon killer poison bug is planted in my brother Yun's body. This is the second time my brother Yun got poisoned. Poor him. Evil dragon dares to be so reckless? The Jade Emperor frowned. He asked, Ao Cheng, have you gone to settle such a problem? Ao Cheng looked awkward. He said, according to brother Yun, the evil dragon's hiding in the deep sea. The evil dragon has been there for who knows how many years, it also has spiritual treasures and several demon minions. I'm afraid Daluo Golden Immortals can't defeat it. So, I came here to the Heavenly Palace to request for help, Emperor. Please, help the sea kind. Of course. We can't let this be. The Jade Emperor looked calm but serious. He sounded sure but he was not feeling confident. There were no generals in the Heavenly Palace that were Daluo Golden Immortals. 
Apart from the Jade Emperor and the Empress, the other immortals were mostly civil servants. They could not handle it. He looked at Black and White Impermanence and said, The underworld should be fine, right? Black Impermanence replied, Emperor, there's havoc at the sticks. The Asura kind are constantly causing troubles. Also, there are a lot of evil spirits being born in the immortal realm. The underworld is understaffed. White Impermanence requested, Emperor, we were hoping that you could lend us some staff resources. Borrow our staff? said the Jade Emperor in a high pitched voice. He did not expect that at all. What? I was planning to bow dragons in the underworld. I haven't asked yet and they've already requested for backup. Li Nian Fan showed an expectant smile at the side. You saw it, too. The Western Sea's in trouble, the Heavenly Palace is in urgent need of staff. Please, don't mention this request anymore. The Jade Emperor waved it off. Then, he said, the underworld's the home for the dead. There are tons of talented people there. Use that time wisely to train some ghost staff. Ao Cheng asked at the side, I wonder, Emperor. When are you going to help us? It's just defeating an evil dragon. We only need three days to deal with this problem. The Jade Emperor said with confidence. Ao Cheng, return and be ready with an army. My guards will meet with the sea race. We'll kill the evil dragon once and for all. Li Nai and Fan silently watched the Jade Emperor bluff. He did not say anything. Three days? You won't even be ready in thirty days. He was clear on the situation of the Heavenly Palace. They lacked generals and guards. They were going to lose the battle. If the Heavenly Palace pulled up with a small army of people, it would be too funny. However, he could understand what the Jade Emperor was thinking. The Heavenly Palace ran into a problem like that when it first started. He could not look too helpless, especially in front of the dragons and the workers of the underworld. He had to keep the Heavenly Palace's image up. Ao Cheng did not doubt him. He immediately said, All right, I'll go back and get ready. We must avenge my brother Yun. Then, he carried Ao Yun and was ready to leave. Ow! Ao Yun struggled in agony. He wanted to live. He panted, Brother Ao Cheng, me. Save me. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Ao Cheng put the stretcher down. He saluted at Li Nai and Fan and said, Saint, please save Brother Yun, like last time. Barbecue again? Li Nianfan looked at the severed arm and felt bad for him. It was too pitiful, what a tragic fate. What body part do you choose? Aoyun thought about it on the way here. He was flushed like he was pushing something out. Then, with a spurt, out came a tail from his butt. He lied there lifelessly because he was injured. Aoyun looked like he was in agony. He said with a tragic voice, I can't lose another limb, take my tail. Okay, nodded Li Nianfan. He was about to take out the seasoning. Wait. Aoyun struggled to speak. He alarmingly looked at the surrounding crowd, take me somewhere with no one around. I don't want anyone to smell my tail. I don't want it to get eaten. The next day. Li Nianfan stood at the attic of the palace. He did not look at the view. Instead, he was looking at the busy immortals. They were busy because they were preparing for battle. They were all sent out to distribute flyers no matter what their positions were. They tried their best to recruit people into the Heavenly Palace. Juling Shen was training the guards. They were hard working. Suddenly, Li Nianfan saw that the Jade Emperor was heading his way. So, he went downstairs. Li Nianfan smiled and asked, Emperor, how are the preparations? Don't even mention it. The Jade Emperor waved it off and sighed. So far, we only have one general in the entire Heavenly Palace, Juling Shen. He's only a Taiyi Golden Immortal. We have seven golden immortals. The Tian immortals and real immortals come up to less than 500 in total. He could not say the statistics out loud. How poor. Li Nianfan comforted him, the absolute era made this incredibly hard. Times are different now, it's not that bad. The Jade Emperor said, Saint, you don't need to comfort me. Too few people responded to my heavenly palace. Now that it's the absolute era, powerful forces will only increase. I have to show them the power of the Heavenly Palace with this battle. He paused. Then, he said, to be honest, Saint, I already thought of a strategy for this. Li Nianfan was startled. The Jade Emperor cast a spell and out came some of his conscience. Then, an intense power started to flow into the conscience. It gradually grew into a human form under the light. The Jade Emperor groaned and went pale. The human figure transformed into a stranger, a middle-aged man who was sitting cross-legged in front of Li Nianfan. 
Chapter 400 The Self Compliment of Emperor Haotian The middle-aged man had a squared face. His brows and eyes were sharp. He wore white clothes and had his hair tied up with a hairpin. He looked like a cultivator. Li Nianfan had to admit, he was kind of handsome. An avatar? Li Nianfan was slightly taken aback. The middle-aged man did not look like the Jade Emperor at all but it was clearly a type of clone spell. He noticed that the Jade Emperor had turned pale. He felt like it was not easy to do the clone spell. Wukong can make a lot of clones just by plucking his fur, right? This is afterward I have to ask because I don't understand. Li Nianfan asked, is it hard to clone yourself? This isn't a normal clone. I separated a part of myself into an avatar. This is my Daluo Golden Immortal Self. The Jade Emperor was about to boast like he usually would. However, he thought about the expert and realized there was nothing to boast about. The expert could probably make multiple clones with his will. He instantly humbled himself. This clone is an avatar that has the powers of the original person. The more powerful it is, the more affected the original person will be. The Jade Emperor paused and said, If I clone myself normally and train the avatar to become a Daluo Golden Immortal, it wouldn't affect me as much. However, that would take a lot of time. It's too slow and it's unnecessary. It'd be meaningless. The Jade Emperor was almost a saint. He could separate a third of himself as his avatar. However, the risk was high. If the avatar was killed, it would be a huge loss for him. Was. They were being attacked by the Styx Leozu. The Jade Emperor obviously would not be so boastful just to risk his life. If he did everything himself, he would be easily defeated by others. I see, nodded Li Nianfan. The Jade Emperor was irritated. Just an evil dragon. It's more than enough to defeat it with my clone. Too bad the Heavenly Palace is understaffed. Otherwise, I wouldn't need to do it myself, right? He said that but Li Nianfan noticed his eyes lit up and sparkled. He was sighing but secretly, he was excited. It was clear that, he could not wait to go outside and play. The Jade Emperor told his clone, From now on, your name's Tao is Taiwa. Follow the instructions I gave you, go. I'll be going now. Tao is Taiwa nodded at the two of them. Then, he got up and quietly flew out of the palace of the deluxe merit saint. Li Nianfan raised his eyebrow. From the looks of it. It kind of feels scripted. As expected, he heard a commotion outside after a short while of drinking tea. Then, Juling Shen could be heard at the Southern Sky Gate. Who are you? How dare you trespass the Southern Sky Gate? Hurry up and leave, otherwise, I won't be so polite anymore. I came here because I heard that the Heavenly Palace is recruiting. May I know what Chancellor positions are available? Juling Shen replied, Ha, you? You wish to become a Chancellor when you just got here? Let's talk if you can take my axe attacks. You are not a worthy opponent. What did you say? How dare you instigate me? Arg, take this. Then, fighting noises ensued. Li Nianfan could imagine a defeated Juling Shen just from the noise. Li Nianfan and the Jade Emperor looked at each other and slowly left the palace. They headed towards the Southern Sky Gate. Taoist Taiwa had a long sword behind him. He did not even use it. He conquered Juling Shen casually by pressing him down on the ground with his hand. He smiled calmly. Juling Shen laid on the ground, stunned. He suddenly saw Li Nianfan and the Jade Emperor. Motivation instantly overcame him. He stood up and picked up his axe on the floor. He looked menacing as he said, that was my careless mistake. Let's battle again. Arg. His eyes were like coins. His giant body expanded and grew 16 feet tall. His axe grew larger, too. He attacked Tao as Taiwa. His axe was powerful because of the deluxe merit. It could easily break defense spells. It was amazing. Only I can fight in the entire heavenly palace. Plus, I have the axes because of the deluxe merit saint. I'm truly the invincible one of the heavenly palace. Juling Shen thought too much. He was bruised and defeated afterwards. Saint, it's my time to shine. Excuse me. The Jade Emperor whispered to Li Nianfan. Then, he went serious. His voice was like the rumbling thunder. He asked piously, what happened here? This is the heavenly palace. How dare you cause a scene here? I'm Taoist Taiwa. Greetings to the Jade Emperor. What's your business here? Then, Li Nianfan was stunned by what happened next. Taoist Taiwa and the Jade Emperor went back and forth to compliment each other. One complimented the Heavenly Palace and the Jade Emperor, the other complimented how great Taoist Taiwa was. Li Nianfan looked at the Jade Emperor, 
Then he looked at Taoist Taiwa. He realized that they both looked so natural. It was not awkward at all. They seemed to be getting better at acting, too. Awesome. A new height for complimenting himself. I learn something new every day. I think it should be called. Self-complimenting. He kind of knew what the Jade Emperor had been doing all those years of being sealed. The exquisite acting technique was impossible without years of training. Finally, Taoist Tai wore an out of compliments. He started to switch the topic and said, Emperor, please, allow me to join the Heavenly Palace and bring peace to the Three Realms. Nice. The Jade Emperor shouted and complimented. The Heavenly Palace needs talents like you. Here are your orders, Taoist Taiwa. Yes. There's a problem in the sea. I give you the temporary title of Lord Taoist Taiwa. Lead 3,000 guards to settle this problem. Once done, you'll be rewarded. The Jade Emperor flicked his wrist and out came the three-foot-long sword. He said in a clear and loud voice, This sword is the Sun Sword. It's made from the essence of Sunfire. I shall give this to you today to defend yourself against evil and to attack the demons. Taoist Taiwa was so touched that he teared up. He said, Thanks for the trust, Emperor. I'll do my best or die trying. I have goosebumps from watching this duo act. Every immortal could tell something was off. They carefully observed. They did not know that Taoist Taiwa was the clone of the Jade Emperor but they assumed they knew each other. They thought Taoist Taiwa had connections. Except for Juling Shen. He held his axes and laid on the floor. He was scratching his head, looking puzzled. What's going on? New guy was able to lead an army to battle because they complimented each other? What does the Heavenly Palace need me for then? The Jade Emperor said, Juling Shen. You're the second in command, help Taoist Taiwa. Juling Shen felt crossed. He said pitifully, I, yes. Gradually, everyone left. Juling Shen felt hurt. He clenched his jaw and went to train the guards. He was planning to find his ground again and become invincible. Li Nian Fan had nothing to do. He suddenly remembered that he had not checked out how the immortals manage the realms. He instantly felt curious and was going to observe. He had no goal in mind. He just walked along the halls and looked at the names of the heavenly palaces. If he was interested, he would go in and visit. The breeze felt nice when he was walking on white clouds. Li Nianfen stopped and saw the palace of the finance gods in front of him. He smiled and walked inside. The palace was huge. There were no guards or students. It was empty inside. Most palaces were like that. He kept walking and saw two people interacting with a mirror. Conversations could be heard. The two people wore orange clothes. There was a golden ingot on the back and a golden coin at the front. Li Nian Fan did not expect the tacky costume. He refrained from laughing. He did not make a sound either. He stopped walking and floated over slowly on a cloud. He had to try out the Dingshan armor. According to the Jade Emperor, the Dingshan armor could also hide his presence and aura. Li Nian Fan wanted to try it out. He had been floating around those two for a while. He had to admit, the Dingshan armor was awesome. I'm an ordinary man flying around these immortals. Don't they notice me? Cool. Awesome armor. Perhaps those two were too distracted by the television, too. Li Nianfen silently looked at the mirror. It seemed like they were looking at the immortal realm in the mirror. The main character of the visuals was a middle-aged man. He looked cynical and arrogant as he was walking along the streets. When he passed another middle-aged man, they bumped into each other. Then, he sneakily stole the wallet. Ha! He did it again. That was the 18th time. One of the guys in the tacky costume laughed. He was very excited. The other one hurriedly picked up a brush and wet it with his tongue. Then, he quickly took note, stole 28 silver dollars in total. Take note. He won't be reincarnated as a person in the next life. Humph, he's considered lucky. If he caused death because he stole silver, he'd be in hell. Come on. Switch the channel. They were both entertained. They were so into it that they still had not noticed Li Nian Fan. Cough. Li Nian Fan had no choice but to expose himself. The two of them jumped. They went pale when they saw Li Nian Fan. They almost slumped to the ground. They shivered after a while of being stunned. They hurriedly said with trembling voices, Greetings from Kaobao and Xiao Shen to the Deluxe Merit Saint. They were extremely nervous. Their limbs were cold. How did such a big shot appear to supervise our little palace? We aren't ready. This is so freaking shocking. 